assassins will strike.
What's up, hippo lovers, and welcome to day four of NAC5. With me is Hart, and you felt you weren't dressed worthy enough for the broadcast today. Where are you from? Hello, it's Hart. Um, a bit closer to your mic. Uh, okay. yeah. 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 Uh, I kind of just took a trip to the gym with Mr. Larry, getting ready for our sets today. It's like do or die for both of us, so... Uh, he made me walk 40 minutes to a gym. Don't ask why. There's a gym in the hotel. There are more gyms around. And he made me walk 40 minutes to find one for some reason. L Larry, what? what? It, was for, it what? was 40 minutes. What do you mean? It was, it was uh, 20. It was 20? It was not 20. You can check Google Maps. You just walk slow. Which one? It was slow. Tell production which gym you went the one which is in the center. In the shopping center. Next to the Saturn. Saturn. The one. That's like 13 minutes. 13? 13, I would th say. Yeah. It's not 13. Okay, well, it's not 40 minutes one way. He just walked super slow. So okay, production checked it and says 22. 22. 22 minutes. So it's between my 13. There are stops left and right. There are stops left and right, so it was 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah, Lear is like running, like it's not, not, not my fault. <laughs> and yeah, obviously NAC5 has not really been going your way performance-wise. You had a really crazy set uh, on day one where you could have beaten the Viper. You felt like one may more day or some small things going a bit differently and you could have beaten him. Yeah, I mean, I think the first two days was uh, super rocky for me because I, I didn't really have enough time to adjust to the settings. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I didn't really feel comfortable. And then on the third day, I just didn't play well. Like, I, I well, talking a little bit about me, right? Uh, I feel like I've been not performing well. I feel a bit tough. I'm hoping to change that today. Mm -hmm. I have to. It's my last chance, basically. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and yeah, so I'm, I'm really, I'm optimistic today. I feel better. I woke up feeling nice, went to the gym. Uh, and yeah, let's see what happens. Yeah, so you are the only 0-3. There was doubt, and that's why we put your match rather late for a match with 0-3, because it is do or die. If you lose, you are out. We didn't 100% confirm it. Maybe there are some wild Buchholz scenarios there where stuff is happening, but doubt versus hard will be the set three. How did you prepare for that one? For doubt. For doubt. Uh, or like, what is your mindset going into it? Uh, that, that, that <laughs> the preparation's yet to come. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to do that well, too. Yeah, four hours still. Yeah, but there's still a few hours. Uh, I mean, the, the prep has been, I think, just uh, the overall prep, right? Like everything I've mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, prepared so far. I, I think like my losses are not necessarily down to to preparation or to strategies. In, in fact, I feel like I, I kind of got lucky in some way because I, at least in my opinion, I had better sieves in most of my games and it's just my execution that has been like really off. And well, uh, I'm just hoping to get some, some games in, uh, make sure I know exactly what I want to do with my strats inside the game and then hopefully execute better this time around, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the plan. And yeah, well, that's obviously most likely doubt's plan as well. Uh, obviously, a bit of a clash of styles. I will see you as the guy that plays five hours of Arabia every night, at least my European night, and doubt more of the guy that wants to play Copenhagen, some weird, wacky civilizations, and prepares a lot for the draft as well. So that's going to be a really interesting situation there, the two of you going against each other. Going through the matchups of the day, Jordan against Freaking Andy, probably the two players that overperformed the most so far. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Freaking Andy probably came uh, to this event with me, being a, I don't know if it's called favorite, but like the, the ones that people would expect to place last, uh, at least ac according to the rest of the names. And he's overperforming for sure, he's showing a great level. Uh, and so has Jordan. I mean, Jordan 3 0 at Leary. Hopefully he hears that. I don't know where he is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, he's just having a, an amazing event. It seems like having no pressure on his shoulders is really uh, helping him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And 
I, I think it's going to be a really fun uh, match. They, they, they definitely have different styles. I think Andy's style is a bit different than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And Jordan's very consistent, very methodical. And it's going to be interesting to see how he deals with uh, the situations that Andy places him in. Mm -hmm. Because I think Andy is like, like the kind of guy to, to try to pull off something that might get you, right? And if you don't react well, then it will beat you. But if you react well, then you come out on top. Mm -hmm. the, how much did you analyze the Andy versus Doubt set from yesterday yet? I have not. <laughs> <laughs> you still have four hours. Soon, soon, soon. <laughs> Analyzing soon. And then we have the Viper versus ACCM as the second set of the day. Obviously, Viper, one of the guys that we felt like, okay, how high can he place? Can he contest with Leary? Can he contest with Hera there? ACCM, relentless practicer. I've, I think he might average like eight to ten hours of practice, not only playing, but also direct practice over the last three days. Yeah, ACCM is a beast. Uh, he practices a lot. In fact, I was just uh, there behind him a couple minutes ago, watching him uh, analyzing some stuff. And, and honestly, the, I think that even though for, for how good ACCM is doing lately, I think he can do more. Like uh, the level he has is, is crazy. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's one of the, the players that makes it into top four. Oh, I wow. have really high expectations for him. He's a beast. And even though his results are good, I think he can do better. I think he has the potential, and I think he has the level to do better already, like today. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Viper struggles against ACCM or even loses to ACCM. <laughs> Just, uh, I meant it. <laughs> Viper just looking at some information I prepared yesterday for the casters. We are hidden behind there. Yeah, and Viper just read that one, and that was his confused look. Um, yeah, and then we have obviously your third set that we already talked about, and then Tado against Terra, the two unbeaten players of NAC, obviously guaranteed to be in the playoffs, I think already guaranteed to have at least one day off, and hoping to get that first spot and therefore two days off and a direct spot for the semifinals. Yeah, I mean, I think they've both shown to, to have the highest level so far in this tournament. Harris looking clean as always. Tato just honestly stepping it up every single tournament. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's uh, like, for, for how good he has been in the last couple of years, I think lately even every tournament is just a little bit better, a little bit better. So this is going to be a great clash. I think Hera kind of matches up well against him, but at the same time, uh, Tato is not to be underestimated. I think that's, uh, to me, when it comes to the, the highest level that can be brought, that's the match for today, the match to look at. Uh, Tato and Sarah is just, honestly, uh, a banger of a set. Yeah, and our main event of the evening, followed up by Mr. Yo versus Liri. Mr. Yo, emotionally for me, kind of underperforming so far as well, right? Rocky first set, then we had the ACCM set that felt like it could have gone both ways. But the same for Leary, right? We, we feel like, and he yesterday said, that he feels like he's not performing as well as he can. How important is this set for... <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? What the hell is it? <laughs> He's an absolute moron when it comes to computers. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm about to leave Neely alone and go help his ass because this guy can't get anything right, man. <laughs> what is happening there? What is, is he trying to plug in his switch? Ah, he played the... No, he didn't play the last set yesterday, I right? Mean, if, if, if this is how the day starts, I don't want to imagine how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. W where does this go? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the mouse tangling? Look at that, the mouse is over his left arm. <laughs> it's still, it's, He's it's about still to strike the bottles. Sure. <laughs> no, the funny part is that's a wireless mouse. Uh, that <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, no, no. That, that's a wireless mouse that Hera gave to, to, to Leary. This was back in NEC4. We come here and we tell Liri, Liri, why are you using your wireless mouse with a wire? And he and he's like, 
it's a wireless mouse. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he like lost the, the wireless receptor and he's been using oh. that mouse with a wire the whole time. And the wire on wireless mice are terrible because they, they're like heavy and stuff and they pull. So he, he, he's just a li little bit dumb. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy how that it's crazy how that guy uh, plays it so high, but he, he must have some. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yo, you're talking trash, being three zero. I'm down. about to have the same score as you tonight. Like, what do you mean, man? <laughs> so do you. <laughs> Who did he win against? Doubt. Who did who did Leary win against? It's like so many matches that we've already seen. It all becomes a bit of a match. <laughs> Tiramis, obviously the great guy, providing us with all those pictures. If you use the hashtag NAC5, your tweets can be shown as well. We have seen lots of prediction tweets. We have seen lots of meme tweets as well. That's a crazy contribution from you guys. Talking about contributions, all the donations that are flying in are going directly into the prize pool. I'm break even. I won't lose money with this tournament anymore. Oh, that was a bit high for a German there. And so, therefore, contribution heavily appreciated, as you can see. Oh, that's my pocket. Let's go. Yeah, look at that. It's really close. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nine's ten plays is really close to your pocket already. <laughs> Give me here. <laughs> yeah. Give me those eight dollars. Yeah, it's 108 already added into your pocket due to the donations during yesterday's stream. Oh, I'm feasting here. Let's go. Wait, so no, no, no. I'm assuming I, I'm 9th or 10th. That's, that's not happening, chat. I'm winning today. You're winning today, but yes. you also need to win tomorrow, most likely. One step at a time. Okay, one step, one at, step a at a time. <laughs> one step at a time. <laughs> what, what do you think is the best set of the day? Uh, um... Well, uh, when it comes to level, definitely Tato and, mm -hmm. and Era. What's uh, the moment that people must not miss? Mm. I mean, the thing is, Mr. Yo and Leary is also high stakes, right? Because whoever loses might just uh, also be near elimination. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's two big names. Yep. Uh, Doubt uh, and, and me, it's, it's do or die for both of us. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the, maybe the, the first two sets... Jordan freaking Andy and Viper and Viper CCM have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to winning or losing. But then uh, me and Doubt, that's do or die. Tato Hera, that's just gonna show like I think that's gonna be give a big confidence boost to whoever wins. It's like I'm the man of the event kind of thing, right? <laughs> While Mr. Yo and Leary is uh, like whoever loses is in a terrible spot, mm -hmm. right? So personally, I think when it comes to Watching the highest level, Tato Hera, I think biggest stakes, me and doubts. Okay, then you will have to tune in for this one. Jordan versus freaking Andy about to start. Take it away, Dash and Dave. Thank you very much, Nilly. It's Dash and Dave here for the first series of the day. And uh, Dave, I got to say, I think Hart kind of encapsulated the entire day very well there yeah. in terms of breaking down yeah. the importance of each series. Yeah, I mean, we have doubt in him, and it's like, if you don't get a win there, you're done, mm -hmm. basically. And then you have Leary and, and Yo at the end, and, you know, one in three? That is Ta not... Two I, top four invited players? It, exactly. That is not the situation you want to be in. And then you start thinking about, like, okay, I'm one in three, then I have to definitely win my next game. Who's that going to be against? It's going to be against a really, really tough opponent either way around. So you don't want to put yourself in that position. You definitely want to go two and two at that point. And we're going to kick this one off with another interesting set uh, where Jordan is sitting at two and one. Didn't have the greatest performance against Hera yesterday, but he kind of expected that going in. Um, and then Andy is at two and one. And I was talking to him, uh, you know, earlier in the day, and he said, I expected to come in here and get clapped. Right. Like, I thought it was going to be 0-5, last place, you know, ninth, 10th. And now I'm in a situation where I might qualify and go to the semis. Exactly. I mean, I asked him the question in the interview uh, about, like, you know, how have your expectations of yourself changed mm -hmm. now that you've posted up? And I could start to see the wheels turning, yeah. right? He's starting to think about yeah. what he can accomplish at this event. And taking down a player like Jordan would obviously be a huge step in doing so. The opportunity to move to 3-1 and one for either of these players. We'll take a look at the maps and sieves. We're going to be kicking it off on Copenhagen, Jordan's home maps, Arabia, and Dry Graveyards. For freaking Andy, it will be Shoals and Arena. 
Yeah, Copenhagen is an interesting one, right? Andy really felt he, he after that set yesterday um, against Out, which he won three uh, one, was it? Yes. Yeah, he felt like it should have been three zero, and he was kind of mad at himself that it wasn't three zero. So he thought he sh definitely should have won that Copenhagen game from the position he was in, and I, c I kind of agree with him because he was ahead so early in that. And that's our starting uh, map here. Jordan's also a fantastic late game player and Copenhagen frequently goes late. And then you look at the maps that Andy has picked, Arena, Shoals, no surprise there. No, definitely not. And then for Jordan to reach out for Arabia and Dry Graveyards is, I mean, interesting enough for me just because of how open those maps are. But again, it tells me that he does feel like he's the favored player, mm -hmm. right? Where you can play on kind of more uh, traditional maps. I mean, Dry Graveyards in some ways is just another version of Ooh. Arabia. I just noticed Britain's here. Ah. Uh, is that the first time we've seen them in a draft? Yeah, I think it very well might be. And my... Initial thinking would be either Copenhagen or Arena, right? Just one of those, pro most likely Arena, where you just kind of want to have one centralized push. We know Britons are mm -hmm. best at being able to, uh, you know, control a fight in a singular area. If you spread them out, that's where they're really going to struggle to keep up with your pace. We've seen the Britons in the chat. Uh, I, well, I'm, I'm trusting uh, chat's messages, you know, and that's always a, that's always a, oof. That's a risk. That is a risk. That's a right risk. Right there. But I'm going to take your word for it. Okay, so the second time we've seen Britons, also Turks. Uh, for okay. Jordan. So we have Arena, we have Copenhagen. Interesting. You could make an argument maybe for them on something like Dry Graveyards, but I mean, it's probably going to be Arena, it's probably going to be Copenhagen, or it's just the extra pick. Right, we saw Jordan play the Portuguese yesterday against Hera with a, a very interesting strategy, right? The uh, early couple organ guns, mm -hmm. uh, trying to bait out the redemption, goes for atonement in response to the monks, and established a pretty solid forward position, but Hera, with just pitcher-perfect play, was able to wrestle that game away from him in the end and end up snowballing the series to a 3-0. and I think uh, Jordan, while most people would normally say, oh, what's the recovery from a loss going to be like? Uh, that guy was happy as a clam still after yeah. that series. Like yeah. you say, his expectations, while, of course, wanting to win the series, uh, were that it was going to be the toughest matchup for him. Well, Jordan's always happy. It's just like the level <laughs> That's of also happiness, true. right? Is it at a 100, which is like his resting happiness level? Or is it at like a 150, which is like mildly happy Jordan? Or is it at a 200 right. after he goes up 2-0? And then, uh, you know, doesn't have to worry about losing to Hera because he's still in a good position. Screw the heart rate monitors. We need a happiness meter exactly. throughout, for Jordan, a smile meter throughout the uh, the games for him. Uh, let's take a look at the rest of the sieves just to get a quick look. We got Malians, we got Berbers, Hindustanis, and Aztecs. So still securing a mezzo sieve for himself. Hindustanis, for me, has been one of the most underwhelming sieves of the tournament so far. Waiting for it to break out and prove its value for the number of times that it's been drafted. Well, I mean, it came into last NAC being uh, considered one of the strongest sieves. And then it had a really weak performance. You remember that, right? Like, yeah. they just kept losing and people kept picking them and they just kept losing they over and over and over again. 14% win rate. Yeah, yeah. And then it comes into this one and people are like, ah, they're bad. And then we're surprised to see them in the draft. And the thing is, they don't have that redemption story going for them so far. We saw a spark maybe with the Hidden Sandies from Viper, where he kind of carried on the game much longer than it should have gone against Burgundians on Fortified Clearing. But right. other than that, Hidden Sandies have been a, a little underwhelming. We'll have to see what Jordan can do with them. Um, Andy... You know, at Italians, Bengalis for Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. We're looking at maybe Portuguese, potentially Aztecs. It, I know ACCM really loves that sieve. Right, Lithuanians for dry graveyards, most likely. Mm -hmm. um, Franks possibly there just for an Arabia pick. Saracens, though, has been, in my opinion, like the power pick of the tournament. And Andy has loved that sieve in particular. Yep. Made great work of it against Stout yesterday in one of his wins. I see fingers tapping away, which means we're not far from diving in to game number one. But here's a quick look at what these players have achieved over their history in Age of Empires. Obviously, Jordan, one of the longest standing uh, pros in the scene, known for his smile, uh, is still looking for that top four finish. Mm -hmm at an NAC. And for freaking Andy, as we mentioned before, first time here, sky's the limit. And he's already starting to think he can accomplish a lot more than he originally, uh, you know, assumed he was capable of here in the top 10 players of the world. Yeah, and he's known for his quick balls. We've already seen examples of that. Like, he saves those villagers so often. And then he 
proceeds to be incredibly annoying with them later. His signature unit is a monk, of course, and he's got a great monk sieve here. Welcome in first game of the day, and we've got Jordan versus Andy. We are on Copenhagen here, and once again, Andy has gone for the instant double dock with the Bengalis. And here's, uh, as I look at the minimap there, Jordan as well going for a double dock. Now, slightly later, but I wonder how much Jordan has uh, shifted his approach to this matchup, specifically mm -hmm. because of the game he saw yesterday Burbers against Dow. Too. Berbers. Berbers on Copenhagen. Not a civilization pick we've seen as yet. And we'll have to uh, take a look at what the Berbers can do. And they're up at the same time. So yesterday against Doubt, Andy went for the double dock really early. Doubt kind of killed his fish. Uh, because, you know, Doubt was faster than Feudal Age, and he ended up winning the water anyway, but he lost the early fish investment. Little bit of an adaptation here from Andy where he doesn't add five fishing ships in Dark Age. He just goes for two, and then he clicks up and makes another one. Yeah, so the major difference I see here is an extra fishing ship built on the way to Feudal Age here for freaking Andy, and no one on gold just yet for either player. And now, and ooh, that's a nice mining camp. I like that. That is lovely. That's actually. that's probably the best place you can put that mining camp for now. Were you thinking one over to for the now. right, maybe? No, or? no, 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 no. That's okay. good. You get good saturation on both of them, and and it's unlikely that you're gonna want to get like five or six fills on that stone. Mm -hmm. If you want the stone, you only want fifty, or max one fifty. So you can just put two on there. It's it's perfectly acceptable, and you can toss the TC on that later. So 30 seconds away from the Castle Age for each of these, or not Castle Age, but I'm jumping ahead right Whoa, now. Whoa, I, mean, I know. <laughs> I want the fights to start. We're on Copenhagen. Uh, no, Feudal Age, 20 seconds away for both players. And with three villagers on gold, we expect to see some uh, naval units out. And early, the question is, galleys or fire ships? My expectation would be fire ships for both players. No, it's galleys for, jo galleys for both players. Yep. Galleys for both of them. Relatively fast, feudal. They get to feudal age at exactly the same time, and they're just going to be dancing around on that side. Now, what we'll have to look out for is when do they extend to that southern dock area, right? Because they're going to be fairly busy at the top. I would expect some sort of a stalemate. You can see Jordan's already got his scout down there. He's patrolling around. Andy was housed for a brief moment, but it looks like he got it figured out. And uh, neither player has extended down to the south because they simply just don't have enough wood. I'm getting ahead of myself, but with that patrolling scout, and there was a wolf kind of perfectly positioned that if a villager does make its way out there, it would first get attacked by a wolf and then follow up attacked by Jordan's scout. Yeah. That, that could be a really scary situation for Andy, but that's a, a little bit further ahead of us into the future. For now, we're going to refocus onto the water in the north as Jordan comes forward with two of his galleys. And Andy will stay home to defend for the time being. Here they're about to run into each other. We'll see who comes out on top. Two very different uh, galley bonuses for these sieves. So if you look over at the Berbers, the ships actually move faster. It's 10% faster, which helps with the micro. There's also villagers moving faster, of course. And then they can create the camel archers, which are a beautiful addition, especially when you have that castle available to you right away. However, on the other side, for Andy, we have the Bengalis, and the Bengali ships heal over time. And also a very um, useful, unique tech in the Imperial Age, giving them more population, 10% uh, mm. less pop space used by villagers and monks, which can really help with that boom into the elephant archers. Yeah, so really, freaking Andy's going to favor the extended trades or little pot shots. And then reset, look for that regen. Jordan wants to use that extra movement speed to reposition and make sure that he's winning out in the actual micro battle. Here we have four galleys against four galleys. Fletching in, though, for both players as well. So we're matched in the techs, and we haven't found any kills just yet. But it's Jordan on the offensive and Andy playing defensively. So the only other player to pick Berbers on Copenhagen was during the qualifiers. Wow. And that was uh, ACCM in his match versus Vallis. Did he win that match, though, is the question. I, I don't quite remember it. Anyway, looks like Andy is going to pull the ship back, and he will be healing over time, so he's got to make sure that's it. Yeah, yeah, the, the, you, you need to make sure that you don't group that up with your other ships because it will always go to the back there, um, and you got to keep it away from the ships from Jordan, and Jordan is really utilizing the 5% or 10% faster ship speed that he has. Yeah, great find by Jordan to get the first kill of the game, starting to remove the the land, uh, uh, or I guess the uh, area that uh, Andy has to work with here. But with more reinforcements coming in, Jordan is thinking about turning tail and running back home. He's got that movement speed, so ultimately can outrun his opponent. 
but every second that he's not fighting is seconds that Andy is healing up with those fishing ships and regaining the health. But we can check it there, 556 to 439. Technically, Jordan has the advantage. And Jordan has been spotted on the dock to the south, but he's got two villagers there. Andy will have that information, but unfortunately for him, he has a scout that's much weaker than Jordan's. He can't stop that, even with the Spearman involved, and Jordan is being very active, pulls his scout away. So it doesn't look like Andy will be able to deny that position. Oh my, beautiful by Jordan oh. to take out that scout. He can now go heal up in his own castle with his scout, and he's got the dock up in time. In the face of a spear as well. What a play. What a bore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. There's, there's many other things happening right now. The micro is happening, so the bore, uh, you know, sometimes it's sometimes it's good, sometimes yeah. it's bad. You know, at least we're still bringing in the food. It's 3-2 uh, to two in the KD, and that's largely because of that extra scout kill there for Jordan in the middle of the map. We're still microing. On the water, no fishing ships have gone down. And Jordan did find his way up to a third fishing ship and all of that to match the fishing economy so overall. Much, so much value from the healing. You can see it. We've got it selected right now. It's just ticking up, ticking up, ticking up. And now he's almost 300 HP ahead of his opponent. Although Jordan is doing a fantastic job holding him in this position, protecting his fish by just being forward. And he's forcing Andy to keep production up. Jordan is still only at seven galleys and Jordan's about to click to Castle Age. I say doing it with lower numbers is super impressive. And Andy just doesn't feel like he has permission to commit nice to the snipe. all in. Fantastic snipe to reduce the numbers by one. More reinforcements to join here for Andy. So he's not too threatened in the end. He's now going for a dock in the south and Jordan hasn't quite spotted it yet, but we have a Spearman going forward. We'll see if he makes it all the way to the edge there and actually becomes aware of it. And ACCM won that game with Berbers. He built 15 stables in Imp. <laughs> ACCM was gaming. For real. Nice. For real. So the flood was on. We'll see if Jordan can find himself in a similar position, make use of those bonuses of the cheaper cavalry coming out of the Berber stables. Spot Has, the yeah, hasn't spotted it just yet. Is he going to see it here? And he does. So well done there from uh, Andy or Jordan to spot that dock. Jordan's still trying to hold him here. And Jordan is now making fire galleys. So once he gets that war galley upgrade, maybe he can surprise Andy. He really wants to hold on to these galleys as a support unit. The fire galleys is going in for that one, and he gets it, man. Ah, he's holding the line. He's got, what, six versus ten? And he's just like, you shall not pass. Jordan's feeling himself this Holy. morning, man. Who in their right mind takes a fight like this? Six galleys against ten. 10. You see that 1,100 health to 400, and Jordan is still entertaining the micro battles. To your point, though, also buying himself time, that 30 seconds he needs to get to the castle age, make use of the fire ships, and possibly a war galley upgrade to snowball across the map, remove those fish from Andy in the end. Look at these dodges from Jordan. He's like, listen, kid, I remember the 1v1 Islands galley meta from back in the day, all right? I was I was playing that when you weren't even you weren't even a thought. Oh, you think you know galley micro? I was born in the galley micro. Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, he's kind of being outnumbered now, and he's going to have to fall back to his, uh, his fire galleys, but the war galley research is 30 seconds away, and those fire galleys will get a lot stronger against the galleys from Andy, and Andy will need to start retreating soon. Yeah, 20 seconds to go. That's all Jordan needs in terms of time. Andy hitting the Castle Age himself is going to start the retreat because his war galley upgrade needs a bit more time to become useful. On the southern side, too, not too much action just yet in that pond, but here we go. Jordan now with the initiative. Yeah, and the speed really, really paying off for Jordan. So he's going to be able to catch up to this Navy because he's simply faster with the Berbers. So here come the war galleys. Here come the fires. War galley research is at six seconds away for Andy. No demos in the queue. He's making fires of his own, and he's got war galley research completed, but the fires are right there for Jordan. So maybe there's a chance for Jordan to clear up these fishing ships and potentially clear up the Navy. It looks like Andy's going to be able to defend, though. Yeah, Andy looking for some fire ship production as well to give himself a front line to work with, but all the fishing ships do go down. So at the very least, Jordan has done economic damage, and now he's going to get himself out. On the bottom side, we have two fire galley or two fire galleys, fire ships rather against fire ships. But with the demo, Andy's going to have the initiative there and look to eliminate the fish from Jordan. Also, the first to get outside his walls and bring up a second TC. Yeah, Jordan with a few idle villagers in his own base, but he's going to get that sorted out. He needs that second town center somewhere. Andy already has the villager lead because of Bengalis. He's getting the extra villagers on age up. 
So uh, Andy will need to start, or sorry, Jordan will need to start catching up to Andy um, as Andy pushes forward with the Navy on the top. Yeah, a lot of market use there by Jordan to try and balance the eco. So while he was focusing a lot on the micro and getting something done in the northern pond, he did let some things slip from the economic side. His fishing ships are going down in the south. While it looks like he might be trying to win the top battle here with these fire ships against the galleys. Galley numbers dwindling, though, here for Jordan. This is a close fight, to say the least. A great split on the fire ships to draw some of that fire away. Does eliminate the fire there from freaking Andy, and now Andy's on the run. Jordan's naval control this game has been uh, just impeccable. It's been phenomenal up there. He's getting value with low numbers of units, and Andy has been unable to take out his fishing economy. Although it is only two ships, it's still something, right? As Jordan now goes out to stone, and he's going to start thinking about a uh, third town center as he already has the second one complete. Yeah, of course, he did use that market earlier to balance his eco. Didn't pick up any stone when he was on the way to the castle age. And so sitting on that 50 needs 50 more to get the third TC down. Looks like freaking Andy is well on his way to booming and Bengalis like will sneaky. benefit. Look at look at how sneaky he's being with the fire. Oh. He just leaves. He backs up with everything else. He leaves. He's like, are you going to add fish? Because I will roast those. Very, very, very intelligent move there from Jordan, at the very least, just to get information. Mm -hmm. This does mean, though, that he's continued to be outnumbered back at home. And now these two fishing ships might not be long for this world, trying to get back to drop off that 15 food before they get eliminated. He made the run. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> he got Her it. Hero fisherman. And then he, he goes back it. out for more, sir. Yeah, well, uh, he's not surviving for very much longer. So he sinks, and Jordan discovers that Andy doesn't have any fish. He's going to hide that fire in the corner and maybe come back later. I think attacking the dock with that would be a bad idea. Andy has won the water in the south, though, and Andy still has an economic lead. He's got 55 villagers versus the 50 from Jordan. Jordan still has not started to add in any camel archers, and he hasn't started to add in any Ratha. Also hasn't gotten that third TC up, right? He did just hit the stone count that he needs, but doesn't quite have the wood to drop it, transitioning onto farms because he's lost all food economy on water. Andy with control of both sides of the map when it comes to Navy. Jordan, though, with the garrison flags there, is going to make Andy think about what his numbers look like and the possibility of surging back. Yeah, and Jordan on garrisons, he on garrisons. Only still one got, of the docks. He's still got the fire ship uh, behind this, too. The demo's come out now. He's looking for a good demo hit on the fires. Andy doing a wonderful job oh. splitting away, but the war galleys are all going to go down. And uh, Jordan still forcing some investment from Andy at the top. At, at what point do you just stop investing here? Because you, neither of you has fish. It feels like both of you are going to start, like, keep committing. It feels like it's just not worth it. I think now is the time, and you kind of see it here with the third TC coming up here from Jordan outside the walls. We're going to have a pretty solid transition onto the land ego. If anything, the water you want to focus is the south, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the uh, presence relics. of those three yeah. relics and your opponents being Bengalis, very strong monks. You'd like to prevent them from getting their hands on it. And Jordan, with a monk already on the field, is thinking about it. We'll That's also get vision TC. of these villagers coming out for the central TC. That is an aggressive TC. Like, you really want to control that gold at some point, but usually you try and do that with a castle, right? You're not trying to do that with just villagers roaming out. <laughs> Jordan is now trying to block the villagers. He can actually heal that scout. He can do, like, a step-back maneuver where he blocks with the scout, heals with the monk. This is impressive. I mean, he steals away two villagers. He's mm -hmm. pushing back the villagers of Andy as well. They now delete the TC spot and go for a stable instead. Ratha, though, will be able to defend, at least for now. Camel Archer's on the field, too. First rally picked up here for Jordan, or rather second, one already at home, and second on the way. The monks have no juice, though. The monks have no juice. So the monks will need to fall back. He's going to try and heal this up and attack that Ratha with the Camel Archers. We got a knight coming in. The monk oh, my survives! Goodness! What a play! Yeah, that's the power of friendship right there. The micro has been on point for Jordan in the military battles. Also forces I love the how delete out of the he next. Just, he deletes it without it even being targeted by the monk. He just knows. Yeah, he's like, he just I knows. Can't, I can't escape. Exactly. All right, so the camel archer numbers continue to build. Knights and camels as well. A good mix of hybrid uh, type units here for Jordan to control the center of the map that Andy clearly wanted. Okay, Jordan had 70 villagers, 85 for Andy. So Andy, once again, is economically ahead. 
he was in a similar position against Doubt, although he had a lot more fishing eco uh, versus Doubt. I think it was like 12 fishing ships mm -hmm. or something. However, Doubt managed to control the center of the map and push back, and that's kind of what Jordan is doing right now. And the Camel Archers are a very, very tough unit uh, to stop once they're masked up. They're one of the most powerful compositions in the game if you get full, like, elite Camel Archers. Uh, with cavalry being spammed in front. Yeah, a terrifying unit in mass, and Jordan's even reaching for a fourth TC. So maybe understanding that he was late to that third and has some room to make up in the economic realm. Does have handcart in, though, to no wheelbarrow on yep. the other side. And so Burper that is Vils. another thing to take note of. He yep. is zooming. Look at this. Look at her. She's lightning Sheesh. fast. Sheesh. <laughs> Usain Bolt, move over. I know, man. She's quick. She's quick. Now there's a castle there, so that will be spotted by Jordan. Andy is attempting to build that. If we look at Jordan's point of view, he sees the Wrath, he sees the Castle Foundation. I don't know if that's going up. I'm not sure either. Let's see if he can get the snipes onto the monks, because the conversions could be huge. One, there are three monks two. in total, and one conversion comes through. Two of the monks are sniped, still trying to avoid the final conversion. And he's got a knight and the camel. Onto the villagers. It's the knight and the camel that are really going to do work, but the monk is now trying to convert the camel. That's fantastic. This monk will go down. Another one arrives to the scene, and if it's quick on the conversion time, could pick up this knight. The delete has forced out of it. So, Andy, great recovery from what could have been disastrous. I mean, it's still a good situation for Jordan, right? He's bought himself a ton of time. He's denied that castle. He sniped a few monks. He's got light cap coming. That tech was coming in just a couple minutes ago. Jordan knew that Andy would prioritize monk numbers, and he's going to be able to snipe even the Bengali monks with those light caps. So Jordan pulling himself back closer to an equal footing. Andy's still ahead. Yeah, here we have just another engagement. Camel Archer is going to keep their distance here against the scouts, but this castle has been denied, at least for the time being, as partially built. Andy, of course, I... He didn't even have Bodkin. That's why he wasn't killing Ooh. the monks. It's fine. Yeah, overall, still okay. Like you said, I think an advantageous or a solid win there for Jordan just to delay this castle position and at least to have awareness of what areas of the map Andy wants to control. Andy did sneak a villager forward to get the stone walls down mm -hmm. along the southern side, and so that will centralize any pushes directly through the middle. Not going to get caught off guard too much, but the production here for Jordan has been incredible for military units. The gates again. He started. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we had six gates set up from Andy. It didn't really help him all that much. He told me after his plan was just to boom into, into elephant archers, and he, and he was really disappointed in himself that he couldn't get the mass up. He's coming out now with the villagers. He snipes one monk. He's got a light cap behind. Maybe one camel archer converted at the end of the day. Doesn't oh. get it. And the villagers are trying to build the castle again. I know you had a villager lead. I don't know if it was big enough that you can just keep tossing away. Ooh, spearmen, though. They close the distance on the camel archers. They're going to get some good pokes. But overall, once again, this seems good for Jordan just to delay the castle a bit, find some villager kills. The question is, does this castle go up in the end? I'm not sure how He's close not it is. Anything. He's sending more villagers forward, though, to guarantee that the castle will go up. But at the cost of many villager lives, 96%, soon to be 100. Jordan is going to sit at the base of this castle at least for a moment. I think you're stuck there. Most Until likely. he brings more monks, I think you're just stuck there. <laughs> you are you are stuck underneath that castle. The villagers can't really escape, and Jordan, sensing that more monks are on the way, is now running. Take some hits. Dave, I'm getting some serious deja vu from yesterday's game. Mm -hmm. The castle positions are almost identical. Almost identical. Andy was yeah. forced onto like a further back hill last time, while yeah. Doubt threw two castles straight into the middle of the map. We've got the gates just like we did before. Andy's first to Imperial Age. Jordan, two minutes away. So the question is, can Andy get enough done with his Imperial Age timing to get the initiative back while Jordan has more of the map control? Any other Civ, and those monks don't get any conversions. Mm. But with Bengalis, they have that extra Pierce armor, and the Camel Archers aren't quite doing enough damage with the first volley, so he has to three volley them to kill them. So Andy, you know, Bengali's really helping him out there. He's going for another castle slightly more forward, and this is so similar to the game yesterday. He's ahead economically pretty significantly, but he doesn't have that middle map position. And a little bit earlier production of the military from Jordan is really, really stalling Andy out. And you can tell he's like, 
where am I supposed to build? There's right. no room. There's too many wood lines here. He, he can't go forward because Jordan is there. Jordan got into the back of the base, delayed that first castle. Really difficult position. Yeah, reaching out once again to try and get a forward castle position, but it's only two villagers building it at the moment. He doesn't even have enough room for all of yeah. those villagers to get to the base of the castle. Two trebs out, but oh, not yet open. firing. The gate is open, but not taken advantage of. Plenty of camel archers forward. Yikes. These have Bodkin and Ballistics. They'll start to eliminate eight villagers left and right they're going to be feasting and andy realizes and decides to back away for the time being yeah and it's it's such a bad position that andy feels the need to unpack his trebs not within range of that castle yeah. and he's going to be targeting camel archers he was sitting back there with monks hoping like maybe i can out heal the damage that you're doing to my villagers but he's lost a lot of villagers along the way still has an eco lead currently but he needs uh, to take this position in the middle because there's extra golds there. There's a lot of uh, valuable resources, especially that wood in the middle for the late game. You have to take control of that area. Jordan's not letting him do it. Yeah, Bracer and Chemistry immediately clicked for Jordan upon reaching the Imperial Age. He's got a Treb on the field already and two castle production to match the two castle production here of Andy. So just like yesterday, it's a battle of Imperial Age armies. Who's gonna have the better composition who's going to have the better awareness of when they have a winning position in the fights. Also, three relics for Jordan, zero relics for Andy. He's been so distracted. He's had control of that water at the bottom for a very, very long time. Hasn't been able to transport out there and grab that. There's even a relic in the back of the base. He just he hasn't had time. He's had monks right beside it, just no time because he's constantly dealing with the pressure from Jordan. Age of Gates coming in here. One, two, three, four gates all over the place. Andy trying to slowly push this back, but Bombard Cannon is a huge advantage for Jordan and should be able to deal with the traps. Nice game. Light Cavs swooping in, same with the Camel Archers, looking for the picks on the Monks first, then to target the Trebuchets. Looks like one will go down at the very least. Both players are uh, repairing away on their castles, but Andy's first will fall just like that and loses two Trebs to boot. It's not looking good. What a phenomenal play from Jordan, really. The Camel Archer production, the timing on it was on point. And then he pressured forward, managed to find that castle, and he was active with them. He wasn't just sitting in the middle trying to pick off a monk here or there. He was actively looking for damage. And Andy has once again found himself in a position where he's got a decent eco. He's going into onager, siege engineers now. Wow. But he, the emphasis is on him to push Jordan back. Yeah, it's a costly transition. So if it doesn't work, it could spell the end of the game. But if he's able to surprise Jordan and find some good hits onto those camel archers with onagers, it could absolutely turn the tides of the battle. Important to note that I see Bombard Cannons on the field here for Jordan, but none yet for his opponent. And so that means keeping your siege safe is gonna be that much more difficult here for Andy. Well, he can't even make bomber cannons, right? Bengalis don't get oh, them. Oh, good point. You were thinking, you were thinking yeah, I know. I made that mistake earlier when they were when the Civ was released. I had the impression that they could make them because they're a good monk Civ, but you're just hoping to convert the bomber cannons from your opponent, basically, yeah, with Bengalis. Very tough position to be in, and Jordan's already aware of the Onager tech in as he chased that one in with the, with the light cap. Didn't find the kill, but now he won't be surprised as much. He can split his camel archers up to not take too much damage. Camel archers are so devastating, though. So devastating. And Hussar is on the way, too. Oh, my goodness. Jordan seems locked in this morning. We didn't give him a set at his bedtime. Yeah. And now we have a different type of energy. This is like for midday for him. <laughs> or no, this is late afternoon That's for Jordan. Good point. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's ready for dinner. I was at breakfast this morning, and Mem was telling me, like, Jordan was here two hours ago, you know? <laughs> That's too good. Snipes the Onager. So again, so many resources invested in that tech and the production of the Onagers. And Jordan continues to roll through. There are Halberdiers on the field. If left unchecked, then both of the cavalry units being produced here for Jordan in the Archers and the Hussar will melt. But as long as he plays the mobility, he can run circles around them. Coming forward now for a castle position on all of that. He's splitting Andy in half, pushing straight up the middle of the map. This is such, I mean, we've said it before, but this is just a repeat of yesterday. There's no elephant archers for Andy's, but he's trying to make an expensive unit comp. He can't keep the numbers up. 
and it's just unique unit. It's elite Camel Archer coming in from Jordan and forward castles. Trebs, Bomber Cannons. It's such a repeat of the Doubt versus Andy game yesterday. It feels like Andy needs to, you know, take some notes and maybe adjust his strategy on Copenhagen a little bit because Jordan and Doubt are punishing him big time. Yeah, really tough because both times he's had the eco lead and you see more Siege Workshops going up behind the castle. He wants to get the Onager numbers up, but they fall as quickly as they're produced and he doesn't have enough Halberdiers in front to prevent the, uh, the Hussar from coming in and sniping. It's One done, more man. castle position here on the right-hand side, but you have to assume that Andy is going to throw in the towel any time now as he's feeling the same feelings that he felt yesterday against Doubt. I, I was in a position to win this maybe. There were things I could have done, and yet it all the slipped away. Camel Archer's coming in. They will kill that tower fairly quickly. Andy is like, oh. no, 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 no. He quick blows it out. Yeah. He's got another gate there. He's thinking, he's putting the pieces together. He's like, how many buildings do I need to stop this? Jordan is still running through. Jordan, he's going for the tower. As soon as you see that tower, you have to, you have to prioritize that. Well, you have to prioritize that. He's just going to call the ah. TT. You won't get my Let king. Let him have it. <laughs> you dude. won't Come get on. my king. Whoa. Let him take it. That's a brutal loss there for Andy to kind of run it back, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing because it, it does speak to the fact that he had confidence in his strategy yeah. yesterday. He does believe that he was in a winning position. You run it back, you lose for a second time. Definitely not the way you want to kick off this set against Jordan. And for Jordan in a lot of ways felt picture perfect. I mean, again, how much he was able to get done on water early yeah. with fewer galley numbers, yeah. the micro was incredible. I think Andy needs to, if he's going to keep going Bengalis, he needs to add Ratha earlier mm -hmm. and in higher numbers because then he can at least, like, you know, force the Camel Archers back. He gets that castle up uh, in safety or maybe he gets the walls up a little bit quicker. And then he's got a monk army with Ratha in front where he can push. Just military investment earlier and don't let your opponent, even though you have a better eco, take control of that middle area. Right, and the way we saw that bear out, right, was as he goes for that central TC, Jordan finds him, and yeah. because Andy doesn't have the military to support, loses some villagers, yeah. loses some time, loses attention in all of that, and ends up getting kind of sequestered into the corner, just like he did against Doubt. So a very solid 1-0 start here for Jordan, but nothing is decided just yet. Andy will have the choice between the four remaining maps, Shoals, Arena, Dry Graveyards, and Arabia to boot. He did lose a map with his first pick, Siv, though, and again, that's going to be kind of a, a thought that's working well, away at the back of your brain. He was frustrated yesterday yeah. that he lost Copenhagen. So is this like a compounding issue where he's like, it's just building on the frustration he felt yesterday, even though he won the set, you know, he felt like he should have won. And then he goes into it again and the, almost the exact same game yeah. in terms of the way it played out. Well, Oh, I heard sounds, so I got excited that perhaps right away we're into game number two. I, I, believe, I believe we are. I think we okay. should be loading in soon. So this is going to be Arena, and we are going to see Andy playing as Italians, Jordan playing as Turks, and they're super close, man. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They are so close. They're in the same postal code or zip yeah, code or whatever. Spitting distance here. Yep. And uh, you had mentioned the Turks in the draft, and mm -hmm. uh, this is obviously a classic map to find them on. Uh, a lot of benefits for the Turks in terms of a sieve for Arena when monks are a favorite to play in a in a map like this. Light Cav and Hussar upgrades being free is phenomenal. Also having that plus one pierce armor, mm -hmm. just in case you go into range units, is nice. Janissaries, Castle Drops, a very potent unit, and can pack a very powerful punch in the end. Yeah, and then on the other side, we have Italians, which is, you know, Italians is one of the uh, the best sieves across the board for almost every map. They can do every map quite well, some of them better. Um, Arena, we see them somewhat commonly, and you can go up to the next stage cheaper, which is phenomenal. You've got Condottiero. If you've calling out the gunpowder from Turks, mm -hmm. that is a fantastic unit with a bonus against gunpowder, and you don't need to research anything for them. You can just make them right away in Imperial Age. Um, so it's... It's a, it's a beautiful sieve. Is it powerful enough to deal with the Turks? That's the question. Yeah, just a well-rounded sieve too, right? Because university technology is being cheaper. That's lovely. Genoese crossbowmen, of all the archers to have to play into mm -hmm. scouts that have plus one yeah. pierce, that's the one you want to play out of your castle. And very likely we'll see castles on a map like Arena. So an interesting sieve matchup to say the least. 
But as it is, Arena, it will be some time until we see the two players interact. Got to get through uh, the Dark Age into Feudal, probably see some scouts produced. But then it's about map control, relic control, and which player is going to choose to be the aggressor. My inclination would be Turks looking for possibly a castle I mean, drop it, and it, massing the Janissaries. I mean, it, with it this close, castle drop is a potential, right? But with mm -hmm. Turks, you can always play the meta, which is light cav, monk, war, and then you try and go late game. It, it, the bases are so close, though, and that definitely changes the perspective of the players. It's interesting how there's two relics over to the, that left side. And if right. we had a light cav war between these two guys, it would not be unlikely for that those to be the last two relics to be collected. Right. Because they're, like, so busy bringing it back and forth, right? And then they can sneak the other ones over to the side. Relics are generally in favor of Andy, too. Or, no, sorry, in, in favor of Jordan, um, pretty far away from Andy's base is not going to like that one. Yeah, now Jordan first to become aware of their proximity, right? Because he moves out to scout first while Andy pushes in an extra yeah, it's tier. Okay. Um, yeah, Stone going to be uh, moved on to here for Jordan. Andy moving out to scout now as well. So he'll run into the walls of Jordan here shortly. And I'd be very, uh, this is a moment I'd want to be in either of their brains. The moment they realize they're that close. Yeah. To know if they're flipping their strategy, whatever yeah. they came into the game as, saying, ooh, now I'm rethinking, given how close we are. It's funny, too, because you, you talk to Andy about Arena, and he, he's an excellent Arena player. He's, um, you know, in the Arena discords. He's talking to the clowns about their strategies. He's making clown strategies himself. And when he watches someone like Hera or Viper or Tato play Arena, he's like, they're doing it wrong, but they're making up for their wrong decisions because they're so good. Wow. And, and, and like, he's watching these strategies. He's like, you're, you're going all in, but you're not going all in. He's like, this is this is wrong. Like, you're only winning because you're much better than your Still opponent. Better. You're out macroing this stuff, right? So his perspective on arena is, is extremely interesting. And I think Jordan is an excellent arena player himself, but I don't know if his strategies are as... Uh, thoroughly thought out as Andy's are. Yeah, I mean, I think he did have a great con concept of strategy yesterday against Hera, but we saw him struggle in the mid game, right? Once he wrestled that initiative away and found yeah. himself in a forward position, it did seem like he was unsure about how to close it out. R rather, do I stay in Castle Age, go into uh, Scout's Light Cav to deal with the increased monk production? Mm -hmm. He tried to match the imp for the imp and ended up getting pushed back in the end. So maybe some indecision biting him. Uh, when it came down to it. Feudal Age just about to come in here for Freak and Andy. Jordan going up one villager later, so he'll be a little bit behind. Both players just making sure they can find each of the relics. But look at this. Andy hasn't found a single relic. <laughs> he hasn't found a single relic. <laughs> He's really threading the needle here. <laughs> what on earth? What are the odds of that? I mean, he'll get one here soon, right? <laughs> there it is. Are they? There we go. The first relic he's he like, finds is the furthest one from his base. <laughs> Admin? I think we have a bugged map. <laughs> neither player like, has what found... What on earth? Neither player has found those two to the left either. And They're honestly, like, surely there's nothing there. Honestly, the last place you go at this point. Yeah, right? it might be the last relic <laughs> found. <laughs> that is incredible. What are, hey, whoa, birds. What's going on in the center of the map oh. there? Hang on a second. Hey Okay, we had a little uh, confluence of birds. They're all they're all so coming back to the same. It's mating season. Part. Okay. It's a, it's the. You're not going to sneak that one by me. It's the conference of birds. What do you think they're discussing? Bird things. <laughs> bird, bird, <laughs> bird things. Naturally, dash. <laughs> you dummy. Um, Either way, let's see here. Castle Age quickly coming in for both players. No surprise there. The build orders are tight. Eco upgrades to follow. And so now we look to see which will be the buildings to come down. Is it going to be single monastery, double he still monastery? Hasn't seen he still hasn't, hasn't seen the relic. found him There yet. we go. Okay. There we go. And Jordan's the first one to spot him. He's like, oh, there's a relic there. Huh? huh? There's yeah. a relic there too? Interesting. Yo, you could just wall those into your own base at this point. Yeah, I like. mean, there is a potential <laughs> for that. There's also like stone and gold. There. That is an incredibly important area of the map over uh, there. Absolutely. I mean, that's where I'd be eyeing for any kind of a castle position. You Jordan know, also I opens barracks here. So he he is going to go. How many does Jordan have on stone right now? He's got five. He's going to have enough stone for that castle. Mm -hmm. And he's making the barracks too. So... Very interesting. A couple Turk spearmen, maybe a stable behind yeah, stable that, probably. just to have some military on the field mm -hmm. to make sure that he can get that castle down against the walls here of his opponent. On the other side, freaking Andy's still searching for those relics. He's going to find the two as well. And once again, 
I got to wonder what he's thinking as soon as he sees the proximity of these relics. Oh, my goodness. We need to contest, contest, contest. Yeah, we need to get on this one for sure. All right, Castle Age is in for Andy. He does have the initiative. He's going to lunge for a TC first, of all things. Wants to expand the eco. Waiting to see if any of those production buildings will be dropped. And the villagers are coming forward for Jordan. And I, I think there is an argument to be made to... What? No, 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 no. Is that town center? You cannot. Andy, I think, might have misread Jordan's strategy. I don't think you can ever build a TC there. And Jordan's, Jordan. like, Jordan's like, oh! Oh, you want to make it there? Wow. Oh, I see. And Andy now has to delete that town center, and both of those relics will be firmly under Jordan's control. The stone, the gold, and that side of the map. Beautiful. And Jordan, with the instant light cap upgrade, is going to be taking out the scout from Andy. I think Andy absolutely misread what Jordan would be doing here. Yeah, monastery going up at home for Jordan. Is there any monastery on the way here for freaking Andy? Because it's starting to look like maybe... Okay, there it is, but it's much later. We could be in a situation where we're five relics to zero. Yeah. Yeah, I think Andy thought Jordan was going to play Light Cav Monk meta and then like go into additional TCs. I don't think he expected the castle drop. Yeah, those two relics are secured. I would leave them there. Now go work on picking up the other three because you can always come and get those for Jordan. We already have a Monk on the way. Of course, he gets that free Light Cav upgrade here from Turks, mm -hmm. so doesn't have to invest the food or the gold into that. And just as I expected, he's moving out to the right-hand side to get the contested relics first. Okay, so Jordan will have access to Janissaries. Does he make some is another question. The castle might just be for positioning, and his Janissaries are now on the way. Monks are coming out. Lightcav is still alive. Andy just expanding his eco. He's still 2TC. How is he adapting to this castle forward is the question. And right now, I mean, he just doesn't have the resources to really just do anything. Monk. I mean, he's still committed to the three TCs after seeing the castle drop come in. And I think that TC being placed is enough permission for Jordan to produce those Janissaries, right? He knows that his opponent wants to build up the economy. And so he's going to put a little pressure on him. And he does have a cheaper Imperial Age, but the food eco is not there. The, he, he doesn't have enough stone for a castle. The gold eco is not there. So he's a very long way away from having any solutions to that forward position. The Janissaries are coming in. Andy has walled a little bit, but these things can still snipe some vills, harass the farms, cut off that food eco a little bit, and Andy will only have some monks in defense. So this is going to be a really tough situation. And like you mentioned, I mean, just five relics for free yeah. from Jordan. Easily two already at home. So he did grab one of the uncontested relics and then one of the contested ones on the right-hand side or rather in the center of the map. There is still a scout out there for Andy that could find a lucky snipe or two and at least slow uh, the return of be those a follow -up relics. Castle. I mean, look at this from Jordan. He's already surrounding him. Yeah, okay. You you've got a ten villager lead, but at least ten of your vills aren't working, or at well, least not efficiently at this point. This position for the Janissary is not going to hold for very long. I mean, Sanctity is coming in for Andy, but oh. this is what we were looking forward to. Another castle from Jordan. He realizes the monks are there. He needs to back up. So excellent timing from Andy with these monks. He didn't reveal them until he had two. And Andy is going to attempt to wall in these villagers once again. He did it against Hart on Canberra. I don't think he's going to get it done here against Jordan on Arena. But still, pushing the Janissaries back and pushing that foundation back also needs loom. Like Cav swooping in, oh, looking for the snipe on the monks. The we also have a spear there trying to defend. He gets one monk, doesn't find the second just yet. And uh, now the castle is going to try and go down here for Jordan. We're bringing villagers forward to fight here for Andy. He, un he knows how dire a situation this is if the castle does go up in the end. Janissary production is still is still keeping, or rather, four Janissaries inside the walls looking to do damage. We have another tower coming up in defense. It's panic time here for freaking Andy. Yeah, he's managed to wall in these villagers, though, and he's walled out the reinforcements. He just needs monks. Unfortunately, he has zero monks on the field. He doesn't really have any converted Janissaries of his own. He's just fighting this with double tower, one of those towers barely even ranging the villagers building this castle and trying to make another one and trying to push out with villagers too. He's coming back with a scout, but I don't think he has enough to deny this castle. It's at 83%. Jordan's still working away. Villagers are low HP, but Andy will not be able to stop the castle going up 
from Jordan, and this is a terrible position for Andy. He's going to have to call it. Yeah, Jordan loses some villagers in the end, but Andy will toss the game. He knows that he's too far gone to return in this one with the double castle drop. Jordan, great awareness of what the map position allowed him mm -hmm. to do. Reacted phenomenally to seeing that TC, that greedy TC yeah. being dropped on the left-hand side. That's, that's a misread from Andy. 100% that's a misread. I don't think he expected Janissaries. I think Jordan's normal style is to just go light cav and then boom behind and Andy kind of put him in that, like he stereotyped Jordan as a boomy type of player and mm -hmm. Jordan was just like, no, you're so close, and I'm playing Turks. Like, I'm going to make a castle, and why not make it on your face in that area? But that TC from Andy tells us everything we need to know about what he expected Jordan to do. You never go for a TC there if you're thinking your opponent is making Janissaries or if you're thinking they're dropping a castle. Right. Like, maybe at most he expects Jordan to do what he did yesterday, which is mm -hmm. castle at home, right, just for safety. And uh, even still... He showed his hand way too early with that extra TC. Maybe if that third TC goes up at home originally, Jordan is, th you know, second-guessing a bit more, being so all-in in his pressure. Yeah. Either way, he has the right call. He had great scouting on the relics. Uh, and kind of, once again, perfect play here from Jordan in the first set of the day. Yeah, and he's going to be kicking himself for that one, too. He's going to be pissed about that. I dude. believe it. I believe <laughs> it. Like, how can I lose Arena like that? And once again, you've committed your top two sieves, right? Which just tells me, once you know, just you have such confidence in those sieves on those maps, and that's why you would have picked them early to lose both of those games, one of which is on your home map as well, puts you in awful positioning. Now, he does have Shoals up next, and we saw a phenomenal performance on Shoals mm -hmm. out of him yesterday. Mm -hmm. So this could, this could be the bounce back. Yeah, exactly, and, with Saracens. That was really, really strong against Gajaras. You wonder what sort of civilization Jordan would be going for. I'm thinking Portuguese on Shoals could be a potential. I mean, there's Malians as well there. I don't think Hindustanis or Aztecs is really the What? Well, yeah, really. So if we ignore the map, Civ versus Civ, of those four, what's just the best singular matchup against Saracens? Uh, I think Portuguese is a decent matchup against okay. Saracens, yeah. Because to me, Jordan, I think, is really keying into what he saw in yesterday's mm -hmm. series so far, right? Taking direct learnings uh, from what Doubt was able to expose in Andy's play and strategies yesterday and seems to be taking those learnings and even, you know, plus oneing onto them today mm -hmm. to make them stronger. So if you expect that Saracen's play again here on Shoals, ideally he has picked one of the sieves that he believes is the true counter to that on that map. Oh boy, Andy needs to get something rolling. He's looked so good in this tournament, but I like, know. but like compared to Jordan, Jordan had a, a slip up yesterday against Hera. Mm -hmm. it, it it was mostly on Hera's home maps. If you remember, Jordan didn't play a single one of his home maps yesterday, and he came out with a smile. And I'm like, do you feel bad about that three? He's like, no, I didn't. I didn't play my home maps. Right. Like I played his, and obviously he's going to be better. There, so I don't I don't feel terrible about it, but the performances and the sets he had previous to that one were insane. I was gonna say, for coming through the first two days of the tournament, I mean Jordan and Hera for me playing at a, the same level, right? Mm -hmm. I, like I was already eyeing them as a possible finals pairing. Uh, well, we'll see what level Hera is at when he matches up against Tatu, who looks ooh. incredible too. That's later in the day. I think that's what set four. I think set four is exactly four. right. Okay. So you know, stay tuned for that one, everyone. But it looks like the players have dove into series point here for Jordan, sitting on a 2-0, looking to close it out in 3-0 fashion. Would like to get this one done nice and early, and get himself a great map score overall in this series. I can't remember the last time Jordan looked this comp. This is the best I've ever seen. We're going to Dry Graveyard. Honestly, we're going to Dry Graveyard. So Andy uh, goes for one of Jordan's picks. And Jordan has actually gone for Portuguese here. Mm. Andy has gone for Lithuanian. So Lithuanian's the more meta pick. Portuguese, certainly not terrible. And you can see the advantages of the Portuguese. It says Navy and gunpowder. I don't know if we're going to see a lot of Navy or gunpowder. Uh, you know what? You know, don't. Don't kill my dreams here, Dave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dry graveyard. Where are the sand ships? It is a dry <laughs> graveyard here. Now, the things that are benefiting Jordan early, all units costing minus 20% gold is beautiful, right? You can mass yeah. more archers. The monks are going to be less. Everything along those lines, even knights are going to be less. It's wonderful. All text research, 25% faster, is a little bit of a bonus, not something you're really thinking about most of the time. But foragers generating wood in addition to food is 
Huge. I was going to say, honestly, one of my favorite Civ bonuses in mm -hmm. the entire game. It just helps smooth out the eco so much, yeah. right? It guards against anything. And he's you know, already going gone awry. for the mill, I believe. And he has not gone for the mill. He's gone for the two militia. And he spent his wood instead on that barracks as he comes forward here with these militia and the scouts. So I think he realizes that Jordan has invested into the, the mill on the berries, I believe. Yep. So he might need to uh, find that area and target it right away. I'm a fan, personally, also just because ew, of the change. Ew, oh, no. no okay. Not too wolves. I'm, I'm no longer a fan. I was about to say I uh, love this play because I, I just like this switch up in pace, yeah. right? I like the attempt to say, hey, I'm going to go fully on the yeah. offensive. I'm going to try and get my opponent off kilter. But just like that, you've lost over 50% of the health yeah. of one of your militia. This is a near nullified push. And he's gonna run, he might run into the TC, too. This might just be an unfortunate series of events. We call that, so the two militia drush, we call that the, like the the Sato, right? But mm. then as soon as you run into the wolves, you call that the heart. <laughs> oh, no! no! Oh! oh, he GG's right there! He GG's right there! Oh, oh my goodness. We literally were under the table, both oh, of us. Oh, both of us dropped to our knees. Oh, that was so painful. And it's just like, it's, it's like you, saw an angle of the TC where there was no straggler tree, there was no houses, you, That that's one side of the TC that you can run into, and he did it immediately after being tilted by two wolves coming and hitting his militia, and it's just like there's there's no momentum for Andy. Fortunately, he has yeah. won two sets already, yep. so he's still two and two, but Jordan now with another 3-0, either wins 3-0 or loses 0-3. Exactly, the critic in me wants to say, come on, keep fighting. But by the same token, that's such massive resource yeah. investment early to gain nothing out of it. Like, look, look, everywhere else you'd see a house or straggler trees, and you run right through the middle, and you just see it way too late. Ah, this is so brutal. Also, take a look at this, y'all. Again, if you're wondering why, or rather making the case for no GG there, Rez collected Jordan already 150 mm -hmm. ahead, and that's before the investment into the military units, right? Yeah. So he's light years ahead in a dark age. It would be a near impossibility for freaking Andy to wiggle his way out of that one. And yeah. so... Jordan gets out with a very clean 3-0. Unfortunate for freaking Andy. But like you said, that's, if anything, where you look back on your performance through the first couple days yep. and you say, hey, I am still in phenomenal position yep. in this tournament and you can't let it get to yeah, you. Yeah, that's a, that's a mental reset point for Andy, or it should be, right? Right. And uh, he's going to go back into the practice room, figure out what happened, maybe switch up his map drafts a little bit. But Jordan, I mean, we're, we're talking about maybe some mistakes from Andy. Jordan force those mistakes especially on copenhagen mm -hmm. especially on copenhagen a little bit of a misread on the strategy from andy on our on arena um or the strategy from jordan by andy but uh, copenhagen was really impressive yeah and i think it just shows that jordan uh he is quick to dissect his opponent's previous series yeah right i think he took a lot of learnings uh oh he was just on the couch and ran away when he comes back i'll dive on the couch with him and pick his brain about his approach on the series because i i am curious how much of his approach today is directly related uh to yesterday's mm -hmm. uh, showing against mm -hmm. doubt there by freaking andy so as he takes his seat and gives a fist bump to mem i'm gonna go hop over to the couch here join you all in the moment all right thank you for joining us for the first set of the day quick one there but we have sets coming up and we're gonna have dash talking to Jordan about another impressive 3-0 victory. Jordan, what the heck? <laughs> Is that the fast? I, I, it's not necessarily confirmed for me, but I'm pretty sure that's the fastest set in the history of NAC. Yeah, I think so. It, it was a very quick one, and uh, things turned out very well for me, right? So very happy with that. Um, normally, I think, you know, the, the first question would be something about, oh, you know, 3-0 loss yesterday. How did you recover from that? Dave and I were talking about it. You didn't seem shaken after yesterday's uh, loss against Hera. No, no. And that was even more clear in your play. What I do want to talk to you about as we get double us is your preparation. Yeah. Because there were a number of moments throughout this series, even though it was quick, where it felt like you were taking direct learnings from yesterday's series that Andy played against Doubt. 
Uh, kind of, yes. Uh, for sure, I looked at those recorded games and uh, studied them. However, uh, the way I play, I mean, I've practiced so much, right, for the qualifiers and uh, also for the main event here. So all all the things I'm doing, I, I've done in the past with the training. So yeah, uh, I would say good preparation there. Where do you feel your micro is at right now as a player and or maybe just your confidence in your micro? Because for me, the water fights here, you were at sometimes fighting six galleys against ten. Yeah, with confidence. So w w where is this coming from? Yeah, I, I think uh, if it's about galley wars, uh, that's where I'm most comfortable with because uh, back in the days, Viper and I played galleys all the time when that was the meta, yeah. and uh, it was just uh, you know it's the, still the same mechanic and the way to move. So I feel very comfortable there, and also Berbers uh, with the faster speed helps a lot, right? So it's easier to micro. Yeah, again, it was like faster speed versus the regeneration, right? So we were like, Jordan, yeah. uh, in prolonged fights, maybe loses out. Either way, a stellar performance here. Perfect composition. Uh, we were also cheering for the snipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I was looking for it, right? But <laughs> yeah, Andy, uh, the person he is, right? Uh, one of the best if it's about quick walling and uh, prevented that, but uh, it was inevitable. I will get there, right? <laughs> right, right, right. And so he calls the GG before you can get to his king. Okay, arena. Yeah. You guys are so close to each other. Yeah. When you initially scouted just the proximity of the bases, did you change a strategy, or from the beginning were you thinking castle drop, uh, regardless of like base position? Uh, I was thinking about two different approaches all the time, but when my scout went ti uh, ten tiles out and saw the base, I was like, I think I have my my decision there. <laughs> so yeah, I'm super super fortunate for me as the Turks player to be so close to him. Uh, it happens every once in a while on that map, uh, not too often, so I was very, very fortunate. Yeah, and of course, I think uh, it you know, uh, coincided with Andy maybe reaching for a greedy TC there. You yeah. even repositioning the castle to deny that, control relics, and it really set him off on the back foot. We move on to game three, again, another quick one. I don't, you wouldn't have, I assume you saw it when you saw they were low health. He runs yeah. into two wolves here. Yeah. So the commitment into militia to try and throw you off from the beginning, it's just not there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, again, super fortunate for me, right? Because those small things can have such a big impact. And uh, obviously going for the two militia rush as Lithuanians is super, super um, costly, right? Yeah. So you need to do damage in order for it to pay off. And uh, yeah, two, two wolves and then running into my TC as well. It's just like he is going to play from such a behind space uh, or position uh, and therefore uh, understand why he resigned there. Exactly. I, I, I know that there's probably many people at home who are like, no, fight on, fight on. But yeah. once again, when you go for the early mill, you've got incredible resource generation early exactly. and he's invested into yeah. the military for, yeah. for no benefit. Then uh, it just really did uh, become a tough position. Yeah. Um, what are you going to do with the rest of your day? I mean, I, I will enjoy. <laughs> I will enjoy watching the games. Yeah. I, I mean, I love the tournament so much, right? Just being here uh, with you guys. The atmosphere is amazing. Uh, people are cheering. It's, it's really nice to see also the chat, right? The how, how successful the stream is. And I, I just love the atmosphere. Uh, I've been looking forward to this tournament for the last uh, five, six weeks, right? Uh, yeah. So amazing. Well, well, just like that, you move to three set wins, which guarantees you top eight. Uh, two wins was already uh, a near guarantee, yeah. but now you're 100% into the bracket stages and you're yeah. playing for seeding at this point. 3-1. Yeah. We don't know who your last opponent will be. Um, so I rather, I'd get your opinion of kind of the rest of the field and any surprise, you know, now that we're over the halfway point, who have been your biggest surprises? Who are you? I mean, obviously, I would assume Hera. Who are you most afraid of? Things like that. So for me, the biggest surprises are two players. So first, uh, Doubt. I'm really surprised he is down 3-0. Uh, that's something I did not really expect from him because in my eyes, he's like such a well-rounded player, right? And especially if it's about uh, tricky maps, which we have a lot in NAC map pool. Uh, he should excel there a lot. So I'm a little bit surprised by uh, his streak right now. Also, Lurie, uh, for me, a little bit of surprise that uh, he has not had the run which we are uh, known him for. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of surprising in terms of uh, dominance. I mean, Hera, as you mentioned, not a surprise for me. I, right. <laughs> I, I don't think it's a surprise to anyone. Uh, obviously, the, the way he plays, uh, like I felt yesterday, I was two classes down. So, yeah, it's incredible how good he plays and make me look bad, right? So that, that's really strong from him. And Tato, 
I mean, I feel like Tato has stepped it up uh, so, so much in recent times. It's it's incredible. Yeah. And uh, a little bit of a surprise for me as well. Okay. But yeah, I'm very isn't, happy for Isn't him. that wild how with Ahara's performance over the last couple of years, we now have this expectation of, of dominance, right? So yeah. to your point, that's not, it's not so crazy that, <laughs> yeah, he's, it's that he's running over everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I love the call outs, though, for Doubt and Leary because uh, yeah. today is a very important day for both of them. Absolutely. Uh, Doubt against Hart. Obviously, uh, the loser of that is effectively out of the yep. playoffs. Yep. Uh, and then for Leary, he's going up against Yo, two top four invited players with only one set win. Again, loser of that is in dire positioning. It's crazy. Um, I'm looking forward so much to this match because there is so much on the line, right? And uh, both players are so, so good. So it's going to be a, such a banger of a set. I just cannot wait just watch everything. I will be here all the time, watch. Uh, I think the set uh, three I will cast as well, if I'm not mistaken. I think, right? I think you're slated for set three as well. That's yeah. Doubt Hera. Leary Yo comes in set five. Uh, the battle at the top of the table is set yeah. four, the marquee matchup of the day. But the next set to take place is going to be the Viper versus ACCM. Oh, that's so, going to be nice. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts there? I think... I mean, Viper will go in as a favorite for sure. Uh, he already told me he managed to get eight hours of sleep. Ooh, eight hours of sleep, and he almost, or he also feels pretty well. So uh, I think he goes into the set uh, as perfect as he could. Okay. And uh, ACCM, you know, um, he, it's it's crazy with him because I practice a lot with him. He's just such a machine, so so good. And uh, I, I'm a little bit surprised as well by the one-two he has right now. But, uh, you know, you can expect anything from him. So it will be a close one. Obviously, Viper will be the favorite, mm -hmm. but it will be very close. Well, if Viper is feeling better and more rested than he did yesterday, that's a terrifying prospect. But as mm -hmm. you mentioned, ACCM, such a formidable opponent, is capable of beating anyone. Again, even only missing the win against Yo by one map earlier yeah. in yeah. the tournament could be sitting at two and one. Uh, Jordan, normally the next set starts their draft when game or when, right when uh, set point, you know, <laughs> match point begins of the previous set. You uh, won that third game so quickly. I'm afraid that draft probably isn't even complete yet. Yeah, I know. Which is why I'm looking in a panicked fashion over at Nilly for what are we doing next? Exactly, but they realized in time, so they are already drafting. We've seen the maps are completed. They are at the sift, uh, sift draft phase now. Then we will obviously have to move the PCs. If you feel like nearly, well, you're robbing us of all the enjoyment of seeing the draft. Well, we will have that during the playoff phase. Oh, sweet. We will always take a full half hour we are planning with that, with like the random sift bands, then map draft and then the civilization draft so that will happen we'll start the show a bit earlier thursday friday saturday sunday to get a real deep understanding of how that drafting is going to work for the group stage we want to keep it as smooth as possible so we kept that off stream and just give you the final results but we don't know the final results yet of the bounce game of the day Ooh. it will be dave dash the, uh, not Dash, uh, oh, Dave Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Dash, let's go. I'm so bad at that game. <laughs> and therefore, we are sending it over to Bounce, followed up by the explanation of Buchholz by Mr. Yo. Oh, that's going to be exciting. I'll take those. Yep. And you can take it away, Tristan. All right. All right. I think we're good. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Well, Hello. today, uh, four. four. Day four of, yeah. of NAC5. I can count. Uh, we are going to play Bounce on the lowest height table ever, maybe to help Dave out a little bit. Uh, uh, we, here we've got Dave. He, he Yo, attacked. I here made that Dave. joke. <laughs> I stole his joke on him. He stole my joke, yeah. and it's about me, too. Sorry, sorry. Jeez. Sorry about it. Uh, and then I'm T90. We got Hera here, and then we got our Observer Vodka. Hello. And the way this game works, here you go, guys. Grab your... Uh, is uh, We start at one, and the goal is to get... One bounce, and then assuming everyone does it successfully, we move on to two and, and go up from there. So, Dave, would you like to start? Okay. It's a low table, so it's difficult. But one is, one All is right, pretty. One. 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 Aggressive one. Aggressive. Nice. <laughs> Hera, were you nervous? Is that why you really put energy into it? I'm just warming up, you know? Oh, okay, okay. In the strides then. Oh, no. Now right, I, have we're to go, on two. I have to go first. I we're hate on two. going first, dude. There's so much pressure. Ooh. All right. Oh, okay. Hera. Two. Oh, Almost close. 
Okay. All right. Two. All right. Good, 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 good. I feel like we all got two. Two is good. easy. Three becomes a little bit difficult here. I'm going first, so I can't no analyze pressure. the strategy or any <laughs> angles or anything like There's that. There's a lot of strategy yeah. in this game. It's We're going to copy his technique. No! Okay, oh, I'm not copying that. That's four. <laughs> Don't copy that. Ooh. Okay, three for Tristan. Oh. Nice. Three for Hera. Nice. Okay. Ooh. All right. Three for vodka. All right, so it's Tristan and it's Hera. This is the only Hera versus T90 final you'll ever see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, four. Oof. One. Two, three, that's Ooh. three. Oh my god. All right, no pressure. No pressure. Man, I don't want to brag, but I got four. Ah, oh, that was sick. Air All right, well played. Just like an AGG. By the way. AGG. Round two, round two. <laughs> Do you think I get that close? <laughs> <laughs> four, three? <laughs> four, three? Damn, thanks, bro. All right, you can't delete. Your, you can't delete your TC in this. That one. is we true. We go again. We go again. You like that right. story? Hey, you like that story? Side this time. No, 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 no. You don't other understand. Side. Okay, it. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. One, right? Yeah. 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 Nice. Oh, nice. wow. V aggressive shots. What, what happened to the order? It's one, dude. <laughs> there is no order. Memba's breaking things. <laughs> no, 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 Tristan, one, two. Oh! Good. Okay, that scared me. One, two. All right. Three. Vodka. No pressure. Nice. Okay, nice. Defending nope. champ. Nice. Nice. Oh my god, oh. I suck. You called yourself the goat earlier. <laughs> I didn't say goat. You did. I, I didn't I say admit, goat. I suck at this. Listen, game. this, I'm this table is short, dude. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I told you All I'm right. terrible. Alright, well at least you're honest with yourself on like eight. Alright. Alright, here we go. Vodka and Hera. So it's four, right? Ooh. Very nice. That was really good. That's a clean four. Oh, oh no GG, way. GG. All right, well played. Cool. Let's go again. What's the score? It's one one. One one. Yeah, okay. they've got they've got zero zero. Yeah. Can we? Do you want to <laughs> start at two? <laughs> or do you want to keep going one? We'll, we'll start at two. two? We're experienced now. Okay. Yeah. Nice. One don't. two. Okay, good. Nice. I don't like that I can't see what production is putting up on screen because of my tweet <laughs> earlier. <laughs> what did I'm just tweet. <laughs> nothing. Production. <laughs> Pull it up. <laughs> nothing. All right. Um, go ahead, Dave. Three. Okay, three. I I haven't made three yet. That's no, bad. you have. Yeah, game game one. No. No, I made uh. four. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> Very impressive. <laughs> hey, if we get impressive. there, if we get there, yeah, yeah, yeah. it'll be good. Ooh, nice. close. It was close, but. Borderline three. Nice. Three. All right. Good. Uh oh. Oh. oh it. Damn it. Nice. All right. I hope they're on betting the on this. On the four. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Lix bets on my rank game. We're not so. finished yet, he? guys. He We're does. Not finished yet. Like money? Apparently, like my chat's like, "Yo, Lix has five dollars on you. I'm playing versus <laughs> Mr. Yo." Like, <laughs> I'm like, "What? It's a Tuesday. Like, what the hell?" <laughs> and then he bets against Yo too. Yeah. All right. Is it me? Four? Yeah, go for it. Okay, I've four. done this before. Oof. No. Oof. All right. Ooh. Nice. Okay, Tristan makes Lean. four. Vodka with the four. One, two, three, four. Good. Okay. Oh, man. So we go on to five here. The farthest we've ever been today. Yep. Five. I think the furthest we've ever done this NAC was five. Yeah. Who won that one? I. You know exactly. Okay, all right. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Ooh. That's actually kind of sick. Vod could take notes. Oh, oh let's go. On six. We're on to six. All let's right. Go, dude. Let's go. Close. Oh, oh seven. seven. They didn't hear it. Seven. They didn't hear it. 
There, there's no way any that mics picked seven. that up. That, that was, was really close. That was so close. All right, all right, all right. It was 6.1. Vodka, you got Vodka, this. One, two, no. three, four, five. Oh. Right. Okay, so right. we go again. Right. Restart that. Restart that. Yeah. Go again. All right. One, two, three, no way. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That, <laughs> there was wind. It's hard to make. Looks. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, oh close. Vodka's more Ooh. consistent, though. Oh, thank you, Dave. <laughs> All right, six. Get in the pressure. <sighs> Stone, please. <laughs> oh, oh. six. Oh, six. That's six. Vodka. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Woo. All right. G90 does six. Let's go. That Back counts as like more than a win, though, because we got so high, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. So you're like the GOAT, basically, now, because it's like the largest we've done today, or this uh, NAC. Counts for a lot. Thank you. I, I sense sarcasm, but I appreciate it anyway. No, 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 no sarcasm. All right. Do you want me to start here? Are we Are we going to call out our shots again? Like the last time oh. we did this? Well... I would like to. I would like to continue. We've got three people tied at one. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. we gotta. We yeah, gotta. There's gotta yeah, be. Yeah. We gotta yeah. figure that out. Or someone else has gotta catch up. <laughs> one. One or the other here. Dave so. has the underdog story. I we'll believe. Go, in you. We'll start at two. I'll start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One, two. Okay. Nice. That was close. That was really close. But it made it. <laughs> Nobody saw that, right? <laughs> there you go. All right. On to three. You suck. That's, yeah. That, that, that was, checks out. Yeah. That checks out. Okay. <laughs> nice. 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 A little bit more arc there from Hera. Uh oh, Vodka's oh. out. Vodka's out with four. Okay, so we need to make this one, 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 one. And to do that, you have to miss. So go ahead. Okay, four. Run four. Sorry, I gotta get centered here. <laughs> one, two, three, four. <laughs> He's feeling it Dave. all out. Oh, I'm coming back. I'm that, was, coming back. That, was a, that was so clean. That was a good performance. Harris Dang. hanging in. He's like the underdog story here. I feel like the main battle is here, but he's going to win at the end. Go. All right, five. Oh, yeah. Just, sorry, just... You can move here. It's, I can, yeah. I don't, but I'm examining. I'm, <laughs> trying to, I'm trying to get tips, dude. You're the GOAT, right? <laughs> oh! oh. First tried it, too. Kind of. Was it like this, or...? Lots of arc. Lots of arc. Lots of arc. Like backspin too? Side spin. I don't want to experiment with spin <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I think it's too late for that. <laughs> oh wow. wow. Five. It is here that my tale will end. Yes. Please. All right. So Six. Okay. All right. So we got some stakes here because this is our last game of bounce. All right. All right. If I win, yep. I win. Right? Yeah. <laughs> if I lose, we're all tied, which is like so lame. So there's no stakes at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have, to, you, have to avoid, you have to avoid embarrassment and being the worst of all of us. Bro, I'm a streamer. That, that, I can't avoid that. I mean, that's my life. Fair, but all right, six? Yeah. Six. Oh, oh, this is my so chance. Close. Six. Okay. Dave. Dave. Wait, Dave. So close. Six. Everyone's cheering for me. Of dude. course. So we are all tied. <laughs> no way. Oh. Yeah, that, that was bad. That was you were, bad. You were playing for nothing that there. Come bad. on. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't feel the pressure, man. Yeah, exactly. All right. <laughs> Not a close Six it. again. <laughs> Sorry. Six again. Six again. Go. Five. Uh oh. <sighs> blew right into the mic. <laughs> nope. All right. Five, five. We got to get to six. Damn it. This okay. is the same thing that happened last time. Here. Went to the third, one, the third try. Six. Wow. Does that help? Does that Woo. 
I don't know. Just do that. Do that when I play Pong, so. <laughs> No. Oh, seven. 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 T90, okay. the champion. Right. Cool. Congratulations. Right. Very proud of myself. T90 bounce champion once again. Here's your honorary ping pong ball. And uh, we clap for that one. I'll pose with it. Take some photos. Okay, uh, anyways, so we are uh, finished with bounce. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We're going to send it back over to Nilly to continue NAC5. Thank you, thank you. That was entertaining, and <clears throat> we had a surprising winner there. Uh, that was quite shocking, but now we have another winner, which is the whole Age of Empires community, because, as you know, exclamation mark NSC5 support, we came up with some thank yous. Uh, we are signing more than 100 hoodies, t-shirts, and mouse pads with all the players and casters. We have green screen backgrounds that you know. We have people joining the apartment here. With all your crazy, crazy support, this event is happening. And one of them is that you can support the event and choose. Oh, can we make sure that the dog is not going into the cables? Um, um, we have. Yo, you already ate. Calm down. Uh, I Calm guess. Down. I okay. guess. Okay. And you can support the event with donations. We have some thank yous. And one of the thank yous is that you can choose someone to explain Buchholz. Thank you for choosing me. Wise decision. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, then take it away. I hope you prepared a PowerPoint presentation. Okay. okay. For example, um, here we have the overview. So uh, the Buchholz is the sum of the player you face, the, the wins they get. Say if I'm, I have played Jordan, right? Yeah. I have played Jordan and uh, ACCM and Tato. So uh, my buho will be because Tato has three wins and Jordan has three wins and ACCM has one win. My buho will be seven. Easy as that. <laughs> What's the problem? Uh, what? What? You're a genius. I, I think I think we will clip that. We will clip that for every single Buchholz questions in the future of Buchholz questions. We will just have this as an explanation. Okay. Okay. That, that's that's not uh, that's not how I expected. Um, if you are still feeling confused or just feel free anytime, just go and ask uh, uh, the caster. <laughs> okay. I'm out. GG. No, no, no. I, I have one, one small scenario prepared for you, Mr. Yo. Okay. So the matchups today, as you know them, right? Yep. Uh, Jordan, Freaking Andy, Viper ACM, Doubt Heart, Tattoo Hera, Yo, Leary. Let's assume Jordan, Viper, Doubt, Tattoo, and Yo are all winning. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah. Let's calculate the Buchholz for Freaking Andy. Andy currently has <laughs> six. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it after he played Jordan, right? This is updated. This is exactly live right now. As you can see, Jordan already has 3 1, and you got the Buchholz. So uh, Andy played who before? He had Doubt. He had Doubt. And. Hard. And Tato. Tato. All right. Let's scroll down. So if all of the left player wins, I said he he will get one buho from Doubt and one from Tato. That's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he's gonna be eight. Final answer. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Actually, yeah. Correct answer, Mr. Yo. Come that on, was sick. That was sick. I, um, I wasn't even hesitating, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> Math. Uh, easy. Yeah, okay. And um, so we now know the Buchholz number, but why do we need Buchholz? Well, if you are asking me... <laughs> I don't think we need them, but um, <laughs> there's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. Somehow, um, I don't mind the reason. Okay, let's assume 
you are two, three after the group stage and mm -hmm. someone else is two, three after the group stage as well. Yeah. Who is higher, who is lower? Then, yeah, it's up to the Buho, right? Yeah. Exactly, yeah, exactly. I knew, I knew it. And that's the beauty of Buchholz. Thank it. you so much, Mr. Yo. Uh, we will have ACCM versus the Viper next. What is your prediction there? I think ACCM... Um, I think Viper will, will, will win, but um, it's like 3-2. It will be close. Okay. If you're all... Like, we always go you going to smoke together. What are you discussing there? Are you preparing strategies? Sometimes, yes. Okay, what's 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 the best strategy that he hasn't played yet? Tell us. I know, I know. He imp improvised a lot. Like we <laughs> practiced tons of games, and when he go into that room, his draft was totally different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Mr. Yo. Best of luck with your final game tonight against Lyric. Quick prediction score. Mm -hmm. um, Lyric against you. I hope I win. Like. 3-1 three, three or something? 3-1. What is your Buchholz after that? Again. <laughs> <laughs> we will send it over to the castle to the next set. The Viper against ACCM. Take it away. Membenti 90. Such a god this, Mr. Yo. I, <laughs> I mean, we cannot be so closer funny. to him. He's so funny. He's amazing. Oh, my God. Mr. Yo with the Buchholz. Uh, now I got even more clear. But when he said, if you have some question. Ask the casters. Ask, ask the casters. Well, I mean, seriously, what we did we know. do to deserve that? We don't seriously, know. Yeah. We don't know. The Viper versus ACCM. Uh, we are in round four, Tristan. Uh, there is almost no way to come back now. So you have to be now winning or... In case or ACCM is going to have a, in a very, very tough position. Yeah, I mean, ACCM especially. ACCM comes in here being one and two. Uh, Viper's two and one, so he's in a better spot, especially because his, his boo holes would be against, you know, his loss was against Tato too. So I, I think, like, you know, it's a big series. And, you know, for ACCM, I'm going to bring it back to what we said uh, yesterday when I was casting with Dash. He was 10th place last NAC4. He got to learn a lot there. He was frustrated. And it was even last year, it was like he was beating everyone in practice. But in the event itself, the results weren't necessarily coming. So he is now in a situation where he needs to bring insane results against the Viper. Not an easy situation to be in for him. Yeah, and I see the first map, ACCM involved. Hello, T90. I, I well, mean, can be I've, got than the previous I've got a Red Bull, yeah. so I'm ready. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Fortified clearing. Let's, uh, let's talk about that map. We will have time. To, to talk about all the others, uh, what civilizations are there? Mongols, Byzantine, Aztecs, Mayans, Berbers, Armenians. For ACCN, the Viper Peak, Incas, Japanese, Slavs, Malians, Romans, and Hindustanis. What yeah. do you think? It's been interesting, actually, because I don't think a, like any of the really, really strong fortified clearing civs are out there. No Cumans, no Malay, no Portuguese. A lot of them met the bands. We also had uh, like Bohemians and Burgundians and Turks on the random ban wow. before the series. So like there are limited selections here. And for people who want to see fortified clearing with some different civs, we're going to see that. So like my feeling now, Aztecs actually makes a whole lot of sense for ACCM on a map with nine relics. So I could see Aztecs being considered. Uh, apart from that, maybe Byzantines, because they can kind of counter everything. And then on the other side for Viper, he did play with the Hindustanis before on Fortified Clearing. It is a bit like later pick. So if I had to guess, I would say Hindustanis versus Aztecs here for game number one. Yeah, well, let's see what this can be. But the Aztecs, the problem here is that uh, maybe here you want some kind of mobility if they go for the late game. Yeah. You are missing that with the Aztecs. Yeah, in, in some ways. The only question mark that yeah. for me... Bring this civilization. Well, your 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 yeah. typical mobility, right? The eagles yeah. are still pretty fast, but they aren't as fast as horses, that's for sure. So, yeah. And in um, the super late game, even if you grab the relics, it's still the eagles need quite a lot of gold as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know, but it, it makes sense. Also. But what about like? I mean, Aztecs are so good on a map like Acclivity or Dry Graveyards. Graveyards, there's also eleven relics actually. Oh wait, did I say eleven or nine? It's eleven on graveyards. It's nine on fortified. No, you clearing. said right. You said okay, right. okay. Well, anyways, lots of relics on both those maps. So actually. I wouldn't mind, like, maybe ACCM goes for Byzantines on Fortified Clearing, which is, like, so good and so solid. And then you save Aztecs for later on. So I, I really, you know, I think you've got options here. If uh, Byzantines you're got everything, actually. Yeah, except there's no engineer, they have everything else. And, like, and like name one civilization that dominates Byzantines. Can none. you? None. None, exactly. None, none, none. There's, there are more, there are better matchups to have against Byzantines. But Byzantines, kind of the nice thing about them is you're never completely mismatched. So... It's a good civilization maybe pick for the first game. It can be f more fun, to be honest. If the game is good for the super late game, I see that uh, the possibilities that Byzantines bring 
it, it it's makes more exciting. You can even make bombard towers at some point. You know, yeah. a lot more things. Like the Aztec seems more. You know, expect what you what you're going to see. But yeah. let's see because the players might be really really in a moment. We can talk about then the other maps, Eclivity and Graveyard for the Viper. Aggressive maps. Yeah, aggressive maps. Maps that don't incorporate much water. ACCM, he had an incredible victory against Hera in his only win against Hera in the series a couple days ago, and that was on Marsh Madness. Um, those types of maps. So Viper doesn't want to give any more hybrid maps. He wants to like, make it nice and simple for himself. Uh, but mo both Marsh Madness and Hippopotamus, I mean, w again, with ACCM's win against uh, Hera, it was so cool to see what he brought to the table. So I think both those maps have similarities. So, I mean, this game one's important, right? Yeah. Because I, I could see uh, if ACCM's playing to his peak and his potential and everything everyone's saying about practice, I could see Viper being favored on his home maps, ACCM being favored on his home maps, and then obviously game number one kind of, you know, separates them. Yeah, and honestly, except the first one, all the others can bring really, really aggressive. Really yeah. aggression. We don't have Copenhagen this time. It's not that he's not aggressive, but he's most expected to go for Imperial no matter what. Yeah. But right? Canberra, it can be more close map, but also got the walls as well, not Arena. So we are expecting wild, wild action. Uh, ACCN is well known for trying till there is, I mean, no chance at, n at all. Yeah. So yeah. what is your prediction here? I feel that the five uh, game series could be possible here. Yeah, no, I agree. I think five games would be realistic. I think in terms of the winner, I got to lean towards Viper, though. Uh, Viper has won so much throughout his career. He's so well prepared for every series. I know Leary, a lot's been said about how he's not brought his level, uh, the level we've maybe seen. But I think it's possible that, like, the inconsistencies that Leary's maybe had in the past that he's been able to, to still win with is getting punished a little bit more here at NAC5. And Viper looked so good yesterday, except for the fact he didn't get double bid uh, which I gave him a yeah. hard time. He had double bid, no double bid axe at the Paladin, but I mean, that says how good you are. <laughs> um, I swear I click it. Thousands of resources. I swear I click it. Yeah, I yeah, swear I click say it. it. I click it. I swear so, I click it. We um, believe you, but... Well. But yeah, I mean, like, you know, and you got to, again, ACCM's one and two. ACCM hasn't won as many games. I mean, Viper has looked really good and, and almost like sneaky good, I think. So yeah. he, if I had to say right now, I'd say Viper 3-1 is my prediction. Okay, but the level has increased uh, and, and a point, in a point that with Viper here, we now say, okay, you say 3-1, but not uh, crazy to go for a five games, right? And back in the days, that was something that you wouldn't think if, if, if almost uh, ever. Yeah, you, you mean against Viper specifically? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I agree. The level's really high. I think the variety as well in the settings here adds to it. Obviously, Viper, you know, the last couple years, he hasn't been winning everything. He's just been winning a lot, which is still a, a surprise for people like you and I. But uh, I asked Viper recently, like, about his wrists, too, because, like, obviously, a lot of this coincided with some of his wrist issues. And he said it's never going to be perfect again, but he feels like he at least can, like... He, no pain? He, there's a new normal, okay. right? There's a new normal. There's occasional pain, but it's like at a point where, I guess, when you get used to it, right? Yeah. Uh, then you you can you learn to you, live. You can learn. Yeah, you can I, you can learn to stabilize. And, and again, the level he's brought has been fantastic. Yeah, and ACCM uh, with Mister Yo probably they are the two that practice the most. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Also, but when but they keep the most, but I think the most. I think they're also like they're 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 a little bit more introverted, like. Because um, I asked them, like, how many games you played today? And they said three after they were back there all day yesterday. So I don't know. I'm getting differing, differing yeah. thing, <laughs> differing results, um, differing responses. But I love ACCM. And it's funny. Multiple times he has been like, Aztecs this, man. Aztecs that. And all the players are like, no, not Aztecs. So I can't wait till we see Aztecs from him. He's going to show us what Aztecs are made of, but also, I don't know if it'll be the first also, game. Also, Tristan, for people that is not here, I want to know more uh, the behind the scenes, and we will talk about that. Doesn't doesn't feel that the players are getting that shaky anymore, even in the LAN event. You feel that they are more comfortable. Yeah, I they agree. Are feeling, they're feeling better, so it's more all about the skills. Even freaking Andy, is the first time that he's here. You feel that he's, he's, he's just fine. Anyway, you are right. You are right, Aztecs. and we have the Aztecs versus Hindustanis. Game number one, Aztecs ACM in the south. The Viper has a red in the north. Remember that the map generation is right, Tristan. Not that important. The walls are there. At the back, you cannot walk to the edge of the map. You have one goal, one stone, but then you can expand all over it again, getting longer and longer. Yeah, I, I mean, this is the matchup we, we thought was, was possible, but there's one thing we didn't talk about. The Ghulam for the Hindustanis, man. Like, that unit is so incredible. Uh, I have played this matchup once, actually against Nili. I don't know if Nili's going to remember this. One and a half hour Empire Wars game. 
Elite Ghulam, let's kill like Jaguar Warriors even. They're, they're, I don't know, maybe I just suck, but like Gunpowder, Ghulams, that combination is horrible for the Aztecs to deal with. And uh, as we have a, a beautiful, beautiful tweet there from Lars. Thank you, Lars, for enriching my life. But uh, I, I think ACCM is going to get to need, get, have to get some type of a snowball with lots of military production at some point here uh, because the late game for the Hindustanis is so strong. And we have two civilizations that with the gold bonus they have, Aztecs with the relic bonus, but then Hindustanis 10% more for all gold income. Yep, yep, it yep. kind of equalize the, the bonus advantage from the relics. Depend obviously how much you are getting. Uh, if you're getting 5-4 here, usually the Aztecs is dominate, but not with Hindustanis probably. Mm -hmm. I will say this, like, it kind of makes your decision on where you push and how you play this simple if you're the Aztecs against Hindustanis. Because this map has the outer region, right? Which has uh, two relics on each side. But you also have those five relics towards the middle. And if you don't have a Cav civilization with the fat, with the additional mobility, I think you just forget about the outside altogether and you just snowball that middle area. So it is possible. Last time I saw Viper play this map, he went two monasteries, tons of scouts to get the relics, and he was really prioritizing that outside. So honestly, it is very possible here for ACC. Yeah, maybe go like double barrack opening, kind of just like Arena Mem, and just push the middle and see full, what happens. Full aggro. Yeah. Then full aggro. Okay, so you you prefer here Astas or Hindustanis. I think if uh, ACCM want to win this game, has to be quick. Yeah, I, I, I think... I have to fill in. I, I, like, honestly, in the prep, the Ghulam, I completely forgot about it because we've seen Hindustani so many times we've not seen the Ghulam because there hasn't been a situation for it. But that unit has a bonus against Eagles, and it also is great against Archers. And Aztecs are like Eagles... And archers, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and maybe some monks mixed in. So yeah, I gotta lean towards the Hindustanis and Viper. That has to be very obvious in his mind right now. That the longer this goes with the gunpowder Ghulam combo, the also worse it faster. could be for the Aztecs. Also, they are faster because if you go champions, jowers, infantry, yeah, 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 the yeah. speed cannot really compete with that, and you still can make the hand cannoneers. Skimmers as well. Skimmers for masters are are solid with that lala uh, abrit. But I, I don't know. You can also add Hazars yep. at the end if the game is going for longer. Then the relics is going to be crucial. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, crucial. And Viper got to hear ACCM talk Aztecs, Aztecs, Aztecs. So we've been chilling out here on the couch. So, I mean, it's, it's very interesting, too, as we see now Viper's point of view. Interesting how he's playing with team colors. Like, always. He, he, he selects color yellow, but he's actually playing with team colors. That's not something he used to do. But Same. Um, at ACCM, the same. <laughs> you don't see yellow anymore. Yeah, right? yeah. But, like, Viper picked Hindustanis late. And I think he picked it late as a counter to the Aztecs. This was not as if he was going to play until he saw Aztecs. That would be my guess. Okay. There's the barrack already for the Viper. Viper is up with 25 population. That means probably he's going to go for a, for a scout approach here. He's not walled yet while ACCM is walled. Maybe he was expecting that he could go up very quick up. But yeah. Viper is going to go for a fast castle. ACCM as well, Tristan. Yep, absolutely. Um, this is something we've seen from Viper. He just kind of knows. Even if you don't, right? You're just assuming. But he figures there's going to be no need to really wall quickly on the backside of his base. And ACCM, there's a little bit more possibility that Viper come forward with scouts. Um, looks like Aztecs have been picked and banned by players in 70% of drafts they were available in. That's interesting. Yeah, let's take the, let's take the POV. I think the, the players are going. The band's probably got to be most of that, right? Because we haven't yeah. seen Aztecs played much at all. Nope. The only other player that's played Aztecs in the main event was ACCM. Yeah. So I think ACCM is the big one that's at least here at the main event who's obsessed with the Aztecs at the moment. Yeah, I'm checking the Viper. You can see, guys, this is Viper POV. He doesn't see yet any Relic, as far as I can see. Not in the outside. Oh, Hera played Aztecs yesterday okay. as well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, well, now look. Uh, as you were talking, uh, ACCM is already focusing in the middle. Yep. Yep, it makes sense. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it walled the backside. It's going to pressure the middle here. And for Viper, obviously, you, you may have confidence in the Ghulam, but that still requires a castle that... It's for later. That's awkward for your eco here. And, so. it, and it's for later also. That, yeah. He needs right? to see, like, Viper wants to scout and adapt, see what his opponent's doing, and then and then base any decisions he makes on that. 
Yeah, now he's exploring in the middle. As you can see, he finds out one Relic Horse Collar. Both players are going up already with one population difference. That means 25 seconds is what you need exactly to make a village. Yep. Barak already coming up here from ACCM, who has uh, five villages on goal, which is definitely not a lot. So it doesn't... looks like he's going to commit very, very aggressively. Because if you want to go aggressive, you might uh, add eight on goal, something like this. But uh, four on goal... He's kind of standard. Yeah, well, it might just be. It, it, yeah, and he didn't sell a stone here, so I think it might just be an eagle or two for ACCM, and then again, you, you just go based on what you see. I I don't think ACCM is going to be shocked to see Viper adding scouts, um, and you know, not too much else to really touch on right now, Mem. But yeah. again, a big series. Good and, time here. Yeah, and as a, as a, a good player, time here. as a player, like you, sometimes depending on the player, but at least for me, it's like you want your first game to be chill. Right, if there's nerves, this helps you settle down. So this could be a good time for both of them to kind of ease the, their way through the series. We can tell to, to the viewers that even if it's very cold here in Berlin, the gaming room they have is quite warm. They have very good conditions to play uh, AOE. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, right, uh, so many PCs running, yeah. it oh, but warms it, up the it, room. That specifically, that one, is it, like, that is only the, them two, they, it's close, it's yeah. perfect conditions, so props to to definitely Gamer Legion House that is providing a very, very good setup here to, to enjoy and have the best settings possible. You can see now TC, TC already up for the Viper. He's gonna play standard. Yeah. Like it but, was Arena. But TC on the stone, I know like he kind of has two choices for the wood lines, but I think that's something that's intentional here from Viper. And it doesn't mean he's gonna take stone right away, but it gives him that option when he feels the moment's right to move over to the stone. That is an unloomed villager. Viper, first game. He says, yeah, come here. That's crazy. You could fight with that eagle and kill a vill, but ACCM was scared that Viper would quick wall it, and now he does commit to a vill, and still no loom for the Viper, and the villager should be weak, but Viper's got to pull it away, and Viper saves the villager. That is crazy. ACCM probably could have got the villager pick at the start and forced Viper into a quick wall, but he was scared, man, and then had that yeah. logical click that said, oh, shoot. I actually should be attacking this, and then it was too little too late. I think he was using six villages Viper to, to avoid that one, but obviously you do, don't want to lose anything. He didn't. Is the second TC not yet up? He's doing the TC with one villager. Yeah. You know, with one village, so the CCM is doing the, the third TC already. We see how many eagles, two eagles, two spears, uh, five scouts already, and light gaps. Well, light gaps right now are going to be definitely eating those those units. And the monks don't have any upgrades yet. Remember that every upgrade you you research for the Aztecs monks, it gives you extra 5 HP. Yeah, exactly. And so if you get Sanctity, which is a tech that gives you 15 HP, then you get the additional 5, so that's plus 20, and I think that should take you up to 50, but I also uh, skipped third grade. Uh, here we go. We've got the light cap looping around. Like you said, no upgrades yet, and that's beautiful micro from Viper, and that is just as clean as it gets right there. Another easy kill for Viper. At least he makes it look easy. And he also noticed that ACCM had gated the back, and so he's got more units here. This is beautiful. He knows ACCM will be moving out for those relics. He'll be keeping an eye on them. And that's three quick kills for the Viper here. Presido, he has the map control right now, for sure. Village numbers is almost the same. He's getting the relics in the, in the middle. Uh, well, the first one. And I, I'm very curious to see, you know, the, the, the gold bonus, you know, with these two civilizations. Oh, no! Oh, and my Eagle God. is coming out, and now Viper is in. He might not want to stay in there for long, but... This is just another example of how easy Viper's made it look with the mobility here, man. Ben, he's going to actually just break that gate down so he can run in and out freely as he still has like have in the middle. And he's going to be three TCs, too. His eco is also looking sharp. Yeah, it's looking good. He's definitely looking Don't good. Don't tell me, dude. Saving a lot. No, 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 no. no. Well, we're going to lose another monk. We're going to lose another monk. I mean, the lights here are much faster. Yep. I mean, you have the spear, you got the eagle, but they are much faster. He's taking oh another my volley, and probably goodness. he's gonna take another. You have to be careful. It's not only the chaos; it's already six-one. Uh, the viper seems to be in the start of the game, really on point. Yeah, and honestly, if that if the units wouldn't have regrouped horribly there, that that other light cap wouldn't have gone yeah. down. That is simply due to the patch right now. Viper, incredible start, and uh, he's got to be happy. And he's are he's on stone as well, right? So he could build up towards Gulam, and I. I mean, we knew that Ghulam was just, is going to be so devastating at some point, right? And, and I'm gu guaranteed we're going to see it. But then Vipers had this level of micro. Like, yeah. everything has gone so perfectly for him, even before we see the Ghulam. Yeah, he's going to smooth. I mean, it's surprising that he's mining a stone already with five villages, you know? So that means that he is expecting maybe ACCN to go for a transition into Pike Arbor and 
trying to come aggressive and then he wants to avoid any potential damage with the castle. You see a you see a potential forward castle for the Viper because right now he has seven light caps. He's taking more kills here. He's gonna take another one and then if Viper is doing a castle forward, then it's going to be in a great position. I guess it depends on what Viper thinks about his late game. If he thinks the Ghoulims are as good as I think, he might go for a fourth TC. He might just yeah. boom up more. He might build a more defensive castle so he can produce the Ghoulims. I mean, this is <laughs> this is the as perfect a game as it gets so far for Viper. It really is ridiculous. Yeah. He's got he's got monks bringing back relics on both sides. He's got full control of the middle. And ACCM, that's gonna, he will know that he's behind big time, so he's going to hope for an extra level of, of something, and, and he's going to drop a fourth TC. Yeah, he's going around. I mean, I was uh, telling you here, 10 villas on a stone already for the Viper. Yeah. 10 villas on a stone, that's quite a lot more than you expect. This is still the same amount of villas on food. The Lecta is still around, trying to control all the map. And now, ACCM with two relics, the Viper two relics, both are already done by the Viper a little bit later than his opponent, the 4 TC. This is going for Imperial for sure. Yeah, it, it absolutely will. Yeah, I, I, I like the fact that you called that out, the amount of villagers on stone there. I do feel as though Viper still, like what, the moment he did that, he might have actually been thinking, I'm so far ahead, ACCM needs to all in. So he could have been up against a lot more in the middle there, meaning he needed to prep for the castle. But he actually sees most of the militaries out here, and he sees another monk, and I think we know what's going to happen to that monk. That monk is going to die. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if he has more HP because he did already sanity, it's not possible against the light cap. There's more like that in front as well. So right now he's still definitely with the map control. He's going to take that relic, and the eagle is going to be able to... Well, he's going to take that monk. Okay, <laughs> monk is... Oh! Viper noticed that he's been seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. noticed that he's been right seen. Right away, but he can avoid. He can avoid yeah. that he's going to be down. There you go. Can we go with the POV? Okay, doing the loom. If Viper is doing the loom right now, it probably is an indicator that he's going to come forward with the castle. Otherwise, why you are doing now the loom? And we might see a forward castle. Might be tricky, though. 11 army, 9 army. Imagine that there is a point. Ooh, Eagle Warrior, more barracks. Oh, man. Did you see that teleport? Yeah. There was some teleport yep, there, yep, right? Yep, yep, You just yeah. got to load up Age of Empires 2 right now and units teleport. It's, I'm really happy about it. We are combining Age of Empires 2 with... With what? With some other games? I, I don't know. <laughs> Let's keep going. I want it fixed, Let's but keep it's going. all good. It's, it's, it's all, all fine, the teleport, you know? the teleports haven't really, you know, affected too much. Yes, it, it didn't affect. It does happen on occasion. The players can't yeah. do anything about it, of course. It didn't affect at all. Anyway, Light is gonna is gonna be chasing now those eagles. The eagles are already upbraided. He's gonna be able to take those ones. You need to kill it. You need to kill it. He's gonna take it. He got it both. Yeah, and no conversion. Yeah, and Eagle Warriors now in. So this yeah. is gonna be a better trade. And maybe that's something ACCM will be happy with. Yeah. But six relics out of the nine on this map at Viper's base right now. Oh my God. Six oh of them. My God. <laughs> well, now we, now we know that the castle is, doesn't need to be forward. He is not going to be forward because he sees the Eagles. A lot of army for ACCM. This is the beauty of the Aztecs. Aztecs are, yeah, except the Eagles. Well, 50 gold, the cheaper units, you can expand them. We also forget to, to say that uh, Aztecs produce faster from the building. Yep. We don't mention that. Their as eco is really good. Their carrying capacity too. Like yeah. right now, ACCM uh, still has. Well, he has just as many resources collected now. But th up to this point, he was actually collecting a bit more. Now, Viper's castle is crazy to me. Like, why are we building a castle outside of our walls with no map control? If yeah. that's seen by anything, that gets denied. ACCM's monk can see it. Yeah, but he doesn't have the army here. It's the lucky he has, but he's greedy, man. This, this is a greedy move, typical from the Viper. Well, let's let's be honest. You don't need it there. You yeah. can make it your base, you know, and, and that's it. Look at the gate he's doing, trying to save the villager. Okay, but he's coming with more. If he save that villager, he, I mean, let's see. Typical Viper. He's going to take the monk. He focus here. Now he's going to lose so, another. They both wow. so badly want yeah, that yeah, relic. Yeah. That's why Viper's building that castle is because he sees the eagles and spears here. But ACCM is reacting to the castle in some way. And uh, by reacting to it, I mean he clicked <laughs> towards it right before it went up. And now his monk and spearmen are dead. There's one ram in the Siege Workshop. I don't know if he's going to make more. He's doing plus two. No, he canceled. He canceled. He was doing the plus two. He see the castle and then he decided, okay, it's not needed. Resources though. ACCM is about to go up to Imperial. He might drop now a castle between that stone and that goal. And if you are going up to Imperial like he is... The Viper is up too? Viper's already up. Oh my god, how many villages he got in the queue that he is looking that he wasn't going to go up? Okay, both are going up to Imperial. 
this is now uh, a big question mark here. Where do you do the castle? Well, at least we're not the back because you don't know if your opponent is going up. Yeah, right? and there's golems. Yeah. There's golems in yeah, the middle, yeah. right? Th those golems are a problem. I think th th this is now uh, the problem for ACCM. You need trebuchets in a trebor, right, to, to push down the opponent's castles. Oh, I like but that. But the only unit that you can make that counters golem is the unit out of your castle as well, right? So you kind of have to choose unique unit treb. I think he's going to bank on trebs, and he's going to hope eagles are good enough. Because this is not, like, Ghulam is not something that anyone is expecting to see this tournament. It's not something you see very frequently because Hindustanis aren't played a lot. I think it's possible ACCM does not remember how good this Ghulam is, and they just shred eagles, man. What about champions is under the infantry? It's not an option here. They can be plus eight, but I like it a lot, these bars on the right side. Yeah. You can raid, disturb a little bit. Mobility here matters. The only negative things for the Viper is Gulams are great. He has one castle. He's going to make a second, but if you lose the castles, you don't have the production as well yeah. with those Gulams, and then you can spam from the barracks. For now, military numbers, ACCM has a lot more. He does. And a lot more. Really, really a lot more. And if he keep raiding, Astis is still very dangerous. Look at the population. He's about to go up to Impedal of the Viper. But as we are talking, it's complicated. And he's in. Situation. And he's in. And yeah. Viper's been trying to wall this. And you're right. The side barracks have really distracted here. And ACCM, he might be able to get the champion if the raids give him some time. And he can uh, take Viper down. But there, there's enough Gildans to push it away. Towards the middle, Viper will have gotten his second castle up. And those pretty cool. economy trees that look at the gold he has in the back yeah, yeah. right now. I mean, with six relics, it's true that ACCM has a lot too. I believe that he needs to make the upgrade, the tech upgrade that gives you 10% more gold. And all the TC at the uh, outside he is the third relic got it by, by ACCM. I think he did it. If not, seven, two relics, it's impossible. Yeah, I mean, it you know, the, the problem then. Back to the unit thing is the the unit thing. Wow, I'm so great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, back to the unit conversation, man. Is Viper has great gunpowder too. So if Champion is your best answer to the Ghulam, then gunpowder still answers Champion, and then you suddenly need to switch into skirmishers here. This side base here is is the one thing that gives me confidence for ACCM. I love that. Eighth that is grade. so nice. It has already paid off for him. But Viper does have Ghulams over there, and he's looking to take care of that. Yeah, look at the army numbers. He's getting closer. You can see how chemistry is going to kick in in a moment. This is Elite Eagles as well, with plus four illumination blueprinted. Those monks are going to be so tanky. But how many monks he got? How many monks? Well, six monks already. Even if he's converting a few of those Ghulams with uh, some good combination. But the snake is having now a lot of army. And the castles are being targeted now for, for that trebuchet. Tristan. He need to repair those castles because without Gulams, even if you have more population, I don't know, man. You need those castles so badly. Yeah, and this this is because Vipers had to pull his Gulams to that right corner. So there he is to address this. It looks like he has enough to make sure that those raids won't do anything. So ACCM is going to shift to the left with some raids. Keep in mind, though, Viper does have that gunpowder now. So he's got enough Gulams. He's got some gunpowder towards the middle. Did, did, I don't know if Redemption's been in yet for ACCM, but if yeah, he yeah, can he get that, okay. He did. He so did if all. he did get that, he might be able to surprise Viper here and convert the cannons. Viper has not given ACCM any reason to get Redemption. So ACCM thinking ahead here could lead to a Bomber Cannon conversion. Okay, let's see what is going to happen now. There's so many monks. Can we even check Vodka how much HP got those monks right now? 75, it's okay. Oh, 80 now after Devotion, 80 HP. My goodness, the castle is now under two trebuchets. which is, he probably should forget now is him this area now because the Ghulams are there and focus completely on the other side. Nine range also for those hand cannoneers. Yep. He has eight, 10 more in the queue. This is crazy, absolutely crazy. Viper already with 1,000 more gold from the relics. Who has the advantage here? Because the Viper has so much army, Tristan. Yeah, I mean, I think it's gotta be Viper, but he still is a couple steps removed from this being his best comp. To my knowledge, he doesn't have elite Ghulam. It's possible we missed it here. He's getting raided there in the right. Like, his castle is being repaired. He's sinking stone into repairs instead of building more castles. Things could fall apart here for Viper. He's got those Ghulams on the right. And he that is helping. Let's see. The Eagles are going to dive. They have to avoid those Ghulams. He needs conversions, Tristan. He needs some conversion. He's not getting many conversions. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. The okay. Ghulams are insane. They are very, very good, but he's getting some conversions. He's under the castle. I don't know. Look at the numbers. 46, 27. I think this is still getting absolutely everything, but the castle is going to go down. Hand cannons are there. He holds somehow. I don't know how he's called in this situation, but the Bomber Cannon behind all this is going to take the Trebuchet down. And if he's losing those traps, he's going to be probably 
get number one from the Viper, or this is still a game that he can play ACCM? Well, I mean, he converted the Bomber. Ah. The fact that he converted the Bomber Cannon actually gives him a shot to take out Viper's Castle. Viper's got to wait for a new one here, but Viper's Hand Cannons and Gulams can also take out the Trebs here in a moment. So. Yeah, look at the range. Look at the range of those Hand Cannoneers. The Gulams are now going to take the Treb, which if the Castle is still not down, the Viper is taking absolutely everything here. What can ACCM do right now? I mean, we know ACCM, he's not going to give up. You know, he's not going to give up. He's raiding in the north as well. But what about the Adlal skirmishes? Is the only answer because you need to counter those hand cannons somehow, Tristan. Yeah, exactly. But but the problem is you need that combination, right? So let's see if we can continue to have the Eagles mixed in there. It is just such a tricky matchup at this stage. I think Viper predicted this with the with the way he's played this. As Viper goes for some quick walling there, that castle should protect most most of the north from the raids. And now it's his turn with Trebs on the castle of ACCM. And those Eagles aren't getting anywhere near those hand cannons. Dude. They melt. They are melting there against that, those units. The Eagles are going to be around. How many skirmishes he got? I need my glasses, Tristan. I don't see this. Okay, eight skirmishes, a lot more in the queue. And 33 army. The Viper has 60 military. 60 he just military, need to hold that area. Six relics. He's taking, you know, lots of gold. This ACCM is going to need to somehow get time, and he dives with those Eagles. These Eagles are so strong, and where are they? Ooh, they're gone, they're man. Gone. Did he make Garlan Wars? I don't think he has Garlan Wars. Can we take the Eagle? No. Imagine with plus eight, those Trebles. Well, he wanted to kill the Trebles. Yeah. If he take those Trebles down, he can definitely stabilize with that castle. But military numbers, ACCM, almost nothing. Because if we take the KD, the Viper, has 60 unit kill more. Does Viper have Elite Gulam? I must have missed it. No, no, no. He it, doesn't. It doesn't have Elite Gulam? He doesn't Gulam? have a thing. Oh, that's no, no, no. crazy. Yeah. No, yeah. Elite, I mean, these are regular, just plain old Castle Age Gulams, right? He, he doesn't have e even the Blast Furnace upgrade yet. Yeah. So, I mean, Viper's not even close to being capped out then. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And oh, he's I got those three Shreps still firing. I mean, ACCM's about to run out of stone. I know he's got 22 on stone, but he's got zero in the bag. Yeah, okay. He will need to buy some. Chemistry is going to be there. Still, ACCM missing some important upgrades. Well, very important upgrades as well. Garland Ward. Obviously, he's not thinking on um, infantry because those can cannoneers are just too powerful. How many he got? 23 yeah. can cannoneers. But now the trade can be okay. Look at those skirmishes. They have a crazy range as well. Yeah, they do have the range. Uh oh. I okay. do have the range. The problem is, is if the Ghulam gets in close, they're dead. And it's actually kind of funny. We got Ghulams and Eagles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big stand for ACCM because he converted them. He doesn't have the Ghulams here. Where are the Ghulams now for the Viper? I see also a dot on ACCM base. I think he's inside with some Eagles. Yeah, there's but one. But also one Ghulam here that he doesn't notice. Some on the outside, yeah. Okay. I think Viper forgets he doesn't have elite Ghulam here. With 30 Ghulams, you should be stalling production on everything to get a lead. Well, it's I, very easy yeah. as a player to just assume, like, remember you clicked it, but maybe you missed a little bit of resources at that time. Like, there's a massive jump in armor from yeah. but the uh, problem is that Ulam to Elite. He's just spamming it all the time. Like, he doesn't really have the resources gathered, you know, all together to, yeah, yeah, to yeah. make the upgrade as well. You cannot stop the production. How, how to make long the upgrade. is this castle going to stay up for ACCM? Oh my god. Forever. The villagers have been hammering this forever. Their arms are going to start cramping here. <laughs> Jeez, this is crazy. Yeah, so and now he has a stone. He has have a stone. Conscription on the... I mean, he has been playing all this without conscription that it makes you produce faster from all your buildings. Let's see now. He's going to try to kill those threats. He needs to kill those threats, but the Eagles are not even close to touch them anymore. Viper has 100 more kills. And keep in mind that Eagles are so much more expensive than the hand cannons and the Ghulams on the other side in terms of gold cost. And he doesn't actually have many more Eagles, man. I'm just seeing seven right now. Look at the army numbers. It's not 60 anymore, either. It's not 60 anymore because the... Yeah, because the Vietnam player is spamming... Skirmishers. Skirmishes forever. <laughs> 10 K viewers, let's go with ACCM here. And the Viper, you know, Bomber Cannon there. You need to convert. The monks are helping a lot as well to keep those units alive. They're healing. The yeah. Armor. Yeah. Man, this ACCM is... is, is He's a machine, man. He's playing against the Viper. He has better units. Pikeman upgrade to kill what? Well, in case that he bring in light caps, you know, he's thinking, okay, we need a counter. And, and actually, prevent look it. at the timing. At the same time, on the other side, Viper's getting cab upgrades. So it's look just on. it's just the game sense these players have, right? Incredible game sense to understand that what the opponent's going to do, what they should be doing in this situation. But, man, left side right now, the Ghulams have looped around. I know they're not elite. 
But those Ghoulims on the left corner. Can we take Vodka on the left to see those dot points? Yeah. Oh my god! 20 villagers have died. How many can kill with those Ghoulims? And those Ghoulims can continue into ACCM's base as well. And even though Viper hasn't progressed much further, that is still three trebuchets that have been firing on a castle. ACCM will have no future castles, man. He has yeah. put his stone, the stone his father passed down to him, and the stone that his grandfather put in his will into that castle, and now it's all gone. Finally, the castle is down, as you can see. The hand counter is still there. That TC is empty. There's nothing. Only the tone center, so you don't need to protect anymore. Here is so many, so many little, little skirmishes, some pikes as well, the monks. And now how you kill the castle? It's not only the hand counter is. You know, sorry, the traps. The castle is there. To, to prevent that one, yep. and you don't have bomber cannons yourself. You have. This is why we were talking. Like the Aztec has to win quick. If the game goes longer, you are out of tools. Yep. Especially against the Hindustanis. Yeah. The Hindustanis are a counter pick civilization. You can pick them against civs that are one sided on cavalry men, like uh, let's say like potentially Franks. Yeah. And then you can pick them against eagle civilizations because of the Ghulam. Viper's not using the Ghulam anymore, but still, the hand cannons and light cap is going to do more than fine. It also is less expensive for him. Uh, he doesn't have to spend as much gold. And yeah, this so just takes fights. us back to that fighting spirit from ACCM. He's going to continue to fight this one, but I mean, there's no way back for him now. Yeah, now 30 farmers only. He needs more, definitely, to keep the production. The Viper keep coming with more and more army. The Ghulam's coming from behind. He might, if he's getting now, he says he's going to raid even more economy. There was a point that ACCM was raiding Sorry, getting also Echo KD much higher, and now the Viper is the one who is killing more villages in the game. Yeah, if you have the better army and you are also killing more villages, what is left here from ACCM? Yeah, and it's it's tough too because you don't want to resign at 150 pop. You don't want to resign when you're Aztec with a couple relics and have these techs. Also, in the first game when you're losing, it's best to play on a little bit longer, uh, just kind of get get warmed up a bit more. Uh, this is all standard stuff here, but I mean, Viper's just moments away from killing all those gold miners. I and don't know. He knew what he needed to do here. He knew he needed golems. Yeah. And cannons, and he did an amazing job getting the six relics. I don't know if you didn't know this, but now I'm gonna tell you, Tristan, in these kind of games, ACCM only resigned with this over 5k score difference. We're getting closer, really? 4k, 5k. There's a rule 5k. It has to I be 5k. I think you're just good at predicting. If not, I think if you're not, it. I think you're guessing yeah. here. I like it though. Yeah. Let's see, 400. Okay, okay let's see. More. Let's see. High train, but the high train, the chat. I mean, no. level two high train. We need to go higher than this. This game deserves okay, a lot here more. Here it is. Look at that. Wait, what wait, I wait, told go you. Back to the what score. I told you. The score is was 5k back or not? Five k. Uh, I told you, man. Five k, man. Yeah, you got 5K. it. Call me. Good it. call. Good call. <laughs> I mean, listen. Again, I don't know. I don't know if you. <laughs> well, if this is a thing before this game or not. It's man. a thing, man. It's a but thing. Now, now you know. Okay. Yeah, you Pay attention. Me. Pay attention. <laughs> 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 well, don't, some tweet chat, 4.9, 4.9. Stop, stop in the stopping <laughs> the hype, man. We're hype with the 5K, okay? Uh, I mean, in maths, in the school, you go 4.9, and you what do what you say? It's 5? I get it, an uh, F. It's 5? Yeah. I get an a F because I got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have okay. extra homework <laughs> if I okay. talk back. No. <laughs> Viper has played excellent in this game. Yeah, that was so good. I mean, have control of the relics using the civilization at the maximum. No, no chances. But, but look game. at the draft and where Hindustanis came in compared to Aztecs. So Viper knew. He he thought about it. He said, oh, okay. Yeah. He said either drive graveyards or fortified clearing for Aztecs. He maybe thought, well, Mongols is amazing on dry graveyards and not anywhere else. So he's going to go Mongols there. It must be Aztecs on fortified clearing. And we didn't even see elite Ghulam. Like, I don't even think that Viper dominated, but I, I still think it could have been way better, right? So yeah. I think he just predicted it. And and you can predict, man. You can guess the correct civilization, but you still have to play it. And he got six relics there. It was like 6-0 on the kills there at one point at the start. He had an eco lead. It was It was just clean. Yeah. So, so clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was trying to do ACCM what he has to do, but it, it wasn't ever an oath there. Now we most likely going to have a Mars Madden or Hippopotamus. Let's see if they can tell us the, 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 the map, and then we will discuss about that. I, I, we might see Byzantines then in, in Hippopotamus as well. Could be a good choice, because we thought that could be on, on Arena, but uh, Beris also have galleys that are faster, and then the transition to Castle, which is, well, Beris is a very solid civilization in pretty much any of these maps. Yeah, if I had to guess right now, we go from ACCM side, just through the maps, it would definitely be Mongols on dry graveyards. Marsh Madness, it would make sense to see uh, Byzantines or maybe Armenians, Acclivities, Mayans, and then Berbers is kind of the leftover sieve, uh, or, or Byzantines. Um, for Viper... 
Uh, assuming it's going to be on ACCM's maps, right? Marsh Madness. Japanese is perfect. And then I think uh, Malians or Romans, like either of those three. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of Romans picked on graveyards these days because it's a really scout spear heavy map. So Knight Pike is good for the strong pikemen. The 5% extra efficiency for everything is super smooth. The problem is that this so. last could be also a good option, yeah. right? Like, uh, But this is what I like for those drafts. When it's hard to predict, it has to be hard to predict also for the player, for the opponent. Like some civilization that, because if it's too clear, this civilization is going to be for this map, it's a small advantage for your opponent. Yeah. And so it's kind of, you can play with that kind yeah. of things in, in, in the civilization choice. Yeah, I think I think ACCM is going to feel like he was too, too easy to predict after game one. Now, Mongols, you could predict on dry graveyards. I still think it's one of the best civs. That's part of the yeah. problem here. Is like if you you could be predictable as a player or with your strategy if it is one of the best strategies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? It doesn't matter. Like you, it you know matter. that it's going to happen, but exactly. you cannot counter. Exactly. Right? It's yeah. like, okay. And Aztecs wasn't it. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, not in that situation, so. Okay. Let's see what it's going to be. Do we know the map? They told me the... the, the well, Viper, I, I think they had to step away and fix them. They might oh, not yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. It's possible they're joining they the lobby click. now and ACCM yeah, yeah. will get to choose, but... Okay. I think you go... Uh, I mean, the good thing for us as far as predictions is Marsh Madness and Hippopotamus are very similar. It's a uh, hybrid, right? We could also see throwback strat, Berbers on Hippopotamus, Villager Rush. Oh, because last year the hippo, the TC spots for the hippo were closer, and so villagers were always taking wood really close to each other, and we saw a lot of vill fighting, and they changed the map because of that. But ACCM might want to use the faster Berber but bills. Last year the Berber bill is still ten percent faster. Now it's been nerfed. It's yeah, 5%. it's now five percent. Now it's five percent. But hey, five percent is five percent. It's still fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to do that against the Viper. It might that you lose the yeah, no, really fight and you got the, 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 the speed and then yeah. you're still losing. Because they're you quick, quick ball. You know? Yeah, yeah to going to Vil fight Viper is like uh Yeah, well I, I don't I don't I can't. He has the fighting spirit, right? But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't want to do that. Maybe it's too much, maybe it's too much for this one. Let's see if we wanna know the, the map in a moment. They are going to start as you can see. And um the Viper want to be in the top two, and for being in the top two, he need to win this series. Yes, yes. Yeah, so to, to be more clear on what that means, this is day four of the groups, tomorrow's the last day. At the conclusion of five days, the top two players will get a bye to the semifinals, and they will also be on separate side of the semifinals, which is pretty big if you yeah. want to avoid maybe one or two of the players you think can give you problems. Let's say Hera. Yeah, so like right. right now, I mean, we've got Hera Tata later on today. Winner of that is definitely going to be in a really good spot to get a bye to a semi. You want to avoid one of those guys in the ideal world. Um, so yeah, this big opportunity for the Viper, I agree with you. And then for ACCM, he needs wins. And ACCM goes Mongols here in Hippopotamus, game number two. I had thought Mongols would be chosen somewhere else, but there is some additional hunt out there. And Mongols have, do a great job at scouting early. I prefer another map as well. Mongols. I prefer another map than, than this one. Well, I will no. tell you one thing that, that is notable. If we could just look to the back corners behind the player bases, uh, just there should be hunt somewhere, unless I'm stupid. Oh, but there's in the north. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you know about that, uh, there's actually hunt in the south and the north as well. Like, if you know about that, you can actually take advantage of it, man. But it wouldn't be the craziest thing to try and sneak here if you're ACCM out to those areas. Yeah, but if Viper Explore, Viper Exploring the map is usually uh, really, really strong, yep, really yep, good. Yep. Japanese, you get the, the water control, and then they might few men at arms going. I don't know. You can go also scout. Uh, the map is very interesting. Like, this map is very interesting. It's, well, he has kind of fixed, let's say, generation, but, other, but even like that, uh, you can move also for so, so many spots. What do you prefer here? Going for the wood in the middle or like some players has been doing going at the back? Mm, I actually like the wood in the middle and I just think it's it's a bigger wood line and that's safer? the main. It's not safer yeah. because it's uh, closer to where the enemy can come in, but it's actually easier to wall because it's a bigger wood line and you can stay there. Whereas the other areas in the back, you got to, um, you know, you got to move. You got to move, and yeah. you don't want to move. <laughs> yeah. You want your lumberjacks to stay. So, yeah, I think that's fine. I like this so far. ACCM, in terms of benefiting from Mongols, he's taken in the two elephants, which you start with. He's even pushed in some deer from the middle. So, lots of Mongol hunt, and that's the big thing why you would see them here. Uh, they have an incredible late game. I think the the light cav and the lancers is really your mid game strengths with the Mongols. 
Uh, but we have seen, we, remember, remember, we were casting, and we saw Mongols on a map where we never thought we'd see even a castle. And we somehow saw Elite Mangadai and even Siege on a Jerk So yeah. I'm just saying, maybe yeah, yeah, we yeah. bring it out, man. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. we will somehow get to that oh, man. in this game. Oh, man. Anyway, we see here the Mongol civilization. Now we're going to check Japanese uh, civilization. The, the thing for this matchup, in my opinion, is that Mongols need to get the initiative. If you are behind, Japanese is too dangerous, even more on Viper Hands. Yeah, Mongols absolutely need to take the initiative. Because like, you'll run out of um, a hunt. hunt. And then once the hunt's gone, what you're else? just a normal sieve. <laughs> <What else? laughs> even, I would say even weaker, because to make them really strong, you need very long time. Yeah. The, the super late game, yeah. right? And yeah. This is not really what you want. Anyway, let's check for those fans. Right? There, there's, a big, there's a big thing that needs to be pointed out here. Can we see uh, Viper scouting? Okay. This is it. So this is Viper scouting. Notice that he didn't find anything whatsoever in the top left area of the map. Normally, there's a dock. This is the first time I've seen a player not dock. Viper should know now something aggressive on land is coming. If I have fish and he doesn't, I will stay ahead. And I know it's Viper, but he needs to preemptively wall. We're now seeing ACCM. He need, Viper needs to preemptively wall stuff because ACCM is going for a really fast uptime to go for scouts. Now we see both players again. And as you can see, this is a stable. Why he didn't make the dock? Well, because he's going for the hunt. Yeah, and he preferred to prioritize that. He has the mill taking all that extra food that is absolutely insane. But even with that uh, extra bonus, resources collected is only a hundred more than his opponent because he held the extra fish. Yeah, the fish, exactly. And those fishing ships will continue to work. Viper has the same amount of villagers, and then Viper also has the fishing ship. So it's very rare for players to be okay with having lesser workers here. And that's essentially what ACCM has gone for as he's, he's trying desperately here to get any hits in he can, but for the time being, Viper, he waits till feudal. He's dropping his barracks now. Like I said, Viper quick walls or pre-walls are needed here because the second scout's out already. Would you come in these situations if you are up quicker? You know that you have already a scout on the field, a spear. Your opponent is it's just up later, and you see that he's doing now the barracks, so does he have malicious? Why not come in with a tower? Well, where are you going to tower? That's well, he, he made the barrack quite far, right? Yeah, that's I think Viper, and that's that's actually something we need to give credit to Viper for. The positioning of Viper's buildings there makes that tower Avoid feel that. really awkward. Avoid that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you can take one Lambrican, but do you still have the second? Watch so this, though. Back. ACCM, he's going to the dock villagers. This is really smart. And Viper, he's known for quick walling, but let's see He can't here. there. He can't there. In that area, you cannot build the palisade, but he can build it here. He's going to be able to save the village. Let's see this spear as well. He's not going to save it. Or he will do the magic. He's gonna try and save one of them, and he's okay. gonna he's gonna be able to save one of them. Beautiful quick wall there from Viper, but at the end of the day, he still lost a vill. Yeah. And ACCM is docking to make some fire galleys to kill that fish. Viper might not expect that. Yeah, and he's now waiting there with the spear. He noticed he's gonna be gathering the food, and well, he can still make some more damage. The scouts are now coming on the wood line. He's gonna take how many villagers? He's gonna take a second oh, villager. Oh, no. zero. It's he's gonna be it. zero villagers. He's save it, man. He save it. Well, he's on point. He's paying attention, but he's coming back again. He's trying to find the one that did really damage. He's gonna be able to do it. Whoa. He got it. He got it. Now he's two villains down for the Viper. Could be another yeah. one. Could be another one. And Viper no. with a crazy quick he's one. What is that? And, oh, and they say that Dandy is the quick wall. Then what is the Viper, right? Oh my goodness. Okay, he did it. He saved it. But even like that, he has lost already too. So the damage, it's already done. If we take in consideration I, that ACCM didn't go for the fish. Yep. I got to say it. Why not pre-wall? Why not pre-wall? Yeah. I, don't, I don't understand it. I mean, I'm not as skilled as him, right? So I, I would maybe have more confidence in my abilities if I were him. But you just pre-wall it. Pre-wall it, and then those villagers are always fine. It makes the rest of the game a bit easier for you here if you're Viper. Now, here we have a big moment for Viper. He did add a fire galley. He's having success. Don't tell me that, Tiger. No, Tiger won't kill the vill there, and Viper's expanding to the berries. He's also expanded to the hunt, but, but this I think is ACCM saw that. This is called when they pass in the POV, it was the villager. Yeah. He didn't notice. Now he's gonna, still going to find looking. it. He's, he's going to find it. He's going to find it. He's going to find it. How many villagers there in danger? It's going to come with so many scouts. Viper is a god with the quick walling, but this is too many scouts, Tristan. Yeah, too many scouts. you got to do the same thing as last time. you got to let some of these die, and then you got to try a quick wall some of them. He don't notice. No, well, he's he in the spear, okay, but... Actually, it's... Oh. He's trying to quick wall the other He's one. He's gonna wall the, the, the scout. No, he cannot. Oh. What? I hate you, Viper. <laughs> I mean, he don't lead. I hate you. I hate this guy, man. I, I mean, he, 
Well, he's in the sound. He's in another I mean, room. Don't worry. Know? Don't worry, man. He's going to get rightfully punished like normal humans do because the other villagers are still exposed. He won't be able to get the quick walls down on this one. Oh, what? I can't do even more now, man. And the archer's alive. <laughs> and the archer is alive. That is unfair. This should be against the rules. What is that? And I'm going to tell you something, Tristan. If production replay this, I hate production too. <laughs> we hate everyone here. Oh, beautiful teleport there. Thanks, to okay. me. That was insane. It, it, Viper's archer with 10 tiles back. But, you know, listen, Viper, you know, he's staying in this despite all the damage he's taking. And those archers are sitting there on the goal. This here. is what we want to see, the POV replay. Sorry that I interrupt you. Very good. Very good here for production, but if we can replay the other moment, it's gonna be even better. Actually, but wait a little bit. Actually, no, don't yeah. just don't do just it stop, now. Stop yeah. doing replays because we're not gonna get to watch the game because yeah. it's been like 16,000 quick walls production. We can save it. <laughs> yeah, we can yeah, do yeah. a montage after this game. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, right, Unbelievable. Right now, 400 food in the bank for ACCM. He's got 300 gold, and he's just going for scouts. He's got like one skirm out there, but that's not really where it needs to be yet. Another opportunity for ACCM. Now he's too close to the TC, he shouldn't lose anything there. Now he's walling and yeah, now the village yeah, yeah. is gonna be close to the town center, no problem. As you mentioned, the pre-wall, is he doing for the viewers? Because right now, he's, if he's still not walling no. his wood line, there's a, the scout, no, 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 go back, go back, there's a lot of scouts on the wood, there you go. <laughs> to a spirit, ah, oh, this is too much going on, Tristan. Yeah, yeah. For everyone, you I, know? I seriously, I think we can watch this quick walls later. Yeah, yeah, later, <laughs> later, in the highlights, in the highlights, <laughs> you know? In the highlights, okay. And now, we are paying full attention, and you guys can see, a scout, Arches is gonna be inside, no, uh, I mean, vodka, <laughs> vodka. The nickname now is perfect for this game because you're gonna need a one to to see all the action, Mr. Mr. Tristan. <laughs> okay, be careful. This the spear. Remember that infantry. Oh, if you take that the spear, those scouts are in real danger. Like well, the, the infantry for Japanese attack 33% faster. That's why you have to be even more careful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right now, I uh -oh. mean, big thing is how are we gonna get to Castle Age? ACCM. That should be another Vil pick. There's no quick. Bang up. I mean, well, what is this? I said it even in Spanish. I mean, seriously. I mean, for real? He said with a house. But, but, it's not okay. even a quick wall, it's a house. There's a theme, though. Every time there's been a quick wall, he pays the price with a villager dead, right? Yeah. And at ACCM, he came in here wanting kills, and he has found them. Now, that might be a villager of his own that dies. But ACCM's killed five eco from the Viper. ACCM has clicked up to Castle Age, and ACCM has a civilization that can make lancers, wow. and you cannot, I, I shouldn't say cannot, but, yeah, yeah. but you cannot easily quick wall out lancers that have one range. But just look how beautiful what a job save. ACCM has done, that with how many villains he has saved the Viper, he still killed five. Yep. You know, five, who could have been 10 probably. He's there on the way is, to finally. Castle East. He finally walled, yes, very quick, 60 minutes. Okay, and uh, now he's on the way to Castle East as well, the Viper. The advantage is for ACCM. Yeah, 100%. I mean, 100%. 100%. There's clear. something happening in like the middle of the bases right now. Uh, we've got some action there. That's a lot of archers from Viper. Ooh, wow. That is going to be a problem for the next 90 seconds. But ACCM's done a great job to repair his ship here. Viper trying to save his ship. He's blocking with the fishing ship, and Viper is going to He's kill the ship. It. And now the villager probably too. Yeah, because the wolf is there, not going to let him go away as fast as he wants. He's about to lose it. In now, maybe ACCM is the one with the quick oh! wall. He lost it. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. What happened in this map with the villagers, Tristan? Oh, uh, okay. bad day to be a villager, let me tell you. Okay. Well, it's stable. He has the skirmishes. Where are the skirmishes from ACCM in the good position? A scout and a is going to be able to defend the goal. He has Fletching in those skirmishes. ACCM will be fine right here. Yeah, and Viper might just go for Vil picks because he knows that the, the life of these archers is not going to be long. And at, he's running this direction as well, which makes a whole lot of sense. But beautiful play from ACCM, man. He's collected, he's collected similar amounts of resources. He's got that Castle Age timing possible. Oh, I know the arch is gone. He also okay. didn't use the market too much, right? Like, this no. is normal eco. He took a lot of the shore fish with villagers, I'm noticing, but he's still got farms. And yeah. he still has the potential to kill Viper's fish as well. He's worthy war guy every now, I think it is, and he's doing. There you go, he's killed by the armor. I mean, the, the thing is, after all this battle, he's ahead in military, but village number, population is very similar. Uh, you need to make all the damage you can because the snake is gonna be there and trying to come back. Now he's trying to kill you those You also have tanks. to attack that ship. Yeah. Like, you actually have to attack the ship and not oh, the fish man. because you might lose both your ships. Uh, Japanese power here for uh, the Viper. Double HP, armor also for those fishes, if you remember. And now the snake is going double archery range. Huh. On a, oh, this is Cav Archers. Yeah, I think it's Cav Archers, it's but Cav we Archers. need free walls. We got Lancers coming to our base here. 
and Viper gets some some house walls down. Viper sees it, and ACCM should know it's Cavalry Archers. He has a decision to make here. Like, does, does he go Elite Skirm? Maybe he has some Skirms left over. What does he want to do if Viper's trying to mask half Archers? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I would go Siege here, but he's doing an extra on center to be safe on the woodland. If he has skirmishes, now that goal is going to be in danger. Now that goal is going to be in danger, not uh, Botkin. He's doing the bloodlines. Is Siege a good option here now? I mean, he doesn't have the wood yet, mm. ACCM, but uh, the goal is... I, is as, a, as a player, you're always happy if you're denying gold like this, and you don't have to invest anything more into it. Yeah. I actually think he's he's fine, and you normally opt for the eco. So, the second TC is coming up for him behind all this, Viper still doesn't have a lot to push him back with. ACCM still has the, dom uh, the dominant position on water. So, this is going to be really awkward for Viper to ever come back from. Right. Our population is clear. I mean, yeah. just look at the village, but the army numbers is really, really important here. It's true that he has also the water control. He's looking really healthy and the double TC for both players. Now he's taking the fish. Let's see if he's going to notice and kill that galley. But two more villages down for the Viper here, or three? You cannot quit wall against. I mean, if you quit wall against. Well, you got to run past him. You got to run past him, ACCM. You, you, okay, can't, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. hit from behind like that. Yeah. That was a little sloppy, but obviously he's doing a lot of different things right now. Did he took the fish there? He, Can we check the fish? No, he didn't kill it. Yeah, but but I mean the villagers, the monks, everything at Viper's base so exposed. This is just crazy. Okay. Viper just can't really move around right now. Viper has seven on food. That includes those three really inefficient fishing ships. This should snowball hard for ACCM as long as he keeps the pressure on. Yeah, well, we can see how he's doing now. Botkin Arrow for those skirmishers. Milita numbers still close to double, and he's taking the... He's taking everything, man. Yeah. I mean, he's him taking everything. I was going to say, he's taking all, he's taking everything. And Viper, like, I'm looking Look at, at his that resources. DC on the north that Viper is doing all out of the action. But we will find, we will check it out uh, soon. He's now converting a skin. Look at that tone. This is a really good tone center. I mean, he's going to find it ever, ACCM. He probably didn't even explore that goal. It, it's a good TC, but he's going to need time with it, man. But he needs an answer now at, to, to push back this army. And I think yeah. for Viper, he needs, like, eight cav archers and then he can really start to micro i'm a little surprised that he's spending so much on water because there's no there's not like a big fishing eco left yep. on this map so i'd like to see viper just focus on the cav archer production that's what we thought he was going to do at the start of castle age still no horse collar though i don't know how many farms he got because that can be painful in the later game but now he's going to try to kill finally the fish i think he will eventually yep. yeah he's getting now yep. he's getting now and Suffering economy here for the Viper Teresa. Yeah, it's it's rough. It's rough. Suffering. I mean, but he's gonna he's hoping that he can just survive for now and counterattack like this, but he goes right into he's the losing. TC fire. Oh, that's he's losing. Because this happening a lot of things at the same time. He's attacking here on his economy on the farmers and then he's trying to counterattack. He it's... converted two lances though, which is good, but this position is really complicated for the snake, Tristan. It's funny, it's funny how he converted two lancers and as he was looking at that. ACCM was looking at the Cav Archers, right? So Viper gains two units as he loses two units. And that's just that's just a, a, the rare, clear example of how multitasking works in this game, <laughs> right? Um, pros and cons all the time. And on a map like this, when ACCM brings this level of pressure, it is really hard, man. I mean, we saw it when ACCM played Hera. Hera did not underperform when he got smashed on Marsh Madness by ACCM. So, and that's even more exciting for the series because ACCM still has Marsh Madness remaining in his maps. Wow. So if he wins this game, yeah, he could do maybe do a similar thing to Viper or Marsh Madness, then we could have the game five. I want. mean, ACCM maybe cannot win a series, but you feel that he has a very stable performance. Like he always performed, let's say, well. You don't see like big, big mistakes or Titanics. You know what I mean? Yeah. The other player has to win him. Yep. Right? Has to play better. If not, ACCM is gonna get you. Of course. Right? Yeah. He's a he's a great he's player. A great he's, he's player. Been top he's ten. A competitor. He's been top ten for the last. Super three years. solid, right? Super stable yep. every time, well, you know. But. But he has insane early feudal age potential. Yeah. And so if like he gets those sieves, like the oh. Mongols, he does he, he does a better job than, than maybe any any players out there in terms of his aggression. Because like even Hera Viper, they can do the crazy early aggression, but they oftentimes opt not to. They play a little bit more defensive, right? ACCM just throws units at you. And he has simply been all over Viper ever since Feudal Age began. Can, can we take a bot can, a POV from uh 
Fog of War from uh, ACCM to see if he has spotted any of the other TCs. This is the Viper, let's go for. No, he doesn't see. He didn't even explore the north, so he doesn't know that Viper is yeah. there. He didn't explore also the, the other the other TC. So Viper is on four tone centers. He still need to do damage, more damage, because the Viper is still not so far behind with the village number, even if he lost already 11. Yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned though, Mem, there's so little gold spread out throughout the map, yeah. and then there's these massive main golds that are very far forward. So if ACCM is going to drop a castle on that, that is going to be horrible for Viper as Viper loses the monks. Great addition with Lycav there. Gold is going to be the issue for Viper. The Would other resources he's kind of catching up with, but he needs gold. Would you buy the castle now from ACCM? Floating almost a thousand gold. 100%. Yes, I will buy and make the castle there. Yeah, 100%. You know? And you know what happened is Viper gets two conversions on my Lancers, and then I don't have the army, and then the castle gets denied, <laughs> and then Memb is like, oh, what is he doing? You know, and then I stop playing tournaments. So <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, let's see the Siege War shopping. I think he's preparing. Now, if you if he's doing now a couple of his Scorpions or a Mangonel, he's going to have the time and he's going to have the momentum. It's 500, 500 stone. It's gonna be 1,000 of gold. It's still a lot of army for both players. He's getting closer because it's four ton centers, Tristan. So mm, the game is getting closer. It's still advancing for AZCM. But uh, look at the army now. Army is getting from higher. Viper. Yeah. Yes. Japanese it's, it's CA are no joke. I'd like to see Viper squeeze in bloodlines, though. I'm seeing a lot of weak cav archers out there. And something that can help with that is the bloodlines upgrade. He'll probably be getting it soon because I see him buying some food. But uh, obviously now you go for the defensive castle. You don't want to move forward, Bem. And uh, you want Mangadai production. Like, Mangadai are in one of the best units in the game. So I think a safe castle is more than fine. Yeah, he's doing there. He's doing there. Is that safe? Well, he's doing <laughs> not forward. But now, <laughs> look at the amount of farming he has. He's doing a Mangadal. Where's the skin resist? Are there a skin resist? Ooh, is this okay, that's, that's a, if he can get that up. It kind of protects his main gold. There's extra golden stone there. That's actually a really nice cast. Even the bear is now is here with some light caps. And the old lights that can do some damage here. He's taking how many villages? He's taking a few more. He's going to take like three villages more. Already three villages. He's going to take a fourth one. There you go. He's taking more. He's losing quite some here. 11 villages more. And upgrades not even will borrow for the Viper. So ACCM with a very, very solid position here. Even if the army from the Viper is still... I love here. this. I love this. Like, Viper's oh. got the CA mass, but the, the cab archers have to be in one spot. And so as Viper chases the units in the north, he runs into some fire ships, which kind of hurts. He's also got like having the south. This is beautiful from ACCM. Yeah, ACCM is also adding now Otpos in the north. Eventually, he's going to find the other tone center. The Mangrel is still there. He's coming with more light cast. The Mangrel is going to take the Scorpion. He got it. And now with the light cast, he's going to be able to clean those Kavarches. No, because the Viper is on point with the Mangrel. He's really on point. He's going to take the Mangrel. He, he but, is? But they're still killing the Scorpion yeah. with, the, with the light cast. He's yeah, fine. No bloodlines. Yeah, yeah, Viper needs that bloodlines upgrade. He'd get extra HP, and that could really help your... But it's so like, Imperial. it's so difficult to get the decisions right when you are getting attacked in three to four different spots. And then every time you move out, you've got another group of like have running into your base. Ooh. This is just ACCM playing this game perfectly right now. Imperial H as well for the Viper, but he's 20 is more. I love the TC he's doing now, ACCM. Under the castles, you got the timing to go up to Imperial. You will get also those berries, probably the goal as well. And, and now, what? First Trebuchet and then into Magundais? I, I mean, right now, it, it, it seems like he just wants to go lead Skirm, and I was I was really thinking about this because I would just queue up Mangadai because the unit's so good. But he feels as though he might not have the numbers compared to the Cav Archers. Yeah. So he's actually going for a really big brain play here to just, just go with Skirms. Go with Skirms, save Mangadai for later, maybe use the castles for Trebs. Uh, but Mongols, I mean, have so many options, right? They could still raid with Hussar, right? Their late game is insane. And those are really tanky Hussar. They don't have the, the, the plus four, yeah, but they have a lot more HP, almost 20 HP more. Don't remember, it was 18 or something. Oh! Oh my god, he went... Man, they're on point with the micro. Look how much things yeah, are really happening, good. and they're really on point. Really good, and Viper's still no bloodlines. Hey, you know, Viper's, no cav archers, Viper's cav archers shouldn't be fighting skirms. Oh but man, look at the split oh, micro man. from ACCM. Okay. This is beautiful. Like, this is so nice. I, I think Great it, game, huh? Yeah, Great it, game. It's one. interesting how you know this has happened in a lot of series of ACCM, where the first game he kind of struggles to really show what he's made of. Check but now people are looking at this. Maybe they didn't know a lot about ACCM before. And now they're like, oh, I get it now. Like, I, I get why everyone freaks out about this guy. He is a freaking god. Yeah. And look at now. This castle is, I mean, he's playing safe. Why to go Why to go wild, right? He filled with the advantage. He's doing Siege Workshop. Onager Rams. I mean, whatever he's doing is going to be great here. Mm -hmm. 
Like, yeah. how do you stop? Because with the army he has, I mean, he doesn't stop the Rams, and the Ornets kill also the army, so it's fine. I mean, it's looking so bad for Viper. ACCM could consider, like, Militia at this point, or, like, Champion or something. Yeah. Viper's got, he's got eight Cav Archers without Bloodlines. He's got four Monks, he's got one Manganel and a Scorpion. Like, it's not good for Viper at the moment. And with the Imp advantage being there for ACCM, I, I really think Viper's got maybe one more attempt, right? And it's probably got to be Cav Archers, but still he's so far away from a critical mass. And if we think about this, what the Viper has done really wrong in this in this game? I don't really recall. Well, like, anything wrong, anything you know? that you can question for Viper? The pre-walls in the start. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the main thing. But like anything you question for Viper has to be because ACCM earned the position. Exactly. Right? He... We question players because the other players have, have made us question it, because they have showed up and they have done the right things. So it's and been we all ACCM. Talking, as we were talking in the start, you are the Mongols, you want to get the initiative. He has got the initiative the whole game. Yep. Being aggressive, being going forward, going to the left, to the right, trying to get the, the, the fish, you know, but controlling his macro really well. He got the hand card even. He got all the upgrades. He has everything. Yep. He has everything. Now Cap Rams, chemistry. He might lose all those skirmishes, but his main push probably is in the south, if we can check now. Trebuchet and Skirmish is coming. You need to kill that one because remember, that Japanese got get the Peru those crazy towers still don't think they can stop I'm ready Mongo City Pity. I'm ready for Siege Ram dude like, yeah let's see let's see a big old choo choo right into Viper's Ooh, base it's gonna, be, will. it's gonna be capped Ram all of Viper's buildings are about to go down to these Rams look at this Ram train dude that's crazy choo choo and it's it, coming yeah <laughs> it's coming it's coming yeah he might be Siege Engineer I don't think he has Siege Engineer uh -oh. you know I know the castle but that's gonna be a doubt one it's gonna be a doubt a doubt cast oh huh <gasps> Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's happening here, right? Okay, but well, he's still. getting he's getting rammed to death right yeah. now, so he got a little distracted. ACCM will still probably complete that because he can send some army up there, and the Rams have not been countered yet. Still no big commitment to that killer siege unit. Ram! And siege siege Ram! Ram! Wow! Then make the drill, and we are going to 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 drive all the buildings from the Viper to the damn hell, really. I'm a little concerned, though, because you need something to protect this, the Rams, too. And he has nothing to stop. Well, Viper's made Samurai. So, like, six to ten okay. Samurai could maybe kill the Rams. Samurai are pretty Can we good. focus in the south? We need the Rams. We need the Rams. And there's only two Rams here. The Siege Rams are not yet there. Skirmishes are... Also, he's double the army, man. Yeah. He's still double the army, but, yeah, you don't need to... You I mean, they're not. A, they're never going to be oh. elite samurai. They're never going to have a lot of armor. This is still a lot of pressure. But it's just worth noting the Viper hasn't been. He hasn't seen Mangadai yet. You know, we're still waiting. But oh man, he's doing now. He's doing now. Yeah, Sea Dram is in. Bracer. Oh, Bracer wasn't in. Yeah, it wasn't missing that. I, I was like, oh crap. Okay, that yeah. explains some things as well. And yeah. Yeah, now the Siege Rams, the thing about the members, you only need like two or three of them, and they're wrecking buildings. It soaks up a lot of the arrow fire, a lot of the attack from enemy units, and ACCM is simply all over Viper, as we've been saying. Yeah. So and much opportunity for him to finish this game. The it's resources over. are insane. It's over? No. It's a pause. Okay, I thought it was over. So, even those I, being skirmishers, the Samurais have only plus one. It's not a stopping, but... No, no, no. I think I think they needed. he needed to fix something. I think ACCM yeah, yeah, yeah. is... is uh, just fixing something. We said nearly run through the hall. I'd never seen a man run so fast. Oh, wow. We have another, another man <laughs> running through the I'm hall. I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully not an issue. The Viper's uh, bloodline's hotkey isn't working. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's, it's just really big upgrade that he's missed here. And uh, clearly it is on Viper's side. So we'll, we'll keep you guys updated on what exactly it is. But... It gives us time to analyze the situation. And oh, the game being fantastic. Viper has three on gold, and I'm not seeing an easy area for him to get gold anywhere else. Just two relics is the only good thing. Yeah, Just that's two nice. Relics, 600 gold already in the bank, no relics for ACCM. ACCM will have three castles, and he has the resources right now to get Elite Mangadai. I think if you just go wow. full Elite Mangadai with Seedram, there's nothing Japanese can ever yes. do. And yeah, we're back in business here, folks. Thanks for your patience. 
and Viper is just... I mean, we thought it was the GG call, yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's possible that it could come in soon. He has 120 Seas Village with almost an Entouch economy, because at this point, if you're playing against the Viper, you have lost 11 Villains, that's really nothing. Yeah. Really nothing. And the ramps keep going. It's still, I think, is missing Siege Engineer. For those people that don't know, Siege Engineer affect to the trebuchet with the range, but also to the ramps. Yeah. So it's going to make them more powerful, you know? But this army is powerful enough to dominate. Yeah, exactly. And and I think the Mangadai now will come in. Elite Mangadai is on the way. This unit shreds any type of siege. It shreds really any unit except yep. maybe Skirms. And I haven't seen Viper over 15 of any type of army this game. He just never had the time to do it. And it just begins to get look more and more complicated. I'm sure right now he feels dead. But he's looking at his pop mem and he's seeing 160. So it's no healthy. one's going to resign no, no, no. at 160 pop. No, no, no. It's healthy, you know. And since he see only the skirmishes and the ramps only, he feel like, okay, I can do some samurais. Maybe if I can reach Onegarabre, they can do the job. But when he see amount of Magudais fully abraded, that's probably going to be different. He yeah. still doesn't have a lot. He has 10 only. But he might hear 20, 30 elite Magudais. Then what you do with this army? Yeah, and it, it will be at that number soon. And that's, I mean, we'll see Hussar as well. I was kind of kidding when I said that we would see Mongol late game at the start. <laughs> I was like, yeah. this game's going to be over by Castle Age or something, but... Wow, incredible performance. Viper does have some resources back there, but he can't freely move out to them without being spotted. And okay, well, Viper still stays alive here. Oh, those monks! He's sending four monks forward. Oh, no, what you want? Four <laughs> monks down! Ay, ay, ay. Well, all the monks are bye bye. Skirmishes is still versus skirmishes, but he's hiding his what? Is this. How many Magudas? Okay, it's 10. I thought that for a moment that was 40. You know, I was like, <laughs> what the hell? I mean, I really well, need he's got some. he's got some in the back of his base, I noticed. And yeah, he must be bringing them forward. And now he's got the Siege Rams coming in towards the castle. Make the drill, please. He's missing that Arbor that they, they, they really eat those Rams. It's so fast. You know, the Magudas are coming. He's going to try to kill those units. He can't. He's repairing the trebuchet. That castle is going to be down. He just move it. Uh, his main attack into... Choo -choo. Yeah, Thumbrin and Parthen Tactics. That's the problem with the mind that we don't see that often because they need millions of upgrades. Yeah, yeah, and drill upgraded. as well. Drill as yeah. well, right? Obviously, drill's going to take some resources. I think he's he's fine. He's got the traps. Siege Rams have gone down, but it's still reactions from Viper, and ACCM's got the gold to spend, and Viper has a fourth of his economy repairing that castle that will now fall. And his population is actually higher than it was before, but he is so close to losing like 50, 60 pop. Yeah, I mean, it's really believed that ACCM is in a position that he only can lose the game itself. It's not that the Viper can win the game. ACCM can lose it because he has a very important advantage. 200 population, 50 army. The Viper only 15 military. It's almost no army at all. The man with bonus against the siege is going to clean those trebuchets very fast and ACCM is going to get the 1-1, at least that the Viper is doing a miracle. And miracles rarely happen. Yeah, th this isn't doable. This is not winnable for the Snake. He sent Villagers in after Trebs. Not a good game to be a Viper Villager. <laughs> <laughs> GG has been called ACCM. Mr. Trista, Mr. T90 with a beast performance. Yeah, beast seriously. Performance it was in insane. Game. It really? was insane. Yeah, the guy was unbelievable this game. He just kept coming, right? Like Viper would swat him away with a quick wall here, and then he'd show up there, and it just went back and forth. And I hope he's locked in right now. It certainly seems like it, because he can beat Viper today if he continues to play like that. That was an early Civ pick for him. I think in Viper's game planning, he would have expected that that would be a really tough matchup. That was also the home map for ACCM. A Viper now has graveyards and acclivity to go to. Could always go to Marsh Madness, but yeah. that's ACCM's home map. So I expect Viper to try and get a win on the board by switching to one of his home maps you now. You know what I enjoyed the most in the previous game? Try to remind a moment after the first aggression happened, there was a pause between the, uh, in the players. A, the, the a, pause a pause between pause the action? In the action, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, don't, re I don't remember. Yeah. It was nonstop action. And now, and now try to remember after the first bit of action when we ever looked at ACCM space. Never before. <laughs> when when Viper did the pause at the end of the game, he was probably checking, you know, like, yeah, it's crazy. He dominated. And I like it because we rarely make good predictions in this regard. He, we said he need to take the initiative with the Mongols. Yeah. He did exactly now, that. Now, I do, we have to say, talking about Viper, because yep. Mongols can take great initiative. That's great. I know he can quick wall, but that was a clear example of where someone needs to pre-wall. You yeah. know, he knew his opponent didn't have a dock. He knew 
it would have to be aggression on land. And so the scouts before yes, they were there. You know? And it's like some of the quick walls are fine. Great, because you had some villagers exposed. But the wood line should never even be a question. There should be, you know, you had a gate, you pre-wall it with eight palisades, two houses, and those villagers are always protected. So that's that's something there for Viper. Maybe his overconfidence with his ability to do it last minute uh, hurt him a little bit, and those things can snowball. Yeah, they started, I believe, I don't know if we know the map, but anyway, we're going to see in a moment. I think, I, oh, it's a clivity because I just cheat. <laughs> you cheat? <laughs> I cheat, and I see now the map is going to be a clivity. This map brings huge memories, and now we have an amazing match. I love this matchup. Berber versus Incas. It's so interesting. I will favorite here Incas because he's insane. But if you play beast mode with Berbers, you have a, a, a shot here or not? What do you think? Well, I mean, Incas have the options for everyone, right? Incas have cheap units. Incas have a great economy. Incas can beat any Civ in the game. So I do think Incas on paper are the superior civilization here. But if you misstep once against the Berbers, they have the cheap stable units, and those knights can snowball on you, and Pikeman Monk that Incas have available might not be enough. Now look at this from Viper. He's going forward, and laming is allowed in this tournament, and Eagles are especially good at that, and Viper's Eagle is very close, and he's actually pulled away, hoping ACCM doesn't see him, and he is going to try and kill this villager. Now if the boar gets hits, this would help, but Viper in the end realizes it's too close it's to the too TC. Close to the TC. It's yeah. too close to the TC. It's too close to the TC. Well, this is Berber's now civilization, as you can see. I mean, they don't have really big economy bonus and civilization. The only eco bonus, if we can call it that way, is the cheaper knights and 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 faster camels. villagers. Faster, faster villagers. That is like, well, you know, not a, like you will borrow, but but it's still, it's it matters. But it's a good. Civilization to to counter Incas if you go one TC. I'm yeah, right. all in, all, all in. in. And this right? is and this is a good map for men because there's not a ton of gold. Uh, most of the gold is around the outside, and that's like way too mobility. awkward. And mobility. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. Fun. But like, but expanding your eco is not standard here because when you TC the sides, you don't have space for farm. So yeah, I agree. And I think we'll see. We might see something like triple stable against four or five barracks even at some point in Castle Age because of how aggressive they'll both be. This is the POV from ACCM. Already walling a little bit with that house between those trees, but now it's pushing the deers. I mean, the start, uh, you focus on the economy, Tristan. Yep, yep. And Viper did try and lame, right? He could have maybe stolen some stuff there. There was a small thing we didn't really get to see. This is Viper's point of view, uh, where ACCM actually made sure his sheep didn't go anywhere near the eagle, which was quite smart. So Viper sacrificed some deer to, to try and do that. The end, though, you start with the llama as the Incas. You get extra pop space from the houses, so you don't really need to build many. Incas are so breezy, and we're now back to our point of view here on the Observer. But, you know, I'm looking at the, the wood lines. I really like ACCM's base because he can so BF? easily. HBF? Yeah, he can so easily go for a little, like, Seawall, a little, not a seawall, not like, not like the C, but like the letter C, backward C, a, a circle, an egg, uh, an oval, uh, whatever, a small arena with <laughs> so little effort, and we finished <laughs> earlier, you know? <laughs> you know? Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No problem, man. No problem. You're welcome. Anyway, he's doing the bar close to the woodlands, man. And um, the good thing also with the Incas, you need two buildings only. Yeah. Barak and Archie range. That's true. So you are saving, and you have all the units you need from two. While maybe Berbers will have Barak, Stable, Archie range. It's complicated. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if the Viper play Incas perfect, even even if they see him do the same, it's tricky. The last time I saw this matchup, there, there may have been others, but at least casting it was here at NAC. It was Jordan Leary, and the Inca player just had monks for every night, had like 20, 30 Eagles, and also mixed in Pikemen. It is such a deadly combo. So you really, if there's any Civ here, Mem, that needs this to go well in Feudal, that needs to get a slight lead, it's Berbers. Because I think if it's even headed towards Castle Age, the Incas are, are a bit better there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, Incas is top three civilization in these kind of maps. Yep. I would say, you know, yep, what Berbers right gets yep. potential, but I wouldn't put that in a top, Agreed. even five. Agreed. You know? Yep. Okay, let's see now. RT range, he spotted, but it's not a surprise for, for ACCM. He knows that he's going to go RT range. He's doing this table. I believe that uh, fast RT range might happen if you are not able to wall in, uh, in Berber's position. Yeah, yeah, but 
it, it's a big difference being able to, right? Like we said. And so if you can get away with just farming and not needing to go for any skirms or something, it's beautiful. So I, look at these walls. I mean, this base... I do that. Also horse collar and Tristan. So... Yeah, yeah, exactly. So lots of farms will come. Whereas Viper's going to have to go for the full wall. So I think... All things considered, I think ACCM's position is... Oh, that, that oh, notice, what a save! He notice, he notice, what man. a save! Oh my god. That was sick. Um, I think his position's pretty nice here, man, for the Berbers. Okay. It's doing a good job here, ACCM. It's so important. I mean, people cannot really imagine how much preparation ACCM has. Mm -hmm. Even if we mention, they don't really probably believe it. Yeah. You know, he, he, this guy, guys, I think he... Eat, sleep... I'm play. <laughs> You're Been probably here. not wrong. I mean, You're probably not wrong. Yeah. Wow. I mean, but it's it's so cool though, right? Because he has traveled further than most. Professional. Right? And, and if you're full pro. Yeah, wow. exactly. And and if you're gonna if you're gonna have this be your job, if you're gonna travel across the world, you'd think, you know, when you're not in the position, right? The people at home, you'd think that you would do that. But sometimes, you know, when you're so good, you you kind of feel you can get away with certain things. But not ACCM. ACCM's range. looking so good. He range. drops the range, as you said, there to go for some skirmishers. So you get like. You need enough skirms to snipe the spears, but then you get worried about the eagles. So it's this interesting little combination. Viper's basically going to have three units. He's going to have spear, eagle, and archer, and it's just going to be two for ACCM in the skirm and the scout. And that's the issue, Tristan. Look at the amount of army Viper has already with Fletching. Yeah. You know, with Fletching, the third building is already the blast bit. Well, now the third building for ACCM is that RT range. He will need then a fourth building for to make the, the upgrade as well. And all these matters, a lot of resources, you know. And also, Incas is saving wood for the houses. I yeah. mean, you might do at the end most, more or less the same houses to wall, but if you don't need it, you don't make it. Absolutely. You know? And, and you know, on the flip side of that, right, obviously Viper's been able to invest in so, so much army here and get some hits there with the Spearmen. But Viper is sacrificing some aspects of his economy to do so. He only has three farms. ACCM's going to have like seven or eight at this point. So or more. If Viper's army investment can't do anything because everything's so neat and tidy and walled in there, this could be good for ACCM in the long term. Yeah, I mean, he has quite a lot of farms right now, ACCM. Like a lot of farms. That's how many. Can you click all those farms and miss the botkin? That's 11, so it's more than triple his opponent right now. Yep. Yeah, well, now not anymore because he got uh, five, also the berries. The problem is that he has plus one armor for the infantry, plus one attack for the range units. This it's streaky here. Oh, yep. don't watch, I love but it. But like you, ACCM, he needs to recognize how big of a gift this is and just, just play a simple game. His skirms can sit by the farms. The eagles can never get in close because of the TC fire. You just use the skirms defensively and wait for Castle Age here. This base and what ACCM has done with it has got to be frustrating Viper so much right now. Yeah, and resources are not terrible for uh, ACCM. Would you use the, the, the tower for a stone? Sorry, the stone for a tower? Like, the goal is can't expose for ACCM, yeah. so you will need probably a tower. I think I think the tower comes in in Castle Age when the, if the archers have more range and more problems, okay. right? So that's going to be a nice snipe there from ACCM, kills the archer. That's our first kill of the game. And he did move out with his skirms on the other side there. Viper going to drop the market. Viper knows my opponent's eco is probably better than mine. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the market, probably sell some of that stone. Viper might be a little surprised, and I'm surprised that the skirms are coming from the right side. Ooh. I think if they come from home, you're this never, you don't have to worry about the eagles, but let's see. Oh, this is good. He's gonna take those archers. He's gonna probably take the spear. You have to be careful. This is a good battle, in my beautiful. opinion, for ACCM. Yeah, beautiful, it's beautiful. It's a good one, really. He surprises Viper, because yeah. Viper didn't know where to run there. Viper did not expect that. And now the skirms can get right oh, back man. to where we wanted them anyways, right next to the TC. Yeah. Beautiful job from ACCM. But the Viper economy, Viper economy is about to click up. No market abuse, 200 stone. He's on the way to Castle Age. Same population. It's not too far ACCM to go up. So the game is still kind of even, even. But the problem is that Incas, during that transition, can produce eagles while Berber says ACCM has to wait till Castle Age. Yep, so the mass is real for, for the Viper. The mass is real, but it w well, the mass will be real, right? It's just two eagles right now. We have the second barracks. That takes a lot of time, man. Yeah. Um, so as long as ACCM clicks up, I think he'll be good. I love this as, as well. We could actually, we should probably switch to his point of view Let's go. and just see him as he tries to find this. Look at him. He knows Viper's trying to evade him here. 
And unfortunately for him, that scout is weak. He's like, please be a hole. Please be a hole. Or, no, no, please not be a hole. Please don't be a hole. <laughs> he's, looking, <laughs> he's looking ahead to find the wood line. But uh, that, at the end of the day, these two archers won't mean much for Viper. There's yeah. Viper now, and Viper's making eagles like we said. But I think we should see a third barracks here, honestly. You need to have at least three barracks against two stable uh, production of knights on the other side. Would you go even for a third stable, or is too much? Because you, you got cheaper knights, so maybe you want to go one TC, really. I would go for the third stable because I don't have faith in my ability to compete in the long term, right? But ACCM can do that. So right now, I, I think... You've, you have confidence that the two stables will be enough, and then you don't want to fall behind an economy. Uh, Viper actually on the note of, back to my barracks thing, he's on two barracks because he just wants to go monk defense and TCs. So he's actually going to boo. Well, it's his play style. Yep. He likes to have his economy. To, he feels confident with also quite, quite some army. And he's in Castle Age. He's in cast. He's gonna drop the TC right away at the back, on the wood, on the goal. He's gonna be safe. This wood line obviously is exposed, a little bit exposed, but with those eagles floating there, eh, those skimmers is not gonna do too much. I... Not gonna do too much. Oh my god. This might be because I had a friend who was a skirmisher once, but I don't like the fact that skirmishers have moved out there. I think like. Hey, home. Yeah, I think you've gotta know that. The eagles are going to be out there now. The eagles are not act. The skirms are not actually going to benefit you really at all here for a long time. But that's a little sloppy for ACCM, and he'll lose most of those. But you know, surprise, surprise, he's on two stable knights, and those knights should be able to push away the eagles. Not a big deal also because he got before those archers. So since that happened, that's true. That's exactly. Skirmishes at all, so yeah. it's fine. It's going to be knights versus eagles. Knights versus eagles. Knights are winning. Yep. In these kind of numbers, obviously. <gasps> That is typical Viper, dude. Typical Viper to be able to sneak around and find an area. Thank God for ACCM, he is Berbers, though. Because if that's not Berber villagers, those villagers would get picked off a lot faster. My safe all. Yeah, yeah. My it's possible. Save all, of, my save all of them. There's no monks yet, so he's fine. Obviously, he's denying the TC, which is something. You deny the tone center, and then the economy advantage is going to be already for the Viper. He has second TC, third TC in common. Now the Aegis is still there, but the Viper knows that those Aegis are going to be gone. Yeah, yeah. And he's going to have to just accept their fate here. Running away would not do too much for him. So, okay, three TCs against just two for now. Viper will gain an eco lead, and now ACCM is kind of on the back foot in terms of how this game's going to flow. We thought. No Eagle Warrior, just two Barracks of Eagles would be a problem, but I mean, Viper's got monks around his base. Viper collected the first relic. This is full macro from Viper. Yeah. Just come kill me. Go ahead. Come kill me. I know your bonuses. I know my bonuses. I think my bonuses are better long term. He's basically saying, come do something about it. And <laughs> that skirm might actually do something about it, sitting on the relic. But I don't think he's going to take it, but let's see. Let's see that, that the skirm is. I think the, I think the monk down. can actually get away from the skirm, which is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, not even, it's not even fletching. Yeah, I it's know. It's not even fletching. It's, it's a very weak one. Yeah, okay. it's just so, so funny. I think going light caps and knights is now the way to go. Like, yeah. you don't want to go for a 3TC as well, in my opinion, and go for an even boom, because first it's not even boom anymore. Viper is ahead, you know? And Incas in the late game? Uh, you know? Yeah. It's scary. The, I mean, the, they have eagles, halves, even Kamayuks, you know? I mean, you have mobility, camel archers and knights, but Incas feel that in this position is going to be faster in Imperial than Berber. Yeah, the eco setup has not yet felt natural for the third TC because the wood count's not there. So that could be a product of the fact that initially ACCM was sending a lot more to gold so he could make a lot more knights than he has. But w I think the third TC... Yeah, the third TC is going to have to come in because he can still produce yeah. and at the same time, and he doesn't have to really choose one or the other. But I like the light cap upgrade. That's what we were looking for. Uh, Viper, he runs in towards ACCM's base, and now he's going to leave. And he should leave, because there will be more knights here, and there's monks around. And yeah. then still ACCM patrolling on the front here. But Three relics for ACCM. Sorry, Tristan. Wow. He has one and two more what? ammos on the... Take them on a stream, Mr. Mr. What? Vodka. And he has the second and now the third. Three relics already. Is this the ACC. fastest someone has, like, players have collected all the relics, all the relics in, in a standard land map? 23, you know? That's crazy. There you go. It's still not a single villager down for any of the player. The game, very close. With a small advantage, I would say, for the Viper. Well, it's not small. It's a little bit bigger than people think. Why? He has five relics more, six now, will borrow, and still have a lot of farming more. Yeah, the really advantage good. is solid. Yeah, so, so the problem now is Berbers. 
is what happens when Viper mixes in Pikeman. Killing these Eagles is huge because you could actually consider Genitor or Elite Skirm, which brings us back to saving those Skirms earlier. But, um, you know, Eagle Pikeman becomes a problem when you're just on Knights. And in the... Uh, in a game we saw from Hart on Acropolis, uh, one of the last three days, uh, Camel Archer was the answer. So I see six on stone for ACCM. That TC was placed directly on a stone, so that is already in his mind. Yeah. Let's see what is going to happen. He's now healing those those knights. The game can die slow down a little bit yeah. because they both know that they cannot do damage to, the, to their opponent at this point. Yeah. The army they have. They are probably going to trade evenly and probably they don't want to take the risk. Mm -hmm. so that's why they are booming. Now there's some, some raid you need to go back. Devotion, Will Barrow, another Imperial game. Yep. It looks yeah, it could brilliant. be. It could be. I, mean, I really wonder, ooh. like, this could become a full raid game too because of how exposed the additional golds and stones are. Because it's all up. Everyone will know that it's, it's where those TCs are right now. So uh, I could see a world where large amounts of knights and large amounts of eagles are raiding there. Yeah, well, for now he's going. Let's take the eagles because I think he's going to dive in, Botka. He's, do he's, he's, he's diving in, he's going in, but there's a lot of knights now. This may be bad for the Viper. Quick wall him. Ooh, nope. No. I think if rolls are reversed there, we see a gate of some kind. I will delete the farm and you make the gate there, you know. Yeah. But now there's light caps. He's raiding the Viper. He's now raiding the Viper. He's going to start to lose some villages. Remember that those... Billy's got some armor, extra armor for the blast with Arbrid, so it's more complicated also to raid and take those. He's gonna try to make the Palisade yet, but he didn't. Well, this is good damage because it's a lot of villains now idle for the Viper. That's really good. Yeah, I, I mean, you had said moments ago that Viper felt like he was gonna play defensive because he didn't think he could do damage, and then he moved out with the Eagles, and then he didn't have the army at home. And so good damage there from ACCM, who still hasn't lost a villager, who, who has now sees a target, maybe, of a TC for Viper there outside of his walls, and Knights are following. There's a lot of army coming now from both players. Knight of Light has so many Eagles. These are only plus one. The Knight is also only plus one. He's going away. He's a little bit scared. 20 army, 25, 10 villains more. Population though, the Viper is still with the lead, because also we forgot to say that this is Byzantine's 2.0. So cheap units. Yeah, yeah. So cheap units for Incas. That is important. It's really, really important because they have all the units are cheap. They're 14 here. It's going to be able to have a good trade here. ACCM doesn't look like so great, but military numbers is starting to be a, a scary amount of knights, uh, Tristan. Agreed, agreed. Now, I wonder where this castle goes because, on one hand, you always want to make castle on a hill. But the hill is going to be towards the middle. ACCM really piling on the pressure here. I think he's got to leave, though, man. Yeah. There's too many eagles. Yeah, man. But uh -oh. he does snipe some monks in there. Okay, he has to be careful. He got also devotion, remember. I want to cast it forward. I mean, I don't know if he can. Ooh. He converted the knight. There's so many knights still. How important Why? will be now plus two attack or plus two armor for I'm the I'm really knights. surprised Viper's not going pikeman. It, it's just it's so stubborn, and ACCM has completely lured him away. Viper was on patrol, and 10 of the Eagles said, see you later, and went back home. And that is not what you want. Viper is, is maybe macroing elsewhere. He's distracted, and in a panic, clicks pikeman. But if you don't have the Eagles with the pikeman, even the Knights alone could do it. Yeah, but now the castle has to be forward. You have killed a lot. You have all the army presents here. Now ACCM is going to take so many units. Bill is number ahead for the Viper, but army number is not ahead anymore. ACCM is going to take a good battle or not? That's a good not battle. A, yeah, he's under the TC. So he's going back again and he's coming. He's coming with a forward castle. He's not that more forward. Yeah, Matt, Matt, but these, there's three production buildings there. You can't be okay. that crazy. I get the energy. You can't be that crazy because you don't know what's going to happen. But now Viper needs walls because he's making a castle to deny this castle when his army is completely gone. Yeah, but you need to go. You need to go. You need to go. Go. Don't let him make the castle ACCM because if he's doing the castle, it's going to be okay. It's going to be about one or not. I think both castles are going to be up. Yeah, Tristan. yeah, I think so. But one castle is next to Viper's economy and the other one is not next to ACCM's economy. So True. he's going to be completely fine with that. And then the castle that Viper is making, it, it can help awesome. him in some ways. But ultimately, it's not going to change things like Camel Archers could maybe change things for ACCM. But I don't know, man. Like, the Pikeman number is so Ooh, low no, that maybe, maybe we won't even see the Pikeman be an issue here for these knights. Yeah, but, but Viper see that this castle is a problem. He's going Peta, he's going Rams, he's going to go wild to take this castle down. So huh. I need to uh, see here a, a mangle from ACCM, something to prevent that that castle is Well, down. no, this is like this is like castle next to castle 101. 
everyone goes for petards here. I'm shocked that ACCM is not doing so. Like, I guess it's because of Camel Archer production, but it really felt like that'd be a petard v petard battle there. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll see. We'll see. You know, Viper's got a 20 villager lead. He's really been able to soak up tons of pressure here. But, I, I but mean, it's, this it's is, really this awkward is to play awkward his position right now. And he's casting this. Why? ACCM killed 11 villains, and then Viper is 20 villains ahead. What is this macro? What is this macro by the snake? Like, he's 20 villains more, he lost 11, so basically it will be 30 villains ahead, yep. you know? And still, he's raiding a lot here. Let's see, because those... The knights, are, are, the knights are wrecking villagers quickly. They've got full attack here. And yeah. there were 10 pikes for Viper there. We missed it. They just got completely slaughtered. The knights will beat pikes 1v1 with these upgrades and with the mass we're looking at. And, you know, you, you have the villagers, men, but how many of the villagers are actually working right now if you're Viper? How many of them are on the resources you want? Not, not, really 20 not 20 villages. Not 20 villages ahead anymore. Yep. Not 20 villages, but that castle is about Viper, to be Viper down. trapped. Viper yeah. trapped. Viper trapped all those knights there. We will need a replay on that. That yeah. was a beautiful, beautiful gate, and he gets away. But Viper killed a lot of knights, and Mem, if you can't make camel archers, how are you going to deal with the pikes? Yeah, but now Castle's you need the down. castle, and now he's doing another castle, and ACCM is on the way to Imperial. He's on the way to Imperial with less population, but he's up. He will get the upgrade, but he's insane. He's crazy. 20 bullets kill. Do you still ahead with 15 bullets and population, like 30 population more? It's what beautiful. is this Incas, man? It's beautiful. This Incas civilization, but then, the timing, the momentum is for ACCM with that castle on top of that hill. Yep. I would chat, Bresser, Chemistry, all the upgrades, but you need more than one castle. Incas is going to flood down. I, I think that something that so few players do here could could give ACCM such a good spot to win this game. And you obviously you're going Camel Archers now, but you actually plan around <laughs> going for hand cannons. How oh, he's going up to Imperial. Yeah. <laughs> He's done. He's up to Imperial Viper. I mean, like, but but hear me out, right? Camel Archer, you're producing out of one castle, and the way the stones are positioned on this map, it's really hard to find more. It's just two tiles at a time. So I think you could upgrade these, but I don't think you build your future around Camel Archers here. I actually think you want to go mix of knights and hand cannons. And if you do that, and Viper's full pikemen and eagle, hand cannons are actually better against pikemen and eagle anyways than camel archers are. We forget a lot of time hand cannon is for this civilization. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Everyone man. forgets it. And it's a big deal here. I think he's going to see going camel archers because they're so mobile and because he can make them now. And there's, there's reasons for that. That's not a bad thing. But it is something I think ACCM needs to be thinking about. Because if he is up against eagles and pikemen, just like when it just knights can't work, just camel archers can't work either. Okay, uh, tour cabrid is done. Kasva, is it's a good joke or is an illegal joke? <laughs> <laughs> I, I got infected, man. Well, it, can, it confused <laughs> me for a second when I see <laughs> I see the joke now. Okay, okay. Let's see now. It's an illegal joke then. Okay, 110 village, 123, 18 army, 48. It's gonna be an imperial in a moment. Then archery ranges will be great. Also, he will need Thumbrin. Okay. Also, think about where you're going to place the castles. Everyone wants to place these on the hill, but then your main eco is super exposed. Like, the hills here don't protect yeah. stones and golds. It's really awkward. I think Viper is going to try and, and take advantage of that now. I like the outposting from ACCM, so that would be spotted. But look at Viper. He's leaving his base, and he's going to loop units around to potentially damage ACCM. No, he gets all over. No chemistry for ACCM. Yeah. No. Nate is doing there it now. Is. Yeah. He's doing now, but... Look at the amount of eagles he has. This is the problem, you know. 33 eagles. He got eight camel archers. You need more. You definitely need more because now those eagles are also gonna can raid all over. He can have a castle. Where to do the castle? Maybe in the same spot. Viper the castle. Um, I, I think you need your castle in your base <laughs> to avoid <laughs> the raid. Right? It needs yeah. to be next to your biggest area of farming eco. And man, what a sick job from Viper. I mean, I know there's some level of greed at times here, but he has just soaked up so much pressure. He has made so much eco. He's expanded somehow, and he's got ridiculous military numbers. This guy's almost pop capped, and he was under so much pressure like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, it, it, it's absolutely crazy. 150 population. This is still solid. The problem is that Incas is easier to get into the 200. He's ready. He got some knights at home. He's gonna be cavaliers. Honestly, cavaliers. If you get a decent amount with they can kill cheaper, the eagles. Yeah. No, they take it. Yeah. You know, cavaliers and camel archers is a great. No, it's an amazing combination. But look at those eagles <laughs> destroying. Yeah. Those yeah. Camel yeah. Cavalier can do it, and then it's just hand cannons, right? That's the unit that ACCM needs. 20-30 Cavalier, 20-30 Hand Cannons, it would force the Incas into something beyond infantry, which will obviously take some time. But you can see now what the Eagle Raids have done. 
have made ACCM extremely paranoid, and a great job from Viper to to send random units to the sides. Right there, he's got some eagles. Then All further over. down along the left, he's got an eagle yeah. killing Vils, actually, on the left edge of the map. That eagle still, and that's just that one extra area that Viper is able to focus on, and these things pay off so massively for him. Yeah, I mean, how many villages has killed that eagle, Oli? Probably, I, I'm gonna guess Can ten. We check seven. Seven already. And it'll be it's gonna be. Soon. It's yeah. gonna be. It's gonna be. You know, it's gonna be probably even more. And he doesn't notice. Population is dropping dramatically. And even if ACM is doing, in my opinion, a really great game, what we can talk about the Viper game here? Amazing game from the Viper. His comfort zone. You. Got my economy going. I'm doing army constantly. You're getting me some rating, but even like that, I'm still ahead. Yep, yep. Really yeah, and he's everywhere. He he pushed forward. He took some. He took the trebs in the middle, so ACCM can't push. Everywhere you look, there's a red unit. And ACCM is probably thinking like, I played like a great game here. I was doing so much damage. I expanded with the time, but now suddenly Viper's all over me, and I was the one pressuring him. It's truly unbelievable what Viper's doing right now. Yeah, amazing job. Amazing job by the Viper. Let's see if ACCM is going to be able to somehow hold. Finally, the units that T90 was demanding so hard are there on the field. Yep. 11 and 13 more in the queue, hand cannoneers. Um, I don't know. Is this going to be an ult? He's still on 113 villages, but to do something with Berbers in this situation, you need more than 30 points. Yeah, he's still in stabilized mode so he needs yeah. to he needs to still defend from these raids get to about 30 hand cannons and then in this time viper in theory should be switching to skirms we'll see if he ends up doing that so um it looks so rough he's down 40 villagers he he's constantly got eagles in his base but there are the hand cannons now which is the one thing that viper really doesn't have an answer to at the moment it, it feels that this happening when we were talking if you play with both civilizations perfect or at the maximum really well yep. still incas is in favor incas are in favor it's yep. happening in yep. this because what mistakes has done accm not many yeah not many mistakes really good play really good play for the viper and then the player with the civilization that has a small small advantage but get in there but it's not honestly it's not just that too i, yeah, I yeah. really think viper has an ability to soak up pressure and turn it around like a lot of other players don't which is why it looked so bleak okay. for him at times and then he knew in this moment that he might be able to force some fights but the, the hand okay. cannons are shredding okay this battle the hand okay this, are battle, shredding. this, this is battle, horrible this battle viper. the viper is losing a lot look at the army numbers yes he got the economy lead but where's the eagles tristan yeah, and look at him sell. He just sold a thousand food Ooh. and a thousand wood, and that's gonna bring him back gold because he needs it after that fight. Check the KD. Also there, also well, you need to make no more villains and get obviously over a hundred villains again, but military numbers drop it dramatically for the snake now. And it's the time to push. Yeah, right, to go in and raid and kill so many villains as well. And and now ACCM can start to he has the main hand cannon force and he can start to move the cavalier and raid different areas. Beautiful hold from ACCM and maybe either a lack of patience from Viper or maybe a feeling that he could just, even though it's like kind of on paper a bad fight, sometimes you think I have the numbers and you just, you, you do exactly it, this. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. You can't kill this. This is okay. this just completely hard counters his army. Ooh, look how he put the hand cannon is the Cavaliers in front and the Eagles are going to disappear one more time. I don't know. It's plus six Eagles elite. Cavaliers are coming. The Viper is still now taking this battle. I mean, he's got the eco. We oh, established man. it before. He's got the eco to make more, and that is why he's taking these fights. The Treb is down. The hand cannon number is dwindling. And while Viper's pop is only 145 now, yeah, ACCM's ACCM. is still 110. Yeah, that's the thing here. And he surrounded him with castles all over. Incredible game. Amazing game by both players. And, well, this I, game Viper, is so wild. But, okay, so that's like, what, three fights that Viper is forced into hand cannons now? He might be thinking that ACCM runs out of gold. I, I still think in these instances, if you can, man, it, normally you only see it when they're fully popcapped, but Viper's got to consider Skirmisher. It is cheaper for the Incas to make each Skirm. Uh, you know, those range upgrades are really helpful for some of the castles, right? Yeah, but well, he's missing all the upgrades for the range units. Exactly. Now he's coming again. Military numbers are still similar. Yep. ACCM, if you guys think that ACCM is going to resign with 1,200 to score behind, you are dreaming. <laughs> you are absolutely dreaming. The hand cannon is out there. The cavalries are going to try to pick up more villages. He needs definitely to kill more villages because with this 120 villages and cheaper uh, army, the I think can spin, can spam forever. Yeah, it, it's tough though. I think ACCM was just shown that if he doesn't have enough Cavalier in front, his army can actually die. And that's, Viper's like, screw your tech switch. 
I, I know eagles shouldn't fight hand cannons, but I have enough of them I could maybe get a surround. Nice. This is beautiful from Viper. He gets all that gold from ACCM. He will open up some of that base from ACCM. Nice defense there. But ACCM needs to continue this bush, man. The fact that he has to react to a Trebs in the south of his own base right now is really tricky. Yeah, well, he lost the castle. He's gonna kill probably those Trebs. He got some Cavaliers there, but let's focus in the middle. He's gonna be able to kill more. Maybe taking the wow. relics that are there and you get the five this relics. Is, this is fun. Look at Viper on the left side of ACCM's base. He said th there were eagles. They're about to come onto your screen. Those eagles could have gone against the hand cannons again, but they're now in on the left side. There's like 40 of them running in. And then Viper's eco is exposed Come as well. Out. Uh, yeah, it's just like both players are extremely exposed at home right now. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but this doing even Kamayus. Now, again, 100 villages. It's still, the left part of the map, completely to 9 o'clock, is free. Yeah, and ACCM, have a lot of resources. ACCM does not have gold. Yeah. He, he's got, I don't know where he's got the three on gold, but he doesn't have the gold in the south anymore, and Viper's all over that, and those other side. Oh. Okay, there we go. He walled it. <laughs> Those areas okay. are so tricky right nah, now. But, but I think now this might be the game. It's just raiding too many. Too many villains down. Now he's still trying to go with the push, but he's not an oath in front. He's doing a tone center. Yeah, extra TC, but I don't know. Can we put Fog of War for ACCM if he has to explore even the left? Arc? He has to explore all the map. Yeah, and he just can't move there. He can't, yeah, he, exactly. He can't go there because there's always going to be an eagle. There's always going to be a yeah. Kamayuk. I mean, Viper hasn't even gone for help this game. It's crazy. Viper says. Vi Viper's like, uh, someone says, hey, Viper, what counter this? And he's like, eagle. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. matter what it is. He's just going to make eagle the entire game. He well, just said He just said yes. <laughs> yeah, so strong. He's plus six. I mean, he's doing a few camayos. He's now 79 villages. ACCM keeps trying. He's a warrior. He has a crazy spirit. Oh, man. And, so uh, it's looking so rough now. He's yeah, very rough. 78 yeah, bills, yeah. man. 78 bills. He doesn't have discounts on anything but his stable units. And what? still only 18 on food. And... That, that's really the army that's keeping ACCM in this game. The game yeah. And I mean, I know it's it's guns versus a dude with a stick, but the dudes with the sticks do a lot of damage anyways here, Bem, and I think the hand cannons will just simply die. Yeah, Echo KD is brutal, as you guys can see. It's more than double the kills from the Viper. That's what this makes this, well, double the villages. Yeah. Double the villages and his opponent, basically. And I even mean, if ACCM usually want to wait for the 5K, I think now could be exception. Yep, I, I, I agree. Or, uh, or super. So you right? said what? 5k, five when he's 5k score. score down, he okay. resigns. All right, okay. that's going to be harder this game for you, man. Yeah, I think I'm going to lose the bet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Cavaliers and Cannoneers, their relics is going to take them back or not. He's still expanding, though. I think he's sending more villains to the to the 9 o'clock area. Yeah, there you go. He Gold, is Golden Stone, stone. Yep. As you can see. And he'll kill the traps. Okay. Don't kill the Trebs. Your 5k bet might, might oh. look a little bit better because... Oh, <laughs> in the hand with the, with the Trebs, which take now the Relic is still nice. He's raiding all the time. Yeah, yeah. Viper's all not going to stop. Viper's got... Viper has collected almost 20,000 more resources, right? And, and especially over the last 10 minutes here, his eco lead has been insane. And he's got 50 eagles. He, he's always checking the golds. He finds that gold. That's That will lead the losses. Just hold yeah. the map. He's, he's got the, map. the whole map control. Just hold yeah. the map control here. What a great Just game. Just hold the map control. The Viper is moving his head. He's usually not doing his leg. Uh, man, look he's at the doing score. another tone center. Look there. at the score. The ACCM score refuses to resign. Okay. 120 <laughs> popped down, but this guy, as as they put on the uh, on the profile for him, has a fighting spirit. Sticking back the say. relics. Sticking <laughs> back the relics. It's still, it's still rebooming in the corner now. <laughs> you know, I mean, see, make a quick wall. Make a wall, man. If you really want to keep trying. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, man, okay! Uh, it, it can be defeated if he's still like this. I, I mean, seriously. ACCM fights so long, dude. He flew a long way here, all right? Let him let him fight. I know. I, I'm still looking at the score. <laughs> Last time it was right when it hit the 5K difference, just like when you called it. He's he finally resigned. Now. Close to 4K now. Yeah, Close yeah. Close to 4K. Let the chat knowledge. 4K, remember? <laughs> okay. We love to chat, okay? Uh... And I think the GG must have been called here. Finally, yeah, calls the GG. Uh, 330 Eagles created by Viper in that game. That is not normal. That is not normal. That is insane. That does not feel like a real stat. A unit's supposed to be expensive, and Viper's like, nope. These are freebies for me, baby. Holy crap. Only the Incas with their discount on food units right that. now could do that. Yeah. 
I I incredible, incredible. Well, that also talk how good uh, ACCM played. He stand a little bit because he tried, you know, he, he tried, but it's feel that it's so complicated to kill Incas if he's being played. Uh, oh, smoke break, smoke well. break, smoke okay. break. Oh, oh, Here we go. Listen, okay, listen, let's see. see. Okay, timer has started. ACCM. He Goku. petitioned for five minutes. Here, folks. But Goku is failing, man. Go quick, man. Hey, he petitioned for a five-minute break okay, right man. before we started this event. Okay, they're lined up. <laughs> they are lined up and waiting for him. That is Viper. I know. He's going Viper. Go. I don't think Viper. I'm, I'm oh, Viper. there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I don't think Viper needs a smoke break. Where's and CCM? I don't. I. I, I mean, his. He said that he could do. He could smoke. He could, he petitioned for one minute, and then we called him out on that, and then he moved it up to two. But he's got five. Here we got Leary, and we got Hart on the left. We've got Dalton and Tato on the other side there, on the far side. Really happy that some of these these players Our cleaned opponent. off their desks. There was like 25 cans <laughs> yesterday. They are opponents. Dealt on hard today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, the dog is looking for ACCM. Well, he's telling, come on, you, yep. you have time. Uh, probably looking for Viper, to be honest. Unfortunately, the doggo doesn't have the greatest eyesight, so is going back to where Dad was last. Great. And uh, I know what you're thinking. We are giving commentary on a break here. Oh, and there he goes, go, there he goes. Let's go. All right, all right, there he goes. He lost time. He had to stop in the bathroom, and we got uh, three minutes and 40 <laughs> seconds. For ACCM to get his smoke break in, and he knows it. So he is on the way, folks. That is what we all waited for. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what ends up happening once he's nice and relaxed. But he is down 2-1 against the Viper. But uh, what do you think of the series so far? Amazing series. I mean, they're playing really well. I love to say the meme Titanic. No Titanics at yep. all. Yep. Good play, you know. Using their, their civilization at the maximum. Because, I mean, you can win with any civilization against anyone. Mm -hmm. But if you play your best civilization like they are doing, it makes it harder to happen. Yeah. And it happened with the Mongols. He got the initiative. And now happening with, with the Incas. Mm -hmm. He was having always a great echo, but not being greedy. Because we know that sometimes Viper go with the, with the economy, not the North Army this time, was having an army all the time. You know? Yeah. I mean, both plays went to Imp. Both plays went to the Imperial Age. Oh, here's a replay. Here's a replay. Look at the form from ACCM. You don't see a lot of true athletes smile as they sprint, but... That man, he is so good. He can afford to do it. And, uh, I mean, we got to keep tabs on him. He's going to be coming back. Can we have the timer on this? Is that too hard? I, I'm really concerned here. They, they want to do they want Don't, to put the timer. At a nilly event, you, know? you better not go past five minutes, let me tell you. Warnings will just... He, he's got a little yellow flag, and he throws it. There you go. There we go. That's okay, good. so we're halfway. People he's don't good. know how cold is here. It's very cold. Fine. Well, that actually helps him, right? Because yeah. if he wants to continue to stay out there... His body freezes, so he just runs yeah. back inside. So I think that's probably Helping good for with him. the timer. And we have in the background the possible that ACCM is going oh, okay. to okay. join. Okay, so know? they'll be like right between us here. Uh, Mars Madness is going to be probably the next one, or you can pick whatever, because now ACCM need to win both. Doesn't matter. Yep, yep. yep. Um, you know, I think but you... But for the Bullhof, maybe? Yeah, yeah. It does, it does help to, to get an extra win on Viper, absolutely. I think you go Marsh Madness. Um, I think his, his higher sieve was picked for it, um, and it's probably going to be Byzantines. Uh, Mayans and Armenians and Byzantines, none of those civs excite me for dry graveyards, in all honesty. Um, I could see Mayans being a choice, or Armenians, though. And Oh, ACCM, we missed it. We missed it. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. He's back. He's and back. What was that smoke? Yeah, it's crazy. I'm not a smoker, but what is that? Well, that was about, yeah. that was about two <laughs> minutes, which is what he said he needed. Okay. So That's a man of his word right okay. there. All right. Yeah, I'm thinking about the civilizations, too, and maybe he's going to pick Armenians in Mars Madness. Mm. And then Byzantines in graveyard? Because you don't like Mayans, you said. Well, Mayans still Mayans, right? Actually, actually, I like Armenians on dry, dry graveyards because of being able to get, like, pikemen so early. And the relics as well. Yeah, the relics, you're going to have, you have the... Um, the extra one also. You have the, uh, the, 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 warrior priests, the warrior priests. And you have pikemen and halb. And, yeah, so I actually think it will be better to have Armenians on dry graveyards, at least compared to his other options, right? Okay, but do you prefer still uh, Viper Civilization? Yes. You do? Yeah, I think... I both think, maps? Mm, I, I think both maps. I think Malians versus Byzantines would be pretty close on Marsh Madness. I think Romans against Armenians... Well, actually, I think it's pretty close as well. It's yeah. Close, right? But I think, like, Vipers and more typical civs, 
Um, we've seen Malians do really well on hybrid maps. We've seen Romans do really well in graveyard. But you, so. don't, you, don't, feel, you don't feel he's going to pick his laps? He's the, the third pick. Like his yeah, he could. pretty crazy. He yeah. could. I think if you're expecting your opponent to go pike defense at some point, though, having the Romans could be sick yeah. for, like, the Scorpions and the Longswords. And the 5% greater efficiency all the time for Romans is really nice. But then again, the fastest farms at the game belong to the Slavs. And we know Viper likes to boom. Well, so. it's left cheaper siege as well. I mean, it's... Yeah, yeah. It's They're pretty comparable, same. actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're it, pretty comparable. As far as, like, our 44 sieves go, uh, Slavs and Romans are pretty similar picks. Do we know the map? Uh, they told you, they told us that they were going to tell that, but I don't see I know. You, you it's not there. <laughs> it's not there, Mem man. Mem's subtly, spoken too, you know? Mem subtly uh, reminding. <laughs> Before the series, Tell he was like, map. hey, T90s, like, we're going to get told the map so we can speculate. But we've already speculated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, it's good. It's I can tell you what it's going to be. It's going to be Marsh Madness. Okay. So, okay. what do you have to say about Marsh Madness, Mem? I like it. I mean, I don't know if I miss Lamb Madness, like Epic Map, but it's true that we have seen in many tournaments, so maybe a, a new one is also refreshing, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one also, it, it integrates, uh, yeah, uh, the, this different one with the uh, with the fish, but at the end might be also potential aggression on the land, very similar to the Lamb Madness, yep. so it's a cool map. Okay, yeah. I mean, so you can't build on the rocky terrain that's next to the wood lines, yep. and that can make uh, booming really awkward. So I wouldn't expect a lot of TCs and whatnot. You have the water aspect, and while the water does loop through the middle, that's very, very rare. So the expectation here is we're going to see the flexibility the players used on the water. The Byzantines aren't quite as flexible, but they do have the stronger fire ships, and then the extra HP on their buildings, and uh, their, that also applies to their docks. Makes them pretty strong, as well as the vision mem with the town watch and town patrol being free. The, the vision makes that it's kind of hard to surprise them. Yeah, like in feudal, maybe in castle, impossible. Yeah, like absolutely. Town patrol, you know, you are not gonna surprise them. But what about Malians then? Yeah, I mean, in Malians, as we've got Viper's point of view here, we'll put Malians on screen. I definitely didn't misclick the <laughs> button here, guys. This was <laughs> intended. To see Viper's point of view, beautiful job from Viper dropping a dog, pushing in a deer. Wow, this is it's incredible. But uh, anyways, on Viper's civilization, uh, we've got the, the wood discount. And the wood discount is really the big thing here. And it's not something that you really necessarily factor into your builds. But it's it's like every time you go to build a building, you suddenly can, right? <laughs> You're yeah. like, oh, I can make this. I can you maybe make an extra dock eventually. Maybe, you know, rush up certain things. And I think, like... Faster university is helpful at times, but the villagers dropping off more gold also really helpful. It just, it feels to me like the Byzantines have the cheap counter units and the strength and the vision, but the Malians really have the flexibility. So Viper is going to have the potential to really put the pressure on here. Yeah, let's see how ACCM is doing right now with his POV. He's starting to go to explore his opponent. The dock is already uh, done, I believe, at the back. And... Um, he found Viper. There you go. He yep. found it already. He sees Viper. They're going to scout fight here. And uh, it would make sense for ACCM. If you're in a 50-50 here, you've found your opponent. You'll take that fight. You'll never leave. But for Viper, you don't want to lose that fight and never find your opponent. But in the end, they both separate. And uh, ACCM is being annoying, attacking the Lumber Camp, just trying to tempt Viper to bring a villager over. And the fish here, Tristan, is kind of like a bonus, no? Because how far they are, you we might see also some land aggression the same way, uh -huh. used with a boost on the Echo. Obviously, you probably will need to make some Cali because you don't want to get surprised and lose your fish. Yep. But that's it. At this least I just sneak a, a dog forward or This something. is back to what I said. See, ACCM. Oh, wow, Viper got the hit. How did he do that? Well, now ACCM doesn't want to fight. And ACCM will run away. Now, the thing about the water here, Mem, that I think people need to know is, yeah, there's quite a bit of fish, uh, but it takes a long time to get your ships over to the enemy. And so what players are doing is they'll oftentimes just add one fire in defense, uh, like, let's say, a minute after feudal. And then by the time the offensive fire galley gets to their base, they have one in defense, and then they're completely fine. So you are right. It's more of a land map than a water map. But like mid feudal, like let's say someone gets a lead on land, your play if you get a lead on land sometimes is to then add onto water because they're not thinking about that anymore, and that's when you can win the water. Yeah. Well, let's see if he's gonna, what is going to happen. For now, we see how the viper is going. Not not two, three militias already. He's going to try to go aggressive, but his opponent has it spotted. Yeah, he knows that he's coming. But the snake, if we go to his point of view, POV, don't think he knows that we're his opponent. 
Yeah, yeah, there's this fog of war here. That's ACCMs. We'll see Vipers here in a second. Yep. And yeah, he has absolutely no clue. Viper spent a lot of his time at home pushing in deer and uh, he sacrificed scouting intel. And we saw a game. Sorry to bring this up if he's over there listening, but we saw a game from Andy earlier where he didn't scout. He ran right into his opponent's TC, and that was unfortunately the end of the road for him. So I, I would expect Viper is going to be able to see some things before that, but he's going for a strategy that his opponent knows is coming. And he doesn't know where to send it necessarily right now. Yeah, but he's having the lack of the champion, you know. And lack of the champion is that he's now sending those militias to the right place. He's going to take the spear and he's going to be able to take a good fight here with the men at arms already. Remember, Astra Pierce armor. Mm -hmm. Astra Pierce armor and Archie range is already up. Let's see what he's going to be able to do because his skirmishes are coming, but skirmishes are not a big threat to those men at arms. Yeah, not I, at all. Really, I really like the extra Pierce armor here when you're expecting a range opening. It's so good. Those things are going to stay alive. And what it does is it gives you time and control. And Viper's gone for something a little bit unique. He's gone for the mill on the berries. You don't normally see the mill on the berries so early. I think that's because of the Malian flexibility. Yeah. But he also has delayed the archer range. So he, he figures whatever ACCM is making is not a problem for him. But it's very common, man. Like, every time you see man-at-arms, there's almost always an archer range follow-up. Yeah. We have a statistics there. Good to take in consideration, right? 4-1 on this map, the most peak civilization in, in this map. So that's uh, talk very good about this great save. He's doing uh, another dog there. Interesting. Why is he doing another dog when he sees that the man-at-arms are coming? OK. Well, it's actually, if he knows that Viper doesn't have a range coming up, that's actually not a bad call. Um, you're already ahead on land. But he knows. And no, he d he doesn't. Well, yeah. he might have scouted it. In all honesty. No, but he has scouted before. Yeah. Like, yeah. He didn't yeah. scout since, yeah. since then because he's now with the aggression. You know, he he has no clue what he did at home. We know because we have the the full vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The time is still going. Got to be careful. And that the scout is going back a, a little bit. Uh, that viper is still without uh, archie range. No, he has skirms now coming. So he yeah, just yeah. delayed it a little bit. There but but that's like we talk about these tiny little details and getting an edge. And vipers collected a little bit more food and will collect a little bit more food and had the mill up faster so maybe his farming like that type of stuff adds up in terms of the res collected and eventual castle age time but going skirms against byzantines who have much cheaper skirms who already been making skirms that can be a little complicated so viper's going to need to make sure he finds the right fights here yeah you know that there and now blast okay fletching is kicking in faster and accm has a civilization that now is in his comfort zone Agreed. Here, start to shine and shine. You can spam army and you're going to still probably be ahead because those units are so cheap and you want to put the pressure here against the Malians. Absolutely. I agree with you. And Viper, he's going to be bringing these men at arms home. I would say that this has been worth it. He didn't kill anything, but to me, he, he was able to buy himself a lot of time. And he'll have Fletching himself, and wouldn't you know it, Man at Arms still alive. Viper with six skirms. It's about six skirms in the army from ACCM. And Viper, ooh, actually not. And maybe maybe choosing now uh, to to use his skirms in defense. ACCM lost his scout mem, so he can't scout any future moves. But he was probably expecting this one. Yeah, he's going away now with those skirmishes. He's going to have the armor as well. He's trying to explore, and he passed through those galleys, or not? No, 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 he didn't. He's going. Go he's going to go back. I think he bit. just he yeah, just yeah, yeah. he Patrol clicked there. it. Yeah, yeah, he clicked it, and it's patrolling back. That's yeah. actually a pretty big deal if he doesn't realize. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, it's it's kind of a wasted trip. Oh, he's actually bringing his fires to the middle right now. Oh, but one thing that is an important advantage for ACCM, look how many fish he has. Oh, yeah, it's up to seven. seven. Oh, that's, that's nice. That's really seven. nice. Seven. He's more than double right now than the Viper. It's still resources collected and resources in the bank right now for the Viper. is scary. He did the market and he's going up. Yeah, it's interesting. Viper got Wheelbarrow as well. You don't normally see that on a map that incorporates fish. I'm not sure how helpful that is on that many farms. But it certainly is a tech that does help you in the long term. But we will borrow, include, and look at the resources. Yeah, it is. Like you're right. It's crazy. Yep. It's this is really a beautiful crazy. build from Viper. It's up. Yep. And Vi Viper lost one unit this game. <laughs> what? <laughs> he lost one unit this game. I think it was the skirmisher. I mean, I mean, if he's winning the series, we have to focus in the interview in the macro. What is the macro yeah. from the Viper in the whole series? Not all in this game, right? Has I, been on point. Uh, I'm still, uh, I'm still not the biggest fan of the whole two fires in the middle thing. Like ACCM's never going to run into that, and that tells ACCM that Viper doesn't have the fires coming towards him, and Viper only made those two fires. So Viper's got to completely. To neglect water here, and he will probably lose all of his fishing ships. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. It's true that he has three only 
Then the, the seven, as we say, okay, resources for ACCM. He's there with the galleys, and now he can take it. Yep. But he's already doing horse collar. Scale bar the number. It's true that seems he doesn't invest a lot. It's not a big, it's not a big thing for the. Yeah, Viper. I'm laughing because Viper saw that and he clicked his fishing ship far away. If he's lucky, he can actually take all three of these fires away. Okay, well the patrol will continue. Yeah, in the end, yeah. Viper will be in trouble. But this is part of Viper's plan and ACCM. He should now fish like a madman because this is clearly Viper just giving up water. Yep. So this is where you, you do what he's doing. You make the third dock. You go up to like 12 fishing ships, man. And if you can hold, your eco is going to be ridiculous. Oh, let's see if he's going to hold. But for now, he's losing one Valir. One Valir because those men at times are still alive, surprisingly. And he's still maybe going to take another. Maybe going to take another. No, he will save it. <laughs> this is Skimmers is as well here. Double stable. Is that the second stable? I believe. Or is the first one? Uh, I think it's no, the, no, first the first stable. One. Yep. First stable here. So similar to the Plasmid, you know? It's interesting ACCM is making more skirmishers. I, I'm not sure if I like that if Viper's going to be going Knights. Viper's got double stable here. He will open with Knights. He opens with a Monastery. Surprise, surprise. And Viper could maybe kill another Villager here with the Skirms and the Man-at-Arms. And the Man-at-Arm attack did more right before Castle Age than it ever did in the Fusal Age. Yeah. Well, he's also remembering Castle Age plus two Pierce Armor. So those skirmishes are not going to do e anything at all. And now he's sending a Villager oh, that he's going to lose. No, Viper oh. did not. Yeah, okay. Viper, Viper a little distracted there. It could okay. have been worse for ACCM. Going by Castle Age, 30 seconds. Population is still ACCM ahead because basically of the fish, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Billy's is still one I, ahead. Okay. Viper's fires are patrolling in, though, in the north. So this, there's so much happening. ACCM needs to defend. It's hard to wall this map. We've got the quick walls coming down. He's got to protect the gold first and foremost. He, he, he got the small palisades down, and there we go. There's the fires coming in. The defense could Focus be there the for goal. ACCM, Focus the but yes. Viper broke through the palisade, and Viper's taken ACCM completely off of gold. That is going to be really difficult at this time to make camels and monks in defense. Yeah, well, he's doing the skill bar and armor, gill nets already, but how you do, as you mentioned, how you do now the gold, he has zero. Yeah. He has only 40 gold here. I don't know if he has even you know, resources to sell and get some gold. The camel, the good thing is the camels are very, very cheap. But uh, one thing is cheap, and uh, another is that you don't have anything, right? Yeah, and there's no upgrades, uh, too. If there's no, like, look at Viper there. He, he kills the scouts, he kills the skirmishers. This is snowballing hard for Viper against ACCM. And honestly, it feel like a really good position to go double Monastery Monks, because your opponent's only going to have Camel. Yeah. You know, lots of Monks would actually be really helpful here for Viper. Yeah, let's see. Might do the, the Monastery already. Might have one Monastery for sure. He's doing He's a got one. Still. There you yep. go. He got one. He's mining a stone. He's mining gold with that main tone center. Uh, and uh, second is stable, but still... Well, ACCM is stabilized. And he's still ahead in the in the village number. In total, remember, because he has the fish. 38 village, 42 his opponent. But uh, two tone centers for the Viper. Ooh, Ooh, there's two arches. Look at the distraction. With two arches, he forced 10 villains to go away. But the battle, the big battle, is still under the TC here. Is those camels and node? Seems like no. The Viper is microing. Every single unit is going away now because he's starting to be so many camels. Three standing. He should go back. The monks are also close to convert. And he's coming with his own monks as well. Yep. I don't know who this has the advantage. It looks like in the land, Viper has the advantage. Yeah, I think so. And it's just like he's clearly controlling the pace of the game. Like ACCM, with the exception of those two archers, that was well played. He's always reacting to Viper. And so I brought it up before. I think if Viper has monks with his knight oh. army as he gets a conversion there, Viper is not going to have to be scared of those camels. And there's no scouts out in the field anymore. There's no skirms, really. But then again, Viper just converted with that monk. So ACCM wants an engagement, and now he's going to hear another wall low. Not a good feeling to have to give up another camel here, but still hoping to take camel on night engagements. And uh, man, there's so many weak units here, man. Yeah. This is pretty bad, pretty bad for all the units out here. But I think ACCM, ACCM is gets the clear. He's cleaning because ACCM got the Byzantines. Look how cheap units they are. He's cleaning absolutely everything. Where's now the Viper army? He was overconfident there yeah. at some point. And now, the one with the lead and can snowball, is the moment now to go aggro? Yep. Siege Wars of Forward or something? Or, or it's too risky? Uh, it, it, maybe, maybe. You're not there yet. You don't know. And it's also hard to build things because all that, that rock on this yeah. terrain, it's really awkward. I mean, Viper, I still think, is okay. But he needs monks because camels won't kill him. He's going he forward. needs monks. No, it's a TC forward. It's a TC forward on that goal. Okay. 
Well, the good thing now is that with Byzantines, you can still spam an army and you're gonna have now the pace of the uh, uh, yeah. of the game for, for ACCM. Village Dammer almost the same, but a lot more army for for the Vietnam player. Yeah, I just, it's okay. just such a frustrating feeling when you... I mean, it's not a frustrating feeling to win that fight like he just did, but when you do that and then you show up to Viper's base, you're then reminded, oh crap, I've got a camel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if it's nice, then you can kill villagers, but the camels don't really do that all that well. They don't rate. They so don't now, really rate like, I think a castle is what both players are thinking of, whether that be offensive or defensive. We see this stone there for ACCM. And then Viper's been on stone for a while too, and the monks looking for multiple conversions, and they're going to find them. Oh, this is another good battle for ACCM. He has two monks now to convert, but there is Viper with two monks as well. Ooh, no, 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 no. Okay, he's taking, he's diving in, but both are going to convert each other. Yeah, and both yeah. players will lose their monks, so two sad little lonely monks have to die. Campbell ah, number still huge for ACCM. ACCM is cleaning this. I mean, ACCM is cleaning this. I, you don't want to compete in this kind of battles against Byzantines. I agree. It's 25% cheaper, so yeah. no matter what, you're going to have more army. And you're going to produce more army constantly. And that's what is happening. Viper loves this Gebetto, though, man. I just... <laughs> Okay. This, I feel a little bad for players because where are you going to build? <laughs> yeah. Where is Viper supposed to build? There's so much rock, you know? And I guess like ACCM's got a castle spot in front of his TC there. Why Mars Madness? But Rock Madness? Yeah. <laughs> you change the name, right? It has to be because, man. That's a good this. TC from Viper, though, yeah. as he expands. Keep in mind, he's only been on two TCs and he has not had the fish. Those eight or ten fishing ships for ACCM, they've helped keep him level with Viper after all the losses he took. How many players do you see just fold in early cast late when Viper's killing you like that, getting through your walls and everything? Like, every, it feels like yep. everyone does. And here ACCM is still doing just fine. He's fine. His Stanville is behind. Doesn't matter. I got eight fishing ships. Yep. So the numbers is the same. Pretty oh, that's a four same. TC from Viper there. Yeah. yeah, it's a four TC. So he'll be on four. And he's ready with the monks here. Honestly, being Byzantines here, you just need three TCs. You are fine. You just reach Imperial faster than your opponent and come from there. Yeah, yeah come from there. But there's uh, many monks now. I thought it would be, ooh, a conversion. That needs to be deleted camel. Uh, oh, he converted, but now converted back, <laughs> converted this back. Camel has been, this camel's it's been on traitor. both sides already. Uh, Which one a, did he like the most? He's a traitor, converted. Come on. Well, he couldn't. Now is the siege workshop here in this area. Okay. I mean, Viper wants to castle that area. I guarantee it. I don't know if cow. That's so many camels. Maybe he need to delete the monastery, you know? Yeah. A and make it there because he's so many camels, so many camels, so many camels from ACCM. He's going to take this battle because this can be mm, a very important battle and uh, not the game, of course, but uh, can, can maybe. Can a castle anywhere? Does Viper need to take that stone? Oh, he's going to drop okay. the castle there. That, that makes sense. But it also doesn't protect the rest of your people. And right. now ACCM will come here with the castle, yeah, where the camels yeah. are, but, you know? Yeah, but you don't attack so so much for, from there, yeah. right? Well, you get the, the map control, and if you reach Imperial, you might be possible. Can ACCM that we... see that? I don't think he can see that castle. No. No, no, the villain now is going to see it. Uh, Maybe. He has no clue that he sees even there. Okay, now he see the tone send. Oh, he wanted oh, to make the God. castle there, but it's not going to happen. Oh, God. He's the... oh, no, no, God. no, 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 oh, no, 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 Okay, but the camera is still not up. Yeah, now he deleted. Thank God. <gasps> and now he will do it there, where the cameras are. There you go. Yeah. He needs to go Imperial faster than the Viper. And if he's taking that castle down, yep. he's in a very solid position. Yep. Now, the good thing for Viper here is that castle's not on his TC, right? That yeah. castle's on a lumber camp because you can't really move it anywhere else. So, you know, and, and because it's just camel, Viper might choose to defend with monks and Gebetto and counterattack with his own camels. Trying to go, he's trying to dive into three, three monks. He converted three camels. Okay, but he feel confident in oath. Well, now the viper has some good numbers: 27 army, 33 army. Here, the transition to imperial is the game. Yeah. With how close they are. We got a camel counter attack. No. We got a camel counter attack. Alert! Alert! There are units with it's six open. base damage, open. going to kill villagers. <laughs> Not actually going to accomplish that much. Viper is weaving through houses now, and ACCM sees it. And oh man, the Megan L push on the TC, the amount of monks from ACCM, redemption now to convert siege. ACCM's pressure is ridiculous right now. He's doing all the upgrades. He's really doing all the upgrades. But now we're cheating for ACCM. 
three stand. We won that five game. I'm not. I am completely. Yeah. Nope. I'm completely impartial here. Man. You're lying. You want him to win. You are lying. I'm looking at your face. You won the game number five. <laughs> anyway, let's see the cameras now. Two, two minors. Cameras and monks. He's gonna lose it because the light guys are there. And now he's oh, gonna be able fight. to. You see what a fight for ACCM. 120 population, but the viper with this battle is still ahead because he's raiding at home too. Yeah, and viper's gonna have Gabetto and like, but Gabetto wrecks Camel. Yeah. And the monks are out of the picture now for ACCM. ACCM still hasn't clicked up to Imp. And I think Viper, while he's not going to be happy he's up against two Byzantine castles, he's still going to maintain a better economic position. He's doing all right here. I don't like that he did Redemption. Like, he's not defending with Siege. Like, you could be up to Imperial already, yeah, basically. Maybe. Maybe. Go up to Imperial and then go from there. I mean, it's But there's this feeling, right? There's this feeling, especially when Viper hits you with the camels. You're like, I need more. I need to pressure. I can't rest. And, and you know, to, even if it's cheap, you sometimes they're kind of resting a little bit when you wait for the Imperial Age. But, nice but clear you, up there but, from ACCM. But you are on his face. You have the siege yourself. You yep. have the castle, the siege yourself, and a lot of camels. You just go imp, and then from there, you take down. Well, now, the Viper is the one who is going to be up to Imperial quicker, yep. which is insane when you are playing against Byzantines. Absolutely, I agree. I just I, you know, want to explain the thought process, but, but literally Ooh. the same thing. Viper doesn't have armor army. or army. Because he's imping now. Yeah. So he then ACCM naturally still has the numbers that he produced, and then he goes to find another location. It's the beauty of the game, man. And I think we're going to have two very similar Imperial Age times because ACCM's thinking about it now. The resources are being banked, oh, and there he clicks up. Oh, man. He's on the way to Imperial with one advantage. Yes, two castles from the Viper Malians, but visiting castle tried to take Did it I? down. Didn't he have Gabetto at some point, Viper? Or maybe he didn't have many of them. I don't know. I could have sworn he had five Gabetto, but this has been so crazy. There's one that was converted at one point. I, I think mean, Viper might have yeah. lost some on a raid as he's got to leave that gold there. I mean, you do have two castles if you're Viper. It could actually be three. That might be able to beat the Byzantine one castle. The rare treb win against Byzantines, maybe. Yeah, well, with two castles, it's possible. Uh, both civilization without Siege Engineer, remember? Both can do bomber cannons, great monks. Yeah. In the late game, what do you prefer? Can I say it depends, or do I have to pick one? I know that you're going to say it depends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, depends. I mean, listen, depends. Oh, oh, shoot, I didn't even. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I actually wasn't trying to say it. Um, listen, I would go with Byzantines, because Byzantines have the cheap units, and they have great options. But I think Malians actually have the greater strength if they get to a comp that Viper likes a lot with, like, Gabetto Camel or Gabetto Lightcap. So, um, it is possible for Viper. He's at, got a solid setup here to push ACCM back. And there's a lot of open golds on the yeah. right side there. ACCM hasn't really protected that. And Viper has done that pretty well. Similar resources in the bank for both players. Barely having food, a lot more wood for the Viper, but gold similar as well. Stone, as you were talking, he could do the third castle. He's uh, trying to get another castle ACCM. He will need it. And the problem here is that... Uh, so cheap units from, from Byzantines, from Byzantines. Yep. no matter what. He can also switch into Halps. I imagine Halps there and, and Camus combine. Well, he has Gebetos coming, but you can do hand cannoneers. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the key. Hand I was literally just going to say, that's the key. And we saw him go hand cannons with Berbers. So he should know hand cannons are available for Byzantines. Because while Gebeto are a low HP unit, they, they have insane attack, and that insane attack shreds all the three units you mentioned, and all the three units that are cheap. The Camels, the pikemen and the skirmishers. Unless you have like huge numbers of skirmishers, it's really got to be arbalest if it's a ranged unit. And here's Viper starting to spread out now with these Gabetto. And as you can see, Camel's going to go down. I mean, he's got no upgrades on Nothing. these things. But it still kills the Camel, will kill villagers, and he has more Gabetto starting to yep. loop around on the right side of ACCM's eco as well. And ACCM didn't notice that he's coming around with those Gabettos you were mentioning. As you can see, blood printing helps definitely. He has the range extra, but that Mog is down here. Did it not? This is massacre. And traps from Viper. So many villages and, and, and traps from Viper. He's going to have four traps. ACCM may choose to dive with camels for those traps, which isn't the best. And we could see some classic Viper quick gating to protect the traps here soon, shortly. But it feels like Viper's clawing his way into a big lead here, man. Yeah, but he's not noticing. That's kind of weird. He's, he lost here 20 villages. Maybe 20 is too much, but 15, now he noticed. You know, and I'm really, really surprised that he never made chemistry yet. 
Those give Athos are taking more villas and wow. And the camels too. Like the oh. camels will die very quickly. Even more, you got this pulp. Yeah, and it's just, it's heavy camels, so it's imp camels with imp armor. So he will probably clear it in the end, but yeah. that's not what you want with camels. Vipers switch completely away from the units that the cheap Byzantine units can counter. It's still losing a lot. A hundred villas, he has to have a lot of farming. And now that castle is in danger. He has a mangonel, he's coming with camel. The monks are crucial now. The monks are crucial. The mangonel is gonna be down, but the monks can convert those. Mm, they distribute it on the left. He should maybe dive in and take it. But decide to go and take the one on the castle. Can we go back? Thank you, Mr. Vodka. And those trips are going camels to be down. don't take trips out that quickly. Yes. Camels they are don't not. take trips out that quickly. They are he they are upgraded. But Viper could be repairing those trebs. It looks like he's lost one. ACCM still is repairing his own trebs, though. And he might take out this castle. This is where all the gold is for the Viper. And Viper's Gebetto number isn't that high. They're not elite. There could be more production from ACCM. He can convert the Gebettos with his monks. He can then use the camels against the light cap. And Viper's at the limit here. He's pop capped. And he's gonna lose a castle, and it's gonna get worse. Viper can't produce for the next minute here. Ooh, there you go. No houses at all. The Trebuchet is gonna be down, but now it doesn't matter too much because the job is done. And now with those camels, the Trebuchet probably are going to be down as well. Yeah. You need to move to the left and keep going. Now is the timing from ACCM, who is taking the score lead not for so long. The Viper is taking it the guy. Back and forth for both players. Who is taking the game? Yeah, I don't know, because like for Viper, you need Gebetto, right? And you're now gonna have to build a new castle. Ooh. It's clear to me that he didn't quite get the unit mass that he needed. It was such a beautiful job from ACCM, man. Obviously, he got raided, but he was always ready to bush. He's now castling the same area that he had castled before. And, uh, and he's just got to be careful now. And I think it takes us back to chemistry. You've got to get chemistry in to have some hand cannons out because Viper's Gebetto mass is growing. It's at 16. Viper gets to about 20, 30 of these things with upgrades and everything dies. Only problem here for ACCM, his economy is at the limit. He doesn't have chemistry, but not only that, no botkin, no nothing, no ballistic. Like with plus three, he could take all this area completely and keep going. Obviously, he's still in the game thanks that Byzantines yeah. is very cheap because he lost a lot of bullets. He's 51 bullets lost yeah. by ACCM, but he's still pushing and now raiding a lot the Viper economy. Yeah, but he's running into a castle that does have yeah. ballistics, right? That does have fletching. He's running into Gebetto that still have a lot of attack. And I know the Look units at the are cheap, now. but I don't think this is what ACCM wants to be right now. But you do this as a player, man, when you know everything you just said. It's going to take it a long time to get some of those upgrades. It's going to take him a long time to switch. And so sometimes you just kind of, you just go for it. But going for it there was not the answer. No. It wasn't, and now it's skirmishers. Skirmishers are okay, but against Gebetos fully abraded, elite Gebetos, yep, I don't even it. think that is the answer either. I would rather have Arbalest, but we are going to back to the economy. He doesn't have the economy to afford anything else. Yep. Right now, he needs to protect that castle, and now, without chemistry, how do you take those trebuchet down, Tristan? Mm -mm, you don't, man. You don't. And, and like that, it, those Gebetos are elite now. 13 base attack, more attack upgrades coming in. Vipers and Glycav as well could start to raid. That's a nice find there from ACCM. I think, like, ultimately, the castle he's repairing now, he always loses that. That is just to buy him time. That yeah. is to buy him time for the switch. So, we are, I mean, what a, what a crazy game. We are not far removed from oh. a 200 versus 200 population game. Tell me that he never got the university. After this trebuchet, I think he's building on the north, and that's probably going to be the university. Oh! Yeah, yeah. He doesn't have the university, man. Make, Make sure you go to school, five. kids. Make sure oh, you go yeah, to school. Yeah. Don't skip school. Thank you. <laughs> okay. He's going to take the, the castle down. Not yet. The trebuchets are hitting high HP. I think he's not even doing the university yet. Well, there's probably an idle villager that was oh like on the, across the map. There we go. Now, yeah. there you go. Okay. Now we can focus. This castle is so important. Is he massive skirmishes? Yes, he is. Let's see those skirms. Are you going to be able to take the Gebetos? I don't I don't think they're amazing again, but Gebeto is 50 HP. So it's like, That's the good thing. even if you're not doing a ton of damage, the, the unit is weak. The problem is Viper now has time to mix in some more cav of his own. And yet again, it's like Viper's been able to soak up some pressure. He's got, uh, you know, another raid oh, coming man. in. That, that that area needs to be castled yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and he uh, has a stone, a couple of towers. Yeah. The good thing, uh, Gebetos, they die against the towers. You make towers, guard towers with ballistic, only that, Gebetos yeah, die. Viper snipe the trap. They Viper die. snipe the trap. Yeah. I mean, I said that AC Sam was just going to let this castle go down, but he, he really feels like he can't right now. And he was actually trying to push there, but that was a trickle trap, man. But you can't just send in one trap against Viper and expect to get away with it.
And I'm still waiting to see Farimba for Viper. I'm still waiting to see Armor. He's missing upgrades on his calf. Many. So, you know, if that improves, uh, his situation's probably good enough to win. For now, it's mainly Gavetto. Castle is down. I don't know if he should try to make a few towers to avoid some raid. And actually, with the army the Viper has, the towers is the solution to be, to be safe at home because there's a lot to multitask. But how to push now? If you are Byzantine, with the army he has, I feel that it's not possible. He needs chemistry as soon as possible. Viper doesn't even have final armor for the Gabettos. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, it, it, you don't normally see Viper delaying some of these technologies. Normally at this stage, like, he's going for other technologies, but you got to think about it. We have our first Drummond sighting of the series. That is a unit that the Byzantines can make. That is like a Manganel ship. Is quite strong. I'd love to see a couple Dramans more. Maybe take flatten out those Gabettos, man. We talked about how low they are on HP. Yeah, I think there is another one. I don't know where in the map because I see two created and he's creating the third. Yep, there, there you it go. is. This that, is that, the that's really one. smart. Okay. Yeah, even more in this map. He's going yep. all around. You take everything, you know. But yep. uh, let's see. Population is still 200 population for the Viper. ACCM 172. He's even housed, doing more armor. Still with the light guys and some camels. Look at Viper's gold counts. <laughs> oh my Viper, god. Viper, okay, everyone should do this when they I play the game. It. At a certain point when you realize you don't have one tech, you just go upgrade check, and then you just get every upgrade you can. It, it'll probably, yep, there's hand card. All right, Viper, what's next? Are we going to see the blacksmith next? Wait for it, man. Ready? Oh, oh, oh. Blacksmith check, and now. Okay, well, but he should be, right? And if he did, it would make us look really smart. But of course, Viper doesn't like to do that! Ooh. Oh, that Please. could have been bad. Lead those units, the, the, the Dromos are dominating there. Getting herbal medicine before freaking armor, Viper? What the? Big raid from Viper here. And again, what we said, man, not enough castles, not enough defense to protect from the raids right now for ACCM. Yeah, finally, chemistry. I mean, chemistry. When you are in this kind of situation, chemistry is the first upgrade in Imperial mm -hmm. Relay. Mm -hmm. It's the first. Hand Cannoneers against the Gebetos, they, they take it. I don't know, I'm some of the protection. But it's still, it's easy to say when you're watching. You yeah, know, when it's you easy, are, when exactly. When you're playing, you know, there's so much going on. Also, you feel the pressure, you know. And the Dromon is down, the castle is still there. Skimmers is going to take those light gas in. Population is still super high for both. And at the end, there will be a moment that uh, ACC will have finally all the upgrades for Byzantines. But still, we need to see something else. Well, it's 22 camels and 24 uh, skirmishes. Viper must think he's maxed on techs right now because he's got even Tigui, which means his TC fire errors to help with raids. But like, Farimba could still come in and a lot more blacksmith upgrades. So, with Viper with four and a half thousand gold, oh my god. You're against Byzantines, man, right? You can kill them if you have the upgrades. But like Byzantine units are cheap. The weakness of Byzantine units is they themselves lack the upgrades. But ACCM actually has better camel upgrades than Viper right now. Yeah. I mean, he's doing now uh, heavy camels, but then he can also switch into... Oh, that's going to be a slaughter. Oh, man. You got to be careful. Those chemists, as you can see, are not doing too much. It's true that you can create these chemists forever. So not a big problem. And yeah. he's on Viper base. I mean, now ACCM is not really getting raided. I think there is some raid a little bit again in the north, but not too much. Yeah, nice raid. I mean, raiding with camels when the fastest unit Viper has is light calves, really nice. Viper getting chemistry himself right now. And this game, I don't want to say it's stabilized, but it definitely feels as though Viper's given ACCM a little bit more time to come back into this game. And ACCM's fight has kept him in this, folks. And it is 2-1 right now for Viper, who if he wins this game, will win the series and then be 3-1 in the group stage. A massive position for him. ACCM is 1-2 right now. He would be 1-3 in the group stage if he loses this game and the series then. I mean, so he's doing we, all. He's got to win is, this one. He's shot even Karin. I mean, he's doing all the upgrades right now. And oh, apparently a blacksmith doesn't exist for Viper right now, though. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's honestly just Viper thinking he already has the upgrades. Right? There's, there's no other explanation for it, but that's a lot of upgrades to already have at this point. Nice castle denial there from ACCM with those dramas. You deny that castle is still good, good army numbers for ACCM, but it, it, you don't feel that he can push uh, at all. He can't, but he's got 180 pop. He, he might take some time to build up some traps and like, I, I think a comeback is maybe doable right now. I know Viper's sitting on the 5k gold, but Viper's not exactly pushing ACCM either at the moment. Yeah, well, his, those, those Gebetos are melting all those units, as you guys can see. More Gebetos coming. 35 Gebetos that is still not fully abraded. Yep. You know, I mean, but 
He's unable to finish the game. It looks really, he's, really good he's, for the Viper. Yeah, he's going. Yeah, what he's doing, he's switching side to side. Here's the double POV here. And we could see uh, Viper uh, above his screen there. That's his point of view. And then ACCM below. And you could see Trebs pushing through the middle right now. And Viper is also simultaneously raiding both of those sides. And the population for ACCM, right when we switch to this scene, really starting to dip. It's down near the 150s. Viper's maxed out. And uh, Viper is, uh, he's still got 4K gold, man. Yeah. It's that crazy, crazy amount of gold. I mean, with all resources, how you can lose. Oh, no, and the Gabetto can find the Dramans. Dramans are not cheap, and the fires are there as well. And like you said, man, Looks like it's getting closer and closer to a Viper victory here. 4,000 is core. The Let's longest. Score, remember, <laughs> remember, it's one game more. You know, go the, on, Mr. Tristan. The, the longest Marsh Madness game we have had at NAC, and it is ACCM, so it might be a little bit longer. I think the GG might have been called, GG. though. The GG's called. And fine. Viper takes the 3-1 victory. What a game. ACCM really made Viper work for it today. What a nice series. What a nice series with some things that could have done a little bit better in this game from ACCM, I think. Well, you know, it's complicated, but he needed the hand cannon more yeah, than the yeah. other units, you know. It's I just, it, you know, the only explanation I can give is just that thinking, right? The thinking is, you know, m maybe I can, I don't need that next step. Um, because if, if you wait at all against the Viper, you're going to die, right? Yeah. And so he tried to force the issue. He thought with Byzantines he could do so. He had the camel number, but Viper... I mean, Viper's one of the rare Gabetto users. I think we I didn't even mention that. There's not a lot of other players who really go for it, so maybe ACCM didn't think that it would be Gabetto at all and thought he could just out-pop with the camels. But 3-1 for Viper. I'll be interviewing him in a second, but any any uh, final thoughts on the series here, man? Well, uh, amazing series and very important for for the Viper to win this one. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, the Viper and Jordan is a possible match tomorrow. I believe, yeah, I do I not know if it's it confirmed, is. but I mean, you're, you're confirmed, absolutely but right. Might you're absolutely be the right. Viper Jordan to decide who is going to be probably in the top two. Yeah, to get into the yeah to get into to the to top into two, which would go directly to the semifinals. The semifinals. Absolutely. So imagine how exciting it is, you know. Yeah, I think I heard them talking about that as well. I'll make sure to, to ask Viper, but you can see what's happened already, folks, and you can see the schedule. The next series will be Doubt vs. Heart, and then we'll have Heratato as like the real headliner of the day, and then Leary Yo, uh, which is also just incredible. But I'm gonna hop over there, interview Viper, and we'll ask him some questions here. Yes, let's go, let's go, Mr. Tristan. As you can see, guys, the Viper has been playing, in my opinion. Better, better every every time. Hopefully you have enjoyed with the series. I'm just getting closer, but guys, because the monitor is not so close. I don't have my glasses because I want to look a little bit less nerd, less nerd, and I don't see anything, guys. Doubt versus Heart is the next. Hera versus Tatot, Lee versus Mr. Yo, and Tristan is is waiting for the Viper to be in the sofa. Think you close, please closer, closer. I'm starting to be worried because I still don't see anything, you know? <laughs> you can go back. You can go back. Pretty frizzy. It's too close, you know? It's really too close. And here we are, T90 with the Viper. All right. So here we are with the Viper. Viper, um, generic question you might hear a lot this week, but how are you feeling after that series? Solid. I'm playing well, so I feel, feel pretty good. Okay. Good to hear. Um, I mean, ACCM came in here. Needing victories in terms of survival more than you did. Uh, mm -hmm. For you, it was more so looking to get 3-1 to potentially get top two, uh, depending on a result tomorrow. But, uh, you know, you, you know ACCM, as do many people. I think he practices with, like, a variety of different teams. So he practices with everyone. Yeah, okay. So, like, what were your thoughts? Like, what were you expecting from him going into the series? Uh, I predicted his draft pretty well, except the Berbers pick. But, uh, yeah. I, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Was the uh, go ahead? Um, what was uh, did you go Hindustanis as a counter to Aztecs there, or no, but, uh, was I, it just I, a general pick? It was a general pick, but I, I thought maybe he could play Berbers there as well. So I had like Aztecs Berbers on um, fortify clearing, fortify clearing, and another map. Okay, I got imagine it. he would use that other one. Too. But yeah, also like from what I understood, me winning would give Doubt better chances if Doubt wins. So that was a secondary motivation. So are you just saying that? No, no, that's what like, I was told. it. Okay. I told, yeah. Okay. Well, no, I was just, I was just, I say that because, like, you know, you, you got to get the job done, right? Yeah. So that's like a pretty, 
pretty far removed ulterior motive, but I uh, that's true. I mean, doubt needs a little bit of help right now, right? <laughs> a lot of help. A lot of help. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, this game, I mean, when you saw the matchup, uh, if you were to give a percentage for this, fortified clearing, Hindustanis, Aztecs, do you consider 50-50, or do you think you have the, the better civilization? I honestly don't know. Uh, I think Aztecs... I mean, actually, I don't know. I, I've, it's it's the first time I played, right? So I'm really okay. not sure. Uh, it felt well, good, obviously. You didn't have Elite Ghulam. I know. Okay, okay. I chose to not do it. Oh, okay. Well, my my, I was. I, if you were making a judgment on the matchup, I was. Yeah, I would do Elite Ghulam now towards the end because I knew I would start. He would start struggling on gold. Yeah, got I was it. Fl starting to float gold, but yeah, I felt Hussar switch or like light cab Hussar. Yeah. 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 For the opening, and then like if I wanted to lead Coulomb later, I would have done it. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, obviously that game was like really clean from you. This game was a quick wall fest, Viper, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, and I think that's going to be most of the highlights. But uh, mm -hmm. you scout, you scouted. He didn't have a dock, I believe, in that game. Yeah. Uh, what What went wrong? Like what What went wrong compared to what you were expecting? Mongols. I yeah. No, uh, it's really <laughs> hard. To, uh, Mongols just takes full initiative in that game. And yeah. Yeah, I, I, I did, s maybe I spread my wheels too, th like, uh, too much in few legs. They gave him too many angles to attack, right? So yeah. maybe that put me slightly behind more than I wanted to be. Okay. But yeah, Mongols just take full control of the game, and he did that really well. And yeah, I, I couldn't do anything except try to hold on. Yeah, I mean, he, that he, he, played, he played incredible, right? Yeah. And there was like, y you knew, obviously, that like ACCM was capable of that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think some people who may only know like four or five players really real well in our scene we really were like, whoa. Holy yeah. crap, when they saw ACCM do that. Um, but ultimately, I, I think Mongols was drafted kind of high, right? And uh, we moved on then to game number three. And game number three was insane. Uh, it was Incas versus... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was only two games ago, bro. Yeah, I forgot. I, I said, wait, what was <laughs> okay, well, it was Incas versus Berbers. Uh, again, when you saw the matchup in-game, was it what you were expecting? And how did you feel your civilization fared against the Berbers? Yeah, I was thinking he would go Mayans maybe and then use uh, Berbers on graveyards. Because okay. like, if, if, if it goes to game five, then I guess his sip for graveyards would be Mayans or Armenians, which I think is a bit strange. Yeah, yeah. So I did get a bit surprised about that. Uh, it feels weird talking about this match when we're seeing the other game, though. Well, I thought, I didn't know. I, <laughs> thank you for that, Viper. But I just, didn't know what was going to happen. Like, this is literally just showing you dying. So the alternative is like, Viper, tell me why you were dying so badly uh, at this stage and didn't oh, resign. So. Game three. Okay, well, okay, well, thank you. But now yeah. game three, uh, we're already in Castle Age. But at yeah. this stage of the game, this is actually the most interesting point mm -hmm. to, to talk about for me. Because there's a point where the night number gets rather high for him. You take this fight. You're expanding with a lot of TCs in this yeah. game. Some other civilizations, like Aztecs, maybe Mayans, mix in Pikemen. Do you think you should have gone Pikemen? I mean, I did go Pikemen. Yeah, I know, but like, so yeah. you were happy with the Pikemen timing? Uh, I think it was okay. I, I wanted to have a healthy economy before I switched to Pikes. Got it, okay. 30-plus farmers, right? Uh, okay, yeah. You could maybe make a case. You could have done it earlier. But I, I figured if I just do a, have Eagles to control the game and then like add four or five TCs, so raiding is less likely to happen, like bad raids anyway. Uh, then my Pikeman switch can be a bit later as long as I have a healthy farm setup. And okay. I think it worked out pretty well. Uh, obviously, this was a bit dangerous uh, when he started overwhelming and starting to raid everywhere. But yeah, I had enough barracks up, so the Pikeman... Tell us about this fight, because you lost like 40, 50 units at once. Uh, what was your thinking there? I was thinking... It was, uh, I, f I went full doubt here. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, let's just patrol and fight, see what happens, right? Because already here, I felt like the game was over, right? So I was like, maybe you I felt could like just... you had it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I felt like I had done so many raids on his golds and eco that no matter what, he would always struggle to uh, come back here. I mean, this was the winning fight, but this was, was the fight the before. The fight yeah. before, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it made sense because you had so much eco. Like, would mm. you play it this way? Uh, obviously, you probably don't want to spoil anything, but there's two other civs that are known for their eagles, Mayans mm. and Aztecs. Do you, do you think other civs could just, like, say, screw it and just spam eagles like you did? Or do you think it's solely the Incas right now? No, everyone can play eagles of those three civs, but Incas are probably the one that does it the best, right? Okay. Uh, and the thing with Incas as well is if you run into an another Mesosiv, you have Slingers, for example. Who yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, if you picked Mayans here, it's still probably a bad matchup for him because okay. I would have Incas, right? So. If you had to guess how many Eagles you created in that game, give me a guess. 270. 330. 330. Ah, not too far off. Oh, there's ACCM. Yeah. What do you think <laughs> when you saw ACCM run through the hall to get a smoke break? Were you scared? I was expected. <laughs> yeah, we have seen it every day at this point, right? So. <laughs> yeah, he there. must have had a bathroom break before, so he had less time, yeah. which is why he ran. Uh, well, I mean, game number three, I mean, arguably the best game of them all. Mm. You went man-at-arms into mill and, like, delayed the range a bit? Yeah. 
I have played this with ASIM in training, right? And okay. When he played business teams against me then, he went forward. So I was like, okay, let me just open my arms to make sure I don't get a forward and then adapt from there. Okay, got and it. I think the men arms did a good job. So in the end, I'm pretty happy with how it went. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, it went into uh, two stables, but you completely given up water. So yeah. um, obviously, water's really nice to have. Mm -hmm. uh, but you got through. Like, what w what was your thinking comp wise? You knew camels were going to be coming. You knew yeah. you'd have the fish boom. No, I just want. I, I figured if I can get a little bit of initiative early castledge, make it hard for him to add thesis right away, which I think I did. So maybe I could then pull ahead and land economy. And the fish is a bit awkward. It gets worse and worse. You have to always expand the, yeah, the yeah, docks yeah. and everything. Yeah. So. I was hoping as long as I set up a healthy land economy I and don't take too many bad trades, I should be able to stabilize the game. But obviously, it's always scary. Byzantines can come forward, which they did. Yeah. Fast imp and such. At one point, I, I wasn't sure if I should go imp or not because I idled my thesis. Ah, for okay. But I was a little bit hesitant on that. When you, you Was this when you went imp or was it like before? Yeah, when I went imp. I, okay. Even, even then, I, like as I was idling my thesis, I was still like, for the, for that minute, I was like thinking, hmm, yeah. this is a good idea because he had so many camels and monks. Yeah. And I, I saw the castle there and it was like... I mean, I, I think in the end it was probably a really good call. Yeah. Um, you know, but I can imagine when you're up against Byzantines, it's tricky because mm -hmm. you don't know if he's going imp. Um, but in the end, you know, you, you ended up trebbing down that castle. But yeah. like, were you... You probably initially dropped these castles solely for defense, right? Well, partly Gebetto production. Okay, yeah. Gebetto, I also knew he was walled at home, so if his he's tunnel visioning on his pressure. Yeah. Like if his woodlands were walled, so my Gebettos could kill Vils over the woodline. Which okay, yeah. I was able to do, but yeah, the Gebettos are a really nice unit here as well. So um, yeah, obviously it was also partly defense. Yeah. As he was being very aggressive. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, it was a great series. In the end, you win. It was a bit tougher than the highlights suggested, though, right? It was very tough. Very yeah, tough. He's, he's, he's playing I mean, very well. The amount of times he was up at 200 pop when you were killing him was wild. Yeah. So, um, what you win the series, you're now three one. Mm -hmm. I think you were having a discussion with Jordan that it was possible that if you won, that you would be up against him. I don't know if that's confirmed yet. I think both if I won or lost, I could face him. Okay, right got now it. he is three one as well, right? So yeah, there's a big chance. We there's face a big tomorrow. chance. Okay, so I mean, obviously you're looking forward to the three one match, but regardless of who you're up against, if you win that, you're in a really good spot. The zoom is very bad here, guys. That's not the dog. That, <laughs> is that my is leg? It, is it? Yeah, it's not the dog. That's my right leg. <laughs> Production. This, That's this, not the dog. This, this, no, this way. Why are we zooming into my crotch, bro? Okay, there we go. That's, <laughs> That's That's the dog. Yeah. yeah. Oof. Okay. Anyways, uh, so that was that was nice. But um, if you were, you know, you go in tomorrow, you win four one. Uh, potentially, then you just get a bite of the semifinals. How big is that? Yeah, it will be very nice. Uh, but yeah, I feel like I think I'm guaranteed like top six now. At least I will, no matter what, get one day off. Um, and I'm happy with that. Like, okay. um, actually, is it top four maybe? Uh, who gets? Nilly is is Nilly is gonna come tell us. So obviously, if we can take a look at the bracket, if you place top four, you get the advantage at least one day off, mm -hmm. which is the round of six, because there are still two ah, people okay. joining from yeah, the yeah. lower bracket. Eight to five have to play. One okay, Eight to okay. five have to play on Thursday. Am I guaranteed top four now? I uh, would three one yeah. feels likely. My opponent tomorrow probably Jordan. Jordan gives you some Buchholz yeah. as well because either you win or you get another yeah. Buchholz against him. So it feels <laughs> like feels like a uh, round of six is guaranteed for me. So yeah, one day off uh, would be nice. But also like I get into semifinals like it sounds good on paper, but also I like to play right I, to keep my yeah you want to stay sharp yeah exactly like if I feel like if I got one two days off maybe that's like too much of a break. Uh, to keep the rhythm right, and I feel like I feel like I play better and better the more sets I play, and it's not the same as training. Still, like, I, of course, I can grind sets in the training room, but it's not the same. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jordan says, Jordan says, if that's the case, I would like to go to the semis right away. <laughs> All right, Viper, you yeah. you were lacking some blacksmith upgrades in that really? last game, yeah. which I imagine when you look at our chat here, you will recognize. What? Was that a conscious decision from you, Viper, to not get upgrades? Uh, as I mean, I d uh, you mean like late in the Imperial Age? Yeah, yeah. I know I was missing armor for my Gebetto, for example. Ooh. You were you were missing armor yeah, for, for everything, while, so, so yeah. that's why they're screaming it. Yeah. But it's like that's like oh, now I just look like a jerk. Oh yeah, I think I didn't even do cavalry armor upgrades, did I? Even uh -uh. I switched to Farim. Uh uh. Okay. Yeah, that was not on purpose. <laughs> okay. Accidents happen. Well, thank you, thank you for clarifying that that was not intentional, Viper. Nice. Um, 
Yeah, I think that's all I have for you, man. Uh, congratulations yet again. It was awesome series of cast. Looking forward to casting more. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, and we're going directly to the next series. All right. Our casters are Dave and Jordan. Oh, boy. Should be I a good time. It goes on like it like on the head, you see? And then you put the thing. Like this, Dave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Close. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. If you flip it the other way, it could be like a unicorn, you know? No, don't try it. Just put it on. Jordan, hey. please. Okay. Okay, welcome, everyone. Welcome. I'm here. My name is Dave. You know that. And I'm with Jordan. Hello. It's been a while since we've cast together. That's mine. That one's yours. Thank you. Don't steal my drink. Wow. Well, we're already in shambles. This is fantastic. I will keep my <coughs> secret here. Yeah, exactly. We have doubt versus heart. And they both need this. Like, Dave. Andy was sitting on the couch trying to explain to Hart how he could potentially go through with Buchholz score and everything, and Hart's like, it doesn't matter, I need to win. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, in this case, for both players, it is about winning. If they lose, it is 100% out, I think, yeah. right? So it's do or die, and uh, therefore the pressure is extremely high. So, yeah, both players, I'm a little bit surprised uh, none of them have... It's kind of, sorry, it's kind of in your nose, you know. I just had. Is to it better now? Yeah, yeah, it's okay, good. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, we're perfect. <laughs> we're all. I, 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 that, that's, that's good. That's good. <laughs> so the headset is uh, good now, and yeah, uh, you know, both players super great. However, they have not had the best run so far this tournament, and mm -hmm. Dave, I think one of them will get a win today. Good. Who do you think it's gonna be? Good. Uh, I think actually it will be Doubt. I I trust in him. Uh, I think he will take it home three one. What do you think, okay. Dave? I hope I. I mean, I, I want Hart to have a good performance here, his first 1v1 land tournament. Yeah. But there's something about looking across the table and seeing Doubt just in his own little miserable world that I don't like. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like I know. The expression I know. on it, his face is just so different. It is painful to watch ha that. Yeah, right? happy Doubt versus sad Doubt. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's it's not great to see, right? It's, it's also funny because at the beginning of... Every single LAN tournament, his confidence is through the roof, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And then throughout the days, go further, it always declines, declines, declines. So you can really see the confidence <laughs> going down and down. And now he's like in, in the realistic world. <laughs> so like, I'm happy if I win one. <laughs> and if you had asked him before, he's like, I win it. And yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. How many times on average per day do you think he mentions that he won Red Bull Wallalo 3? I think that number has not been invented yet. <laughs> if we were to tell you the number, you wouldn't even be able to understand. No, 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 no. It doesn't. Like, he even says it There's during There's not enough ink. <laughs> no, it's not. He even says it when he's sleeping. Like, in, in his dream, a <laughs> rebel <Red Bull> champion. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he enjoys it. He enjoys it. And for him, I don't know why, but that's also the most prestigious tournament ever in Age of Empires 2 history. Oh, yeah. That's according the one to that, him. No, according to him, that's the yeah. only tournament that matters, yeah, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see. Who, who do you think Dave is going to win there? I think it's Doubt. Doubt? I what, think, I think Doubt is going to lock in here. I think it might be a 3-1. 3-1, okay. For Doubt, but I wouldn't be surprised if Hart picked it up. Like, Hart only had, uh, you know, yesterday he was talking. He's like, ah, oh, man, maybe three Red Bulls before the series. Maybe that's not good. I'll stick to coffee tomorrow. And then I'm sitting beside him on the couch, and he's got a Red Bull in his hand. And I'm like, Hart... I thought I thought you you said you you know you're gonna wait till after the set. And he's like it's only one, so yeah. you know he's toning it down a little bit. He's trying to figure out why he's not um, you know performing his best. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe he's got it figured out. Maybe the nerves are gone from the initial games and uh, he can perform. We know we've seen some flashes of brilliance. He almost took Viper out mm -hmm. on the very first day. Yeah, and. He could get some wins here. I'm looking at the map pool. It's not terrible for him. Yep. Uh, Beach Fight as the neutral map is very interesting. Then we have Arabia, Marsh Madness for him, and then mm -hmm. Fortified Clearing and Brood War for Doubt. Yeah. Also, very interesting thing about Hard uh, for me personally. Uh, I think he even had the hardest way to qualify. I mean, he had to take down MBL, he had to take down Doubt, and he also had to take down Sitor. Uh, it was super, super tough, and uh, it always went to the decider, if I'm not mistaken. So, he also so showed very strong mental strength there. However, in this uh, LAN tournament right now, he has not been able to find his groove, I feel, mm -hmm. and therefore the results might be looking one sided. However, he still. You know, he's still an amazing player, still plays well. Uh, it's just the minor things which can uh, yeah, skip it.
I wonder if his suitcase is like 50% hats. <laughs> it kind of looks like that, right? It does, yeah. There's a big ass There's jacket always a different and hats, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has like seven. <laughs> like the underwears, yeah. <laughs> He's got so many hats, man. <laughs> yeah, but uh, apparently it's cold for him here. I, I, I'm, I'm in shorts, and sure, mm -hmm. like, uh, it's hot for me, but it, it depends, right, where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. But you're used to the, the climate, right, Dave? Yeah, it's nice and refreshing. There's no wind or anything. It's just, like, brisk and cold, and, yeah. you know, winter mornings are, are beautiful. Yeah. Well, mornings for you are different than mornings for me. Mornings for me are, like, walking here at noon. Yeah, morning. that's morning for me almost as well. Yeah, you got to kind of revise your schedule, especially <laughs> after you play the le last uh, last set. May I please get a crumb of Buchholz? Can you say it? Bu Buchholz? Buchholz. Buchholz. Yeah. That's close. That's almost as good as discrepancy. 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 <laughs> I, I will I will say it in the, in the cast when I'm not thinking, and then you will be <laughs> laughing. I, I think you can prepare the check and prepare. Like I'm even prepared, so that's good. That's good. Okay, so Beach Fight. Very unique map. Yeah. You got the Hunt on the north and the south, and then you got the Golds on the east and the west. But the most unique thing about this map is there's no stone anywhere along that. I think we saw Tato buy three castles yeah, it's yesterday. Insane. Yep. The map is very tricky, and as far as I know, we have not seen it too many times yet, Dave. And and uh, main maybe event, twice. So twice, yeah. So, uh, I I personally like the map a lot because without stone, it is just way different compared to the other maps, and mm -hmm. uh, that makes it kind of unique as well, right? Um, yeah. Also, very important on the map are the sheep. Right. Usually, each player has nine sheep in the back, and then three uh, on the sides uh, each, respectively. And so finding them is a little bit difficult too. Yeah, there are some tricks, but you know. Oh. <laughs> I, I cannot that, share all the secrets yet. Is that a llama on Hart's hat? Is that? Is it a llama? I am. I I'm blind. I I would not even seen that it is on something like the orange there. On his hat. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I think yeah. it might be. It is. Okay. Yeah. Tiramis taking pictures of us, yeah. beautiful casters. We have to look at each other. We're like We're really oh, yeah. enjoying our time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry guys, we had to focus for a minute. So, Dave, what do you think has been the reason for both Doubt and Heart that they have not been able to show their you know, skills or show their performance on the level which we are used to from them? Uh, I think hard it might be a mix of uh, just adapting to uh, the LAN environment mm -hmm. and For some sure. nerves of coming in here, right? Yep. And then if you look at Doubt, I, I I just think he has his days where he's really impressive, and then he has some days where he kind of falls off. And unfortunately for him, this is start to the week has just been, you know, not his best. Yeah. And sometimes it happens. Yeah. I mean, he had to play against uh, Liri and against uh, Hera, right? Mm -hmm. uh, both amazing players so going down 2-0 there is not the biggest surprise but I think he was uh, hoping to uh, get the match yesterday against freaking Andy but uh, freaking Andy is playing phenomenal this yep. tournament he even said himself he uh, expected to go 0-5 and uh, now he already has two wins out of four games so uh, you know he cannot uh, be be unhappy there mm -hmm. all right so both of them thinking about beach fight beach fight what civilizations if we could pull up the draft again what civilizations do you immediately think of with that map obviously mongols is one but that'll probably be removed uh, actually hard has mongols does he draft. okay okay he does. so i'm pretty sure we will see mongols from him on on beach fight anything else would surprise me mm -hmm. and uh, there we can see that Doubt also has Khmer, so maybe Khmer there. Can we see <laughs> it? <laughs> I, uh, you can, but <laughs> I, I tell you. <laughs> I know the draft a little bit as we're always uh, helping uh, them a little bit. Okay, I think both players should be close to jumping. There in. it is. Here we have it. There it is. So he's got Khmer, Hart's oh, he got Mongols. Um, anything else? Reach out to you there. I, I don't really see mines on that map. Uh, doesn't really feel uh, overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, Poles, the space on that map is not too much. So you can't put any full works. No. no. I even struggle with normal sifts, so poles would not be the best there. Uh, Georgians, something Dave tells me, Georgians is not supposed to be played on that map as well. You mean the fact that you're rarely going to get a castle? Yeah. Manaspa are basically the reason for playing Georgians. I think that is the reason. Yeah. Yeah. 
So then you have Portuguese, Saracens. I mean, the the Khmer are just very good on that map, right? Because mm -hmm. you start with five farms, you can... Uh, or is it five? Is it six? I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, with the Khmer farmer bonus, uh, you have a nice nice start. Uh, but yeah, Mongols is one of the best civs there. So I would be surprised to... If you let them get out else. to the hunt. Like, they're still good, even yeah. if they don't get out to those that north and south area. But if you let them take all of that, and I believe... Mr. Yo let Tato take basically like 90% of the hunt yeah. in that area. You're going to have so much extra food. Oh, it's you're absolutely insane. You're flying. Right? Yeah. So if you're against Mongols on that map, you want to deny the hunt as much as possible. All right, here we go. Game number one, Toad against Heart. And look at that. Completely unexpected. Heart is playing Romans here, and Doubt is playing Saracens. I can't remember the last time I saw this sim matchup. Uh, I don't know if I have ever seen that one. It is very surprising because Romans on that map. I mean, we saw hard picking Romans. No, what? No, it was a different Sif. He he was playing. Bis no, it was Romans against uh, the Byzantines of doubt in the mm -hmm. qualifiers, and there hard was trying for a fast castle approach, uh, but doubt punished it completely, right? So maybe Hard is switching it off now and uh, goes for fast fuel age and then man-at arm aggression or he just plays scouts or he will try everything again and hopes this time he adapts better. I'm not sure. So what was the strategy the first time against that? What, what, what was he trying to push into? So what I think he was trying to do is wall, go for fast castle and then push with long swords and Siege. Mm -hmm. I guess that was the idea. I mean, Romans' uh, long swords are extremely strong, right? They have uh, five uh, armor, so it's nothing uh, you can complain about. And Four then when five. you're when you're looking at Saracens, what should the opening be for Doubt, and what should the Castle Age composition be for him? Well, we expected Mongols, <laughs> so he has to <laughs> he has to adapt here a little bit. Uh, that's for sure. But in this case, uh, if I was Saracens, uh, I guess. Because I'm expecting men at arms, I will open with an archer range. Mm -hmm. But I go for fast fuel age, right? No, no fast castle shenanigans, and then uh, literally adapt. Uh, very important on this map is we we talked about it. There's a lot of hunt in the corners, so you want to uh, ensure you get the hunt, you know, denied by. Uh, Wh from, why is Doubt sending those sheep back to Hart's base? He'd never expect it. He'd absolutely he, he, he never, never expect. He'd, he'd never, never go over there. It is a, it is it is an excellent play from Doubt because he knows the scout is going to be looping around this way and he's going to snag guess, yeah. the sheep over here and then he's going to snag the other sheep and yeah. these ones will be back to his base in about around time for him to click up to Castle Age. So yeah. that's a nice little addition. Yeah, yeah, he has to wait a little bit until they're there, but at least he has them. And now both scouts could find each other, barely missing each other. But Doubt should realize that very soon, right? That yeah, there is something going one. on there. Finds one sheep. He's yeah. going to just abandon the but effort to go after those other sheep. But still, he's going to have four and Hart's going to have five, I believe. I think he took... Yeah, it was, it was okay for both players there. And uh, now it's it's a question, right? Both players up to fuel age almost at the same time. Remember, uh, on this map, it is a little bit harder to go for the very, very fast uh, uptimes, which we sometimes mm -hmm. see on the other maps uh, with 18, 19 pop. In this case, uh, 20 pop is actually pretty pretty fast. And uh, as, as you don't really have the, the boars for the faster uptime, Doubt is walling. And hard so far, not on gold. He is... No, he doesn't have blue, so it, right now it feels that he feels just like wants scouts. to uh, open scouts, Dave. Yep. Yeah. And scouts are an adaptable um, unit to open with, right? You can yep. transition into an archer range later, or maybe just go up to castle age if you need to. Yep. Uh, and then you go into that infantry approach if he feels like it's super strong. Doubt on the other side feels like he's going to go for that archer range, and then the market is so cheap you can just put it down. And then you talked about adapting. Yep. With Saracens, it's one of the best civs to adapt with because you can just press those buttons, sell your stone, buy some food, and you're up. Exactly. Uh, Saracens, one of the best civilizations to adapt and uh, helps a lot if you play those kind oh, of Oh, he's going to find them? Oh, no! Okay. No, he won't. He won't. He won't. Oh, he will. He will. Uh, he will. Oh, all the way around for that. Oh. Express delivery from Doubt. And Hart takes those sheep or the goats or whatever they are. And he's going to bring them back to his base. That's so painful. It looked like Doubt denied something. He has a lot of wood, Hart, right? So yeah. I, I'm not sure. I guess Hart realizes 
that his Which opponent is, is is bald. Yeah. And therefore he doesn't want to He doesn't to spend. go for the stable, he goes for the market. Yeah. Instead. Yeah. So Doubt is sitting on top of that hill like, Haha, I am the master of the hill. <laughs> now you cannot beat me. I see that your stable was deleted, but Hart is just adapting. He's going for the market. He might sell his stone first, which is an extraordinary feat against Doubt as Doubt tries to take the hill, but Hart is in the better position there with more HP. Yeah, and he definitely has a little bit of the advantage here. Uh, he cannot really engage. It would be risky for him to engage, but I guess Hart, you know, he's known to be mechanically super, super solid, mm -hmm. uh, trusts his micro. So I think he is still fine going against uh, Doubt here. And there is a Spearman coming, and Hart is not looking at it. Nice. You will lose the scout. Really, That's huge. really solid job from Doubt to end yeah. up winning that. Yeah, absolutely. And that literally means that Hart is completely in the blind. I love what he's doing here with the Spearman. Hart, I'm very surprised by that, Dave. He has not taken any boar yet whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Or Rhino. He didn't want to take the risk. He wanted to scout for those goats. Doubt's going to find one of the goats and bring it back. He's still got the Spearman and he's still got his scout alive. No scout for Hart. So no more information coming in from Hart. But I think he already knows roughly what Doubt wants to do. He just wants to wall up, go for the market, and then try and get up to Castle Age. Hart doing the same thing, only now getting Loom. He only goes uh, gets Loom now. Yeah, it's very, very late, right? Uh, he was not punished, so it worked out for him. And when I look at Doubt's resources, I'm surprised, Dave. You know why? He still has stone. He still has stone. But, I mean, it's a map with no stone, right? Uh, he That's still has the stone. only map where Doubt will keep some stone, and he's even sold a hundred of it. Uh, yeah. Usually he just buys it right back. Yeah, exactly. I mean, especially with Saracens, right? And with so much gold on the map, you can afford it. Uh, what I would also be interested in, just to get a better feeling on uh, how the economy uh, for Doubt would look like. How is his hunt uh, looking like, the rhinos? He has not taken his no, rhinos. No, he hasn't okay. taken anything. So that tells us that he doesn't have as much food to his disposal as, uh, in theory, he could have. Uh, I'm very surprised by that, Dave, that neither of those players have opted to go for the rhinos there. Well, maybe he didn't want to take the risk, right? He knew Heart Scout was somewhere around there. He didn't want to lure it in. And uh, it's too much of a risk for him to go out there when he can simply fully wall and then buy any food that he needs with that market. Hart still queuing up scouts here. He's got a uh, wall over that really rough position at the front of his base. There's like a big hill there. His gold is underneath. So he definitely needed to wall on that front side. And Doubt is now getting bloodlines. What's the plan in Castle Age? He's got that stable. Is it going to be camels or is he going to open... Maybe with a couple nights to try and harass the back of... Uh, I guess it must be camels, mm -hmm. uh, just because you're Saracens, <laughs> right? They are so strong and not the best raiding unit. But I think Doubt feels fine in the later stages of the game, uh, because that's uh, where he shines a lot. Ooh, so Doubt's going to the south. Oh, that Is Hart going to see this? so dangerous. Is Hart going to see this? He's right near him. Surely he sees that. Yep, and Doubt is there with the Spearman. He pulls the villagers away. The Spearman is coming to help, so he should be able to stop the scouts from killing all of these. Uh, especially with some preemptive walls here, it might help. Wall! Why does it, he not wall? Like, it, it does why, wall? Why take the risk here? Why does he not wall? It, it's fine. He knows better, I guess. He's got a camel on the way. Okay, that, that kind Aww. of makes sense. But still, it's so easy. Man, I was sweating right now. <laughs> It's what? so easy yeah. to wall that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I almost went crazy. <laughs> He's okay. in on the wood line. Is there a hole uh, there? There must be a hole. Must yeah, be a hole between, between the, the barracks and the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and he's and gonna kill a villager. Don't micro, don't micro, don't micro. You can do it. He gets oh, one. he gets God. one. And, and he he's didn't right lose, out the door. And he didn't lose a scout. In the meantime, he was able to kill two light calf from heart. So that was a beautiful exchange. <laughs> and look at that! There's nothing! There's nothing. <laughs> Someone arrest that man! <laughs> Someone arrest that man! We have spotted a poacher oh. at the top that is illegal. Uh, yeah, Only yeah. the elephants remain. I think Hart's still going to be fine with that, though, because three elephants is a lot of food. But look at that. Doubt has discovered a villager. The scouts are in no position to attack that. Yeah, it's also hard. There are a lot of things going on on the map. So I guess he has not really paid attention there, Doubt. Uh, it didn't feel like he was intentionally trying to, to attack there. Um, and, and, you know, that's a huge difference, right? Because Doubt still has a lot of rhinos and the, the deer there. Mm -hmm. And 
we, we talk about, I think, 2,000 food there extra without having the necessity to place any farms there. And uh, that's a major thing. And Hart, on the other side, he has to, to invest uh, in the early farms in order to get the food. Yeah, so it's, four, it's like 5,000 food available for doubt in the south and up in the north wow. we've got some you know some berries but in terms of hunt and berries combined it's only 2000 so it's more more than double more than double yeah and it's a huge difference right so far neither player looks like he wants to play super aggressive with any monks or any siege in the middle which is also a very smart thing to do uh, on this map because you know the the space on this map is very tight and what space there is, no space. There, there is no space, right? So it really is a good strategy to make some shenanigans, but I guess both players, they know how much is on the line. And mm -hmm. if you are in these kind of situations, you also have the ten tendency to play rather safe and yeah, don't take any risks. Very similar approach. Two TCs in the main base, one TC up at the hunt. Wouldn't be a surprise to see Doubt add another TC over at the gold just for safety, if not yep. even for the, the production, right? Yep. And then start making his way into military after that. At the moment, though, both of them just utilizing the mobility. They're trying to find some free picks. Doubt is starting to set up the houses. Will he set them up in, like, a nice little wall? Uh, yeah. That could, be, that could be a nice setup. I, I think he, he will do so. Uh, really gives you good security on your uh, raidable uh, exposed position, so that's a very smart thing to do. He's working on that. Uh, right now, three light calves are, or two light calves in the night are trying to uh, hammer down the wall, uh, but Doubt is on the point here. And, you know, David, looks like this is going a little bit more towards the... Oh. He doesn't get the camel. Nice, nice snipe there. Still scouts follow up from Doubt. I wonder if those are the weak ones from before he's... The wall has been switched. The targeted wall has yep. been switched, and Doubt is under the impression that he is repairing there. So we'll see if he keeps on top of that. He does. Well played from him. No pressure going to get inside of his base at the moment, but Pikeman is on the way from Hart. And remember the Romans, they can get those infantry upgrades double applied yep. in Feudal Age and Castle Age. So theoretically, those Pikeman could have plus four armor. Absolutely. And then they're in all of a sudden completely shredding, right? So Doubt needs to be scouting that in order to have the right reactions here and for hard the game plan must be now to push in the middle how how many villagers does doubt lose when he comes out for that gold over I, there I, I expect him to not lose anything I'd say at least one at least one against yeah. the line yeah <laughs> I, I I trust in doubt he, he has the micro on, on point uh, and we see hard he is doing a few shenanigans in the middle here, so he definitely wants to uh, to push here. Okay, let's see. Come on, out! Come on, call! Doubt? Out! Don't run into your hometown. Doubt? Doubt? Dave Jordan, I think he lost the bet, brother. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I know mean, that's I not so bad. It's only one villager, right? It's only one villager. I should have known better, right? Doubt doesn't care. Like, I'm in losing the grand one villager. scheme of things, one villager is absolutely nothing to him. Yeah. I mean, he would have to invest a lot of APM for that to mm -hmm. save it, right? So mm -hmm. it's not worth it for him. And he just eyes. he just casually sneaks through here. There's like 15 pikemen chasing him or whatever, and he just runs right through. He's perfectly fine. He pulls the camels away. He's got a monk involved too. And you were talking about the lack of space. I think if Hart wants to push in that area, actually building all those houses and the blacksmith there is, is kind of bad for him because where else is he going to make his production buildings? Yeah, that's a big uh, problem and uh, very interesting also that there is such a huge forest in <laughs> front, right? So it is going to be easier for, uh, for Doubt to defend here. Uh, if you take a look at the economy, both players roughly the same amount of villagers. However, Hart managed to sneak in 1,000 more resources compared to his opponent as Romans. They are a little bit faster. Nice conversion here by uh, Doubt. Uh, still loses the Monk here. We've got Cav Archers coming out from Doubt. Cav Archers for him. The Camels have snuck in again. Hart needs to take care of these holes that are in his base. I think he's covered the gap between the barracks and the market. I could see a little flag from the Palisade wall. But there's still some gaps here in the housing at the front and Doubt is just running around. He's trying to escape, he's trying to escape. He loses a couple units and then decides to fight. Maybe not the greatest timing on that one. Also look, Hart's got a double. No, that's not double siege workshop. That's just one siege workshop and a stable squeezed in there. 
I have not I ha much room at all. There is not much room. There is a hole there? There is a... Did you not see it, Dave? No, did you? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course I saw it. <laughs> no, I didn't see it as well. It's just impossible. Like, this map is so... So weird to make the walls proper, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are so many hills included. Well, anyway, situation right now is looking very good for Hart, I would say. Because he has to push going forward in the middle. He has the map control. And Doubt really struggles right now to think about good way to counter that. He has CA, yes. However, Hart can easily, with Romans, uh, mix in Scorpions. And Scorpions for Romans are cheaper on the gold. So it's really good for him right now, I would say. Yeah, and Doubt is leaving now with the Cav Archers. Love He's it. He's leaving as the pikemen get through the wall here. And Hart is going to go for a market in that little gap there so the Cav Archers can't get in. He's also made a house behind that stable just in case. It gets really, really tough with these hills to spot all of the holes into your base. Doubt is still trying to snipe the villagers. No ballistics for him. Looks like he's going to be able to hold on that side. But now he's pushing up against the Mangonel and Scorpion. With the Knights coming, they're sitting on the hill. I don't think this is a position that Doubt can push. I think he's going to have to go somewhere else with these. Absolutely. Uh, he is in a position where he needs to uh, mix in some melee units as well. Mm -hmm. Thinking about camels uh, or Knights even to snipe those siege units faster. Out. Oh, nice. Wow, Dave, you Whoa, waited for that. Up the hill, too. Wow. Uh, the positioning, the precision, the passion, Jordan. The passion, <laughs> yes. I mean, it looks like it's a different player here. We're not used to see those kind of moves by our lord. This is this is the part of the game where Vodka pans over somewhere else and Doubt's losing like, <laughs> 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 like 10 villagers. Yeah, yeah. But that was pretty solid from the lord. Heart having a good economy himself though and he's still pushing on this side and making life difficult for doubt but we can see the pathing issues around those buildings it's just crazy and he's kind of set himself up for that yeah yeah uh, also very important to notice is doubt already got thumb ring mm -hmm. so his ca are going to be so much stronger crazy and al also it feels like Things have shifted, right? Look at the population of Doubt, 130 versus the 107. And Hart so was ahead for a long time there. Exactly. So Doubt shifted up the gears by the looks of it, and now he's in full control of the map, uh, of, of the game. Yeah, and he's getting ballistics too, so Doubt's gonna have a ton of upgrades on those Cav Archers. Look at the resources here, Jordan. Doubt is about to click oh, up wow. to Imperial Age. He's getting some of his Cav Archers uh, hit by a Scorpion, but it's fine because he's got more in reserve as Hart finally stretches out for that gold. Looks like Hart went for a raid on the left side gold from Doubt, but Doubt was paying attention. And finally, he's going to have gold access himself. This moment where fights are going on in the middle and you try to be creative, trying to sneak in the corners, uh, hoping that your opponent doesn't watch. And Dave, you arrive there and in the first second, you arrive there and he garrisons without you doing... It makes you feel kind of hopeless, doesn't it? it? Feels you, yeah, exactly. Especially in those tournament games, that makes you feel like, huh, maybe my opponent is on point and I'm not 100%. So, it was very important as well in the mental warfare here for Doubt. Yeah, good scorpion shots though from Hart. And the scorpions don't have... I mean, they don't... They, you don't need a lot of investment to go into Scorpions. It's a yeah. very, very cheap unit in comparison to Mangonels. Romans get good ones, and it looks like he's getting a lot of HP damage, and he's trying to uh, just hold the line while he adds Knights behind, but still much later to Imperial Age. Second armor upgrade coming in from Hart, so he's going to have to invest into Castle Age here. Doubt is going to have those Imperial Age techs as long as he doesn't lose all of his army. He's losing a lot of HP against them. He's losing a lot of HP, uh, but he stands his ground and he's just 1 minute and 50 seconds away from reaching Imperial Age. Look at his stone. It is down to 50. That means there is a castle going up somewhere on the map. We see it here, Vodka on spot. And if that castle goes up in the combination with him reaching Imperial Age, mm -hmm. Hart is going to have a very tough time to think about a good way to come back in this game. Well, how does he take out a trap uh, sitting on that hill? It's going to be so, so difficult for yeah, him, right? Especially absolutely. with the Cav Archers roaming around. And once Doubt has that trap, 
I mean, he can take out the wall really easily with the castle tread combination, then get in with the cav archers. You can see him still running in here. So many scorpions for Hart. He's repairing that scorpion, so he continues to get value. He's out repairing the damage from the knight and the camel on the scorpion. Really well played there from Hart. Unfortunately, he can't push in under that castle, and he's going to have to find a different solution. The knights might be able to do it if they get into the eco, but there's 31 cav archers for Doubt, so he should be up to the task. 31 uh, CA, that's very healthy for Doubt. However, Hart has done an amazing job uh, expanding his economy, uh, growing his population. He is at 150 right now, and if you take a look at uh, Doubt, 170, so there is not a big Discrepancy mm -hmm. uh, there. <laughs> that was best good. Spot. That was really. I'm so spot. proud of you. I am so I, proud of I, you. I, I was looking at you before I said. I was like, oh man, god, you're hooked my, on phonics. My man. heart was pumping. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, Hart has done a good job. The biggest issue, however, is um, the tech. Right? He doesn't have Imperial Age yet. He's not even close to it. Goes for hand hand card right now, and uh, he will lose more and more ground, I suppose, in the middle. Chemistry. Uh, Parthian tactics, it's crazy. There's another hole into the economy. It takes out another Scorpion. Once Bracer and Chemistry is in, the Scorpion Pierce armor doesn't really mean all that much anymore against the Cav yep. It just feels so much easier to take them down. And the repairs aren't going to save it, that's for sure. Hart still not on the way to Imperial Age. He needs some massive raids. It's not going to happen. He calls the GG. one nothing doubt. Very solid game by, I, I would even say by both players, really. Uh, we see a very nice moment. <laughs> you know, any other player most likely would have tried to save that villager and it would have been a mistake. Mm -hmm. Because Why? one villager you with 64, 64 others. Who cares? <laughs> 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 I love that one. That, that's exactly how Doubt thinks there. <laughs> like, I, it's just one. <laughs> <laughs> I love that picture. That's perfect. She never should have been out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was her fault. Why does she engage against lions? She should have known. No, but I just feel like both players had a very solid setup. Uh, we saw until mid cast stage, both players neck on neck. Uh, even gave Hart a little bit of the advantage here mm -hmm. uh, because he was the one pushing with Siege with Pike. That's very strong. However, Doubt has done the perfect move. He saw it. And he didn't engage into it. He didn't try to defend it with yeah. his initial army. No, he ignored it and said, okay, if you're investing so much into your push right now, your focus is most likely going to be there and I will just counterattack. And as yeah. there were a lot of holes, he was able to cause some havoc. I think you can't push... I, I think you can't push at the top there, down that hill either. Because it's a, it's a really, really tight choke point, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I if he pushes at the bottom with the Siege Workshop, then he, he's not like bouncing off all of his buildings, trying to get around, forcing down uh, through one wall of doubt. It's way more open. Obviously, you can't build on that beach terrain, but I think there was a clearing to the south. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was pushed away from that by the camel army that Doubt was making earlier. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. But okay, uh, also, uh, I think Saracen's uh, late imp should be <laughs> very strong against Romans. Here, oh, right? yeah, so Romans' late imp feels uh, quite underwhelming, especially against Sibs with, like, bomber and cannon and everything. Yeah, else. yeah, and then also the Mamelux. What yeah. do you even uh, do against Mamelux as Romans? So, uh, Hard was in a losing position, civ wise if it was to go to Imperial Age. So, he, he r made the right decisions. It was just, like, the execution uh, from Doubt uh, and the... Uh, Counterattack was just such a big deal. Okay, so next map. We know Hart is a phenomenal Arabia player. Oh, yes. He loves it. Do we think he's going to Arabia? Is uh, he going to pick one uh, of Doubt's maps, or is he going for his comfort zone? I think Hart needs to go for Arabia. Okay. That's his hometown. Okay. Right? That's his hometown. And, and Mongols? Arabia. He used it against Andy. Mm -hmm. So it is likely. Malians are super amazing on Arabia as well. Vietnamese are super amazing on Arabia as well. So I see one of these three uh, civilizations here. And Mongols, where else could it be? Fortify clearing, yeah, I would say underwhelming. Brood war. No, oh. really. Because you're not getting that middle area fast enough. Yeah, yeah. So it has to be Mongols on Arabia. That's the only... Civ, which makes sense, or uh, the the only map where Mongols make sense, I would mm -hmm. say. 
so yeah, they I think it's going to be Mongols. And then doubt if it's Arabia Mongols, does doubt just go Mayans here? I mean Mayans don't feel the greatest against step lancers, especially early castle age. The the good thing for Mayans is that they have the discount on their archer units. Mm -hmm. So if you are capable of getting a big mass of ranged units, you can uh, definitely fight against those step lances. However, with Mongols, the timing attacks, yeah, that that can be very dicey, right? So Mayans maybe not the best bet here. Um, yeah, I, I'm sure we will uh, see that pretty soon. I don't know which other sifs he had available uh, doubt, so. My God, Hart, Hart's got the hoodie without the shirt underneath. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice combination. <laughs> it's like the but that's like the go-to home attire, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if I, 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 my my head would explode because of the the heat. Like, no, oh. he's used to it. Yeah, he's I know. coming from Peru to yeah. a German winter. Yeah, like that's ooh, that's yeah. a tough adjustment for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, we're about to hop into game number two here. Okay, it's Arabia. Mayans versus Mongols. Dave, <laughs> unbelievable. It's like we watch the game on a regular basis, Jordan. It's crazy. Well, I watch the game. You play the game. Yeah, I, I don't watch it. I only play it. Those but who can't play, watch. Yeah. <laughs> Those who can't watch, <laughs> cast. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to ask <laughs> out, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what he would say. That would his uh, answer be, yes. So yeah, very interesting um, matchup. Mongols with uh, very strong uh, timing attacks as they gather the food from herdables. No, not herdables. How is it called in, in English? The deer and the Hunt. boar. Hunt, thank you. <laughs> Huntables. <laughs> Huntables. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, they are a little bit faster there, so you can go for some shenanigans here. But Hart is not the kind of person who likes those timing attacks, right? It's He's more about perfect build order um, and fuel age uh, aggression, so I expect him to, to, to play like this as well. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you think it's going to be like a scout opening from Hart, it's going to be super fast, you think like no loom up? I, I think... Loom would even be a mistake to, to go here mm. uh, because you're so much faster up than your opponent. And uh, if you go forward with the eagle, like in these scenarios, nine villager starts, it takes some time with the eagle to go to your opponent because usually you want to push in the deer yeah. uh, to be as greedy as possible. That has become kind of the meta. And uh, once you arrive with the eagle at your opponent's base, your opponent is most likely going to be up to fuel age and you lose the scout. Yeah. Uh, your Eagle Scout against the Scout. So I think Loom is definitely uh, going to be done in Fuel Age. And uh, yeah, for Hart, you know, I li I, you I know that Liri likes to play Scouts into Skirms with Mongols. Okay. And he has been very, very successful with that style. So I would not be surprised to see Hart doing that as well. I don't absolutely love that wall from Doubt to the gold at the back. It feels like there might be other options, but I don't know what he's scouted there. I guess it's okay with how far the gold extends in towards your base. I guess he expects his opponent to go scout. Yeah, and really therefore fast. Really fast, yeah. yeah. He wants to play it safe. Ideally, you push it a little bit further just to be safe uh, from range units as well. But, uh, he's yeah. He's going to be fine. Yeah, he, he's fine, he's fine. If we look at hard space, he's also got a back gold. He's got a back wood line. He set up the houses to that wood line to the north, but it's going to be hard to uh, extend that. We actually might see a wall with, on both sides of that wood line there, directly to the TC, and then like another mini one yeah. around the berries in the wood line. Yeah, very likely. Uh, it is very easy for Hart to secure the right side of the map. And then on the left side, that's where his focus should be. Th that's how I would play uh, his map at least. But the fact that he placed his barrack onto the right hand side is kind of an indicator that he wants to have the stable there as well. Real emphasis on walling here from Doubt early. He doesn't want those scouts to get in. I've seen it so many times though, Jordan, with Doubt. Like, he never, it feels like he never learns. He'll go for the full wall to the TC and then he'll leave four tiles open yep. and the scouts will get in. And then you can just feel him swearing as he's chasing the scouts around yep. with three spearmen. And it's like you could have avoided <laughs> just four <laughs> this tiles. Whole situation. Just four There's tiles. There's the barracks right there. Let's see if he plugs the gap. Yeah, the, the funny thing is, Dawood, you know, he's a little bit older. Is he? And uh, just a little bit. Okay. And he used to play 
the game uh, when scouts, when they ran close to the TC, they took a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. So back in the days, that was considered a very bad play. Yeah. And he still is in that era. Oh, he's, oh, doing he's it. fully walling. Hang on a second. Is that where the archer range is going? Welcome to 2024, Doubt. Oh, he's fully walled. Unbelievable play. He came from here Doubt. To play. Now, Hart is going to have the scouts on the field. And he's going to control all the movements from Doubt. I don't believe he's going to allow him to sneak out. So if Doubt wants to come across the map with archers, he's going to need at least two spearmen yep. um, to escort them. Yeah, you don't know how many scouts your opponent goes for, right? Mm -hmm. So you need two spears just to be on the extremely safe side. However, Doubt could also play it super greedy. He only has one on gold, so he's not planning mm -hmm. on going for huge archer masses. So that is very interesting. He could also just garrison one sp skirmisher like that, and, and then Hart doesn't know. Hart exactly. could think like, oh, he's constantly producing archers. And, and like he's gonna have to go for skirms of his own, and Doubt's got the walls down, and then who knows? Maybe Doubt can just add eagles. And I like the way he approaches this because it, Hart is not going to expect it. Mm -hmm. He will have scout skirms ready, and the scout skirm combination will absolutely shred the archer uh, spearman play. Mm -hmm. So by Doubt doing something else here has a little bit of a shift in terms of the mind games. He will add, and I'm pretty confident in that uh, statement, he will add a market very soon, Dave. Yep. He will sell the stone, mm -hmm. he will fly to Castlage, yep. and then spend a lot of resources on those eagles. Yep. The ticket to Castlage is quite expensive, though. But Doubt has is. Is paid for that ticket many times. Yes. There's the blacksmith right there. So Hart still has no idea. He just sees a flag on the barracks, he sees a flag on the archer range. For all he knows, there could be three archers in there. Yeah. He doesn't know. Yep. And uh, skirmishers are inside the range from heart. I think three skirmishers is probably good until you confirm what is going on from doubt. Why, would, why would you add more, right? 100%. Because there's always this threat that your opponent is debating you into mm -hmm. something. But uh, yeah, heart adds even more skirms. I think in that situation, we're the casters, we see everything. It could be considered as a as a mistake on the over overall view. However, Hart he doesn't know, so he mm -hmm. can only work with the intel he has. And you know, sometimes you also have to assume things. So, uh, f playing wise, as a player's perspective, he has not done any mistake here. What I like about what he's doing right now, he's really active with th those units, and he wants to apply the pressure. However, he sees some eagles there, so he has to be very cautious here. Yeah, and he sees the skirmishers from Doubt. He hasn't spotted a single archer, so he knows the investment is, is quite limited. He only saw two skirmishers from Doubt. Now he goes out to the gold, and Hart is so good at adding farms behind military pressure. He's, he's one of the best at it, and you can see 12 farms already mm -hmm. for him. The eco is looking solid, 370 food in the yeah. bank already, and that gold transition is on the way, so he's definitely thinking Castle Age soon, as long as he can hold this army in from Doubt. There goes the stone. The ticket has been bought, <laughs> but he's only bought enough <laughs> for the first step of the trip. He hasn't gotten the second flight yet. Yeah, yeah, but he's very close to it. Uh, I'm pretty confident Doubt is the first one to click up to Castlage. I mean, he's just 50 uh, foot short in order to do so. And uh, it is very nice to be the uh, meso player and uh, reach Castlage first, because that allows you to have the strong uh, units on the field first allows you to get a map control and allows you to dictate the pace of the game. How, like, when Hart sees the prices on the market, how unsurprised is he <laughs> going to be when he looks at maybe selling some of his own stone? He's going to be like, oh, yeah, he's been here before. Yeah, okay. Very unsurprised. Yeah. Very unsurprised. Uh, but, yeah, I don't think he balances a little bit. He even sells 200 stone as well. So. Hart knows exactly that he needs to reach Castle Age as soon as possible and he needs to pump out Stab Lancers as much and as fast as he can and fully wall, right? You don't mm -hmm. want to have any holes in your in your base, otherwise those eagles are just going to have a field day. I think it's still a good it's a good setup for Hart because Doubt is not producing range units. And step lancers feel really, really good against Absolutely. eagles until you can get some pikes mixed in. Even then, yep. like the step lancers just run right around the pikes. Mm -hmm. They pick them off, and if you have like six of them in a stack, 
Yep. Pikemen in a line will get slaughtered one by one by one. It's crazy how strong those step lances are against mm -hmm. the eagles, right? Against eagle and, and spearmen, as you mentioned, Dave, and especially in low numbers, right? If you're fighting 50 against 50, it's so much harder, but if you have like five against five, I take the step lances any time of the day. And Mongols of, uh, also have the advantage that their cavalry units or the, the scouts and the uh, step lancers have a little bit more HP there, so they are even stronger. So what's the plan here for Doubt? You can see he's adding in a few extra spearmen. Is he going to come forward? Or is he a little bit scared of, of Harp maybe sniping the villagers? I think adding a forward monastery would be a good play. But so far, I don't see him doing that. He's adding spikemen. Mm -hmm. I like that. He doesn't commit onto the eagles. And he's adding a second TC. Now, the inexperienced player or watcher could ask himself, why do you sell 200 stone when you have to buy it back, right? Mm -hmm. But we have to also think about it. Doubt had has adapted to the strategy Hart went for. He saw Hart use the market as well, and he saw Hart is uh, walling. So he knows Hart wants to invest 100% into army, and then he can counter the all-in from Doubt. And therefore, Doubt said, okay, I will step down. I won't invest all my resources into army because you have a good counter. I will play greedy again and try to debate you into making a lot of army. Three stable step lancer production from Hart. Three stable step lancer production. That's a lot. He's gonna have a lot of those on the field. It feel what what's the magic number for step lancers? Like eight or something, where it just feels like a nice little group. Yeah. You yeah. can one shot Vills, right? You can one shot Pikemen, Eagles, yeah. Yeah. anything. And once you're running around with those in the hands of a, a player like Hart with his micro, yeah. can be devastating. Look at how much damage they're doing to the Eagles. It's, it's kind yeah, of disgusting. It, it's crazy, right? Uh, for you only need five step lancers in order to one hit a villager. So. Mm -hmm. They're not a unit you want to have in your base. Let's say it like that. All right, we've got the houses coming up from Hart. He's getting the flank on the Step Lancers, and we're about to see him just kind of poking away and then running. He's got a one-tile advantage. The pikemen are a theoretical counter to the Step Lancers, but Hart will just keep backing up, bop, back up, poke, back up. And doubt, <laughs> doubt is, doubt is sweating now. And doubt, you know, you have this army that you've invested to, and you, and it just feels useless. It feels, and it is useless. It the only thing it's doing is buying yourself some time yep. before these step lancers make their way back towards your economy because the pikemen aren't even getting a chance to hit the horses. And we talked about it. Low numbers. The step lenses absolutely melt those infantry units. You need the ranged units, right? So the step forward is going to be very tricky for uh, for Doubt. Hard. I love what he's doing. He says, "Okay, I've defended the aggression. Now I will add my economy as well." So I played a little bit more safer, right? Mm. You could also make the claim to go forward now in his position and go all in. And I think both ways work. Yep. Depends on which playstyle you're comfortable with. I honestly think in, in Hart's position, I would even say I go all in, 1 TC with the Step Lancers, because my opponent has 3 TCs, yes. However, it is going to be so hard to sustain the villager production, yeah. especially when I put aggression with the Step Lancers from all sides. Well, he's got 12, right? And he did make that other TC on the stone. I, yep. I think... He's thinking long term about a castle forward, potentially. And he's got, I believe, a siege workshop coming up in that center area. So oh. it's not quite as close as I would like to see it to Doubt's yep. base. That's kind of like a middle of the road siege workshop. But maybe he's just trying to hide it because he knows the monks and the eagles are there. Wants to protect that villager and is going to distract with the step lances. I think this is a really tough position for Doubt. It You're is. You're stuck. It is. Yeah. The good thing for him is he's Mayans. Mm -hmm. Mayans economy is absolutely insane. He goes for the fourth TC. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't be surprised at this Doubt. But yeah, I'm still surprised. I don't <laughs> think it is the perfect situation oh, to no. go... For the fourth TC. Here we go again. Yeah. What you need right now is as many uh, units on the field as possible to defend and against Hart the upcoming aggression. And still has aggression. those scouts. So he's going to yeah. try and pull the pikemen away, yeah. loop in with the scouts. Doubt is doing a good job keeping the pikemen and the eagles near his monks. He doesn't want to let Hart snipe those. One of those monks is out of faith, though, and he successfully clears up the step lancer. There's another monk joining the party. But the Sep Lancers are coming in towards the pikemen, and that monk goes down, and Hart is going to find himself 
an okay engagement if he's microing properly. Yeah, and there's a Mangonal also joining the field here, and uh, this looks okay for both players. However, the Mangonal hits a very nice shot here, and the Pikemen are going down. Yeah, Pikeman going down. Step Lancers, he lost a lot of Step Lancers in that engagement. Yeah. Maybe more than he should have. Hart getting a little bit too aggressive. And maybe another Step Lancer being converted. The Mangonel is working well on the stone, but the production is there from Doubt. He's got double barracks. Pikeman production, he's got nine of them now. A good attack round from Hart. Another decent one. And more Step Lancers on the way, but the Monks are still alive. So great defense here from Doubt. This was just a stellar uh, defense by, by Dowd, right? Uh, was able to find the right balance between how much do I invest into uh, army, how much do I invest into expanding my economy. And right now we can see it, he's pushing back everything. And uh, his economy, obviously, throughout the entire time uh, is going to be better right now. Man, it seemed like Hart just got too aggressive. He saw the monk get that conversion. He's like, one of them's out of faith. Didn't expect that third monk to come along behind and just dove in and then took his attention off the Step Lancers for one second. Really got punished for it. He's still not in a terrible position. He still has doubt on the ropes, kind of, as he's going to be able to clear up this army. And look at the stone count from Hart here. He's got 463. Doubt, if he gets castle drop forward, could be in some trouble. I love that stat. Nope, that built his fourth <laughs> TC before the average Arabia player builds their third. Oh, that's so good. Uh, I mean, well, he, he likes his uh, fourth TC play, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Um, yeah, right now, Doubt completely cruising, has the map control, has the right units. Um, Hart will opt for a castle very soon, mm -hmm. which will give him access to Mangadai. And mm -hmm. Dave, if there is a one unit in this game, which uh, can give Hart a much better time in this game, uh, it will be the Mangadai. Yeah, Mangadai are so, so good. And Hart is going to go for that castle defensively on the hill that protects his stone, it protects his gold to some extent, and also keeps his main base secure. Step Lancer production from him has simply not been there. He's also got two Mangonels just kind of chilling in that forward siege workshop. So he's gonna have to figure out a way to get access to those safely once again as the pikemen come in from doubt. That's a couple quick walls away from being a completely safe castle. The pikemen aren't really posing a threat. And while monks are a very annoying unit, you know, if they are about to convert your pikemen, you don't really care about it. It's like the same as uh, Doubt's villager against the lion, right? He's just like hearing the noise and like, oh god, it's only a pikeman, right? So he's fine with that sacrifice. And now the two mangonels are being ejected, so these two are searching for a little bit of damage here. I'm not sure if they are capable of finding one, though. Uh, they might be able to fire away on the stone. He's going to get the monk, which is nice because it was converting yeah. the eagles. He's going to get the villagers. Oh, nice whoa. shot there from Hart. Doe definitely didn't expect that one. He thought he was going to go after the military. And good villager snipes God. on the stone from Hart. Well done. I think he killed five villagers five there at one shot. Five so bills. that was that was good. And I expected no damage to be dealt. And they're still alive. They're still alive. They've met up with the Step Lancers, so now Doubt suddenly has to worry about that. Mangadai hits only one on the field. He hasn't really started production. We also look at the food eco from Hart. He definitely needs to increase his farm count, but he's doing it as we speak. Doubt's at a solid 36 on food, and he's done a wonderful job designing his base, too. If you look inside his base, the farms are are in really good positions, right? He's used all the space that he walled in earlier. Yeah, and very interesting as well because his base itself is very small, it's very compact. However, he managed to place the farms there very nicely oh, and therefore... Rounds. Does he get one? Nice! Oh. That was beautiful. Really, really solid job from Hart. More conversions coming in. Mangadai on the hill. Step Lancers on the hill. Mangonels, can they survive? Hart might be able to pull villagers to repair, but he doesn't. And all of the pikemen will go down, but they managed to clear some of the Mangonels and some of the Step Lancers at the same time. So even though Hart, in theory, will come uh, on top out of this fight, Doubt is still, is still fine to, to trade like this, right? Because his units are cheaper. His economy is insane right now. He has 12 units or 12 villages more than his opponent. And uh, yeah, this, this cast is a very important one. Doubt needs to deny that, but I'm not sure if he is capable of doing he's so. He's out of range, yeah. I, I, I don't think he can unless, well, he's still got units on the hill and Hart will need to go for that castle 
in a more defensive position, probably less of a threat to doubt, but if you're thinking about both of them getting up to Imp, this one's going to be harder to snipe, and it's also a point that you're producing Mangadai from. So maybe yep. at the end of the day, it's going to be a little bit better for Hard if he's going into that Mangadai production. Still, we look at the Imperial Age timings. Doubt is going to be up so much faster than Hard is. He's going to be so much faster. First of all, second of all, we have to keep in mind Mayans don't need so much resources. Mm -hmm. Here we go. 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 And he waited and he waited and then he shot. Beautiful. Yeah. Nice. Very nice micro hit by, by Hart. And uh, yeah, Mongols need around 140, 130, 140 villagers in order to really show their strength. And the Mayans, they are fine with roaming around 110 villages. So Doubt is almost at the spot economically, which he wanted to be. And uh, yeah, now he has also access to plumes. So he's going to uh, add those, uh, I'm sure, as well. However, in the meantime, we see Hart keeps up there. Uh, Imperial Age is incoming for him as well. And yeah, so far I would say it is very equal this, this game. I'm actually surprised he got up to him so fast. Yeah, I'm He well. must have had a ton of stuff in the queue. He just unqueued yep. it and then suddenly found himself with a ton of food. Still only 24 on food is not fantastic. Also, interesting that they both have the same economy upgrades. <laughs> no Castle Age Eco upgrades for either. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it is hard, right? Uh, there's a lot of things going on and sometimes you are caught in the moment, mm -hmm. uh, want to fight, want to be effective with your fighting and then s just forget the economy upgrades. But yeah, interesting, both have the same there. And now Doubt goes for the second wood upgrade there. Okay, so that's nice. Uh, do you go El Dorado Eagle immediately or are you more concerned with just getting Trebs on the field? Uh, I think El Dorado Eagles are very expensive mm -hmm. at the beginning, so uh, it is more about getting good castle positions mm -hmm. on the map and then try to trap down the the castles from my opponent and maybe even opening halberdiers i'm not 100 sure here because yeah That's okay we have so many we have so many mangadais who go eagles yeah it, it kind of armor elite eagle and then make your way into uh into el dorado later and try and the most important thing, I, I think, is going to be to try and find openings in the eco, right? To split yep. those Mangadai numbers so they're not sniping your Trebs consistently. Yep. Yep. And there are openings now. Hart was walled before, but he's not walled on everything now. Thumbring coming in for him. The armor coming in for him. He's still microing multiple groups of Mangadai. So really, really solid stuff from Hart. But you can see there's little groups of Eagles everywhere around there. And this is going to get really, really hectic. For Hart, we can switch to his point of view for a second, and we're going to see him switch between multiple POVs. He's got double armies, worried about a castle on that side. There's a raid oh, coming in. He, he regroups into the Eagles, which is tough. Oh, boy. Hart not having a, a good couple minutes here as Doubt is finding success. That was so painful because in these kind of situations, every single Mangadai is so valuable. He lost a few there. He loses a lot of villages here uh, to the raid of Doubt as well. And Doubt, he's very close to getting his plus four armor on these eagles as well. And with that, only Eldorado is really missing for him to really cruise through the game. Only 12 eagles to, or sorry, Mangadai as yeah. well. They've got Bracer. Hart can maybe get in that castle, but Doubt's cut him off. So Doubt has cut off his retreat point. He's also still raiding in the south. Villagers going down on that angle and Trebuchet working away at the castle. Hart just can't find the fights. Doubt is on easy mode here. With the Eagles, you just point and click. Hart has to do so much work to counter these. Yeah, this is so tough in this kind of position. And if we take a glimpse at our the population for both players, 170 for Doubt, 100 or 100 only for Hart. And uh, we have Arson incoming, forging, and uh, Eldorado is not going to be uh, too far, uh, far away, far away, far away from from Doubt as well. But I think he's even fine without them. Yeah, I mean, Hart calls the GG, and that's that's a shame for Hart because I felt like he had a good position. Yes. When they were both in Castle Age, Doubt was stuck. And I think it's that one fight that kind of swung the game where he let his step lancers get surrounded by the pikes instead of the, you know, the stop micro back. Yep. Yep. And maybe he was looking at his economy or he was trying to snipe monks or something. But one little slip up like that and those mesosibs, the Mayans, the Aztecs, the Incas as well can just overwhelm you. Absolutely. Like if the unit in theory uh, would have been used perfectly, for example, Hera in that position, 
I'm pretty sure he would have been uh, very more successful with the mm -hmm. uh, with the push because he's just top notch with his uh, Michael there. He's paying attention there, and uh, yeah, Hart did not do so in that certain moment, um, and therefore he had to pay the price. But because his units were very expensive, very strong, very expensive, and uh, doubt is just like I have economy, I can throw those units away. Yeah. Uh, of course, not blindly, but it doesn't hurt him as much as it would have uh, hurt uh, Hart, and that's what we see. And from that point on, Doubt had the map control. He had the um, yeah, map control there, and he was just uh, in a winning position there. What's your mindset if you're Hart right now? You've lost. I mean, you're 0 and 3. This is day four. You're down 2 0. Yeah. And you just lost your home map. Yeah. And you lost the home map where you're really 100% at your home, right? Yeah. I'm not sure how much hard It was your really primary residence. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it wasn't like a vacation home no. or something. Yeah. No, he stayed for quite some while, <laughs> right? March Madness, I think, is just a vacation, but Arabia is his home, you know? Ooh, it's going to be tough. So, yeah, uh, in order to answer your question, I think his uh, mental status right now or state is not going to be the best uh, especially as he knows there's brood war mm -hmm. there's fortify clearing still in this set and i don't think he feels too comfortable on these maps against out do you go marsh madness try and get some confidence uh, you have to okay you have to yeah you're down 2-0 you need to win this set you got to get the confidence on your side yeah. and maybe try and tilt doubt a little bit yeah maybe some of those nerves for doubt start creeping in because it's yeah. like uh you know, it's a decider game for him. And and when they uh, played in the qualifiers, Doubt was up to zero as yeah, well. Yeah, that's right. And so Hart managed to bring it back. Exactly. They've been here before. Um, yeah, so Hart, it really depends now on uh, his, uh, his strength and in terms of mentality. But it is a very tough position. Okay, Marsh Madness for Hart. Hart has Persians. Doubt has... Georgians, which I don't believe is a sieve that we've seen here on the main event. He does, <laughs> he loves his mule carts though, Jordan. <laughs> oh my God. Find someone who loves you as much as Dote loves these mule carts. <laughs> it's it's an impossible challenge, no, I think. No, no chance, no chance. Yeah, he likes them a little bit more than, than I do. Uh, I tend to overbuild uh, mule carts. Uh, I think I have not 100% understood the functionality mm -hmm. behind them yet. However, Doubt, you know, he's the kind of guy who's known in the community, aside to Tado, to be uh, one of the, the best if it's about adapting with new civilizations, come up with new strategies, new new uh, yeah, new st strategies, and uh, therefore people have the tendency to ban Armenians and Georgians yep. for, from Doubt, uh, as we saw in the last days. However, Georgians now available to Doubt. I'm sure Hart did not expect that pick on this map and uh, could take him by surprise. And if you're unfamiliar with what the Georgians can do, we have the Manaspa as the unique unit, which is incredibly powerful, right? They produce quickly. The more you have, the more powerful they get. They get that attack boost. You start with a mule cart, which can collect uh, wood, gold, stone, hunt as well. So it's a it's a very, very powerful tool in your, in your economy. You also have uh, minus 50 food because of that mule cart you started with. Then fortified churches are boosting your eco within a radius by 10%. Your cavalry regenerates HP uh, more per age, and then your buildings cost less to repair. On the other side, Persians, we know what they can do. Faster production is beautiful. More HP on the TCs and docks is beautiful. Faster production on the docks as well, and you start with the extra resources. Really, really strong in this current meta. Yeah, Persians one of the strongest sieves on hybrid maps back in the days. And now they have even gotten buffed, right? Even in Dark Age, they produce a little bit faster, so that's very nice. And they have uh, had the exchange from uh, Paladins to uh, Savar? Savar. Savar, right? I like okay. the way you say it, though. You kind of give a little oomph to the R at the end. I would not be able to redo it. <laughs> I, like I was it. like, oh, is it that one? <laughs> yeah, <Savar>. but <laughs> Savar. Yeah, that, that's good. That's good. So, uh, in general, Persians, very strong. However, I feel like with Georgians, I'm not sure how well Hard is going to be 
feeling against uh, Georgians here because he is amazing if it's about sheer meta play, right? Mm -hmm. um, let, let's see. I'm, but this I'm is a little unusual. So yeah, exactly. What do, you, what do you expect from Doubt? Yeah. Is it going to be a water play? Is it just going to be... Uh, you would expect scouts, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Dave, how many fortified shorts are we going to see this game? Uh... Let's see. Uh, Let's game do. Is, game is paused, so we have time. Yeah. I'm examining the map. I see a TC on the gold over there. See another TC on the other gold. I see a TC. So four TC. One, two, three, four. If we go to 42 minutes in the game, we will see yeah. six fortified churches. Okay. I go for eight. Eight. Yep. At 42 minutes. No, I go for eight. <laughs> In independent of the time. <laughs> At this game, time. we'll have okay. eight fortified churches. Okay. No. All right. It's part of the strategy. You've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not part of the strategy, but my gut feeling tells me it's going to be eight. Let's see. Doubt is kind of known to spam a lot of fortified churches with uh, Georgians, which also makes sense, right? Yep. Uh, your villagers are working 10% faster. Almost to a fault, though. Like, it's only 10%, you know? It is 10%, but it feels good, you yeah. know? When, when you have them, you feel like you're stronger than your opponent, mm -hmm. or you're supposed to be, and that helps you as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I also noticed on this map, it is super hard to scout your opponent, because I don't know why it is, it is a little bit harder to expect where your uh, opponent's TC is, yep. and uh, yeah, usually you don't have too much scouting. Well, there's, until. there's also that neutral island yeah. you can see in the yep. north, right? And sometimes yep. that's bigger, sometimes it's smaller, so it's really, really yep. tough to come across and see, and there's no real indicators to tell you exactly where your opponent is, especially yep. by the time you scout, all the boars and stuff are going to be gone. You, like, you don't you don't know where they're. Precisely. A doubt archer range. with an archer range. And the hard spots that right away, so that's good info. Yeah, he has foreign gold, so it could be archer play with mm, fires. I suppose that's what doubt will go for. There mm -hmm. we see the first fire galley queued up. And what I love about uh, Georgians is just their uh, capability of regenerating HP on their scouts or in general on their uh, cavalry. That is so good. Yeah, it's really, it's really, really solid if you want to take like a fight versus spearmen, clear it up and then wait a couple minutes, come back later or take fights against the villagers, right? And then you don't have to worry about those scouts being low HP forever. And it only yeah. gets better when you advance ages. Yeah. So like knights feels really strong, right? Absolutely. Yeah. The the regeneration is very nice. We see two scouts uh, trying to find some damage here, but Taut is, is on point with the Spearman uh, perfectly defended here. He needs to pay attention to his gold, though. We've got one archer from Doubt. The scouts are here on the gold. Hart trying to snipe that villager. He's not going to get it. And the Spearman is there in defense, but the archer is kind of alone. The Spearman is not accompanying that archer, and Hart will be in a position to cut that off and potentially snipe it. Another Spearman there from Dow. Good job from him to track these scouts and keep his archer safe, and great job from Hart to just dodge casually, so casually around the Spearman as Doubt now comes forward with Spearman and an archer too, but there's skirmishers in defense from Hart, so he should be fine. Beautiful micro here from, from Hart, right? He didn't took, uh, take any damage from the Spearman, and he was causing quite some havoc there mm -hmm. uh, for for this stage of the, t uh, the game. And so only now really adds in fires too. Yeah. Like, yeah. they'll open with the fire, which is going to take away from his resources, but Hart knows he can just wait a little bit, keep yeah. his fires defensively, and then he produces two at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in this case, Hart's greedier approach is paying off, uh, has four economy units uh, more than his opponent, and Tout Scout, if I was... Him, I would just send it under my TC right now to Let regenerate because yeah. that one is close to death. Yep, and it could still provide some value, right? Yep. But he's going to use it for the vision a little bit, and his fire is going to show up. It's going to not hurt that Persian dock at all and find the fire ship from Hart, and he's going to immediately turn around. Hart, you know, playing with the Persians defensively is not a terrible decision because... Their TC produces yeah. faster, their docks produce faster as well and have more HP. So it's really, really solid. The longer this game is stalemated in Feudal Age, the better it's going to be for Hart. Absolutely. Uh, very important for Doubt that he has added a stable, right? That's mm -hmm. the building you need uh, the most right now as the scouts are going to be able to save you a little bit. However, 
with the archer scout combination, that is very strong. However, Hearts micro is very good. Yeah, Hearts really on top of it here. He's got the scouts in front of the skirmishers, sniping the archers behind. Doubt constantly keeping the spearmen in front of his archers, though. So good positioning from Doubt. And Hart will need to back away. Doesn't feel like an area that he can really pressure. Neither of uh, them has any blacksmith upgrades yet. And in these kind of moments, fletching is so, so important. But it feels like, ah, uh, doubt he doesn't have the time. Hart is keeping on the pressure so, so well. And mm -hmm. the spearmen are just going to be sniped here by the skirmish. Skirmisher's pushing in. Almost snipes the archer. Doubt still has that scout. Roaming around in front, and no spearmen from Hart to, to do damage to that scout, but he does have scouts of his own in front of his own army. Still kind of a stalemate fletching coming in now from Hart as he manages to defend on the water. Doubt still hasn't taken out any fish, and Hart is adding more fish of his own. I think Doubt needs to uh, go back, abandon his gold here, because he's going to be overwhelmed here by Hart's army. Look at that, 18 against 13. This is looking so good for Hart. And yeah, uh, fletching is now coming in for Doubt. This is going to be so tough to defend. Good micro from Hart, though. Really applying the pressure. He's got so many scouts now. He's got eight scouts with the armor on the way, and the skirmishers clearing up the spearmen as they come in and clearing up those archers, too. Doubt is under pressure. Doubt is struggling here to get the units out that he needs, and Hart is pushing, but Doubt has lots of HP remaining on his scouts, and this battle happens before the armor comes in for Hart, but it's still a decent one. The archers are going to die, and the scouts are all gone. The scouts are all gone, and uh, with that, Doubt is plummeting an army uh, population, only down to two, while his counterpart uh, yeah, has 12 right now. Excellent pressure from Hart. Awesome. Really, really great job here. He just needs to be careful with these scouts. He does have the armor, but the numbers aren't there anymore. Adding in some more fires. Hart starting to gain a little bit of momentum here as he is behind, sniping a fishing ship from Doubt, and it looks like he's adding a market in his own base as he snipes another villager potentially he's trying to sneak his way through there heart can he get it no that was a very clutch save here by doubt uh, unfortunately the scouts from heart for heart were not uh, able to get to this to this villager however if he has caused so much havoc here mm -hmm. he is already up to cast age and if we take a Look at Dao's resources. I wouldn't look at that. If I, no. was, if I was a Dao fan, I wouldn't look at that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not looking good. Oh, no, 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 wait. He just used the market. It's, it's fine. Oh, it, it's it, fine. It, it, it is getting closer. <laughs> it is getting closer. However, he's still miles away from that, right? So he needs to do some more um, shenanigans there. The good thing for him is with fortified churches, he's going to be also able to secure his area a little bit and boost his economy, yes. However, there are going to be Persians, knights, going to uh, raid you all day long. <laughs> the magic of the market. He had 40 food yep. in the bank like a minute ago. And That's suddenly he's on the way to Castle Age. But I mean, he's drained all his other resources. And you look at Hearts Res as he takes out the fire galleys here and he's going to remove the fish too. He can afford to add extra town centers. He can afford to add yep. extra production buildings. Doubts going to kind of struggle with that. Oh, that's that's just going to be very, very tough. I mean, with Georgians, you kind of expect to be... Well, that's a third stable! Mm -hmm. Third stable? I, I mean, if you, if you have 10 fishing ships, Jordan, you might be able to sustain the production. Look at the gold in the bank. 10 fishing ships, 24 yep. on food. Maybe you can go three stable knights at first and then yep. make a transition. Like yep. Just to hold the pressure on doubt. I have a feeling, Dave, that... Hart doesn't really want to go in the long game here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't want to uh, deal with those Manaspas. He wants to end this game right there mm -hmm. and uh, pumps out everything into army right now with I mean, the three stables. The aggression has worked for him so far. So yeah. why not just continue yeah. with that? For you sure. You don't want to get into doubt style of game where it's just a boomy game and each player is, is waiting on each side for that big Imperial Age engagement, right? And look, Doubt, he realizes there's nothing he can do. Hart takes the win. Well played there from Hart. Maybe a little bit of momentum. Doubt resigns without even taking a big fight. So that's a great win for Hart. That's a great win. And uh, I think this game also uh, illustrates Hart's level, right? Like, he is capable of playing so, so, mm -hmm. so well. 
and uh, that was just a top-notch performance by him. No single mistake was made. Everything was on point. It felt like uh, Harrow O'Leary playing, uh, so it was really, really good. Um, yeah, Doubt, I think, was not too happy with that uh, performance here on this game three, but he still has the two home maps, right? So yep. he can go in very confident into the next two games. Yeah, we've got Brood War and Fortified Clearing. Doubt will uh, take a little break here after game three as we head into game number four. And uh, we still look at his sieves, Khmer Portuguese Poles. On the other side for Hart, we have Malians, Vietnamese, and Bengalis. Yep, yep. Ah, Portuguese is obviously such a nice sieve. Oh, Portuguese. I love Portuguese. They, you can play them on both um, on both maps, right? So mm -hmm. On Fortified Clearing. Uh, we saw yesterday Mr. Yo pulling the victory was it yesterday? I think yesterday against Tata, right? Yep. Was it yeah, it was yesterday. Um, beautiful uh, with Portuguese. You have so many different options there. And uh, yeah, with Poles in theory, not too much of an option on Brew War, I would claim. On Fortified Clearing with the big space in the back, that kind of invites you for, for those Poles farmers, right? And yep. also, uh, Poles have been uh, nerfed or buffed a little bit with the mills, uh, costing 100 wood instead of the 125 wood, so the fall works. So it is definitely an option there, and especially on Fortify Clearing, you see a lot of, a lot of light calves. Yep. Light calves cost food. So with Poles, that's kind of an invitation. So I expect Doubt to have Portuguese on Brood War and Poles on Fortify Clearing. Portuguese on Brood War is super solid, too. Yeah. The extra 10 HP on your fire galleys is so nice. Just being able it to helps. confidently send them in and yeah. win the 1v1, especially if you're in that close generation that you see a lot of the time. Yeah. And also, having such a power unit like organ guns there can be really, really beneficial. Absolutely. The only tricky thing about Brood War is that you don't have the perfect, easy-to-go stone access, but mm -hmm. usually if you're able to secure your border, well, if which... if you win water, then you can just yeah. transport over. Exactly. It's not the biggest deal there. And if you wall yourself in, you could just go for Fatorias in the corner. Yeah. Very yeah, yeah. secure. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, Doubt can be very happy with uh, the remaining civilizations he still has to his hand. And uh, especially in those... In general, you can say in these kind of matches... Winning the neutral map is a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Winning one home map of your opponent is an even bigger deal. Yep. So, doubt still to one. However, <laughs> it reminds me a little bit <laughs> of what they played it's in the qualifier. Like to one. Maybe doubt is thinking about it right now. He felt stressed, but he passed us by. He felt stressed. Hart can take confidence in the fact that he has done this before. Yeah. yeah. And recently, too. Not like two years ago, like yeah. a month ago. Exactly. So, he knows that situation pretty well. And yeah, that was uh, very, very focused. Oh God, Dave, what do you think he's thinking right now? Like, uh, I think you want to be you want to be coming home on Brood war or on uh, Fortified Clearing. I think you go Brood War here. Brood War, if you're doubt. Uh, with with uh, which logic he picks uh, Brood War now? Like because it's the first home map he picked. Uh, no, because I think his strengths lend towards Fortified Clearing more than Brood War. Okay, so you want to get rid of the map, but you are not 100% uh, confident about as the other one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Also, Brood War, I think, is less consistent. Because if your opponent uh, starts right near you, it's a completely different map than if yep. they start on the other side. Absolutely, yeah. And that is the special thing about Brood War, right? Uh, which I personally love, uh, that you have three possibilities to spawn, mm -hmm. uh, like your opponent. And uh, therefore, also very tricky. You have to adapt. Okay, both players seem to be ready and already playing. So we are going to hop into the game in a moment. And I'm really curious which map we are going to see, Dave. I think it's going to be Brood War. I go for Fortified Clearing. You go for Fortified. And, and, ah, yeah. Brood War! Read him like a... Boke. A b a b <laughs> What's a boke? <laughs> <laughs> it's a book that floats. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly, the boke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay, well, we see Doubt scouting the shoreline. He's looking for uh, fish placements. And on the other <laughs> side, we also see Hart scouting for a perfect dock here. Now, where they send the scout afterwards is interesting, but Hart knows exactly what yep. Vietnamese knows exactly where Doubt is. Doubt will need to do a little bit more exploration, and Doubt's actually gone for the Khmer. 
here on Brood War instead of the Portuguese. He'll probably save that maybe for uh, Fortified Clearing. He will save that for uh, Fortified Clearing. And uh, with Kamur, we have not seen Kamur on this map yet, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm really curious what Doubt is going to show in terms of strategy. I mean, with Kamur, you're very versatile, right? You don't need the barrack necessarily. Uh, you can build the archer range, the, the stable, right from the get-go upon reaching fuel age. That saves you 175 wood, so that's very helpful. Mm -hmm. However, Khmer don't have any advantages whatsoever if uh, we talk about water play. However, Vietnamese, no advantages on water play as well, but their economy upgrades. Yeah. They are insane. And you can see right here, the economic upgrades cost no wood and are researched 100% faster. So, yeah. if, for example, you go for wheelbarrow. What are you saving yourself? Like two villas? One and a half villages? Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Handcart comes in crazy fast. Conscription's free, as we see right there. And then Imskirm, I doubt we're going to see those, but maybe. Yeah. Potential if this game goes late. On the other side, we already talked about doubt. The only thing that might help you with the water play is that you don't. You can get up a little bit faster. You don't yep. need those those buildings. Like you won't need the mill, but you're likely to have a lumber camp and dock anyway. So very likely. Yeah, yeah very very likely. Uh, for me, the the question now is: Is Kamur have different options? Is he going to go for a very 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 tricky build and tries for a fast cast of shenanigan? Mm -hmm. um, that that could be an option, or does he play it safe and goes for stable archer range to put on the aggression on the land? and try to make a dock on his opponent's uh, lake as well. So, yeah, we uh, we have a lot of questions about that. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I hope Doubt is sure what he wants to play. Mm -hmm. He's the only one who needs to know. And uh, from Vietnamese, I expect a very passive play because they excel especially in the later stages. I think it's difficult to go stable archer range here unless you scout your opponent because what if Hart is already walled? on that side. Mm. Then then you're just forced into facing the dock and then you've already invested in the, into other stuff, right? Yep. So it seems like Doubt needs to get some information first yep. before he can make the decision. <laughs> Face, <laughs> Face battle! Both. Nice, yeah, I see. Yeah, I, I like it, I like it. <laughs> so Doubt has confirmed that on the other side of his water, how would you call that, Dave? Is that that's not a lake? That's a what is it? It's a river system. A river system. Look okay. at Doubt scouting. <laughs> what? I don't think he's over there, buddy. He's like, where is he? Oh, that where oh, is okay. He? I think that's okay. That's, oh, that's a sheep. Oh. oh, okay. I thought that was the scout just doing oh. loops, doing laps. No, he was obviously it's oh. Doubt, so he was obviously. back in his face, <laughs> pushing in the it all was, the deer. Yeah. It was not so obvious for me, Dave. I thought he actually <laughs> failed big times there. <laughs> Apparently not. Uh, both players up to a few at the same time. However, we see hard with the forward dock here. So he wants to put on the aggression here. Mm. Doubt has not spotted that yet as Doubt far as Doubt doesn't know. even know where Hart is yet. He's yeah. just now heading over and he's going to spot the walls, which is good information for him. The no Doubt. Way. Doubt. There's no Doubt. Way. Oh, okay. oh, I thought Dave. he was going to head over to the other corner first. He gets that information early. However, he has not scouted the forward dock from Hart. So great job from Hart to sneak that villager forward. And you can see he's prowling around with that scout looking for an exposed villager. And he's immediately going to go for a fire galley. Doubt is in feudal age too, but he goes stable against a walled opponent. So what sort of damage can he expect? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Um, That's an exposed villager, though. That is an exposed villager. However, the reinforcement scout is coming in. The is fire galley is coming out, too. I don't know if that scout's going to be in time. You definitely want to clear this up, right? You don't want the potential of a second dog. He will kill the villager. He kills it, and he gets away for the scout with the scout for now, but not long term. And that was so crucial, because now Doubt can repair and Hart cannot, so he should always be able to win those fire uh, galley fights. Of course, Hart has the advantage here in terms of uh, when the fire galley comes out. However, Doubt has the, the defender's advantage and he has seven on gold. So he will be, without any problem whatsoever, uh, able to continuously oh, nice produce block. those fire galleys. Nice block. It was a good opening from Hart, but losing that villager is going to hurt. Especially uh, when you're thinking about repairing the fire galleys. However, Doubt can't really send a villager forward to repair either because that scout is still patrolling there from Hart and he needs to keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, he scouts of doubt, he oh, can nice easily block. produce them. Nice block. No. Nope. Eh, 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 eh. mm. 
man, Doubt is actually micring. I, I love Beautiful. this. Yeah. I love this, Dave. Uh, perfect play here, and we see actually the stable and arch range play. So it makes sense to have seven on gold uh, if you want to uh, produce fire galleys and archers at the same time. There is another villager being sent forward. Is Doubt going to spot that one? I it think looks so. Like that. I think so. He might spot it here with the villager. He sees it going back, and and that's probably a wise decision from Hart yep. to send that villager back. It's going to be too little, too late though, because yep. the scouts are coming from Doubt, and there's still a hole there. He needs to plug the gap. I think he's probably sending a villager forward. Will it be in time? Just distract with this with this dude. Yeah, and now yeah, Hart, okay. Hart needs to transition to land uh, for sure as well, and Hart he needs to finished this wall he has done so and he needs to ball behind so now it's all about getting archers out for a uh, heart here and so far he has almost two fire galleys in the <coughs> dock or uh, the river system of mm -hmm. of doubt and he has walled very nicely so he has not taken any f uh, lethal damage here but he doesn't have archer uh, wood for an archer range he only has five right now on wood that's horrible i've thought about it a little bit more it's not a river system it's an oxbow lake Oxbow Lake. Yep. <laughs> I just I'm not want sure you to if incorporate I that. <laughs> Oxbow Lake, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want you to incorporate that sometime in the in the future in this cast. What is Oxbow? But okay, I, I will go for the Ox Oxbow. Um, so yeah, uh, Doubt is putting the aggression here with the three scouts. Managed to get a forward uh, dog as well on the Oxbow Lake from a heart. Nice. <laughs> Davis, <laughs> <laughs> you're close to die. <laughs> I love that. I love that every single time we cast. <laughs> what is that oak smoke, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> All right, archers pushing in. <laughs> I have no Like that That's is the yeah. front. <laughs> And the archers are providing a lot of pressure, but Hart is there with a fire, so he noticed the dock early from doubt. Hart's resources are looking really solid here, Jordan. So yeah. he's managed to defend himself for the time being, forced to go for a tower. I mean, as long as you can hold doubt out of your base, your faster castle age might be able to pay off, but it's some solid pressure. Yeah, doubt so far. It forces a lot of reaction as well, right? He's about to lose his fish as well on his. Oxbow Lake, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I, I'm a little You're bit. You're doing good, man. I, I, I'm t like I'm uh, afraid to use the word because <laughs> the reactions they tell me it's wrong, but I, I do it anyway. I I trust Dave. Okay, guys, you would never betray me. Never, <laughs> never. never. <laughs> uh. All right, fires are working away. Great house balls from Hart behind that. Man, Hart needs to hold this, Jordan. Yeah, absolutely. You cannot let this in. And he needs to go Castle Age, and he's forced to invest so much into skirmisher production, into these houses, into everything. He's had the resources so close to Castle Age for a very long time, but he just can't click because Doubt is still providing the pressure. Oh man, this is this is do or die here for Hart. He's got a demo in the queue. He's thinking about demoing those archers, but it's not fast enough. Whoo, this is nerve-wracking. This is really nervous for Hart. Yeah, but we have to say, Dave. Hard has been doing such an amazing job, even mm -hmm. though the pressure has been so high from Doubt. Doubt hasn't gotten in. He has not gotten in, so Hard has been able to keep his composure. And with the demo coming out... Ah! It came out! No, it's ah! right there! No! Boom! Ah! It, it, I thought it would be a bigger damage. No. I it was only so. a demo ref, but I mean, you uh, thought it would be a bigger oh, he's damage. In, it's Dave, he's five in. archers. Imagine if he still had those five archers. The villagers are weak. The scouts are working away. Hart is trying to run. Doubt is right behind. He can't get the house up behind this. And villagers are dying here as Doubt pushes his way into the base. Another villager goes down. Eco KD is sitting at 9-2 to two in favor of Doubt. Oh, this is looking horrible for Hart. He has had such an amazing setup. But Doubt was able to force himself through here with his army, and he's fine. And he's with still the, the not up! Oh, he's still not up. He has two on food right now, Hard. Oh Only two! Oh my god! And we can see the replay here of the demo against the archers. It came out, five of them died. That was a nice boom, nice setup from Hart, but the, I mean, Doubt got so much value in the, in the, in the moments after that. And Doubt is up to Castle Age before Hart. It's insane. I, when Hart had 600 food, I think Doubt was floating at around 100. Yeah. So, and now he's up faster. So that is such an insane thing. And Doubt now feels that he has the momentum. He adds a second dog on the uh, 
how's it called? Uh, which lake? Oxfog? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. On the lake. And he is going to be able to apply so much pressure here. You do a great job. <laughs> <laughs> now it's an oxbow, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Dave is cracking up, I like it. <laughs> that was Gaslight my intention for this uh, cast too. In faster for <laughs> doubt. And Castlage is finally on the way for Hart. He's done um, what he can to steady the ship here, but it's going to get really, really tough. And I think, uh, unfortunately for Hardy, he's, he's not in a position where he can really push with anything, right? Doubt is going to be the aggressor, and Hart is just going to have to is just going to have to hold. Yeah, Hart is going to be forced to play super defensive. The good thing for Doubt is he has the entire map control. And on this map, map control is literally everything. It's as important as on Arena. Uh, with the way Doubt approaches is, uh, the well is that uh, he could potentially deny Hart from going to the uh, transport to the mm -hmm. island there, wh where all, a lot of resources are, right? So Doubt is in a very cruising position. He should add a Siege Workshop right away uh, in the front to apply as much pr uh, pressure as possible. Okay, so Hart has a couple demos. He's got one in the dock, he's got one in the queue, and with the way that those fires are stacking up, he might be able to take it out, but War Galley, 20 seconds away from Doubt, and that upgrade is going to upgrade all the ships there from him, and it's going to make it really, really tough for Hart to push this back, and Doubt is still controlling the land entrance to Hart's base, second town center on the way from Doubt as he tries to get some value with the demo. He does, and Hart gets a good demo raft of his own. Another good demo raft, but the War Galley research is still not in from him. Yeah, he's uh, 16 seconds away from that, and th I don't like what Doubt is doing. He plays a very risky game. Might be working out for him right now, but it's still a risky, risky uh, g game he's playing. Um, yeah, now the f uh, War Galley upgrade is in, and in the meantime, he is knocking on the door from Hart. Yeah, Hart doing a, a pretty good job to stabilize here. He's still got his fish alive, but he lost so much in that interim period where he couldn't click up to Castle Age that it just feels like you're you're gonna need to force a ton of mistakes yeah. from Dell. I like the fact he didn't use that demo there. Yeah, for I sure. really like that because yeah. you can get the value with the the fires just fine. Also, Hart's about to chop through here. He could go and harass Doubt's woodline on the other side. I think there's probably a way through those trees somehow, right? Yeah, so... So there's an opening, maybe, for him to do damage. For sure, for sure. Uh, Hart has to be very quick, though, because Doubt is very close to uh, chopping out himself as well. And as both players are spawning in the way they are spawning, uh, that middle area on the forest is going to be so, so important. And that was also something which has been changed on this map, right? In the past, mm -hmm. it was fully... Um, fully filled, wooded. Fully wooded, yeah. Yep. Fully forested, mm -hmm. and uh, is that a word? <laughs> yeah, fully forested. <laughs> wow, crazy. Okay, uh, and now uh, p players have to adapt this, and uh, yeah, you can already see both of them are thinking about outposts here. At least <laughs> Art's like, Art's Art like kind of discovering the maze, right? He's yeah. yeah, he's looking for a way through, and Doubt's also sent a villager. He's looking for a way to through too, and Doubt already has the knights and a cav archer. So Doubt has the units available to go pressure that. Hart is forced to go double monastery defense to defend. Hart also made a transport ship, so he's sending villagers over to that island, which is great because he needs room at the moment. He needs room as, as much as possible because there's so much aggression coming from Doubt. And look at re the resources from Doubt. He has so much food uh, in the bank. He's going to be able to spend them, uh, spend the food very nicely on, on villagers, growing economy in the meantime. Uh, adding knights to harass his opponent's economy. And uh, yeah, he's cruising right now. Oh, nice snipes there on the spearmen. The monks aren't quite out just yet. Good quick walls, though, from Hart to save his villagers. Unfortunately, the knights just loop to the other side, and Doubt's going to find some value on the vills. The monks are out from Hart. He might be able to think about pushing that back, but the mangonel is getting super aggressive from Doubt, and there's another follow up mangonel behind that. Yeah, and how can Hart stop this mangonel? I don't see a... Oh, too. This is a disaster for Hart. He's losing so many villagers in the process, and he doesn't have an answer to this mangonel. He doesn't no. have redemption. He needs he needs to convert knights. He needs to convert knights and then send them after yep. the mangonels. His tower is working away on that, but now Doubt is going to sit underneath that tower. He's going to keep shooting away, 
One Monk is trying to convert the Knight. This is all that Hart has. He's going now for a third town center on that island to secure some more resources. Two Knights targeted for conversion. Will he get the conversion? He gets the one. Will he get the second one? This is so important, he gets it. And he's able to save the Monk inside the TC. So maybe some hope for Hart as he pushes forward with these Knights. Nice split there around the attack round from Doubt. And exactly those two converted knights are the key for Hart to push those Watch mangonels the mangonel back. shots too! Will he get the conversions here? Oh, Doubt is not devoted! He will lose so many knights to those monks here! Okay, he managed to kill one. But Hart has done a very good job defending this one in a very dire straight situation. However, if we take a look Villager at... Villager count, oh boy. Yeah, if we take a look at there... Uh, it's not looking too healthy for Hart whatsoever. Uh, 80 villagers against the 48 only from Hart. So look at the resources from Doubt. Look oh. at how fast that food is coming in now for him. Yeah. And then you look at the food count from Hart. Yeah. Oh man, such a rough situation. Look, they, they've look at the resources collected. 20k against 30. Oh my god. At this stage. That is insane. wild. That is absolutely wild. Doubt's still controlling that wooded area with some cav archers. He's still got knights forward. He's got a fourth town center along the way. That's crazy. Yeah, I think what Doubt needs to do right now, uh, add stables and fully produce light cav. Mm. Uh, I'm, he, he right now doesn't have access to gold, apparently. He only has two on, on there. So th that's a good thing about light cav. You don't need gold for that. You only need food. Well, and he, does that's where he, he does have a market, so... Yeah, that, that's that's gold enough, uh, or gold income enough for, for Doubt here. And the good thing, he does it right now with Lightcap, with Kamur. They cost only food, and mm -hmm. Kamur excel the most if it's about food economy. So, perfect unit for the Kamur here. And Doubt uh, realizes that and goes for it. That's some nice damage with that Mangonel too, on the yep. fishing ships. Like yep. anything that Hart, any eco that Hart could use to even get a little bit of additional food would be so helpful. And he just sniped, I think, four or five fishing ships right there. Yep. Beautiful job from him. Light Cav on the way. Now from Doubt, we got the armor upgrade coming and he's taking care of the outposts here from Hart. Hart gets Sanctity and he's got six monks. He's gonna need conversions from each one of these monks and he can't afford to lose any of them. Exactly. And I'm not sure if he expects the light cap because he is very aggressive with his uh, monks right now. He pulls them back. He gets the confirmation that the light cap are on the field. However, what can Hart do now? He does not have access to to stone yet to get the the castle. 400 still missing. We see some conversions, maybe. Doubt is not devoted. We need a quick wall there or something. We've got the monks garrisoning, but there's not enough room. The villagers are taking the seats allocated towards the monks. Delt will need to retreat, but he manages to snipe a monk first. And Hart doesn't look like he can get it done here. Doubt's going to take that one as Hart calls the GG. 3 1 for Doubt, I think. It was a, a, a great last game there from Doubt. Lots of pressure. Hart held so well throughout the early part with yeah. the archers and the scouts and getting the demo hit. But it was just inevitable that that house was going to go down. And once it did, oh man, you're in trouble. Yeah, and the scout archer uh, combination is just very, very dangerous, right? And if you underreact, uh, it's just... If it goes in, then uh, you lose and all of a sudden so much of your economy. And uh, hard at this point still was in a very good position, but when they got in there, it was just everything was falling apart. Mm -hmm. And uh, Camaro, obviously, with their very smooth economy, um, I don't know, it just was not enough for, for Hart here. Yep. And uh, Dow played that one very, very nicely, even though he was not able to scout the forward dog from Hart. He still reacted very nicely. Yeah, he had a lack of information at the beginning. He didn't yep. know where the base was. He didn't know where the dock was, but he adapted really, really well. He looks happy, and there's some life in the tournament hopes for Doubt. Yep. Hart, I think it might still technically be possible for him I to go through. I, I, We'd have to have someone so. crunch the numbers, but... Yep. Another um, a solid performance from him, just not enough to make it past Doubt, which is unfortunate yep. <clears throat> for Hart. He will go into uh, his fifth and final match uh, tomorrow, down 0 and 4. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we talked about it earlier, right? Uh, the, the set between Doubt and Hart was the deciding mm -hmm. one. Uh, the loser would. I, I, I'm pretty sure he's out, mm -hmm. so I will just say it now. And uh, obviously, heartbreaking for Hart. Yep. No, no question about it. Uh, he had ha 
high hopes as every one of us yep. coming into this tournament and especially with the performance here shown in the qualifiers. I, I was really shocked. Right? Absolutely was incredible. Shocked. But we still have one more game from him tomorrow. Yep. Jordan, would you, do you want to? I think the chat wants to see you oh. talk to Doubt about this one. I, I'm like, do you want? Yeah, you oh, you go okay. ahead. I okay. want to see it too. I, okay, I will. And right. Dave, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for casting. Thank you, Jordan. I'm going to pass it on over to him. Doubt, he looks fairly satisfied with himself, and we got a hug between the two of them. That is a little bit more than, than a hug. <laughs> Jordan, take it away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, Doubt, congratulations for your first victory <laughs> of the tournament. How do you feel? <laughs> It's a new feeling, Jordan. <laughs> it's, I like it. I, like I know it. that feeling you are in. I right like now. it. Yeah, yeah. For some reason, you're not in that feeling at this time. <laughs> okay. I don't know why. I don't know I, why. Honestly, yeah. I don't know either. <laughs> like, I, like I have no clue. Uh, but doubt. I usually Wait, am in the position you are right now, and mm -hmm. your position. Uh, you're usually in the position which uh, I am right now. So I'm usually in between. I <laughs> not that guy, but not this low either. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, first game was, what was it again? I, I was just uh, talking too much here. Yeah, Ooh, we see yeah, it here yeah. now. Perfect, perfect. That is uh, really helpful here. So, <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to start so here. You remember <laughs> you were casting. Oh, yeah, this, okay. Big oh, big yeah, yeah. So, that, what were your thoughts about the sieves oh, the going lions. on to, going <laughs> on to uh, uh, this map here? Well. Because we were expecting something else, didn't we? Okay, Jordan will get the credit. Like first time in the lifetime of me, G of the age of empires. <laughs> Jordan gave me advice and I took it. <laughs> I was supposed to be Kmer here, yeah. but Jordan said go Saracens because he was expecting him to go Mongols, but he yeah. still went Romans. So yeah, it still worked out. Still worked yeah. out. D D Thank you, Jordan, for the advice. D <laughs> you, you're welcome. Do you think Kmer would be better against uh, Romans or Saracens? Uh, it's about the same, I believe. More or less same. But I feel Saturn's for better for the last game. And we need to jump in the game. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the schedule here. I, I, I have five more questions to this, but okay. <laughs> Never mind. So uh, second game is Mayans against uh, Mongols. He didn't use Mongols on uh, first game, so did you expect him to take it there? Yeah, that, that's how he played so far. It was always yep. like person of Marsh Mandans, Mongols on the Arabia, Romans on beach fight. Yeah. I was thinking maybe he will change now, right? That's previous round, mind games and so on, but he stick with the plan that he plays solid and yeah. obviously was in my head that Mongols can happen here. Yeah. When you had Mayans, were you uh, thinking about going Arches at all? Because Arches against the Step Lances is in theory also an option or were you also committed like, okay, I will go uh, Pikeman right away? Before game, I was praying for the good map, <laughs> so I came all up and go just Pike Eagle, yeah. and it delivered, right? Okay, yeah, okay. I, uh, like you said, everything is problem against Mongols, early feudal and early castle age. Yeah. Like, they spike so heavily against Mesotives there, and yeah. luckily, I avoid any conflictation. <laughs> yeah, I like the word. <laughs> Uh, by early walls, yeah. and after that, like Mayans in early imp and Mongols is slowest. Imp. That's like the Mongols weakest points and Mayans yeah. strongest. So yeah, yeah, it was feeling good. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was an engagement at his base early Castle Age where you lost a lot of your army. Um, I think you went down to to three or something like that. Were you concerned at that moment, or were you like, now nah, I have three TCs, I'm I'm, you know, nice. I even think <laughs> about placing a fourth <laughs> TC. What uh, were you feeling there? Obviously, was not happy there. Like. I was, why do I push so hard? He's obviously did market and he is also quite tolenish. I didn't need to do that. Yeah. But at the same time, although I lost the fight, his army was well damaged, right? Yeah. He had not enough to do a critical attack on my base, so I, I felt fine. Game yeah. three. Oh, game okay, three. Uh, we, we have to be fast. This is harder than playing, man. <laughs> I don't give him PM for this interview. Uh, yeah, I'm not used to that as well. Usually it's a little bit more chill. So, Georgians uh, against Persians. Who do you think has the better Sif here? And mm. how did you feel about him putting so much aggression? Uh, that's both of our first picks, so I guess I believe in Georgians keep my <laughs> impressions. Yeah. I think it's more or less equalish. Maybe Persians is a bit better because of the camels that will help a lot in Castle Age. Yeah. But here we didn't even get there. Why <laughs> I lost right away. Wh why do you think that happened? Wh was like, Did mm. you slip up somewhere? Because when you left the room after this game, it felt like you were a little bit uh, annoyed by the way you played. No, I know. <laughs> I was annoyed, but not by the way they play. Oh. The freaking watch started vibrate. <laughs> <laughs> it was a cold game. It was a 
like uh, he's brought in there casting with an extra button to like to put the power on me like oh good. it's like electroshock right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, like come on i must stop in love like, no don't move your scouts there <laughs> i know i don't micro but don't need to do that so i took oh. the watch off and i was thinking should i do that or not i was a bit off and I he had obviously like that. better better opening that needs to be implemented for the next days well put it on your <laughs> and then i will <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It would be good. So, uh, game number four, you're up to one, uh, still having your two home maps. Uh, when you saw Khmer against Vietnamese, did you feel confident uh, going into this matchup? Mm, this is something I actually never practiced. I come up with the idea of this uh, way of playing before the set, right? Yeah. I did one practice game against you, worked out quite well. Yeah. And I knew you lose that game. Uh, because you're doubtless fight, you need to draft. But <laughs> I was in a good spot. <laughs> Yeah. I was in a good spot. I, I felt it's a very good way of playing in the like a decider game, right? Yeah. Put the pressure on the pressure. It's yeah. it's hard hard to stop it, especially with the Khmer. You don't need the back and so on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, were you a little bit worried when you uh, didn't find his uh, forward dog initially? No, or I expected it. Like yeah, I, okay. I didn't uh, like that's he walled forward yeah. dog. That's the matter. Yeah, yeah. And I was a bit lucky because he didn't spot my sable, so he sent a second villager that got picked off. And yeah, yeah. after that, I think he just couldn't. Regroup <laughs> in his Ab mind at least. Absolutely. So you now having the first win for yourself in this tournament. How do you feel like going into tomorrow? Because it's going to be do or die, I suppose. I don't know the calculations, but obviously you want to guarantee yourself two set wins uh, instead of one. How do you feel like going into tomorrow? Do you feel like you're playing very well? Walk us through that. I honestly don't think I'm playing bad this event. <laughs> it's just bad things happen to the good people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my best here. I, I don't feel shaky or anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm like, especially here. That was probably my best set. Oh, absolutely. Against Andy, I had some maybe bad draft and so on. It happens. Like mm -hmm. being hard, that said many times. Like different between winning and losing and this level. Except if it's Hera, <laughs> yeah. it's like things click, right? Yeah. Or don't. Man. Yeah. Exactly. A lot of times it even doesn't even depend on you. Right? Yeah, yeah. So you're going in very confident for tomorrow. I only hope it matters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I only hope it matters if I win or not. It, Ah, you, you mean that if you win, you're completely through and you don't depend on others? Mm, yes. Yeah, okay. I guess if I get ACCM, winner goes through. Yeah. Give me ACCM. <laughs> Give me ACCM. Okay, awesome. Uh, Daud, obviously, I'm very happy that uh, you have won that, that set because I think I'm not the only one who wants to see you further in the tournament. I'm happy you beat Andy and took my buchlos as well. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, yesterday, guys, that was always... Uh, when when he uh, got the information that I will play against Andy, you know, him, you expect him to say, "Go Jordan, I cheer for Go you." Go <laughs> Andy, <laughs> win it, please. I need it. <laughs> Buchholz. <I need> it. <laughs> so yeah, usually uh, Todd is not the the one who's thinking about Buchholz, but me. So it I don't even understand, but let's go Buchholz. People say it matters. And I, uh, <laughs> I got a lot of them, so it matters <laughs> to me as well. You don't know how it uh, generates, but y you're happy that it's high. If it's good number, I guess it's good, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. In this case, a high number is I good. I think I have a lot of them. Yeah. Although, yeah, Hart has, yeah. We'll explain that uh, later, nearly, right? I, I think Mr. Yo already explained it, right? I'm Ooh, sure. didn't watch. I need to take tips, notes. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Yo knows the way. Ah, Doubt, who, who do you wish to play against tomorrow? Uh, I think ACCM only makes sense, right? We are fighting for survival. Freaking <laughs> 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 Jordan. Doubt, how do you feel about no matter what happens tomorrow, I will have more wins in the group stage than you? As long as it's not more wins than in whole tournament for me, I am fine. Oh, so oh, you <laughs> expect. Okay, okay uh -huh. I see that. I like that confidence. There is a high chance we play first round in playoff if I pass, right? W what are the chances that I win tomorrow and I'm directly in the semifinals? I mean, you're having a good run, but like <laughs> 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 I mean, everything has at some point, right? <laughs> Let's be realistic, <laughs> right? Let's be realistic. Oh, God. But just imagine. No, I cannot. I'm, I'm thinking about Who it. Who are you like playing tomorrow? I have no idea. I think Tato. Or Hera, right? Or no, Hera. You don't I believe? Play. Oh. Hera, I, it must be Tato, I think. Well, then, then it's easy snack, right? You're in the same finals already. <laughs> I expected you to say something else now, but okay. actually, you already do, always do good in, against Tato in tournaments. Yeah, not not recently, right? He has stepped it up. So yeah, well, you stepped it up as well, <laughs> <laughs> somehow. <laughs> uh, why, why do you think that that is? 
Like, you're no asking one. me. Like, <laughs> no one understands. My, uh, Jordan, why do you think you stepped it up? I have no idea. I, I think I'm very fortunate. Like, uh, today against Andy, game two, super, super fortunate. And I saw that. <laughs> like, Turks against <laughs> Italians. And then we're uh-huh. 10 tiles away from each other. He makes TC there. <laughs> yeah, it's like, everything works out. <laughs> then game three, he runs into uh, two wolves. And then into my TC with his militia. Uh-huh. So, super lucky there. And then, I don't know, it, it just... Happened. Sometimes good things happen to good people as well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I guess we are timing uh, time killers here. Oh, who's <laughs> casting nests? <laughs> the, the funny thing is, with GL down there, who is up? Really? Who is that? Oh, Vi- oh Viper is <laughs> actually casting. <laughs> Crazy. And who is playing next? Mm, it's an important one as well. Oh, it's oh. Hera. Dad, what do you think about... Tato Hera. We should cast this. We, we should cast from here. We should have double channels. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 double channel. <laughs> oh, oh if you need a VPN, please, please. if you want to surf, sa- if you want to be, no. <laughs> Internet is unsafe place these days. If you want to be a safe surfer, <laughs> we have an amazing deal here. It's called Surfshark. Now tell us more about the deal. <laughs> Let's talk about book loss. It's easier. Like, <laughs> give me the book loss. <laughs> oh, God. Love it. Love it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, guys. Doubt. Congratulations once more. Thank uh, you, Jordan. Congrats to you too as well. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a pleasure to interview you. And I guess we are jumping over to set number four, which is going to be casted by the lovely Dash and the Viper. Take it away, guys. Have fun. Thank you so very much, Jordan. Once again, congratulations to Doubt on that victory. I'm here, joined by the Viper, and we'll be turning our attention to set number four of the day, Tato versus Hera, in just a moment. But we're going to start where Doubt left off, talking about one of our lovely sponsors in Surfshark. Uh, as he said, if you want to surf and surf safely, then Surfshark is the VPN for you. In short, what does it do? It masks what you do online. And that's important because data in this day and age is everything, and you need to protect your data in the digital world. Not only can you, from home, travel the world virtually, but when you're like us and you travel Mm -hmm. the world Physically, Mm -hmm. sometimes you want to return home virtually. I know for Dave and myself, we talk all the time about streaming libraries, right? I'm a big Netflix, Hulu, whatever user, and I want to be able to have access to the shows that I'm binging at that time, and that makes it easy to do with a program like Surfshark. As well, though, I mean, you can change your virtual location for things like download purposes as well. If you're gated in other ways, you can get past geoblocks, as you see here, and ultimately secure yourself online. Public Wi-Fi, again, something that we use more and more frequently. Not very much in the U.S., I must admit. Our infrastructure is not great, but I've been to many countries where it's phenomenal, like Korea, and you want to still make sure that you are safely surfing the web. Uh, we have a fantastic deal that uh, that we've connected with Surfshark over. So make sure you check below the stream for the code. It's NAC5. But if you take that, go to Surfshark, you get 83% off, which is an astronomical number. And that also comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. It's very rare that you find a company that's willing to give you a discount and then also promise you your money back if you're not satisfied with the product. That's how confident they are in what they have to deliver to you. As you saw, there are some add-on combos, things like anti virus software that can go with it. I know, I know, there's so much here. Please <laughs> d- dive forever. on over to Surfshark.com to get more information on all of the features that come along with this incredible program. And uh, once again, we have to thank Surfshark for being such a phenomenal sponsor for us and allowing us to put on incredible events like this, get everyone into the same room, and experience things like that. It's not very often that you're going to see Jordan and Doubt on a couch uh, sharing in some laughter and some joy. And uh, and similarly, this is my first opportunity to uh, to cast a series here with Viper live. Yeah, indeed. I think we cast it last year as well. Did we? Did we not? <laughs> I don't, now, I don't now, remember myself. Now I'm embarrassed. No, I don't remember <laughs> myself, actually. But I, I know have, you did cast series last year. but yeah, I, I, feel like I didn't cast much, though. But yeah, yeah. I don't remember. Fighting through some Ch- illness Ch- last Ch- year, for sure. Yeah. Exactly. But I have to say, this Surfshark talk you did was very Pretty good. good. Yeah. Can I just copy-paste this from my own stream? Cause uh, there you go. Yeah. yeah, well, but then you have to finish it with the doubt wink. Yeah, yeah they of course. Should just, you got to then edit that I'll in. I'll edit that on your top of your head. Wink! 
on top oh, of your head. Ooh, at the end. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I could be tall for once in my life. Yeah. Um, either way, Viper, we get to cast such a treat of a series yeah. here. It is uh, from the bottom of the table to the top mm -hmm. of the table here. Hera versus Tato, the fight for the number one spot. What are you thinking? How are you feeling about it? Yeah, these are these are two players that have so far performed the best on the tournament, right? So whoever wins today is guaranteed top two, right? So they will go straight to the semifinal. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I, think, I don't know the old book holes and all that stuff, you know. No, that's though, for Doubt to explain, yeah. not for us. Did Joe already explain it? He did. Heard, yeah. He did, he did. And I think he did it fairly well. Oh, really? Nilly was very impressed. He similarly said, maybe we'll just chop that out and replay the clip anytime someone asks. Not bad, but yeah. Tato Hera, the fight of the Giants today, and whoever wins should be straight to the semifinals, with which, which will guarantee them two days break, which can be massive. So let's jump into it here. We have the maps and the sieves available to us. We'll be kicking things off on Langanadi. The home maps for Hera are going to be Desert Void and Rocky Forest mm -hmm. for Tato, Arena, and Copenhagen. Before we analyze this too much, Viper, I'd be remiss if I didn't pick your brain a little bit about how this new drafting format affects the tournament and who maybe you think is uh, more attuned uh, to taking advantage of this style where you have the 12 random Civ bands before you get to affect the pick band yourself. Yeah, so obviously since you have those random Civ bands, you cannot prepare for a map and be like, oh, I'm going to have this Civ no matter what on this map, right? So you always have to be ready to adapt. Like You could even get like your top five picks on a certain map. could be all gone, right? right. Out of the pool to Civ choose from. So uh, there's a lot of adaptation. You cannot go blindly into a set without having an idea of how two or three different ways to play each map, right? So you have to have like... Personally, I have like a list where it's like those are the options I would consider on this map and this and this for that map. And then there's obviously the play style as well that comes along with that. But then again, you also have to think about what is the opponent going to do, right? So there's so many things you have to consider when you decide on your sieves, your play style. And when you start putting your sieves on the draft as well, like, okay, I want to play this on this map. And then you look at his sieves, suddenly everything can change again, right? Because we have had multiple times there where I go through the maps with my teammates and we keep changing the sieves up and down, up and down and try to adjust them according to the opponent. But as we know, it's not that easy to predict where everyone are playing everything because the, the draft is crazy and the maps are also quite crazy. I love it. Now let's take that kind of general understanding and let's apply it more critically to this matchup here. Obviously, you're very familiar with both of these play players in Hera and Tato. And now getting a look at the five maps that we've ended up with and ultimately the 12 Civ, six for each that they have uh, available to them to play. What are your opinions? Did anyone win out here? So I would have to have a little bit more of a thorough look. Uh, I think looking at the maps initially, right, we see Heras went for quite aggressive maps like Rocky Forest. You cannot really wall that off. Desert Void, all your goals are super exposed. And then we look at Tato's side, Arena, Copenhagen. Both maps, you start fully stonewalled. And you have to play strategic, strategically on those maps. While on the other maps, it's more like just fast uptime, micro, macro, just the pure um, mechanics play, right? So it looks like Tato is going for the more tricky play style, while Hera wants to do more brute force, right? Just let's fight, let's take it, take it like... Um, yeah, I just want to go head-to-head, -head, right, and see who's the best. I mean, it makes sense, uh, I think, for both of these players in terms of their approach. We're also getting a look at some of their stats. Both of these players are no stranger to finding themselves in the top four, two, three, or even first-place finishes, and particularly when it comes to this event, but known for very different things, right? And I think yeah. that's what makes this matchup interesting, <laughs> is they stylistically are different players. Well, one is known for demos, one is known for hustard. They usually <laughs> don't face much, right? That's so, very yeah, true. Makes a lot of sense. And I mean, if you look at the maps, there's only one map where we can see them. Actually, two maps. Langan, Langan, uh, Langanari. Langanari, that's what I said. Uh, you can see demos there, but it's unlikely, right? But uh, Copenhagen as well, maybe some demo play, but yeah. I think if you look at the maps, the signature unit is definitely in favor of Hera. Yeah, without a doubt. And Hera is uh, quickly racking up those AoE2 earnings with the performances that he's put up over the past year or two. But without further delay, we are straight into the series, ladies and gents. It's Hera in the red playing as the Portuguese on Langanati, Tato in the blue playing as the Romans. Indeed, and I can t let you in on some uh, inside information here. Ooh. This is exactly the matchup Tato predicted. Okay. So Tato looks like he knows what Hera wants to do. Well, let's maybe talk about the sieves then, what their strengths are. We'll start with Hera because then you can tell me maybe why it was that Tato wanted this matchup. Yeah, so I don't think Tato wanted Portuguese for Hera, but like from the picks Hera has, Portuguese right. was good the point. Good exactly. Point. <laughs> These are pretty good. People know that I love them as well. One of my favorite civs and have been for a long time. But you start with uh, a lot of berries around your town center on this map. And as we can see here, foragers generate wood in addition to food. So it's a very nice bonus for Portuguese. On top of that, there's also very limited gold. And if we look at this, all units cost 20% less gold. So there's some two nice bonuses there that really align. And there's actually, quickly, quickly, one more. Oh. Look at that. 
all ships have 10% extra HP. Three bonuses that all come into play in this. I mean, all text research faster as well. Honestly, this is just a perfect sieve. It's just a busted sieve. And that's yeah. why <laughs> the, the Viper loves it so much. But Indeed. the Romans, okay, talk to me about this one. One of the newer additions to the Age of Empires scene. Yeah, so Romans on water, like they just have a generic 5% boost on like building faster, collecting faster resources. So economically, they are better off than most other sieves as well. However, for water play in this case, like their galleys have plus one plus one armor. But galleys, are you going galleys here? You're not going galleys here. <laughs> However, I could see a case of dromons later on, right? And uh -huh. dromons have access to dromons. But yeah, otherwise, it's like you see, they have bonuses for infantry, their scorpions are cheaper, and they can also get ballistics for their scorpions, for example. So it's a bit tricky to say exactly how Tato is going to approach this. I say as a caster, pretending I don't know what he wants to do. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Tato is the one who on paper here has to try and make something happen with the sieves. Yeah, I think the point about the gold uh, that we made around the Portuguese is one of the most relevant, right? We've seen a number of maps be largely determined by the control over those uh, extra gold positions. You have to chop through the trees to get there, but castles, TCs, and ultimately playing both sides of the map is going to be important in the late game for these players. But first, we'll take a look at what happens in the Feudal Age. We have Loom coming in here for Hera, which indicates that he'll be the one to click up first. This is an interesting approach by Hera. You can see Tato is the one, like Hera built his dock first. However, Tato was the one who got the fishing ship out first. It looked like Hera did probably less bills on wood in order to get a faster uptime. As we can see right now, Hera is up with just uh, 19 villagers, while Tato is, gone, is going to go up with 20. So slight timing advantage there for Hera. However, if you look in the middle of the map, the amount of fish that is there is like, by the time you're fighting and like the fire ship or demo ships are done fighting, there's no fish left. So is it actually worth over-investing to fight for the water? This has been the question throughout the whole tournament, right? Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it's still yet to be answered. We've seen a number of players choose to just not even build a single fire ship and contest, say, fine, yeah. you maybe get 100, 200 extra food, but it's at the cost of a fire galley, and I can put my focus into something else. We haven't seen too much action here in the Dark Age. Sometimes there are questions about whether or not uh, a scout is going to find a cheeky snipe on one of those villagers that come forward, but we haven't gotten that just yet. Two lumber camps now for uh, Tato as he makes his way to the Feudal Age. Just a minute out and 40 seconds here for Hera. Indeed, and we see Hera going with the single lumber camp, which means that his build is a bit more tight. He might be planning to make a barracks fast. As we can see, the barracks goes down right away. So yep. Hera loves his scouts, right? I imagine this is a play to do maybe one fire galley to try and win the water because you have the 10% extra HP, right? So on paper, maybe you think, okay, my opponent is maximum making one fire galley himself, or maybe he makes maximum one demo. So either way, Hera thinks he's going to win water without contesting it, and then he's just going to play scouts to take the map control. All right, there we go. Fire galley in the queue, double bid axe on the way. Barracks will complete. And we'll see what his follow-up is there. Again, we expect to see the stable. The barracks forward here for Tato using those two villagers that were previously on the shore fish and hits Feudal Age as we speak. Great scouting here by Hera. No, no, he knows everything that is going on right now. As we see, Tato only queuing up one spearman for now. He's not doing a fire galley, so he's not spending gold on anything. And he's mining gold right now. So where is that gold going to go is the question. Yeah, a definite question to be answered. I mean, again, I love the Spearman because the expectation is Hera, with his favorite unit in the scout, will be producing a number of those. So he wants to make sure that he's keeping his villagers safe and looks like he's willing to let go of the water control and the remaining fish out there in the center pond. We also have Hera now moving out for gold, so thinking about a transition himself. Indeed. The funny thing here is, if Tato would have actually gone water, he would have probably won it because Hera did not start taking gold until now. But that's the thing, right? Hera thinks that Tato knows that Hera should win water, so therefore Hera does not do it because he thinks and thinks and thinks, you know? See, this is the great thing about being a caster. I don't go through those mental gymnastics like exactly. you do. I mean, <laughs> it must be hard being a pro and playing all those mind games. Yeah, indeed. That's part of the charm, right? There's so many saves, so many bonuses, and that's what makes this game beautiful. All right, Spearman engagement, but Tato has the closer reinforcements. The fire galley trying to lend a hand, and it looks like Tato will just retreat with the villagers for now after getting one Spearman pick. We are tracking it, though, for Hera, something he is so very good at, right? Just awareness of his opponent's movements, looking for those weak villagers, tracking them so that he might later be able to snipe them with a couple uh, scouts that roll forward. But still yet not seeing a ton of that gold put to use. With seven on gold, we did see an archery range going up. 
We already have an archery range here for Tato, and now the blacksmith to follow. Yeah, and we, we can see that Harold did not go blindly for a stable. He did wait, he did scout, and he did adapt to the information he found, right? He saw there was only barracks there. Normally, like, if you build a barracks, usually your follow-up building is coming somewhat next to the barracks as well, right? And Harold did not see anything, so he did not make any scouts. He just goes to range, and now he's kind of doing a fast cast layer, while Tato is investing quite heavily in Feudlage. Yeah, moonwalking is a way to find more scouting information. Here's the big difference I notice at this point, Vipers. The resources in the bank, 600 food, almost 200 gold, just hitting it now for Hera with the market going up. Suggests to me he wants to make it to Castlage as quickly as possible. Tato investing in horse collar, he's light years away. Yeah, exactly. Hera also using that market as part of a wall off, I imagine, will come off to the woodland. And then we see Tato is kind of kind of blind, right? His scout is out on the map, but I'm not sure what his scout is doing right now. It's it true, looks like going it's far to the left-hand side. Yeah, he should be around Tato, uh, Hera's base, constantly checking for information right now, because he's kind of blindly patrolling in front of his dock, and like he's fighting a fire galley that is not contributing to the game anymore for Hera even. So this is looking really dangerous because Hera will have a crazy fast castle each time. He's going to make archers himself as well. And he has, for the first moments, he will have the defender's advantage as well. So I don't see much damage for Tato here. Yeah, Fletching is on the way. And he's now rolling forward with that military. He did catch the walling attempt here by Hera on the left-hand side. So leaving his scout there to stay aware of it and may look for some damage onto that wood line if he can get in before the walls come up. And he'll need to find some damage given the fact that his opponent is only a minute and 20 seconds away from the castle age. Indeed, and we see Tarus, like, he has zero food in the bank right now. And Hera did see the scout, so Hera is expecting, okay, if Tarus is going to wow. come in, this is where it's going to come from. And Hera on pointer, playing super safe, not taking any risks. And yeah, he's just like, right now, he has scouted, adapted, and Tarus feels like he can't do, can't do anything right now. I was going to say, in some ways, with that final house being built, it feels like he's nullified the entire offensive push here from Tato because he's forcing him to rotate all the way around the other side if he wants to get into any kind of exposed eco in that that wood line. We have a little bit of a dance here at the front of Hera's base. Four archers getting a nice pick on the spears, but don't want to overextend too much with the scout presence that Tato has, along with a few more archers linking up in that group. Indeed, and I guarantee you, the second Tato saw, uh, Hera saw that Tato added a second scout as well, Hera was happy. He knows that that's going to further delay Tato's castle age, and despite the pressure coming in here, I still think Hera's going to feel really comfortable. It's a small opportunity for some damage here for Tato if the micro is on point. Again, he does have flex to match the fletching of Hera, and at least is controlling the hill around this gold. It's only one scout to two, and so Hera is playing this very tentatively. Yeah, and Hera is not doing any upgrades in cast yet. No botkin, no crossbow, so right now they're fighting on the same terms. That's very intriguing, to say the least. I'm looking to see where his resources are going then, because Bosa. Bosa. He still has 200 food, 100 gold, right? That could be the botkin. It's a knight. We saw the stable going up on the left-hand side, and mm -hmm. it's going to be a full transition into the cavalry. I mean, a very mobile unit, right? Once again, something that Hera is so good at utilizing. Yeah, very surprising, though, that he doesn't do crossbow or botkin arrow here. He has six uh, archers, right? And they can do... Okay, botkin is coming in now. They can do a lot of damage, but Hera is doing the bosa. He has no horse collar still, but again, the fact that Hera... Uh, doubt w <laughs> I can't say names. <laughs> Tato <laughs> was aggressive here. Buys Tato a lot of time. This is super crucial for Tato, because if Tato was still sitting at home, Hera could come forward with crossbows, Bodkin, and then Tato is in big trouble. And this army feels trapped, right? So I think the question becomes, can Tato find any damage here before those big upgrades come in and Hera cleans it up? We have more house swalling around the lumber camps. The archers are trying to hunt down the archers of Tato. We're still waiting for the knights to come over. Maybe the knights go forward for a counterattack while he just tracks this ranged force, and that's exactly what's happening. When the knight is running straight under the town center, Tato has not spotted this yet, but he is ready with two spearmen. And the, the damage Tato is doing here is not damage to Hera, but it's counter damage. Like, he's not taking damage himself. Right. This army is keeping the whole crossbow or archer army of Tato at home, and that's massive right now. You can see resources collected. Tato is healthily ahead, right? And Tato is on the way to Castledge, so Tato with this army has managed to keep Hera in his space and therefore not taking any damage himself. Yeah, even forcing the next knight that's created to come back to help clean this up. Has two minutes to go until he can reach it, the castle age. Now, did lose at least one villager at home to the raid of the knight. And that is the only one that Hera will find. Tries to find the Wallingville over here, but the two Ooh. spearmen may be... Uh. Ooh, gets away with it just by the hair on his chinny-chin-chin. Chin. On his chinny-chin-chin, chin, indeed. 
Well, by the way, by the time Taru, uh, Hera, my name, I, I, I'm switching That's names all right, okay. get there eventually. By the time Hera crosses the map, oh, he picks off the knight, by the way. Sweet. By the time Hera crosses the map here, Taru will be fully walled, so Hera still, again, not committing on crossbow. He has four archers, he's not making any more archers, just a few knights to control the pace of the game, and then he's adding town centers behind, he did horse color, so very economic approach from Hera, despite like a super fast castle age. I mean, this is something that I was actually just talking to T90 about in terms of uh, what pro players do so well that everyone below them can normally struggle with is building the minimum amount of yes. necessary military, right? Yeah. To to contest on the map and then use all the rest of your resources to build into that economy. And once again, something that Hera does, uh, you know, near the best in the scene. Yeah. And uh, with that, as he has the initiative and is forward on Tato's base, that second TC comes up. 10 seconds until Tato reaches the castle age though and has an opportunity to respond. Indeed, just what you spoke about as well. It's a lot of people look at it and they think, oh, he's being greedy. But it's also a very calculated risk, right? You take those risks, you feel confident in that you're able to defend with that amount of units like Hera has done in this game. Sometimes it backfires, though, as exactly. we also have seen. Yep, yep. But uh, yeah, in this game, it has worked out perfectly for Hera. And again, like we'll see yet if the approach turns out to be correct. I personally think if you get that castle age time, maybe just like getting forward and getting the pressure and aggression on the other side is what you really want. As we see Tato here now, just dropping a TC in defense and going for a counterattack. Yeah, look at that crossbow Bodkin coming in, going forward with the range units while the walls will play defense for him, getting the TC up on the gold again. All important gold positions. You only have four total tiles back at home, so securing those before you make your way out to the wood lines and free up some more gold for yourself is ultra important. He does have more crossbows creating, and I think that's going to be a solid defense against just archers with Bodkin on the other side. Walls are not complete yet for Hera, so we're going to go ahead and watch the vision to see if Tato could find some damage. Tato wants to go to the hill on the gold immediately, because he with the hill he will be able to one-shot these villagers, but Hera reaction on point. Great reaction, but at the very least forces the Vils off of gold for now. He is going to get a peek at that villager attempting to all bop, 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 as uh, Dave would say. <laughs> and we have a market coming down as well, but we're going to be delayed in getting that up. Indeed, walls are weak. And again, Hera with the, in quotes, under production of units. Right now, he doesn't have too many units to defend. I think all those knights don't have full HP as well. He has heal been healing a little bit, but these three knights, without any upgrades, they cannot take the fight against the crossbow. Yeah, they might have forging, so they'll do damage when they get in, but they're definitely going to take a lot of damage on their way. Look at that, evacuating the wood line mm. right away. And I think that's a very heads-up play. You know that, uh, at best, you'd have to run under the TC to chase those, and so has the freedom to stretch out and continue to expand his Go onto a third TC. Tato going for a third of his own back at home. Yeah, very, very close game right now. Did Hera add fishing traps in the middle with his two fishing ships? He did indeed. So that's like, uh, you fought for this. Is it worth it? Yeah, you might as well drop two fishing traps, right? To make sure you have consistent income there as well. But yeah, resources collected. Very, very close. Tato actually with a slight lead, despite Hera adding town centers earlier. Yeah. I, I'm actually wondering where exactly that comes from, to be honest. Five percent. Ah, it's 5%. the Roman's bonus, exactly. exactly, that you called out at the beginning of the game. We have Hera already the first to move out to one of those extra gold positions and to begin chopping his way into it. That could become superbly relevant later in the game. We've seen a number of games on this map be decided by control over oh. those golds. And how about this transition here from Tato into infantry? Infantry from the Romans. They get double benefits from the armor up armor upgrades in the blacksmith. So on paper, these long swords, presumably, will have pretty much Imperial Age armor upgrades. So Hera at the moment, he has made one or two scorpions to defend. He has a few knights on the map and four archers. Like he, Hera is not committed on anything right now. Yeah. He's kind of in the middle waiting to see what's coming and going to adapt to what Tato does. But soon, I mean, we don't know. The barracks is in the middle of the map for Tato. He will surely add more barracks soon. Question is, how long will it take for Hera to notice that? And what is Hera's response going to be? I was going to say, because uh, one of my concerns here is already seeing six villagers on stone for Hera. And as he's playing the Portuguese, they love to build into right. a gunpowder unit. Gunpowder against infantry generally spells disaster for the infantry. And castles for control over those gold positions are very, very important. There's one of those extra barracks now. Doesn't look like Hera has information on that just yet, but continuing to invest into more stone production so that he can eventually swip, s switch onto those organ <laughs> guns. Yeah, and he's all, almost chopped through on the... Like, we have the four golds on the map here, very important, because you have to chop through a layer of wood in order to access that gold. And we can see he's almost through to the point where he can probably delete the Lumber Camp and make a town center, maybe. Uh, I wonder, though, where is his first castle going to go right? He might have to just do a defensive castle in reaction to the pressure that, Her uh, that Tato will probably put with the infantry. But I'm sure as well he would love to get a castle a bit forward. 
Yeah, goes ahead and scouts with these archers that he's been able to keep alive since the Feudal Age. Also bringing a few knights forward to see if he can clean up Ooh. the crossbows here from Tato. These knights have the first armor at this point in the game and do get a couple quick kills. And that now is... Tato has to delete the monastery position and retreat behind his walls. That was fantastic, Micro Bahera. Pulling the low HP knight back and then realizing that Tato would switch the focus to the archer. He also pulled the archers to the side. So massive credit to Hera for that small micro engagement as Tato picks up that hard-fought fishing economy. Yeah, 4TC going up in the back there for Hera, but I do believe he's yet to see the longsword. We mm. saw Vodka checking the vision there. Longsword, long sword rather, just outside the fog Ooh. war. Ooh, but there's the barracks with the flag on it, and that's all he needs to know. But the question is, did he actually notice it? The knight just runs past the barracks mm. in the middle of the map. You don't expect there to be anything there, so you might not check. Wheelbarrow on the way, and Pikeman as well here for Tato. So if Hera continues to index into Knights, that could be a very scary army composition for him to run into. But we saw a couple more archers in the queue, and Crossbow That's now cool. behind it, along with Scorpions. I mean, this is a pretty solid army composition in the end to go up against infantry only. Indeed, but those infantry units are cheap as well. So if Tato can get the numbers out, one thing that we haven't checked is Tato's stone count. He has been working on the stone as well, and those villagers that Harold did not see are about to go forward. Yeah, we'll see where they decide to drop a castle position because Hera did go for a defensive one, as we can see on that mini-map. But we have an engagement at the front here. The infantry running into the knights, getting good damage, but no picks just yet. Now the longswords turning their attention onto the scorpions. The crossbows as well. Beautiful split out of Tato to dodge that harpoon. And now we have a full engagement between very diverse armies between the two players. Hera thinks he doesn't get the better of it and is trying to ret retreat back to the safety of his own castle. Tato, look at that placement. He doesn't know about this castle just yet. He might be surprised as he comes forward. He should find out. He should see it right now. Question now is, does Tato remove the castle and place it somewhere else? He could technically go to the castle now on the other side and deny the goal completely without contesting Hera's castle at all. That's exactly what he's going to try to do. I love the number of villagers that he brought forward, mm. right? This could be a throwing moment if you underinvest in getting this aggressive castle up. Now Hera is going to try and get some damage done by taking the hill here with the knights and having some crossbows behind, but the numbers are too big here for Tato and Hera will have to fall back. Indeed, but in doing this pressure, Tato has also what we don't see on the screen right now. The idle taste of time is up to nine minutes, he, and he's suddenly 20 villages behind Hera. So economically, this has been a massive investment for Tato, and we'll see Hera's food count right now. He's pretty much ready to go to the Imperial Age the, the second he decides to maybe use the market a bit to add some gold to his yeah. uh, stockpile. They may be cheaper infantry, but they still require food investment. And for Hera, he hasn't overinvested in any military that requires food. Another tower as well, just in case Hera wants to try and stick around on that gold. So Hera's going to relocate, and this will cause a delay in his gold income, to say the least. Might have to use some market, like you see there, food for gold, to get himself up to the Imperial Age. And it looks like Tato, by dropping a Siege Workshop, is thinking about pushing his foot on the gas. This is a full cast I play from Tato, and you know why? Hera has no access to gold right now. He has a little bit of gold left in his base. Look, he's migrating to the other side and there's no access to gold. So now Hera has to make a decision. Do I invest all the gold I have to go to Imperial Age? Seems to be, the answer is yes. Or do I stay in Castle Age to make units? Imperial Age is the choice. And like, where's the gold going to come from for the production of units right now? Yeah, that's an incredible risk, right? You get to the Imperial Age just to be able to get none of the upgrades yeah. and could spell disaster for you. Zero oh, gold! Zero gold! He does have a little bit left in that gold pile. Vodka, I don't know if you can click it for us and give us some... Zero. 72! <laughs> What's that enough for? One night? <laughs> well, oh wait, he just spent it. So I don't know. One uh, crossbow, one crossbow. Oh wait, he canceled the production again. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, he needs to save for a trebuchet, right? He needs a trebuchet to clean the castle. But Look at Tato, Tato's coming to tower the other side. Oh, you love to see it. Also going for the stone mining upgrade as well to make sure that he could maybe drop another forward castle and completely strangle his opponent out of the game. We already see Hera switching onto the light cab, knowing that he's gonna have to invest into food and wood related units, at least for the time being, to keep himself alive in this game. Scorpion production is on the way here for Tato as he wants to put siege pressure on the left-hand side. Tower about to complete, and Hera is aware of it now. Probably doesn't have the time to stop it. It is only two villagers, but it's only one crossbow there to try and get in the way. Guard tower, too, on top of all of that, will be making it very hard to clean up. 
Yeah, but at the same time, Hero has 130 villagers. His economy is pretty much set for Imperial Age right now. Only thing missing is gold income. He has 70 bills on wood right now. He can sell a lot, like we already see, right? So he's going to be able to still afford playing. Oh, he's buying a castle. He's doing a castle to clear out the guard tower. But Tata will just go and put a new guard tower on the bottom. Yeah, prices are okay right now, so he can continue to abuse the market. This castle position is to try and wrestle at least one gold position off of the map for himself. Doesn't look like Tato has too much in the way of being able to stop this, but he is continuing to go full throttle on the other side, even forcing a watchtower up. The pikes are going to dive underneath the TC. They don't really care. That's a fine, efficient trade as long as they can make the eco messy. Ten seconds away from the Imperial Age for Hera. The question is, what are going to be the techs that he prioritizes with such minimal amounts of gold? Does have two relics. Managed to grab those at some point in the game, and that'll help a little bit with the trickle of gold. Indeed, but as long as Hera cannot make too many gold units, Tato can still continue making Spearman, maybe a few more Longswords, some Mangonels, some Skirms maybe, and Hera will still not have units that can kill that, despite being in the, ca in the Imperial Age here. Hera doing Bracer first and a Trebuchet, so Bracer just to give his uh, 10 crossbow the maximum potential to do damage or hold the ground rather, and then the Trebuchet to start cleaning the towers. How about this, going forward for a new gold position <laughs> because Tato did uh, follow what you had predicted and dropped another guard tower in a more southerly position to prevent Hera from getting onto that gold. Still has to chop through three layers of trees before he can open that uh, resource up to himself, and the pressure continues on the left-hand side. What's the answer for Hera? Is it more about defense, or do you have to try and split the map and almost threaten a base trade? Looks like Hera is comfortable just continuing to add farms as he does every single game. But yeah, he just wants the trebuchets to slowly clean up the area around the gold, and then he'll start mining it. And then he'll use, for now, the crossbow aggressively with Bracer. He's also doing chemistry right now, so he's still able to get a few upgrades. Like He's not producing more crossbows. Like, he has crossbows in production right now. But still, with Bracer and Imperial Age upgrades, those crossbows can do a lot of damage to Castle Age units, despite the, the infantry having Imperial Age, in quotes, upgrades. Right, exactly. And uh, having that range, it doesn't really matter. As long as he has the micro, he can continue to to walk backwards while eliminating a number of these infantry. And at the very least, he's forcing Tato to keep producing. Tato, nowhere close to making it to the Imperial Age. So continuing to invest in Castle, continuing to use the market to keep the production up. Has taken one TC off the map, but you can see the blinking castle on the left-hand side. That's the one that Terra is trying to clean up so he can get access back to that gold. Indeed. We see Tato now as well. He has stone for another castle again as we have a little bit of a slowdown. Tato... Mm -hmm. Something happened here. Game pause. Hopefully nothing severe. Either way, Tatos has enough stone yes. for another cast. We'll see if he uses that offensively or defensively. Probably defensively at this point. But There's your answer. we have been speaking about Hera having no gold, Tato doesn't have gold either. I know. Yeah, that's really tricky, right? He was the f uh, he was the first to move, or rather, the second to move out. But his focus has been on killing his opponent and pushing the pressure forward. He is going into light calf himself and some armor upgrades, but he isn't even going to match those that Hera has come in with. We've got the infantry trying to clean up the crossbows, and they'll be able to push them away in the moment. Has freed up that gold, so we'll wait to see if and when a mining camp does get dropped. I think Harris feeling pretty comfortable in his position that he has weathered a fair amount of the storm and at least has the trebuchets onto the field. But when he was thinking Ooh. about going forward, Tato's going to now start to rotate the pressure over to the other side. In the Tato still with the numbers advantage, as we see Hera adding some hand cannons as well. Hand cannons would be great here to just pick off Siege from distance because they have such high damage. So it looks like he's going to hold this quite nicely. And yeah, those hand cannons will clean up everything here with the proper micro. And yeah, Tato just calls to GG. He knows he's permanently stuck in Castle Age. Zero gold in the bank, zero in gold income. And yeah, fighting against Imperial Age technologies when you already felt like you were behind the whole game. That's not going to work. So very well played to Tato. He takes it 1-0 and a great start for him in this set. Yeah, uh, you know, took took the risk to go forward and try and force Hera off of the gold control those very important positions. Mm. But a masterful eco balance there by Hera meant that he was able to get to the Castle Age cleanly. And th again, that goes back to what we were talking about. One of the things that I think Hera does the best is minimal numbers of units while being picture perfect with his eco. There's very rarely a time when he's got the wood for a farm. Yeah, and he's and not placing yeah, one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, what was beautiful about this game was Hera's opening, right? He just went for the safe opening, you'd make one fire galley and adapt. He didn't commit to anything from the start. He knew that he has on paper maybe the better sieve, so he just plays it safe. You see what's coming and make sure you make the right reaction. And like here we saw there was no aggression coming, no matter arms, because he knew the barracks timing, no scouts, no range early on forward, right? So he could always just sit back, go to Castledge right away and just take it from there. 
like you said, though, Portuguese uh, is a sieve to be feared on that map. and it was Every map. Har- well, every map every is map. fair, exactly. And it was Harris' first pick yeah. for a reason. Now, Tato's second pick did fall to it in the Romans. But uh, with map choice, it is assumed that Tato will reach for one of his two home maps to follow. Has the option of all four, of course. Mm-hmm. I think typically when you take the first loss, my assumption is you go for comfort just to try and equalize the series. I think when it comes to match point, that's where the discussion becomes yeah. more interesting. So he has multiple options there. I just want to point out first, like Romans as Tato's second pick. Like Hera is not known for picking Romans. Right. So I'm very surprised that Tato picked Romans so early. But yeah, on your on your question, like here is like Tato has to win three games no matter what, right? Mm. One of those games now have to be from Harris' home maps. So if he doesn't want to show his strategies on his own home maps, there is an idea that maybe you pick Harris' home maps. And let's say Harris wins again. Just go for Harris' third home map, right? right. You have to win all the remaining games anyway. That was Jordan's anyway. approach. Yes. Exactly, exactly. Right. There is a, a, an argument that you can approach it like that. But of course, if you're still feeling good and you want to like make sure you just get a win on the board so you could like get some confidence back maybe. Right. Picking a comfort zone map, like, for example, Arena. We see here uh, Tato has Burgundians here, right? Very likely for Arena or Copenhagen. So um, maybe that's the comfort pick that Tato needs to reclaim some confidence. Yeah, I mean, I guess especially considering that these guys are at the top of the table, it makes a little bit more sense that uh, you're less concerned about map score, right? Typically, I would argue, okay, if you're in a lower position in the standings, you really should index into your own maps because those map wins, map score can be a little bit more relevant. Both these guys are guaranteed into the top eight and are, in fact, playing for a top two position. And to your point, maybe they want to protect then some of their strategies that they could utilize later on in the tournament and not expose them here. So yeah. a lot of things to be considered uh, when it comes to uh, picking maps, picking sieves. And uh, it's not all just in the game. I think some people can forget that when it comes to pro play. Yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, like when I played Tato as well earlier in the tournament... We have to obviously train a lot together, so we kind of try to avoid the more tricky maps with tricky strategies. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to like prevent showing our our secrets, if that makes sense. <laughs> but uh, also, like one thing to mention here as well with this match right now is like, if they guarantee the semifinals, they're very likely to not face each other. Like they won't face each other until semifinals as well, right? And currently, these are the two best performing players. Right. You don't want to face up against each other in quarterfinals, so for example, right? Yeah, get knocked out in six just by virtue of the matchup. Exactly. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of value in just making sure that you finish as high as possible here in the Swiss group stage. Yeah, Both these players are so wildly experienced, though. I think mm-hmm. uh, again, even in a high pressure matchup. Tato's not going to be too shaken out off no, of this. No, for He's sure not. Fully focused on what's coming up next. Tato is very mentally strong as well, right? He has been on both sides of, the, of this situation. He has played numerous tournaments against Hera as well. And yeah, I think both players are going all out though. I don't think any of them wants to lose this set, right? It's not, it's only, it's like also for your own confidence levels, but also like just to really nail down that, oh, I was the best performing player in the group stage. I was going to say, let's be honest, you have to have an ego to be a top-level pro. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, it just comes with the territory, and so pride on the line in a very big way for both of these guys. Burgundians, Armenians, Berbers, Poles, Burmese, just getting a refresher on the sieves for each of these players. Those five are tattoos. For Hera, it's Bengalis, Georgians, Aztecs, Khmer, and Persians. I wonder if we might get a mule cart fight on the Rocky Forest, right? Because of the wo- like the woodland, like the rocky terrain where you cannot build the lumber camps. You can right block. Things. You can, yeah. But you want the mule carts to have efficient wood income, right? Mm-hmm. And both of them have one sieve with mule carts. Armenians seem like a very natural choice there. However, Georgians, I feel like they can play multiple maps. So we'll see if that's what Hera is going to go for. But yeah, we saw we have seen Hera play Armenians twice already this tournament on Rocky Forest. So Tato grabbing that before Hera. Yeah, stealing it away. Exactly. Rocky Forest, of course, uh, yeah, very aggressive map for the fact that you can't get a lot of that walling in. Mm. But to answer our earlier question, Tato is going to reach into his home map pool and take us to Copenhagen for the second game of the set. It's going to be Tato in the blue playing as the Berbers, Hera as the Bengalis in the red. We saw this matchup already today Indeed. in Jordan versus Freakin' Andy. Yeah, and uh, Jordan was able to win that game with the Berbers. But I would say at stages it definitely looked like the Bengalis player was actually ahead. Economically, for sure. And then Jordan had some really good finds with Camel Archers uh, in order to deny a Castler and Town Center from Andy. So this matchup is like on paper, you'll think Berber's unique units are Camel Archers. They have really good bonus damage against Ratha, for example, and Elephant Archers. As we see here, Berbers as well, unique. They are Navy and Cavalry, so they have benefits on the water on both sides as well because the ships will move 10% faster. 
Yeah, and then as you mentioned, a bonus here for the Navy on the side of Bengalis, which of course is that the ships regenerate. So it's mm -hmm. kind of the battle of what, what we saw actually Jordan make a massive use out of the movement speed in that he was winning the micro battle while Andy was trying to take prolonged fights and let that exactly. regeneration really kick in. Of course, stronger monks as well as nothing to scoff at here on this map where both players will almost certainly produce many of those. And then the Ratha, a very interesting, unique unit as castles become all about control on this map. Indeed. Bengal is also getting two extra villagers for free upon reaching the next age, so we'll see Hera pulling ahead in the villagers. However, Tato, right now the villagers move 5% faster and they will be faster and faster as the game progresses. Uh, see advances through the next ages there. But we see Hera with a super fast uptime area. It's going to be a solid, almost a minute in yeah, front of Tato. Two villagers ahead. It's a 17 eco unit uptime, I should mm -hmm. say, because we do have two fishing ships on the field. 15 villagers at that. How many docks? I think I see a second one coming down just now here for Hera. That's pretty standard. But only one so far on the side of Tato. Indeed. Unless uh, they're right next to each other. Yeah, just one. He's, he's about to add a second one right now. But yeah, the, the super fast uptime here isn't necessarily that important because there is still a solid distance to travel until you face the opponent, right? So the fact that Tato is here 50 seconds behind is not the end of the world because his ships should pop out just about the time Hera will arrive to right. the other side. And we talk all the time about reinforcements and the value yes. of being the defender in the situation, right? So exactly, by the time you get there, I've probably matched you in numbers. And my second set of ships that come out will likely turn the tides of the battle. But it is two galley production straight away here for Hera. We would expect the same thing out of Tato, of course, utilizing those bonuses for the Berbers. And so soon enough, we'll have a little bit of action on the map. Still doing some scouting around the rest of it all with the Kings. And then I think the next question becomes, who will be the first to reach out for that bottom pond, right? That's always something that you have to, uh, I'm sure, put a lot of thought into is, yeah. I, you know, do I still want to contest on the top? Do I want to give it up? Do I feel like I've won it? And now I can finally reach for the fish at the bottom. Indeed, and that's also a question like, when do you do it, right? As you said, like, do you do it in Feudal Age or maybe in the transition to Castle Age? Or do you do it at all, right? You always have to make these decisions as the game goes on because they will surely impact how well you can fight on the north side as well. And, I mean, we've seen people give up water on the north. I did it myself as well at some point where it's like, I never really fought for the water to win it. Mm -hmm. I fought to have my fish alive and force my opponent to invest. And at the same time, I snuck to the bottom and I got a, took the advantage of the fish that is there untouched, right? So we'll see how these players uh, play it. But Hera and Tato, both two of the best water players in the game, so we're going to see some amazing galley micro here. And isn't that picture perfect? Like we said, the first two galleys would come out right as Hera arrives exactly. to the scene, and it is that kind of a situation. So it all comes down to the micro now. Again, a reminder that Tato has the movement speed here. Hera has the regeneration. So Tato does want to take the all-ins and ultimately win out by eliminating ships in their entirety. If he does chip, chip damage, it's not worth that much in the long run if Hera retreats and regens up. Indeed, but Hera is the one who has to be careful because if he takes one bad fight, he is the slower one, right? So the ships from Tato could catch up and really jump on Hera if Hera makes one slip up. Yeah, I uh, we saw that even in that earlier set today, when you then add maybe one or two fire galleys to be that front line and allow you to push forward. We saw it more in the Castle Age with some fire ships and a yeah. war galley upgrade. Right now, we're going to match numbers for numbers in the fire galleys. Neither player has gone for Fletching yet, so no advantages to be found there. And through all of this, we do have the extra fishing ship for Tato, but as you mentioned, the bonus for Bengalis, the extra two villagers gives him just the slightest lead on the eco front there. Indeed, and we see one mistake from Tato now. He is currently population capped, so his production is halted a little bit, and those are the things that can really turn the tide on these small micro-engagements, right? Yeah, forced into loom as a result, but did go for fletching first, so the upgrade about to come in. If he could find a good engagement here, Ooh. it could get him the advantage in the numbers. Both players trading out in the shots. Two seconds until fletching for Hera. We're back on equal footing. Tato's going to retreat with a low health, perhaps going to go for a repair as well, but that means that he's working with one less there out on the battlefield. Harris still has the initiative here, but we are playing on a knife's edge, another very low health galley, and now Tato sinks back up with the rest of his ships. Hera is just doing a phenomenal job in these trades, landing many and not losing one yet, now retreating a bit for some regeneration. Indeed, Hera definitely got... The Ooh, that's... This could be dangerous. The galley spawned right in front of Hera, but Tato was nicely, nicely micro to get it out of the way. And he has one ship garrison in his bottom dock right now. I'm not sure if that's just a misclick or what, but yeah, Hera definitely taking the better edge of the edge of the trades right now. But again, 
the tat again. If Harris oversteps just a little, it will still turn around. Yeah, we're waiting for that to possibly happen. And to your point earlier, Tat, though, at least putting up the defense. The fishing ships are still alive for now. Hasn't lost too much. Hera really testing the waters here, both figuratively and literally, against Tata. The first of these galleys is going to fall, and it's 2-0 to zero KD now overall here for Hera on the map. Not too many advantages gained for either player. Taking a look back at the resources as well to see which of these players might be closer to Castle Age, and they're in lockstep with each other as we speak. Indeed, Harold did have those two extra veils upon reaching Fulich. However, Tato has had one more fishing ship working this whole time as well, so the equal difference isn't that big. I spotted a difference. We have a demo in the queue. Oh, well, Hera has been dancing very close to that dock, and we know what Tato is known for. However, Harold playing a bit safe now. It's almost like a sixth sense. He yeah, knows yeah. He, he was literally between the two docks just a moment Ooh. ago, and it feels like he had some kind of inkling that oh. this is the moment where Tato would be up for something. We continue to trade volleys of arrows, not too many of them finding purchase on their targets, and Hera's going to back up in the end. Yeah, Hera on the way to the castle, so Hera now wants to avoid taking any bad trades. Right? He will probably play safe, fall back a little bit, and just wait for that castle to kick in, as he presumably, uh, but he assumes that he's going to be faster with the Bengalis, right? Ooh, Tato Scout is active on the bottom, though, as Hera sends two villagers down. Do we have Loom, I wonder, for Hera here? We know Tato did it earlier. Hera does not have Loom, Ooh. and Tato Scout is there. If he finds this, first of all, the wolf can start engaging the villagers, yeah. but the scout on top of that, these could be two dead villagers. Hera did bring his scout over as well, but the scouts ran right past each other. Well, Ships in the night. The demo, demo as well. Demo. We've got a lot to pay attention to in this moment. Is Hera aware of it? It seems like he got a little bit of a peek and he's going to retreat, Ooh. but this means that the villagers are under fire with the wolf helping out on Tato's side. That's two villagers down and no opportunity to get to that bottom pond. And the, at the same time, Tato jumping on the ships, forcing Hera to pay attention here and therefore not being able to micro quick wall the villagers. Amazing play by Tato right now. This is exactly the kind of situation that could snowball out of control. So Hera needs to keep his composure on the top here. He gets a few more galleys out onto the field. Tato continuing to dance and finally clicks to the Castle Age himself. That will be the big advantage here for Hera is the quicker Castle Age time. The extra two villagers that he gets while he's there and he's also winning the water battle in the moment. Yeah, Hera has the defender's advantage now, but Tato has done exactly what he needed to do. Force Hera to stay at home as well, and force Hera to micro... Hera sent two nivels. This is like, he already lost his advantage from advancing to Feudalage, right? Two villages down. That is that is now nullified. Hera sent another two villages, but then again, Tato's scout now doesn't have the same amount of HP. There is also a spearman there, so this should work out for Hera this time. Commits the spear to get there as well. I did see a number of villagers exiting Tato's base as well, so as he moves on to the Castle Age, perhaps thinking about a dock at the bottom, and then maybe a TC as well, on some important resources, we can con continue to uh, dance on the water. But at this point, with just three fishing ships to two, I think the, you know, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The advantage you gain in winning entirely on, on water is lessened as the game goes on in yeah. terms of the percentage value it has to the rest of your economy. Exactly. I mean, you have to think about what do I get from winning water right now, right? You see Hera right now, he's not even doing the the warship upgrade. He has not done Balkan either. So right now, like last game, he's not doing the Castle Age technologies. He's preferring to get his economy set up. He's adding one town center. He's also adding a monastery at the bottom. And now comes Bodkin. Bodkin after he goes for that first TC and the monastery. This is actually something that freaking Andy talked about. He felt was a major misplay. He forgot a monastery upon reaching Castle Age mm. as the Bengalis, and it felt like it really bit him when he had that engagement with Jordan in the center of the map. And while even still, Hera will win out the Ooh. battle here in the top pond, completely eliminating all of the galleys here of Tato. That means he'll likely go forward and wipe up the rest of the fishing ships. We do see our first TC going down for Tato as soon as Castle Age comes in. So interesting decision for Tato. Like, I'm surprised he stopped running there, but his ships are faster. He could have just clicked by and tried to go to snipe the fish of Hera, right? Tato is doing the warships upgrade, so he's, he has some fire ships on the field. And as we see on the top of the map, two fire ships have snuck by Hera's army, and they're there to kill the fish of Hera. Oh, wow. What a sneaky little maneuver by him to make sure he eliminates those eco units has an oh, uh, instant reaction. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Or just repositioning for fish? Uh, that was hard to say. Is yeah. that big brain or just? <laughs> no, he, he noticed it. Okay. He's already sending galleys home as well, right? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm still surprised that Tato didn't just send his galley straight across, right, to try and snipe the fish. But, yeah, Hera now walling off the middle as well, so it's going to make the pathing for Tato a little bit awkward regarding trying to compete for the water or harass Hera on the other side. But Hera picks up the scout of, uh, of uh, Tato picks up the scout of Hera with some camel archers as he has another three in the production. And Hera, so far, only making monks. He hasn't added a single Rafa. Yeah, just considering getting those relics in as quickly as possible. And one is already home and garrisoned into that monastery. Two galleys are going to find the three fishing ships here.
from Tato. Still a couple of galleys for Tato in the queue as well, so maybe can defend against that. But either way, the transition and the focus becomes more about the land at this point. Hera's already put in the work to get the map control, right? Getting those kind of forward walls up on the southern side also has managed to get that dock down as well for some extra fishing ships and possibly making his way to those three relics. But I do see a blue dot. Tato's thinking about contesting. Yeah, indeed. And what Tato is doing nice now is still forcing Hero to pay attention to the top set, right? At the same time, Tato is using Camel Archers to try and get some map presence, force Hero to maybe react on the land as well, and he's sneaking a dock in the bottom late. Hero right now has no ships in the bottom, he only has fishing ships, and I'm not sure if he's making more fishing ships there, but either way, Hero has no idea that the dock from Tato is coming up. Yeah, we have fishing ships in the queue, but no more naval units in the queue to defend against that dock that is coming up for Tato. So Tato, the opportunity to surprise uh, Hera here, but also needs to worry about a conversion, does get the snipe onto the monks. So lucky to find that against the Bengali tankier monks and will run away from possible conversions here. Yeah, Tato only has fetching at the moment, so those Camelotches do not pack as much of a punch as they can. However, Always going back to the conversions never oh, no. stop. This can be two really fast conversions. There's one. Retargeting onto the oh, other and two. does find it. That's a fantastic find there for Hera. It's only one more camel archer. Won't be able to do uh, much damage in the back of the eco, but this fire ship is going to do great work and another one to support it. All of these fishing ships are looking to go down and Hera even feels like he needs to invest in a second dock down here if he ever wants to make it to those relics. Oh, these monks do not have faith anymore. They just spent their conversion, so Tato jumps on it, jumps on the opportunity to take them out because they cannot convert anymore. Great find by Tato Hera. Hera still, like, those Camelotters do bonus damage to themselves, so the conversions <laughs> actually help defend so much here. He gets two picks, and yes, it's only fletching, so once again, tankier monks, tank for a take forever to go down. Another conversion looking to come through. So Tato's got to be on the retreat while also trying to trade out against these camel archers. Is it going to be a one for one in the end? No, that one is saved there from Hera. So Hera not even playing the camel archer Civ and almost has as many as his opponent. Indeed. Hera now will definitely send monks down to the docks as well, right? There are three relics in the lake on the bottom, well, if you can call it a lake, yeah. Uh, so you definitely want some control here so you can make a transport ship, go over there, pick up the relics and bring them home. Right now the relic situation is one for Hera, zero for Tato. And that's also why Tato wants to fight for the bottom, right? He does. He wants to make sure that Hera cannot just pick them up without actually investing, right? And I think Tato may have been sneaking in more fire ships on the top. That's like, right now Hera probably doesn't think that Tato will invest anymore on top. But we see Tato with a demo in the dock and two fire ships on the way. Yeah, never Everyone to say die is Tato. He's going to continue to contest up there in the top. Both players also just moving to their fourth TC. We see through all of this action a relatively even game. 16 to 11 in military numbers. 73 to 71 in eco numbers with Tato having just the slightest of edges. And so that I think if Ooh, anything is an that example. that was a good Ooh, demo. It was a phenomenal hit by the demo. Lots of damage. We didn't get any of the kills just yet, but those faster fire ships for the Berbers can possibly uh, chase down, but not uh, if they're on stand ground. Uh, Tato, move. You, you can okay, even see Harris like, do I? <laughs> yeah, wait, Should wait. I run? Uh, what do I do? Did he drop? Ooh. Did he drop? Like, what's yeah. yeah. But yeah. a sketchy situation there, but ultimately, Hera does still get the kills and going for that war galley upgrade now so that he isn't underpowered on water as he has been uh, in the upgrade department. We've got Bodkin coming in here for Tato, so that'll make his cav uh, camel archers just a little bit stronger. Here we've got the oh, replay the of the demo. Yeah, oh. baiting and then boom! You love just to see it. how Tato loves to do it. Yeah, you absolutely love to see it. Pull your attention one direction and then swoop in from behind with the flank. We have a second castle coming down here for Hera just to secure his eco on a great hill as well, right in front of that gold. This game, or rather this map, always becomes about that central concentrated push. And time and time again, we've seen the player who can get to the correct army numbers and correct army composition in the Imperial Age will be the one who ultimately comes out on top. Perhaps a difference maker in the series between Jordan demo. and freaking Andy. Another big demo hit, and the fire ships are out. So now it's about target firing. And I think the target firing for Tato yeah. looks really good as he eliminates more and more numbers and now has the edge on the water. Indeed, it looked like Hera wasn't paying attention here until just now. Tato obviously can't tell. Hera even adding fish. He hasn't won the water yet and he's adding fish. He's trying to get to the dog. Transport? <gasps> the transport with three monks? Well, to be fair, I think... They could convert. 
Yeah, and the fire ships wouldn't kill them fast enough because they are Bengali monks, right? Yeah. With extra armor. That's where you're wishing you did have a demo, if anything. So it looks like Hera might complete the relic heist and get all three of them out. He already has one at home. This would bring him up to four, and mm -hmm. that would be phenomenal for the Bengali player. Something I was going to talk about a little bit earlier is, of course, a difference maker I feel in Jordan's series against freaking Andy, the access to Bombard Cannons. I know we're not quite there yet, uh, but that is a very relevant thing when it comes to castles castle positions and trying to get a central push to actually build some momentum. Yeah, indeed. But Bengal is one of the civs that, despite not having bombard cannons, they got a pretty good counter in the fact that their monks have extra armor so they can tank more hits and therefore try to convert the bombard cannons with the same range. Because I believe Berber, no, Berbers might have siege engineers. I'm actually not sure. That's a tricky one. One extra range for the siege. If you don't know, I take that as permission for me to not know. <laughs> okay. okay? Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> chat, chat will know. I'm yeah, sure chat, chat will, will know. know. Okay, they do have it. So, yeah, there will be 13 range uh, bomber cannons for the Berbers against 12 range monks from the Bengalis. But, yeah, like Imperial Composition, they're both going to aim pretty much the same time. Resources collected neck and neck. This is as close as it gets as we enter Imperial Age very soon. Gonna say. Armor for infantry? Ooh. Has to be Halberdier play. Need a little bit of a meat shield, perhaps, or just something yeah. to produce to keep your numbers up as soon as you hit the Imperial Age. We literally have identical populations, 128 yeah. to 128 right now between these players. We see Spearman in production. He's also queued up some Ratha. I'm not sure if those are just two Ratha to like get some scouting, map presence, whatnot, or if he's going to come. He's doing ballistics as well. Like if, if I think about it, the composition here, right? Berbers, Camel Archers essentially shut out Ratha production and Elephant Archer production. So two of the very good options of Bengalis are pretty much eliminated by the simple fact that Camel Archer being such a good counter. Yeah. Halberdier, Onager Monk for Bengalis. Maybe Arbalest even? Mm, we have not seen much use in Arbalest this tournament. It's actually a discussion we were having earlier, right? Mm -hmm. It feels like this tournament has been very contrary to NAC4, where it felt yeah. like the meta was dominated by like Camel Crossbow kind of For a thing. Sure. Mm -hmm. we've, I feel like Crossbow's Arbalest very underutilized, perhaps uh, indicative of what their power level is in the meta right yeah. now, but could be a bit of a surprise in this one if Hera decides to go for it. A lot of conversions coming through there as uh, Tato tries to take the fight just before the Imperial Age comes in, trading out against those Ratha. Let's see if he can get those final two kills before the retreat comes in. He does. There you see the bonus damage they have. Ratha, Ratha are simply not an option as long as Camelot are on the field. They do so much damage. We see scouts. Light cap upgrade for Tato as well, so maybe Tato's thinking skirmishers. And as we see, Hera, elite skirmisher on the way. Tato ahead on the tech switch right now. Yeah, it won't be Arbalus. Instead, he'll go for the elite skirmisher play. We see a whole bunch of techs coming in as both players yeah. make it to the Imperial Age. Tato's still 13 seconds away. Halberdier is the first of those Imperial Age clicks, and block printing to follow, obviously, going to be massive for the monks in terms of converting any possible Bombard Cannons that come out on the field. Third castle already here for Hera, but both players choosing very conservative yeah. positions. No one really going directly for that center control. Indeed, like the big difference here on the maps is that there is like two central goals. Oh, we saw Hera, he play, just placed the castle in the middle. He did remove it again, so he mm. thought twice about it. But he's doing outpost first to make it safe. If he feels like he can drop the castle, he will. And the two goals in the middle there is essentially what would separate the two maps. Yeah, information first before he makes the decision. A thousand gold in Ooh. the bank, so has... I don't think That's you want to drop that outpost That's there, sir. Very That's like ambitious. the most standard spawn of the castle. <laughs> I think you have to assume it's there. Yeah. He exactly quickly repositions, okay. but this would well, control again. him. A little indecision there. That's yeah. a little uncharacteristic of Hera, but eventually we'll find a place to drop it. This does secure him a ton of gold priority over the course of the game if he's able to hold the position. Chemistry coming in for both players as well. Trap production as well from both players. So they know they're about to enter a long distance siege fight with trebuchets. And Tato might make some bomber cannons, as we know. They do have access to them. Bengalis do not. But yeah, just right now it's full trash from Hera. Maybe a few monks. He has seven already since Castle Age. But yeah, full halb, full skirm. And Halberdier was the first click, as you said. And it makes a lot of sense because Berbers have that se serious discount on the production of the cavalry units. Yeah, we've got already two trebs on the field here for both players. Another one in the queue. Camel archers continue to, or rather, not even in production, but healing up in that castle. And it seems like the focus right now is the light cav because the major concern concern is the Bengali monks against the Bombard Cannon that is now on the way. Indeed. Like, I think both players are struggling to figure out what's my ideal composition here, right? Hera has now just committed on Skirm's help. They always kind of trade well, unless there's like a superpower unit that can just steamroll everything. But uh, Tato might be the one who is like, what is my unit choice here, right? He has some Camelotchers, but Skirm's will nullify that. Then there's the Light Cap. But then again, Hera has so many 
so many helps again. So, Bomber Cannons will Hera's Monks. Maybe Bengals just has the answer to everything. Yeah, Siege Engineers just coming in here for Hera. We did see Masonry come in for Tato, and that can be mm. hugely relevant in the Castle War. Both players already putting a lot of stone into the repairs, plenty of stone in the bank for the time mm. being. We have Halberdiers running forward straight into the Castle Fire, but there may be enough numbers to target the Trebs. No, Hera will retreat instead. We got five Light Cabs swooping in, looking for maybe some Monk kills, but not enough numbers, it seems like, at the time. More reinforcements coming in as well. They're going to target the Skirms. The Bombard Cannon falls back, but the castle falls at the same time. Both castles Ooh. being traded out, in fact. And now the Trebs are the main target. Indeed, both uh, Hera and Tato is fully maxed out. Hera is not at the moment, but yeah. Tato does have more villagers, so army count is still in favor of Hera. But yeah, Hera has to back off with his traps. Well, traps went down before he got to back off. This was a great trade for Tato. They both lost their castles, but Tato is also raiding at the same time. Oh, look at that. I mean, he's pulling a Hera on Hera by throwing the light cab into the back of the eco oh, and opened. pulling the attention apart. He did open. That's a peculiar. Or rather, no, but he targeted that, right, with the trap there. Yeah, yeah. He did open the whole wall off the Hera had there. And now the issue for Tato is still that Hera does have the center control, right? There are There's a lot of gold there. I'm not sure what the total is, but it's, it's definitely a lot. It's like 8,000 gold. I was going to say, I think it's two five-tile golds. Which so 8,000. Uh, <laughs> there, well done, my friend. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're replacing the castle in just a slightly more defensive position here for mm -hmm. Tato. Obviously, a very important point of control for him just at the front of his base. And now the Hussar upgrade, along with Ooh. Iron Casting as well, is going to make the raids even more potent, as well as the opportunity to sm snipe any monks. But it's still full trash on the field here for Harris, and not even utilizing that gold that he's pulling in necessarily and putting it more into the upper upgrades than the units. Indeed. And we see Tato is doing crop rotation. That's paying off in like an hour and a half. So hope you have... Strap in, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> yeah, strap in. <laughs> <laughs> Tato is in it for a long time. Doing hoardings as well now, adding another couple of thousand HP to his castle. And he also finished Hustle upgrade now. Maybe Tato... Oh, King Snipe! <gasps> king Snipe, do it, Tato! Do it! Go for the king! That would be incredible. Uh, I'm not biased. Obviously, the, yeah, the king is very, very safe, but he's pulled a lot of units over here to the right-hand side. Plenty of Hussar more to raid. He's got Camel Arches as well, but this means that the front of his base is mm -hmm. relatively undefended. So this is Hera's opportunity to strike. He recognizes it, and four Trebs have no, now rolled forward to put their sights onto that castle. We've got the, uh, the conversion coming oh. through. Those block printing monks, they're looking for it. But the retreat comes in just in time back underneath the safety of the castle fire. Hera did a misclick there. He, he moved all the monks out of the way to not be hit by the bomber cannon. But he only needs, like, they don't die even to the bomber cannon shot. That's the beauty of Bengali monks, right? Still They're diving so in tanky. for the yeah. conversion. Tato oh. on the full retreat. The castle's about to go down. And he gets the conversion on top of that. Castle falls. And now this could Ooh. be disastrous here for Tato. He's got four trebs that are relatively exposed, the first of which is going to go down. Now Tato was able to trade out some on the side of Hera as well. But it's full trash at the moment for Hera. He's got tons of resources in the bank. As I'm looking at Tato, he seems a little bit strapped for cash. Indeed, Tato has lost two castles as well, and you can't replace those easily. He still has two castles left, and he has a unique tech that makes them work 25% faster. I saw I did it earlier in the castle, so that's definitely in there. And now he's doing the skirmish switch, which makes a lot of sense, because skirmishes will counter everything that Hera has currently. Yeah, so he just has to get the numbers up, as Hera's looking to target another one of those castle positions, make it expensive for Tato if he wants to hold on to map control. Tato now bringing some of his forces back to play defense, needs to get something out onto the field to deal with those Trebs. There is one Bombard Cannon, haven't located it just yet, but as it comes forward, that will be the thing to keep our eyes on. The Monks will want to target it. Obviously, Tato's Micro will be massive in terms of eliminating the Trebs. We've got more Hussar. They're looking for damage. They can't find their way in at the moment, though, Viper. Indeed. Hera just securing the spot with another cast in the middle to control those golds. Tato, though, like he had a decision to make right now. How much stone does he have? He has enough stone for one more castle. Question is, do you make a new castle in a safe location, or do you spend it repairing like he's doing right now? But there are four traps from Hera. That's going to take down the castle in no time, and it's going to spend all the stone repairing here. Such a tough position to be in, but because of that gold that's sitting just behind that castle and the fact that the castle sits on a hill, I do think he's going to commit to keeping it alive as long as possible. We have those skirmishers coming forward looking for snipes. They're not going to threaten traps too much, and the halberdiers can't quite get through the meat shield. The question is, is Tato able to eliminate those trebs that are firing? Well, he just loses the Bombard Cannon as he comes in to the block printing monks once again. That's a tragedy. Indeed, but this is the third time Hera is diving under the castle of Tato with all his trash units. Super low HP units, they will die really fast. And we see here, now there's no defense for the traps. Maybe Tato has an opportunity here to just jump on the traps. As we see how it's coming in though, and 
The castle stays alive for now, but there's only 400 stone left in the bank for Tato. Yeah, that could have been the window. Those are very low health trebs there. We do have uh, a few more halberdiers showing up to play the meat shield one and some down. villagers trying to repair. One treb goes down. We've got two more firing away, but it's four trebs for Tato here. If he can start a snowball, if he can find his moment, we could see this start to roll back across the other side of the map. The skirmishes are coming in clutch now. They're helping. They got a recent change as well where they do more damage to halberdiers, and that's exactly what Tato is making. The Camelot the skirmisher mix might be the composition for Tata right now. Yeah, and you... Oh, go ahead. Harold does not have units to deal with this right now. The castle stays alive, Harold loses all his traps, and population looking very healthy for Tato. I have to point out, though, Harold did do Mahayana, I think it's called. Yeah, Unique wonderfully tech, done. Which gives 10% less population cost for villagers. So Harold on paper now could have roughly 215 population. There we go. Exactly. So we'll see if he can get himself up to that. Only sitting on 170 at the moment. But we also see a little bit of a tech switch, right? To your point, mm -hmm. now that he's getting pushed back, he has to rethink his army composition and teching into those cavalry armor upgrades. Hasn't produced too many just yet, but that could be the answer against the skirms that Tato's beginning to produce. Also saw Capt Ram Ooh. come in for Tato. Tato now using mobility advantage he has as well, right? He has the cavalry on the field. Hera is currently only on infantry and skirmisher units. So mobility in favor of Tato, and he's taking advantage of that with the trebuchet push on the bottom side. Feels like from the brink of death, Tato is clawing his way back into this one. All of the cavalry techs coming in for Hera before he shows anything. Husbandry, bloodlines, and scale barding. We also or plate barding, rather. We have five trebuchets on the right-hand side, though, working away on this castle position. That's a castle on a hill, a very important hill to control, given the amount of eco that sits around it here for Hera. And the slow reposition of those halberdiers and skirmishers is exactly what you're talking about. They arrive just as the castle goes down. Indeed. And those units that he has right now, they will not be able to take out trebuchets fast either. Look at Hera's food bank. He has 4,000 food in the bank. And also one thing, one thing worth pointing out is Bengalis have a bonus, Civ bonus, where they do plus two damage to skirmishers with their cavalry units. So if those light cap from Hera get on top of the skirmish of Tato, the skirmish will disappear. Elite Camel Archer. Ooh, Elite Camel Archer, that could be massive as well. Obviously, you're happy to trade efficiently with trash units, but at the end of the day, if you can sustain your gold unit, unique unit type production, that will still win out in the end. You want to use those powerful, powerful units to the best of your ability. We have a castle position removed from the map. Tazzy oh. gets pushed back just Look slightly. at Tato's maneuvering. Hera pulled all his army to the right side. What is Tato doing? The Treps and his whole army moving towards the center where Hera has undefended castles. This is one of the things that Tato is best at, playing the map and pulling the attention of his opponent from side to side time and time again. On top of all of that, it's kind of an interesting situation where Hera's own walls through the middle of the map, they slow his own rotations. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And so it's such an interesting, it keeps you safe in one sense, but also makes it difficult for you to respond to your opponent. And now those five trebuchets arrive to target the castle position that largely controls two golds in the center of the map. Focus back on to the central push. And those gold gold piles have barely been uh, deplenished, right? There's so much gold left to mine here for whoever has control of it. Five, over 5,000 gold still. Imagine Tato getting control of that and how many cam he can make as we see. I mean, I still think like Hero just struggles to find a composition, right? What does he make? Yeah, Castle Falls. Both players are popped Kappa right now. It feels like Tato's the one with the initiative. The Hussar numbers are massive and they dive underneath the castle with impunity. Yes, they are going to get cleaned up by those Halberdiers, but still the important units of the Cav Archers are safe behind, Ooh, or Camel Archers thing. rather are safe behind. The Trebuchets now unpack to look to target yet again another castle. And the same situation that we talked about for Tato is relevant now for Hera. There's very little stone in the the bank. In fact, he invests a thousand gold to buy 500 to possibly mm. keep this one alive. He's going to move forward to try and remove these traps from the field, uh -huh. and he has solid numbers right now. Tato on the run. Indeed, Tato has lost all the Hustar. He doesn't have the meat shield he needs to make sure the Camel Archers are safe, and therefore the traps are no longer safe either because the Camel Archers always wants to retreat when they're being targeted as well. And yeah, Tato is on the back foot here as Hera with such a big army now as he has, he has the 10% less villager population. His army is bigger and Tato cannot take bad fights. Just looking at the population number swings here, both players a moment ago sitting at 200. Tato now slipping down to 175, but he gets the retreat. The Camel Archer numbers are still relatively strong and more Hussars out to play the meat shield. 
I love that Hera did get another wall down on the right-hand side, recognizing that Tato's likely strategy might be to continue to seesaw to the other side of the map. But once again, we're locked in a battle here in the central part of the map. It's 68 military units for both players, and the Hussars dive in to try and clean up the trebs here from Hera. The Camel Archers just patrolling for the safety at the time being. We've got skirmishers coming forward to look for the snipes. Thumb ring finally coming in to bring those Camel Archers to their full potential. Indeed, the army composition right now, when you're maxed out, Tattle definitely has a stronger army with those Camel Archers. Harbin just lost all his trebuchets, and he has a 50 Hussar cube right now. But Hero could have the same if he was spending his food. They both are banking food so hard right now, and suddenly Harris is the one pushing again. Here's the scary part, though. There is zero on gold here for Tato. Mm. So every Camel Archer he loses is that much more difficult to replace, and he's starting to use the market as a result. Indeed. Guild's coming in here, which makes those trades more efficient for him. As Honestly, that's the, what he has to rely on, right? Maybe we might, even in this game, have a case for a final ditch King Snipe attempt. Ah, yeah, we saw Jordan, or uh, yeah, we saw Jordan go for it as well, and was denied it while still winning the game. Yeah. For Tato, it might be his only source of recourse Ooh. to get a game victory. But this is a great step in that direction by picking off those trebuchets and keeping his couple of castles very much alive. A massive engagement in the middle of the map. It's mostly cavalry here for Tato. It's a mix of units here for Hera. It looks like the numbers are strong for both still, and I'm tracking the camel archers over everything. That's the thing that'll be hardest for Tato to replace. Everything else can continue to produce. I say that, and look at the food count, actually, for Tato. It's looking a little thin right now. Well, he still has 50 Hussar in the queue, so it's solid enough. But <laughs> yeah, yeah right. he could definitely turn some of that 4,000 wood into more farmers, right? And maybe Tato has a switch back to skirms, right? Hera seems to have found the healthy mix that keeps Tato at bay, right? Just enough, enough skirms to start picking off one and two cam launches here and there. Enough halves that whenever Tato dives with his Hussar, the halves will be there to clean him up. And then he has his own light cavalry he can jump on Tato's skirms or just be a, a meat shield for whatever army Hera has. Yeah, incredibly, between these two players, in a 52-minute game, we have a separation of just about a 1,000 resources collected, yeah. which is amazing to see. And once again, both players completely popped cap. Now Tato looking for some damage. He's going to run some Hussars into the back of Hera's eco. That's going to split the focus. Hera's going to chase with Lightcap, has some castles to deal with it, and he's going to use the rest of his forces to move forward. Ooh, Doesn't look like Tato has game. anything in position other than this Bombard Cannon, and that will cause Hera to immediately pack up Ooh. and run, at least until he can get some light cav in to snipe and possibly make a mess of Tato's eco. Tato now rotating over for the defense. Yeah, I think I think as well, Tato broke open the wall again in the middle of the map for Hera, so he's going to start raiding through there. Oh, three bomber cans going oh, down to the castle! To the castle! This is the most expensive unit in the game! Oh, that's a tragedy. I mean, yeah, that's what, five, uh, roughly 500 yeah. resources per. So 1,500 resources essentially down the drain to that castle alone. Repairs coming in on this castle. Very important for Tato to keep up because this in the end, out. he only has two. No stone, no gold to buy, no villagers on gold. It's looking disastrous for Tato at this moment. Does he have the queue of Hussars to continue to spam? It looks like the castles are starting to fall. The light cav raids are coming in. He can't clean up the trebs as cleanly as he'd want to. One does go down. There's a a couple more low health ones there, but plenty of halberdiers to defend. He does Ooh. manage to get all the snipes, and that might give him just another couple seconds to breathe and find an answer to the pressure that Hera's throwing at him. Indeed, but there's no castle anymore to defend, so Hera can now start entering Tato's base to start just taking fights whenever he wants to, right? Camelot should still do a phenomenal job as long as they get to shoot and not be touched, but again, those halves are getting really good trades there. Both players still pop cap. Tato is on 40 cam launchers. He's reaching a really healthy level of cam launchers. Question is just, wait, Tato's king is down. Is Tato's king garrisoned? He rem yes, okay. he moved it down into <laughs> TC. I see the red dots moving towards yeah, the king. Yeah, that was scary you know. for a moment there. Uh, yeah, so uh, while this is just a raiding attempt here uh, for Hera, probably unlikely to be aware that the king oh, is there. And look at the knows, catch rage messages. I know, it's freaking out <laughs> just because that TC is getting slapped. Uh, Tato responds to clean this up and try and keep his food eco alive. He does have 60. He's up to 63 on food, mm -hmm. however, has very little in the bank. So he's playing on a knife's edge in any moment, might run out of the resources and run out of steam Ooh. overall. Those are some good raids, though, to find in the back of Harris Base as well, off of a transport ship, ah. of all things. You love to see it. Tato loves those moves, man. He does it every single time he has a chance to do something tricky like that. He will take the opportunity. Both players are just trying to raid each other and make the economy management for the other person different, uh, difficult. Uh, Tato's Q is still super healthy on the Hussar, but then again, 
He's kind of only making Hustar, right? But as long as he keeps his Camel Archers alive, Hustar will do just fine as a meat shield. Yeah, eight more Camel Archers did manage to get put into the queue. So 37 up to 45, if keeps them all alive. I would be very curious at the end of the game to see the damage dealt by these Camel Archers because he's done a phenomenal job of keeping them alive. We have another engagement, this one towards the center of the map. So Tato has gained a little bit of ground back, but he's fighting underneath the castles here of Hera. And that's ill-advised over a long period of time. Of course, if he's just throwing Hussars away, it's not too bad because he's back up to 1,200 food in the bank. 6,000 wood behind all of that could sell some of that for gold. But he did manage to get 17 villagers on the front Ooh. back onto gold. That'll be a very important position to hold. That's massive. And like, like you see, he's reached a critical number of cavalry uh, camel archers now where they're killing everything in front of them, right? So as long as he can continue to spam those hustlers, I think he's adding more and more stables towards the fighting point. And then he can reinforce faster and faster. And as long as those camel archers stay alive, they will clean up absolutely everything because everything here has are trash units. Yeah, Cam Archers can hold. They can even gain some ground, but what they can't really do is push through castles. So we need those siege numbers to climb. And with this little bit of gold that Tato has managed to secure for himself, we see three Bombard Cannons on the way. That could be all he needs if managed properly and keeping these Cam Archers alive to actually take this game. We do need to see these Cam Archers reposition. We need to see that Bombard Cannon be saved. It came forward and now it's being targeted by some Light Cav. A couple more hits, Ooh, but it looks repairs. like with the Repair. He might be able to keep it alive. This could be a big oh. play. No! That's a hero halberdier there for Hera that gets the snipe in the end. Hera doing a really good job as well, targeting the Camelotchers with the skirmishers at all times, right? Every chance he gets, he wants to pick up one Camelotcher at a time to the point where we see already Tato's down to 32 Camelotchers again. But Tato wants to stay on that round 40 number to have the critical mass. And uh, yeah, I mean, Hera's population has dropped. He still has a lot of... Wait, actually, Hera's bank is depleted and he has not a lot of units in the queue. Yeah, 160 pop. At the end of the day, I mean, we were just a moment ago talking about how it seemed all lost uh, for Tato and possibly on the verge of defeat, and now he's pushed back to the center of the map, has the population lead, and it looks like the stronger army composition as long as he continues the production. And with 14 vils on gold, he's sitting pretty again with that Q. Like you said, maybe 32 up to 40, 45 camel archers would be the play, but another two bombard cannons on the way, he gets up to four, and those castles aren't long for this world. Indeed, as we can see, the Camelot is just being the main unit right now to dictate where the fights are happening. And like Hera always has to respond to Tato's Camelot just right now. Hera can also be like, okay, I'm just going to ignore this army and go anywhere else, right? Because then the Camelot Camel will just push forward and take whatever ground they want. Again, Hera trying to make a dive on Bomber Cannons. Looks like he might be able to get one. But again, with Hera's bank right now, those are expensive. But Hera, up to 86 farmers right now. I know, that's a quintessential Hera play. But even still, like you say, with 80-something farmers, he'd like to send those like Cav to raid the eco. But right now, he needs the mass in the front. Look at that damage dealt. 12k coming out of just the Camel Archers that remain alive on the field. That's Indeed. not to take into account everything that has died prior. Three Bombard Cannons here with plenty in front to at least play the meat shield. Got to keep those Hussars around. Don't want to throw those away, but Tato is finally looking for a killing blow. If Tato gets this hill here where the woodlines have been uh, cleaned, how has Tato, how is Hera ever going to take him off that hill? If the Camelot just get planted right in the middle with the bomber cannons, uh, this is not the best fight for Tato. Like, no. His Hussars are fighting, but the Camel Archers are sitting there shooting at houses. Yeah, management of the Camel Archers lapsing for just a moment there. And so what could have been a very effective fight doesn't go quite as well as he wanted to, but it still seems like it's in a winning position here for Tato, slowly moving towards that all-important hill position that you're talking about. First going to target the TC, then soon to follow will be that castle. What is the answer at this point for Hera? He seems to be almost out of options. He's only making light cap right now. In light cap, you have worse units, like head-to-head. Hustar are better than Lightcap, right? So that's not the unit Hera needs. Hera just right out of options right now. Vodka, can we quickly see how much wood Hera has left on the right side? Okay, he still has a healthy amount, so ta being taken off the middle is not the end of the world for him. Yeah, still enough for the time being, but for me, there's one important unit that isn't on the field here for Hera, and that would be the Monks. Also, misclicks, 13 Militia. That has to be. That, those are supposed to be halberdier, 100%. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> that's a tremendous amount of food and gold, actually, yeah, that's yeah. put into a near useless unit. And actually, maybe even more drastically, it's the pop space that you've just committed Indeed. to a unit that isn't useful. Castle goes down. Hera is now down to. He has three castles, four castles actually still alive. But Hera still has his king in that starting tower. 
I mean, Tato could just make like a straight line and go straight for it, right? Yeah, if he at, realizes it's there. Look at Tato go. Five Bombard Cannons now on the field, and honestly, nothing that can really deal with them. We're starting to see the struggle here of the queue. For Hera, nothing in the queue, in mm. fact, as I look to the top right of the screen. Down to uh. 107 villagers, but he <laughs> is going looking for, for some raids and possibly the snipe on the king. Tato's yeah. aware of it and isn't going to let it happen. And what's That's not even where the king is. It's a villager. <laughs> it's a villager. It's a full bait. play, a full yeah. bait. You love to see. It. Yeah. Hera thinks it might be his only option, and Tato, uh, he's uh, playing the magician on this map. What a recovery from a near defeat position. Still needs to get it done in the end. We never say die until the GG is called. We have four more castle positions for Hera to fall back to, but he's losing ground rapidly. He's losing farming space rapidly down to 65 farms. And the Q just still isn't there. It's all light cav and nothing else. Hera is on 135 population now. That's, I mean, like when the Camel Archers are pushing through your base, that's not going to be enough to hold. Still has one militia, though. Hey, oh, hey, oh. Oh, nope, now it's gone. Yeah. I just saw it disappear from it the uh, top right. The only thing Hera is doing right now is sending Lightcap to try and find the location of the king. Right. The king is, though, luckily for Tato, in his only castle. And I don't think Lightcap can take out a castle, at least not from what I've seen no. normally. Not However, unless. Hera has two trebs. He has two traps in queue as well. Can we locate those traps? Oh, they're going for the castle where the king is. Oh my He's making God. a run for it. Okay, he loved to see it. Take your only percentage chance at winning the game. He understands that in a head v head battle of just pure army compositions, it's not going to be enough for him. But he has to keep these traps protected. And there, Tato's taking the opportunity to swoop in with the Hussars. I don't think Light Cav are going to be able, be able to deal with them quickly enough. The it militia! Would need to be Albanir, the militia, trying to be a hero, but he can't be. The first trap goes down, the second one will follow. And while another one rolls forward, it'll be cleaned up soon. Yes, the castle took a little bit of damage, but it's under no threat of falling. And he time soon. The numbers are climbing here for Hera in this position, but for Tato it's all about the Trebs. Get them off the field and you should be okay. This is, Hera is throwing every single resource he has right now. He's throwing into this push to try and take the castle, but Tato is getting closer to Hera's king. The tower is garrisoned. Tato sees it. This would be so poetic. If he brings the bomber, bomber oh, oh, the king ran, runs. the king ran. Wow, the awareness from Hera as well to move the king out of the tower and into the safety of one of the castles. He does have two trebuchets back on the front here. There are some halberdiers out there and some villagers coming forward to look for the repairs. One of the trebuchets goes down. The other one is now half health, about to fall as well. There is so much investment into the stone, or into the wood and gold here for Hera to try and get this King Snipe. In fact, he's got no resources left. It's this Treb or nothing for him and his chances at the first or second game of the set. Not a militia to help defend. <laughs> and he brought villages this time. He has 33 villages left. 10% of his economy. No, oh, right the here. houses! Oh, the quick walls. This could be massive. Oh, he there's... cannot build there. The trap is blocking. He oh, cannot build that house. Oh, he can. He can. Builder. He gets it. But there's still a hole, I think, on the right-hand side. Oh, he gets the wall. The final quick wall. But the palisade wall isn't going to be enough. Or gate, rather. And I think this might be enough. The repairs are trying to come through. It's everything into this singular push here for Hera. Tato just needs to defend. And he should be able to claim victory and even us up at 1-1. One one. It's 32 villagers to 88. <laughs> You gotta love to see it as these guys have put everything that they have into this second game of the series. Indeed, Tato has bills under the castle as well, repairing. That trip will never take out the castle. And the GG is called. What Woo! an amazing game of Age of Empires. 660 Hussars made <laughs> for Tato. It was 330 light cav on the side of Hera. Near 1,000 cavalry units made between the two. And that's before we talk about the rest of the army compositions. Everybody take a breath. I feel like this series is going the distance. Indeed. We see both players laughing as well. They, talk. they both have fun with the last ditch attempt to snipe the king, right? When you're a player as well, you don't laugh in the game, but after you're no. done with the game, uh, shoulders down, like it was fun. Hero had a go, it was his only option at that point. Tato was in firm control, so yeah. I mean, I, in this place, I'd rather have Hero do that and try rather than just like just keep trying to hold because he, he knew that he was going to lose eventually. You got to respect it. And of course, we're playing the most crucial point of the game the three monks. Yeah. Get oh, one monk playing defense Locked. against the other? Yeah, yeah. This, yeah, this is why Hero lost. There you go. What this <laughs> Trinity Ice <laughs> monks on a mission. That's why we had to watch it. Okay. We needed okay, to, you okay, had to justify yeah. the meme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 sense, yeah, yeah. That's sense. the most important thing right here. <laughs> I mean, wow. Okay, talk to me about endurance in Oof. sets because oh, and in, in the cast. And in the cast, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? I'd say we're working a different muscle here, of Indeed. course. Uh, our diaphragms and our lungs. 
But, I mean, this is something that, I mean, uh, we've seen sets go as quick as three O's in one hour. We've mm-hmm. seen single games go two and a half hours. Um, what is the stamina like as a pro player? Like, what do you? what is for you the most taxing? Is it the mental Oof. and the decision-making element or yeah. the more physical elements of keeping up uh, in in executing on the decisions you want to make? So usually I feel the exhaustion after the set, right? Okay. In the games, I'm usually that focused that I don't really notice it, but like when I'm done with the set, I can be like, oh, damn, I'm exhausted, right? I think when you lose a long game, it's more taxing on your energy levels mm. than if you win it, right? So I think coming out of this game, Tato is definitely the one who's going to feel way better, right? Obviously, he won the game, so it sure. makes sense. But also, like, when you fight for so long, put all your energy and effort into the game, and then you come out on the losing side in the end. I mean, another thing to consider is this was Hera's second pick on the draft. Yeah, this so is like, also the second time we've seen Berbers come out on top over mm-hmm. Bengalis even today, today exactly. on Copenhagen. And I was hearing some arguments for Bengalis being mm-hmm. better than Berbers earlier. So I'm wondering if some pro players over there on the couch might be rethinking their assessment of those sieves. Yeah, there, there's something to that, right? Again, as the game went on, as once Tato got the critical number of camel archers, that's when it's suddenly like Harold couldn't take good fights anymore, right? It's a good point. He was seconds away from defeat. They, it almost felt had... like, right, in a number of ways. And yet, here we go, right back on to map number three of the series. We're going to one of Harris' home mats. He's the one who had uh, the choice in where we would go next for game number three. We're going to Rocky Forest. Hera in the red, playing as the Khmer, Tato as the Armenians. You had called out that Harris played Armenians multiple times mm-hmm. on this map. Tato picks it away and takes it onto that very map. So how do you feel Khmer plays into that? Well, Khmer obviously a very versatile and flexible sieve as they can, uh, they have a bonus where no buildings are required to construct certain buildings. That's a weird way to put it. Essentially, they have no That actually pre- is a strange way to yeah, put it. They have no prerequisite requisite? requisite? Yes, perfect. Yeah. Oh, there we go, English. Uh, for any buildings, right? They can go to village, build an archery range, build a stable without having to build at barracks beforehand like every other sieve in the game has to, right? So that gives you a lot of versatility and flexibility in terms of how you want to open up. You can drop a stable and a range as well, right, as the opener. So you have a lot of potential in terms of the opening. You can decide do I want to do this or that or very easy ad- adaptation to the opponent as well as well an incredible farming eco because villagers drop off food from farms one unit at a time meaning they don't have to return after a full basket exactly. of food if you will and that makes them an incredible scout sieve which mm-hmm. on this map inability to wall around all of your important resources can mm-hmm. make scouts incredibly potent now on the other side like you mentioned we have tato stealing away the armenians mm-hmm. why so on this map we can see the rocket terrain along the forest right this is not buildable. You cannot build on this terrain. Therefore, you can never place an efficient lumber camp along the terrain. However, Armenians and Georgians, the two newest saves to the games, have a mule cart. And the mule cart is a mobile drop site, so you can essentially move it all the way to touch the woodland, making your wood choppers as efficient as can be. And therefore, they are a natural choice there. However, Armenians is a civilization that struggles a bit with their tech tree, right? They have good archery line, good infantry, but mobility, not the best. They don't really have any power power units, right? Like camel arches that we saw last game, for example. So a lot of people have a great opening with Armenians, but as you're starting to transition into a different unit, Armenians start to become a little bit awkward. So it might require you to find some kind of early game advantage to have the initiative over your opponent and ultimately take the game. We're seeing exactly what you talked about here from Harris' perspective, having to build that lumber camp from the beginning one ti- one full tile away. And that will mm-hmm. become a longer and longer trip as his lumberjacks chop through, while Tata will have the option to reposition on the mule cart. Already on the way to the feudal age for both players is going to be Hera, who gets there first going up on 16 villagers to the 18 of Tato. This is what you can do with Khmer as well, right? Other civs have to have enough wood for a mill and a lumber camp or a mining camp or a barrack. Like, you need two buildings in the dark right. age to advance. Khmer can ignore that. You can put every villager on food and go to the fuel age as fast as you want. Then you can add the lumber camp later, for example, right? That's what we saw Hera do as well. He pretty much went to fuel age before he did his lumber camp. And the question now is just, what is his unit going to be? I feel like he might just open a range and play skirmishers because what is he expecting from Armenians? Probably Spearman Skirm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in that case, you don't want to be running scouts straight into the mm-hmm. open arms of some Spearmen. Tato, previously pushing some goats in, hasn't gone forward for the scouting information yet, but it's not hard to know where your opponent will be as you can run straight through the center of the map. Ooh. It's Hera, though, who comes forward already in Feudal Age and having the attack bonus on that scout will get the better of the trade. Needs to avoid damage from the TC and does manage to do so, even dancing in front of it, trying to bait Tato into the garrison and does take just a tiny bit of damage for his troubles. What is this, Hera? What is, what is, is uh, this? Hera has done this a few times now. Wow, two sheep? 
The thing is, this is... I mean, if you're a tattoo the counter plays, two villagers kill each sheep and garrison, right? Because ah. then your sheep stay alive, and Hitara will lose some HP on his scout. Okay. Now, obviously, it took two sheep, but he did lose all the HP on his scout. As we see, Hera is indeed going for a stable opening with that fast uptime and farming around the stable, as you can with Kumur. Um, but yeah, like, there's the argument here. Is it worth it to lose the HP on the scout? Because you give away initiative, right? Sure, you take a little bit of food from the enemy, but also the initiative with the scout play is not really there anymore. Yeah, it's, uh, I, you know, opportunity cost there, right? Sacrificing health to remove the eco from your opponent. It is going to have to change Tato's approach and maybe the allocation of resources as he'll run out of food options before needing to invest wood into it, either by building more mills on other berry positions or moving out towards the center of the map or just committing it to farms around yeah. the TC. Another thing that Armenians can do here with the mule cart, as I said, it's a mobile drop site, right? So in the middle, we have deer spread all across the middle. So Tato could on paper send two, three wheels, four wheels with the mule cart and just go from deer to deer to deer, and it will be super efficient as well. As we saw a scout hitting the house for a while, I'm not sure if that's the damage he wants to do, but uh, <laughs> Tato also going for a scout's opening. Just let him know. Scare the population. Yeah, I exactly. think that's a strategy, right, <laughs> uh, of some sorts. Uh, so far, no kills to be found by either player, just health traded one way or the other. These are low health scouts that villagers themselves could fight away, and even still, Tato has a spearman there, walls up for safety around the berries as well. We've Tato, got, uh, oh, go ahead. Tato with his food income right now, he cannot really produce, right? He has villagers producing, but he cannot afford scouts, nor spearmen. He's adding more spears, actually, so he's only on two scouts at the moment. What's really nice against Kumur, if you do a barracks stable opening, is that you have spearmen, right? Kumur drops the barracks because that's their civ bonus, essentially. So if you can put pressure with spearmen and scouts, you're in a really good spot. However, Tato here does not have the food to be producing scouts, so Tato essentially forced into a defensive position. Yeah, scout numbers here for Hera continue to climb. Four on the field, two in the queue. Oh, this is a spearman just that just passing. barely misses finding the poke and a possible kill onto one of these two scouts. But again, low health scouts not going to find purchase or damage. This will be interesting, though. Another couple low health scouts here on the side of Tato oh. looking for damage on the villager. Another one comes over to defend with an extra spearman, though. Oh, this should be a dead vill. harass and perhaps one dead vill. Not even enough uh, for Hera to defend here with that scout being produced in that moment. So the first economic damage to be found will be Tato in terms of a villager kill, if we're not to count those two sheeps that fell yeah. earlier in the game. And, yeah, and that was exactly what I was speaking about, right? Hera popped out a scout, but the scout couldn't engage because the spearman was there. However, Hera coming on the woodland here, Tato does have two spears though, ready to defend, so he should be completely fine. Yeah, very good job defending and avoiding any damage as of yet. Both of these players playing at the top of their game, it feels like, in this tournament and in this series. Ooh, low HP Vill, you know the Hera will be coming back for that one later. <laughs> He's clicking that thing so many times, yeah. too. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, Kamur, another thing we didn't talk about, actually, is just the ability to garrison villagers yeah. into houses. So while this is a very open map, that can be that extra element of safety that you need sometimes, looking for more damage. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's whittling these villagers down, and that's what Hera does so well, right? He might not kill the villager on the first pass, but he might kill it on the second, or exactly. even the third pass with yeah. those scouts. However, we saw Tato, the, the second that happened, right, the, the further a villager got lost HP, he switched that villager to a closer to the TC farm and put a full HP villager on that further farm. So Tato also doing the right precautions to make sure he doesn't lose that villager later on. Man, these poor villagers having to pull double duty. They're chopping down trees and fighting spearmen. Indeed. Not an enviable job, to say <laughs> the least, but they do win the battle in the end. It's continued scout production here for Hera. Hasn't tried to transition onto anything else, but feels like the mobility is all he needs. Where for Tato, it's an investment in to seven spears mm -hmm. and four scouts in total. What could be an interesting thing here for Tato, as we see, I mean, Hera's already on 500 food, right? He's now switching some wills to, ooh, he picks up a scout here, nice pickup by Tato. But Hera moving to gold now, maybe he's thinking about Castle Age, right? But what Tato could do, but a lot of people don't realize, Armenians have access to the infantry upgrades of the next age in the, blacks, in the barracks. So Tato could make even pikemen upgrade in the feudal age. Imagine pikemen upgrade and then send like four wheels to tower or something. Hera only has scouts. Pikemen and towers would be, Hera would have no answer to that whatsoever. Yeah, he'd have to give the ground, if anything else, because he doesn't have the option to fight. And with these spears coming forward, I mean, I'm maybe not even needing pikemen right Indeed. now. He just has the unit composition to make it so that Hera cannot take the engagement. Again, still playing the mobility. Hera, no, you know, always the wiser, knows that this is not an engagement he can take. Yeah. He'll look for counter damage, while Tato will look for the same. More houses coming down to make sure that the Khmer villagers have plenty of places to garrison in case they uh, take a fight. 
Indeed, Tatofil and Confident here. He has Spears at home, ready to defend. So he's sending forward four scouts with three Spearmen. And also Tato did forging. So these will kill villagers way faster than before. As we see Hera feeling the need to add a range to defend. Hera even taking fights against Spears here. Spears have forging in defense as well. This is a great upgrade for Tato. Yeah, it's a one for one trade. A scout for a spear in the end. Tato will take that every day of the week. Now the villagers are fighting on behalf of Hera against the spears and the light, or the scouts that are coming forward. Again, playing the jump through the window, jump back out mm -hmm. of those houses to safety. However, you, maybe if you're Tato, you just sit on the house, right? That's five idle villagers, right? They're not working. So Ta Hera is on the way to the castle, though, as we have gotten used to see very fast. Armor upgrade for Tato as well now. He's really investing into food layer, and there's no house to defend the gold miners right now. Yeah, none whatsoever. They're trying to rush it up, and they do. I think there's six villagers and only five spaces in that house. Either way, Tato's going to back off just slightly. Now he does see that his opponent is on gold, and if you know Hera, you know that that's likely for that castle age push because yeah. you haven't seen any ranged units or gold Gold units just yet, while Hera did finally get his first archer onto the field. Nice quick wall by Hera there, saving it. But again, he didn't. That's the mistake people make often when they quick wall. You don't hammer enough on those three tiles, and therefore one is weak, and the villager will be picked off. Hera is still trying to quick wall. This is like, this, I do this as well. This is a complete waste of time right now, but you just cannot help yourself. <laughs> I know. It's been, uh, I guess you've been uh, the target of some of that criticism, you know. Uh, Oh, Pikeman, Pikeman! Ooh, just what you asked for. And even more investment into armor upgrades here. Now for the cavalry as well in the Feudal Age. There's zero food in the bank here for Tato, so that means he's stuck in Feudal for quite some time. 45 seconds Ooh. until Hera reaches the Castle Age. Bloodline's coming in, but at the moment it's full cavalry into Pikeman. That's a fight he can't take. In fact, he'll have to look for damage instead of defending. Tato, nice quick pulls there. He could actually use the mule card as part. Oh, he gets a really good hit there, actually. Woodline is safe as well. Like, Hera has two archers. They don't have fletching. He has two archers. He's hitting castleage. He has scouts. Two archers. No fletching. <laughs> he's castleage. He has no castleage upgrades. Sorry, no he has, he's going. He's what age? He's castleage now. And he, he has, has how many archers? Two archers. How, does he have fletching? No! Oh, that sounds disastrous for him in this situation. The pikes are just free roaming around the base, and now they'll loop back around to this wood line to once again look for a fight. I think if Tato realizes that these archers don't have the upgrades, he might dive in and look for the fight, but now perhaps playing more conservatively by retreating back to his base. Yeah, I'm surprised about this, because Hera, uh, Tato definitely has, okay, he's just regrouping, regrouping. Right? and then he will go forward again. Yeah. Now he has enough scouts where he could potentially jump on the archers, right? The archers are slower, so if he jumps on the archers and this pikemen follow later, this this is still a fight Tato can probably win. I mean, like, Hera went light cav against full pikemen. Yeah, light cav, obviously uh, uh, an upgrade that a lot of pros favor nowadays, Ooh. and for good reasons. But this might be the one situation where it's ill-advised because one he's archer, into no, the counter yeah, unit. Yeah. One yeah. archer went down. <laughs> yeah, three archers on the field. But again, with just Fletching and Bodkin on the way, these uh, scouts are happy to play at the front of Hera's base. And we kind of go back to a discussion we had in the first game of the set. While Tato was the one stuck in the feudal age, at the very least, the pressure he's putting on Hera now means that he is not taking any damage back at home and can continue to span, expand his eco and maybe one day make it up to the castle age himself. Indeed. Hera's economy as well. Look, there's a nine villager difference right now. Resources collected is 800 in front for Tata now. Oh, Hera losing a lot of light cap. And Hera has three archers, but he has Botkin. So, better, but still. It's like if, if like Hera, Tato is still making Hera react to everything he's doing, right? Now the, the light cap, the scouts, he's few late. The scouts are running around the base. Hera has to chase. He cannot let those be. Now he those archers. Left the archers alone. They're getting picked off by Feudal Age scouts here. Yes, plenty of The scouts of are upgrades. coming around to oh. pick off the archers, and Hera will have no answer to the, to the spearmen or the pikemen anymore. What a big flank positioning. And, and he's coming towers. forward with villagers as well, looking for a full Feudal Age push here from Tato. He's going to punish the greedy push to the Castle Age and maybe the mismanagement of resources when it comes to those Castle Age upgrades. Here comes the tower now. Does Hera have a response? He has enough stone for a counter tower, and that's what he's going to go for. But I almost wonder if you dive at this with Tato just for the time being, because any Villagers that could garrison into the TC are currently building that tower. I think the damage alone is the fact that he's forcing a tower. Hero is in castle age. He cannot add any town centers. So Tato knows that he will not be falling behind economically as long as he continues to bruise, produce villagers. So this is just a first tower, bait out a counter tower, and then you go for the second tower. I love this too. He doesn't wait for the stone to come in from the stone miners. He buys an extra hunter to keep the initiative, Ooh. keep that pressure rolling forward. And so yes, going for this tower on the wood line, Hera already having to reposition without the ability to quick wall entirely. Tato might have permission to get forward and find some more villagers 
major picks. We have exposed resources on the other side of Hera's base as well. So this is where I would look for Tato to kind of play that seesaw motion once again. And while all this is happening, it feels like Hera realizes I need to get some damage in. And he's looking for a counterattack around the left, but that's Tato's permission to dive under the, under the lumber camp. Hera has to make a big call. Does he come back to defend? Look how many wheels are exposed on the left side. If Tato commits there, actually three archers with great micro, the scouts. Uh, not sure about this. Yeah, one knight looking for some picks on the villagers. Tato's trying to track. The, the pikes are chasing. The archers are throwing in some pot shots. They do have bodkins, so that is very helpful. I'm also taking a look at the uh, southern side. We're about to have some light cav make it to Tato's base, and that could be a turning point if Tato's not aware of it and reacting quickly. But now the scouts loop around looking for damage on that wood line. It's another tower being dropped as well for full control over Hera's base. I think the wood line over at Tato's base is getting hit though as we speak and what's the oh, response he has Pikeman a couple there. pikes there indeed and he's doing that now the tower went up is going to completely take out uh, harrow's woodland he's going for another tower now between the lumber camp and the mill and harris just losing bills left and right score is getting closer somehow but it feels like tato is doing more and more damage yeah, and tato won't let up yes the villagers can dive into houses but they have to build more in order to create a point of safety into your earlier point in this game those are idle villagers regardless so it's damage done to the eco even if they don't die a little bit of a maybe misclick there on the oh, garrison <laughs> and it looks like these uh, scouts are going to get some cleanup kills. We see the villager count sticking around a 10 build difference and about 15 idle at the moment here for Hera. More towers coming up. We've repelled the attack on the other side for Tato. So once again, he's sitting pretty and slowly building up those resources. He will make it to the castle age eventually if the game even needs to extend that long. Indeed, and Hera has to do like a, a tower hop, I almost said, house hop, right? And to make sure he can group up the villagers with his incoming two knights and three archers. But again, Tato could jump on the archers with the scouts and let the pikemen fight the knights. And Hera is doomed to lose a couple of hills here. Yeah, perhaps could even commit to the villager kills. And that seems like enough here for Tato to be satisfied. Now a 15 villager lead Cast using the age. market at this point because that's the damage he needed to find to feel like he can finally commit 800 food and 200 gold to going up. Indeed, Tato still keeping those villagers prison and pr as pr <laughs> another house to hide. <laughs> this, and they are in prison. They're under house yeah, arrest exactly. right now. That's what's happening. But he has to continue doing this every single time a house starts burning. Otherwise, there will be no space for the villagers. Oh, man, this is your existence. You build homes only to watch them burn, build another, and run while you get chased to buy the, what feels like a Mongol horde, but it's the Armenians instead. It looks like uh, Harris. Oh, the bear! The bear! <laughs> is he gonna fight to kill? No. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Harris becomes aware of it, but look at that. We've house hopped our way to mm -hmm. some foraging. There are those knights making their way around to crossbows perhaps as find well. Way back into it. Exactly. Crossbows. That's gonna help with the pikes that he ran into a little bit earlier. But look at this. Now the gold is left relatively undefended. There are two knights there, but two knights is not enough to deal with all the all the pikes that Tato has brought to the party. Indeed. I wonder if Tato has towers at home though, right? Hera seems pretty safer. You can always hide in the houses. Oh yeah, two towers on the woodland. Tower on the farms. He's going to do a tower on the stone as well. Tato is prepared. You love it. That's the heads up play, right? Time and time again, we ask the question about pro players or, you know, what's the most important way to approach the game once you have a lead, right? Mm -hmm, Most mm -hmm. of the time, it's more about thinking about all the ways your opponent can get back into it and guarding against those things, yeah. as opposed to maybe overextending for a killing blow. And so with that in mind, Tato goes ahead and puts up some watchtowers at home for extra safety, has pikes there to deal with the knights, and the crossbows aren't going to find much damage underneath oh, those towers. Oh, you need a towers. mule cart. <laughs> Forward mule cart, too. And you can hide that in the tower as well. The mule cart sitting happily inside tell, the tower. Tell me how a mule cart fits in that tower. I don't want to answer that. Vertically? <laughs> no other choice, right? Have, right, yeah. <laughs> it has to detach from the horse or there from you the go. mule. And then, Gosh, yeah, shove it yeah. in that spiral staircase, yeah. make it fit. All right, it looks like Hera is going to try to boom his way out of this. Mm -hmm. He's already gotten on to a second TC, now reaching for a third. Because he's got this force forward, he's starting to make Tato pay attention to his home economy a little bit more, and that might be enough to allow him back into it. But still, it feels like he's trying to dig himself out of a hole. The fortified church coming up just in time for more defense. Indeed, not only is it defense, Defense, it also is one free relic, because that's the safe bonus. You get the first fortified charge you make, you get a free relic as Tato comes in to take the fight. He's going to clean up this whole army. The crossbows are down. Tato with light cut and plus two armor, cleaning up the whole army. And from this point forward, actually, Hero with a good counter rate on the wooden at the same time. Village account is about to be equalized. However, 
Tatua still collected almost 3,000 or 2,500 more resources and, okay, did notice this in due time. Yeah. But the counter-aggression from Tato after he's cleaning up the aggression from Hera is going to be massive. Solid kills, though, for Hera. Honestly, more than I would have expected, given how much it feels like he is on the back foot in this mm -hmm. one. And uh, that's great to see out of him, the continued fight in this series. Castle has, or, uh, Tato has finally made it to the Castle Age and has dropped the second TC. It's a fourth now at the back here for Hera. So once yeah. again, he feels like it's going to have to be uh, in an elongated game with ultra focus into the economy and beating his opponent late. Tato behind us himself has two town centers, so he will not fall too far behind. However, this is where Hera, like, Hera shines in defense, right? He's so good at minimizing losses and having, like you said earlier, just enough army to defend. He's adding some monks here, he still has seven crossbows, and he is still making knights in defense. Question is, what will Tato do to punish this? And can Tato punish this? Right now, picking up some wheels, delaying the fourth town center, that's a good start. Yeah, as well, he switched that monastery over to a siege workshop. So he's going to prioritize the siege workshop forward before the monastery. And I think that goes directly to your point about punishment. Yep. You're going to go to four TCs. Well, then I'm going to start taking them away from you. And so here we go. The siege workshop is up. We don't have any siege yet in the queue. Hera will respond with a siege workshop of his own, but it looks like there could be a lot of focus here on this left-hand side of the map. It's a very isolated TC for Hera, so I imagine very hard to defend. Indeed, it's cut off not only by the units of Tato, but also the tower line Tato had, right? So for Hera to reinforce this, he has to go, always go all the way around as we see the crossbow coming here. Again, this crossbow will clean up these pikemen, no problem, right? But he did take some losses under the TC. However, Hera is pulling ahead, he has the score lead, he's pulling ahead 12 villagers. Hera, oh, the oh! Mangano. This is the moment. Ooh. There are knights there to clean up. He does dodge at the last moment, still taking some damage from the Manganel in the end, but there are enough knights there to ultimately remove it from the map. Ooh. We've got beautiful raids on the other side, though. Once again, something that Tato does so extraordinarily well. He splits the focus. He pulls units across the map to make sure that he's finding damage, even if he's losing out somewhere else. Indeed, just like Ta uh, Hero did earlier where he was attacking on multiple fronts, Tato returning the favor. Both these players just keep testing each other over and over again. If you slip up once, you're taking a ton of damage. All right, so let's check back in with where we are when it comes to the economies. It is Hera with the villager lead, 75 to 67, but let's remember how much he's had to invest to get to that point. And Tato overall has still collected more resources, which means that since he's not putting them into economy, he can focus them into military units and military upgrades. Great find once again. He used the light cap to pull them away. Then the knights came into the gold, and another knight on the left side. And there was a conversion happening in the middle, so Tato was waiting from the bottom as well. Man, these players are so distracted right now by the action everywhere, especially Hera, because he's on the defensive foot right now. And Viper, not 20 seconds ago, I said, look at the eco lead that Hera mm -hmm. has for himself. And after mm -hmm. those couple of raids, it's equalized yet again, 74 apiece, and also a slight military advantage here for Tato. I say slight, and in all honesty, the power of Tato's military being primarily knights at this point there's yeah. a lot of value. I mean, the amount of idle time Hera has had, right, sitting inside houses and uh, working his way towards the town centers has been immense. And Tato as well. Armenians have a bonus where their, their technology is from the mule cart. So in oh, Castle, by the way, they are more efficient. But yeah, Castle coming up from Hera now. Maybe do we see Ballista Can he get this elephants? up, though? He's going to lose the knight battle. He does have cro has crossbows coming out, but these are plus two knights. Luckily, there are no villagers here already, because if the villagers were already starting there, they would not want to stay there. But eh, Hera has a healthy amount of army there as well. Yeah. So maybe Maybe the castle will go up. And getting a castle in the center gives you a lot of control in terms of dictating fights. The opponent can't really push through the middle anymore, so he can only fight from the sides, while you yourself can go through the middle. Yeah. And with the Ballista Elephant, you can cut the forest anywhere. Ooh, that could be tricky. That's something we'll have to track as the game oh, rolls he commits. on. He commits. Ooh, this is big. This is a big moment here in this game. Could be a turning point for either player. It looks like Tato doesn't feel like he has the forces to contest this, and so is going to back off while he continues the raids in the back of Harris base. Pull Pulling him off of Golden Stone, but that's the importance of that castle in the middle. It will secure a lot of those resources in the long term. Indeed, and uh, raids, again, making sure that Tato does not fall too far behind in the village account, because he's still got one town center less. I'm still surprised that Tato is not committing on like a ram push on the left side, right, because of that isolated town center you talked about. There's probably 15, 20 villas there at this point, so the damage there could be immense, as we see Tato also doing devotion here. 
Yeah, Devotion to deal with the Monks that he's now seen come out onto the field. It's four there with two more in the queue for Hera. He's also investing into uh, Wheelbarrow as Wheelbarrow comes in for Hera. So it's like they're sharing a brain, but both of them realizing that perhaps this game won't end as quickly as they thought, mm -hmm. and they need to invest more into the Eagle upgrades and set themselves up for the long term. Yet another TC coming down in the middle here for added protection. Oh, you know what? Oh, let's go. Hero drops the castle in the middle. Tata realizes, okay, no chance Hero has enough stone for another castle, right? The damage, the raiding I've been doing, there is no way. What does Tata do? Sending all the wills around to drop a castle in between two town centers of Hera. They're taking a big fight in the middle. This is still a good trade for Tato. All the crossbows are gone. Maybe got one or two conversions, but Hera cannot do any damage through the middle. Exactly. Well, you maybe lose one or two knights' lives. Not much more damage is going to follow that. And at the end of the day, he's buying himself time to rotate around the right side of the map. He hasn't touched Damn. the right side of the map. Oh, teleport! Whoop. We love those. Yeah. Her Tato is coming in a time and time again on the top side, right? Hera keeps going back to that gold. Tato keeps coming back all the time. And now we see the castle on the right side. Is it in reach of both? Ah, it's still the farms are blocking, but that's a still a deadly castle. That's 10 farms of Hera and two TCs essentially eliminated and a woodline. I love that he brought the meal cart with him. Well, he has, they have to work after exactly, building, right? Exactly. exactly. No We're not going to build a new one, just we're going to travel the map. Oh, Hera's pulling build wheels to find no this. No way. <laughs> I don't know if this is enough, but he's oh, going to make the it's attempt. It's not enough, I oh, tell you that much. no, and these knights are going to swoop in and feast on the lives of these villagers. The castle's going up regardless, and this might be the desperation play here from Hera, realizing that if he loses the access to this side of his economy, that's a lot of farms. It's another gold position that he d won't be able to use, and Tato might have the perfect point with which to launch an attack and building a siege work workshop immediately behind. Hera's answer, let's add more town centers in the middle, where it's safe, right? It's not actually that safe, though. The castle is only in Hera's entrance, right? So Tato can still enter the base and attack. And like He has chopped through on the left side as well. Mm -hmm. So there's still angles for Tato to enter the middle. But of course, now with the castle here, it's essentially a launching pad where he can go in from the right side whenever he wants to. And Hera has to always have units or or an answer ready in just in case Tato comes in. Yeah, Harris' resources are starting to creep up towards Imperial Age resources. Khmer, man. Yeah, it's Khmer. But at the same time, I, I wonder if you'd even want to make that click because it seems like the moment you do is the permission that Tato needs to completely overwhelm you with night numbers. It's just a matter of whether or not Tato recognizes that his opponent would take that risk of going yeah. to the Imperial Age. Indeed, and again, Knights coming in on top side. I'm out of villages that have gone out here and never returned to their families once again. I don't have the count there. But yeah, Hera, he has the resources for Imperial Age. They will surely catch... Oh, Tato is on the I was going to say, hilariously, it's Tato. He, I swear he was on 100 food a moment ago. Uh, I don't think he even used to mark. Maybe just cancel production, right? I That's probably what it yeah. was. Exactly. Yeah. He has a very healthy economy as well. I mean, they have the same village <laughs> account. After all of this, I can't believe Eco it. KD, 52 to 14. And what? they have the same village account. I, I don't know, man. It's incredible because I feel like you always st you tell people, like, no, 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 you can't just boom your way out of everything. Yeah, and yeah. Hera's trying to disprove Ooh. the rule, but here comes a castle position to punish Hera for reaching out into the center of the map. Doesn't look like he has a way to prevent it from going up, and so instead he'll abandon the TC position and retreat somewhere else. Indeed, and Hera, he has now put a lot of villagers on stone. He realizes, okay, he's going to need more castles to combat this, right? Having one castle in the middle is nice, but again, like, what does it actually defend? One gold, one stone. That's the MTC. Is it MTC? Is that the MTC? <gasps> Volka. Volka, sure. check that. Oh That's the MTC. 50% with the castle going up. I, I would struggle to believe that he'll send the knights at it, but if he does, he might be able to prevent him from coming in. It's still a minute and 30 seconds to go. I mean, huh. the castle fire itself. He's just going to mine gold there. Just mine in front of the tail. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Ooh, big we'll track that there. to see if it's going to make a difference in the end while Hera has a giant force of knights in the back to finally Ooh. clean up his eco and shove Tato away. Does not even pick off the monks. That's a very good trade for Hera. Maybe that's the beginning of the stabilizer for Hera. Hera dropping and rushing a market now as well. He's missing a little bit of stone for a second castle, but this is a massive find. There's so many villages here. I can only imagine the giant gulp uh, that, uh, <laughs> that uh, Hera took when he saw that castle go up right on top of his MTC, but it might not even come close to the pit in his stomach as he watches all of these villagers fall in the center of the map. And so while he will make it to the Imperial Age just behind Tato, his villager numbers are dropping. It's more about the military, though, at this point, as it's 47 on the side of Tato to 23 over here for Hera. It's a bloodbath, and you know what? That equalizes the villager count. 
Once again. <laughs> Once 70 again. villagers killed by Tato, and they still have the same villagers. Hera is a boomer. Everyone calls Tato the boomer. Hera is the boomer here. I mean, it's incredible that he can do this in the face of all of the pressure. But once again, he is still the one who is in a comeback position, mm -hmm. right? And so this is how he thinks he's going to do it, by bringing the knights Ooh. in. Ooh, getting a quick Looks look like we had some... at some of the quick walls here to trap Tato's knights in and begin to get some of those trades, as well as a ton of conversions. Look at this beautiful replay. Yeah, that's decent. Just <laughs> decent? <laughs> Acceptable. Just decent? Okay, that's sad. Uh, we'd yeah. love to see it. Hera going for the counterattack here. Again, suddenly Hera said 10 villager lead. 10 villagers advantage. Cavalier on the way, chemistry on the way. I'm not sure what chemistry, I guess it's hand cannoners? I guess. Because you don't get bomber cannons, the only logical thing I see here is hand cannoners that a lot of people forget, actually. And a that's slight boost to your trips. Indeed. People <laughs> the forget slightest that. of boosts. Yeah. <laughs> one more attack, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Massive. 200 plus one. <laughs> yeah. uh, but here we have it, trebs on both sides. And so we're going to begin to see a lot of focus towards the center of the map because that's where the majority of the gold and the Finally. stone is. But look at this raiding that Tato has decided to pull off with halberdiers and knights around the left side of the map. Villagers on the run here for Hera as they have been all Ooh. game long. 66 military on the field for Tato. Despite the amount of knights and cavalry we have seen from Hera, he's just now getting scale barding armor. The second armor upgrade from the castle. So the fact that he's been running on the T's is now even now. He has taken a lot of extra damage to the tower fire. That's a really good point because it is Bodkin on the other side for Tato. We also have capped rams. That's going to make the push that much easier. We see a defensive castle going up in the north there for Hera to try and secure some of his eco and maybe keep the farms alive in the end. Tato skirting away with the villagers <laughs> as the oh, cavalier oh. look for the kills, but I don't think Hera is focusing on that right now as he's more concerned with all the army that's about to flood into his base. We see blinking castles all over the map, though, and two of them primarily being Tato's. The question is which which ones will go down first in the end? Cavalier now pushing back the Knights and the Halberdiers here from Tato. Tato's forward position will be oh, removed in the end. Halberdiers looking for some good trades There's into the low very low health cav. This is going to be one hit per Ooh. and a few more Halberdier to reinforce. This is a very costly battle for Crazy. Hera, even if in the end he does clean it up and he won't at that. Crazy cost efficient trade for Tato. At the same time, he's bringing the army from the left side into the middle because he just walks through Hera's base into the fight. And Hera, uh, Tato as well went for Cavalier which will be the counter to the Hankerners, and it looks like Tato is edging closer and closer to a win here as Hera has to abandon the middle completely now. Hera did fight back, on, back in his base, but at the same time, he's losing his whole presence in the middle. Exactly. He saves himself on the right-hand side, but uh, to the detriment of the center of the map. Yes, he has two trebuchets with one more popping out, but it's only one here on the front lines and no defense for that trebuchet as these other ones roll forward and villagers are streaming out. They're going to soon be the target of all this military here for Tato. Tato rolls Rolling forward with trebuchets of his own, soon to take out this castle position. Plenty of villagers exposed here for Hera. This will be his final stand. It feels like he has to keep control of some of this central position in order to have some long-term prospects in this game. With all that said, Hera keeps his castle alive for now. There are three traps. If he can start getting the trades off there, maybe he can still survive. He did amazing micro there to make sure he didn't lose his whole army. And Hera has no, uh, Tato has no army here to take out the traps right now. Oh, actually, saying that he loses the trap. Yeah. However, if this castle goes down, it feels like Hera's hopes also disappear. Yeah, both players losing a treb. So it's three here for Tato, two for Hera. We got Cavalier making quick work of one of them. Only one more to go here for Hera. Hera losing the castle position, retreats just a little bit to try and find another castle position. He feels like he must hold on to some part of the center of the map in order to have a chance in this game, but his final trebuchet will go down here. The villagers are going to get this castle up, but it might just become an easy next target for Tato. Indeed. Behind this also, Tato picked up four relics while all of this was going on, so he has a massive advantage long term as well. Not a castle for Tato as well. He wants to just make the castles be close enough to each other. The trebs take the fight from behind the castles, and yeah, Hero just... And despite this, the population difference isn't still that big. Hera now could pick off the traps. The traps are not protected. I he respect does for them. I respect the fight out of Hera. The big concern is that food number. Only nine yeah. on food, 200 in the bank. That is so uncharacteristic of the Khmer in the oh. late game and the way that Hera wants to play it. He is going to take out all the trebuchets here from Tato and so buys himself just a little bit more time to maybe boom back into it. We saw him dropping TCs at home around farming economies to try and get that food income back up. He is the Khmer. There, mm. Fudi was nothing to be trifled with, and he continues to drop castle positions to hold on in this game. 
Indeed, he's doing another cast on the right side. Tato does get on top of it, though. It's going to be a lot of dead bills here for, for Hera. Hera, only 22 mil to use, though. Tato has more than double the army, and that's what's making it hard for Hera to hold right now. The overall KD is near even in this game, but the eco KD, 123 to 36. The number of villagers that Hera has had to pump out just to keep himself even in this game. We do see hand cannoneers finally out onto the field, and that will be a good answer to the halberdiers that are the counter to his cavalier for the time being, but ultimately it is still double the military numbers here for Tato and Foley in the driver's seat. Indeed, Hera doing a little bit of a house wall in front of the trebuchet as well, trying to keep it safe as things finally kind of calm down a little bit. They're not like fighting, they've been fighting non-stop for the last 30-40 minutes of the game. They've been fighting non-stop, we've been talking non-stop because the action has been so incredible in this series and in this game. More trebuchets coming forward though means that the action is about to kick back up. We've got repairs coming in for Tato on his castle with two trebuchets trying to make quick work of it. There you have a villager being the hero to that mill against the capped ram. Two trebuchets onto the field for Tato as well to target the castle position of Hera. Once again, we're in a siege position. It's about who can protect theirs, and I love the house walls by Hera at the very least to maximize his options. Indeed, but the numbers for Tato are scary here. We have 30 Cavaliers, 30 Halberdiers diving in. Hera has half of that army, and the Cavaliers get a great surround on the Hankoners to kick off this fight for Tato. Yeah, it's looking like the numbers might be overwhelming, and Hera G agrees as G he calls the GG, and Tato will move to 2-1. What an incredible game, right? We This game had everything, dude. Ooh. We had a guy playing Cast Lich while being in Feud Lich with Pikeman. Forward Tower Rush, like prolonged Feud Lich, Tower Rush. Hero just trying to stay alive. I mean, how many people would not survive that Feud Lich push from Taro? Yeah, I don't know if Vodka has already jumped out of Capture Age, but this would be one of those moments where I would be curious to see the, the amount of time Mm -hmm. that Hera was in Castle Age, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and Tato was still in yeah. feudal. Like, what was the length, what was the duration of that time that Tato had to keep his foot on the gas, keep the focus on Hera's side of the map before he could finally make it up to match him age for age? Indeed. This is one of those games where it's just, like, massive credit to both players, right? Incredibly, uh, incredible aggression from Tato, forcing Hera's hand nonstop, and Hera to be able to survive that long with that amount of pressure. And like, we looked at this situation and it was like, oh, Hera is dead, like, on seven different times, right? Right. But he survived at the Town Center, suddenly village account, Hera was ahead, but Tato again with the transition to Castle Age was able to continue his initiative and harassing from everywhere and in the end just slowly whittle Hera down. And Hera, like one of the guys that survive and has the best stamina in the game, like he is known for his uh, like enormously powerful defense, right? Where it's so hard to break down. And we saw how long Tato had to work on him before he yeah. was broken down. Incredible resilience out of both of these players, but in particular Hera, even though he does fall in the end, uh, I think uh, very deservedly so. The players are going to take their allotted yes. five-minute break, or optional five-minute break, I should say, after game three of a series, which gives us a moment to take a deep breath. Everybody compose yourselves, because it's not over yet. Tato has two opportunities to put a third win up, take the set, mm -hmm. and become the sole holder of first place in the Swiss stage and remain undefeated. For Hera, he's going to have to put two together back to back, which means he'll have to do it on his own home map, a desert void, and his opponent's home map of arena. He will have the option of where to go first. And this is where we return to that discussion and where I now lean a bit more towards go to arena Mm -hmm. and on Desert Void if you're right. lucky enough to take the win. Because if you lose Arena, at least you didn't show your plan for Desert Void. Exactly. And we also know Hera, no slouch on Arena. In fact, he won NAC4 with his final game on Arena. It was a different version of Arena, and we had Burgundian's Flemish Revolution back Very then. Very true. So it is a bit different, but still. <laughs> this Arena version usually spawn a little bit closer, so it allows for a little bit more clowning, if you will. Um, but yeah, we see Tato having Burgundians. Very likely, as Hera walks by, Tato's going to use Burmese there. <laughs> Double dog no, secret agent Viper over here. I'd be down. I'm down for some clownery. Um, I feel like at this stage, it's very unlikely that we see yeah. clownery because it's too risky, right? However, I think, uh, yeah, Burgundian is super safe pick on Arena. They can do it all. Uh, I don't remember what sieves Hera has there. Well, we can have, well, first points? of all, we get a wave from Dave. Oh. Love that. Always Hi. happy when Dave acknowledges my presence. Thank you very much, my friend. Uh, but I do believe production can hit us with those sieves remaining for each player. Again, two maps, three sieves apiece, and we can do some waxing and waning on which sieves we might think will come out if we are to go to Arena. So let's just assume Arena for now. What are you thinking? Because Burgundians is obviously, I think, my first inclination, but we've also seen Pole's economy come into great play on closed mm -hmm. maps. Uh, on the other side, Georgians? 
just so it's that you can get to Manaspa and overwhelm late. But does Manaspa work against Burgundians? You'll be, be behind an, you'll be behind an economy. Mm -hmm. Burgundians have tools in terms of halberdiers. They have hand cannons with extra damage. I feel like Burgundians have every answer in the world to Georgians, right? Okay, so then so what else do you go? I mean, Aztecs is a very common arena civ for the last 10 years. Uh -huh. They have fallen off a bit. I was going to say underwhelming in this tournament even. Indeed. However, Hera beat Jordan yesterday with Aztecs that is true. on arena. That is true. So... I Ooh. feel like we're probably heading towards that. And we have Georgians for Desert Void, where you can use the mobility of the cavalry healing up as well. Okay. So, yeah, it feels like we're going to enter a Burgundians against Aztecs match. And I would say normally Burgundians should be favored there. All right, yeah, so maybe Harris showing a bit of his hand yesterday with the Aztecs pick. Uh, but ultimately, you're going to play the best Civ available yeah, yeah. to you on the map, right? I mean, you don't want to just, like throw a curveball for the sake of throwing a curveball if it doesn't get you any kind of advantage. Exactly. But, I mean, we're talking only arena here, right? There's a big chance here it goes Desert Void, in which case we probably have... Actually, Tato has two options there, Burmese or Pulse. Both are valid options. I, he could even play Pulse on Arena if he wanted to, right? I was going to say, we saw Poles on Desert Void into Slavs. Didn't work out very yeah. well because ultimately but Slav economy... It, well, <laughs> good. Fair point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ah! Your trap card. Um, no, I mean, so yeah, obviously uh, Poles is still very uh, possible on that map. Like you say, Burmese have mm -hmm. plenty of options. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm with you. Now you've convinced me. If we go to Arena, it most likely will be Aztecs into Burgundians. I would assume uh, Georgians into Poles if we go to Desert Void. If we go Desert Void and Tato goes Burmese, like Hera will play Georgians or Persians, right? We are committed on that, I right? think we agree there. Yeah. Cavalry units, right? Mm -hmm. You know what's a great counter to cavalry units? A lot of halberdier. And as well, yeah, that's also? Monks. As well. Oh, <laughs> there's one more. Keep going. I feel, I Keep feel going. like this is a trick question now. I <laughs> no, they have a unique unit that is amazing in mass against cavalry units. Ah, a rambai. A rambai. Ooh. Yeah. A rambai. If you get five, yeah, camels. Six. I mean, come on. Ca I, I think you set me up for failure. Twitch now. chat is a whole different beast. Man. That is true. But I'm just like, yeah. there's a lot of answers to that question there, my bird. True. Burmese, Burmese have a lot of counters to cavalry. I'll give you that. How, I mean, actually, they have cheaper monk techs as well. Right. Halberdiers. Uh, you know, all your answers were also correct. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I can imagine Burmese going into a rambo, right? Once you have like five, six rambo and hit and run those cavalry units, they don't have any answer anymore. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. So actually then, I, I guess based on our discussion, it feels like Tattoo is very set up in the Civ department mm -hmm. with answers to what is remaining here from Hera. But as we know, it can Ooh. all come down to the play in-game. It will be that reach for Arena, uh, Tattoo's home map, as Hera needs to put two together back-to-back. -to -back. And Hera is going for the Aztecs in the red. Tattoo going for the comfort pick, the very, very popular pick of Burgundians in the blue. Yeah, I think Burgundian is one of the best win rates on Arena in general, right? O of course, like I said earlier, this is a different version of Arena. However, we see that the spawn is a bit further away, right? And right. That, that is advantage Burgundians. Um, how Tata's going to approach this, though, is, like normally you see Burgundians just play like into stable, light cap opening, make sure you have presence on the map so the forward cannot happen, right? But Aztecs, we saw Hera play double monastery in the middle of the map, aggression, right? Fast impact after everything. So question is more like, how does Hera want to play this, right? I think Tato is just going to go for that full adaptive approach. You get good economy set up, and then you adapt to what's happening. However, Hera is probably the one who has to force the issue because he has probably the worst Civ in Imperial Age. I was going to say, well, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Like, if you assume Burgundians is going to invest into those eco upgrades, uh, you know, an age earlier, mm -hmm. you should be able to make it to Castle Age and ideally fight for control of nearly all five relics, take yeah. advantage of the Aztec relic bonus as well. We'll take a look at that real quick, the advantage that Aztecs will give to Hera in the long run. 33% more uh, generation of gold from relics. Of course, they start with 50 more gold on top of that. Villagers carrying plus three extra resources is something that I think is a sneakily huge eco bonus. Again, for, for newer players, they might go, well, what's the value of that? They yeah. just go back a little bit less often, but mm -hmm. it really does add up as the game goes on. To emphasize how important it is, back in the day, they used to carry five extra. And that was so powerful that it got nerfed, right? That says everything. Monks gaining 5 HP for every resource monastery as well is something that adds up in the late game. And in an arena battle where plenty of monks will be created will net a big advantage for Hera. But over on the other side, Tato on the Burgundians, like we talked about, economically near unmatched because they get all of their upgrades or rather have them available an entire age earlier. They still mm -hmm. have to invest in them, but 
they're 33 less expensive when it comes to the food. On the food, indeed. And then on top of that, like just how the bonuses of the Civ synergize on Arena, you have stable technologies, 50% cheaper. You always want to get light cab, you always want to get husbandry. And when that comes in cheaper and you save that food, that also translates into, oh, I can spend more food on villagers. It's easy to get the villager production going. And then you see long term, gunpowder units gain 25% attack. That's also hand cannons and bombard cannons. Two very common units on Arena as well. Then you can also go Cavalier in the Castle Age if you want to play a big Castle Age. Or you can have Cavalier research upon reaching Imperial Age so you can do instant Paladin. So you don't have to go through that extra step. And on top of that... I was going to say, literally every single bonus <laughs> of this Civ plays perfectly into Arena, with yeah. the very final one being that relics generate both gold and food. So perhaps a fight for the relics, while I would still expect Aztecs to have the advantage there in the overall relic war. And there's one more thing as well. The farmers also generate gold, so long term you're well set off for Imperial Age fights as well, even if you don't have a relic advantage, right? And then of course, in the most desperate situation, the way we saw NAC 4-1 was Flemish Revolution, albeit it's very nerfed now compared to how strong it was back then, but in a desperate situation, we might sti still see it happen. All right, we'll check back in with the game now that we have the sieves understood. Feudal Age on the way for Hera already. That makes sense. Again, like we talked about, we have the investment into the eco upgrades from Tato in double bit axe and horse collar. That means he's delayed to the Feudal Age. Indeed, but Hera going for a really fast Feudal Age. This is uh, for Arena. This is usually if you either want to go three pieces boom or if you want to sell your stone really fast Castle Age, get monasteries on the field, start picking up those relics. And I feel like it is the latter. Can I just say, I remember back in like 2017 when I reunited with uh, Age of Empires mm -hmm. on uh, on Twitch. People were playing on Voobly. I remember the whole like 26, 27 fill up. Now, 22 right, right. and we're going Castle Age? Like Dude. what happened? The, I mean, just the level of play has increased by an infinite degree, it feels like. Yeah, give it another three years, and we're doing like 14 population <laughs> castle age. I mean, uh, now we should recognize these are nine vil starts, so yeah. it does change things just a little bit. It isn't necessarily one to one to the three vil starts, mm -hmm. but even still, how different the landscape of this game is nowadays than it was back then. Hare going for the immediate blacksmith plus market in order to get himself up to the castle age. Tato just now making his way to feudal. And we see with the Burgundians economy bonuses available earlier. We can already take a look at the res resources collected. Tato is already over 200 ahead. And I mean, it adds up, right? Of course, Hera went to the feudal age uh, earlier, so he has had two less villagers working for a mm -hmm. while. But still, that's already a significant amount oh, in such that, a short time frame. That will only climb as the uh, as the game rolls on and more eco upgrades come in, and Tato is allowed to work away. 33 seconds until he makes it to feudal, but Hera's already on the way to the castle age. We expect as time rolls on that he'll look for monastery positions. I think the big question is: Does he bother to bring them outside his walls, or does he feel like? with the advantage of time that he has, that he can place his monasteries more safely and protect the relics. Yeah, I mean, considering the fact that Tato just now hit Feudal Age, right, there's no chance there's going to be scouts on the field, right? Also, you don't really start scout production either until you have clicked Castle Age, so there's a time frame in Feudal Age as well where it will take a while until scouts come out on the map. So I, I still think Harold will go out on the map. Oh, this could be huge. If Tato finds the eagle here... <gasps> He doesn't even know it's there, but Hera knows. Hera's trying to avoid it. <gasps> he oh. sees it. This is massive. He gets it. And yeah, he has that Feudal Age upgrade. And so, what? what? Just ha passing. Well, that, okay. Well, I mean, he's to their own. Jeez. Viper making a big deal out of nothing. Well, How could you, man? <laughs> so, Come on, Yeah, that bro. was so underwhelming. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> like, if, cleaning up one eagle would make it so much more difficult for Hera to move out on the map to do a monastery, right? Yeah. But yeah, it looks like Hera doing a barracks anyway, so he will mix in probably a spearman or two. And we see Hera. I mean, look at his food. He has seven on food. Most of those are berry carriers. So he will definitely go for the monk rush at the moment. Looks like he will do the monastery safely inside, though. Yeah, heavy on gold, had sold the stone. Thank you for pointing that out, Valenka, just so everyone's aware. You can't jump immediately to three TCs unless you buy that back or mine. Oh, he's going outside, actually. But Spearman, and I like this. He's playing ultra safe, right? You are on match point for your opponent. You don't want to take any unnecessary risks. Loom coming in as well. He would have walked out with unloomed villagers, mm -hmm. at oh. least initially, and even still is unloomed at this point. But I think with that Spearman there should ultimately be okay unless the micro is on point for Tato. Good damage, but won't find a kill. It is going to be those central monasteries. Oh. We'll expect a second one to come up any moment now, but another scout onto the field as Loom comes oh. in. A Tato good pick by that spearman there for Hera. 
Yeah, Tato got greedy there. He thought probably, maybe he thought the Hera still didn't have Loom, right? So he tried to make the dive in from both sides. That was a bit of a mistake from Tato here, but Hera will be happy about that. However, Tato, again, he has set up for this, right? He knows exactly what's happening, so he can now adapt. Like, he can delay a second and third town center. He can just go Monastery, maybe Atonement defense, right? He can continue making scouts and going Lightcap, which he definitely will. And now it's up to, like, like Hera, by the way. Hera didn't go, this is not a complete all-in, right? It looks like it, but Hera behind this did Boso upgrade, which is an economic tech. Mm -hmm. He also did gold mining. So he's not like he's not ignoring eco upgrades completely, right? I could see a world where he gets all five relics and eventually maybe falls back as a town center or considers like Imperial Age. Yeah, at the very least, it should end up with the majority of the relics. We have Castle Age just coming in now for Tato. It's a very understandable light cav upgrade that will come in first. Squires on the other side just to make it so those spearmen can close the gap a little bit more as they lose the mobility battle in the long run. Sanctity as well. Let those monk techs come rolling in. The HP will climb on top of the HP that the tech gives him itself. Let's see, though, how the Monk Micro is as the Light Cav are looking for snipes. Here's the attempted conversion. Tato will back off. And Hera is so good at escorting monks, it feels like, to safety and picking up these relics. But that will be the tale of this middle game as Tato converts into the 3TC boom back at home. Exactly, so he's looking for a very strong economy behind this while just keeping presence, trying to deny relics. He's doing a nice split here, trying to jump on the mark, and he just needs to hit. Oh, great maneuvering by Tato there. Oh, the light cap path a little bit weirder, but yeah. Tato gets out of there, picking off the monk. Really nicely done. As Harris trying to quick wall. Huh? Spearman, though. Uh, you got to be careful with these spearmen. Yep, yeah. exactly. So uh, Tato won't find a villager kill, but does find a monk pick without losing the lives of any of those light cav in the middle and even patrolling on other relic locations already hyper aware of the Aztec focus on picking these all important relics up. Indeed, and Tato behind this did not add a monastery. Oh, he did add a monastery himself. So he also wants to try and get some relics. Again, he gets food as well on top of the gold with the relics. So it is a very nice one. But right now he's just using the monk to heal the wounded light cap, just so the light cap can then again enter the battlefield and try to look for those monks. I think it was your first Burgundian games on Fortified Clearing. Mm, uh, yeah. where you did play Burgundians into his standees. Yeah. I think by the end of the game, your relics had brought in about 10k total resources. Wow. It was something ridiculous like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, obviously a lot of relics on Fortified Clearing to pick up with them being mm -hmm. in the center and on the outsides, but exactly, very valuable thing for the Burgundians to focus as much as it is for the Aztecs as well. Hera going to push those light calf back as he's now got three monks, four monks rather, out onto the field and is just now picking up his first to... Br or no, he got one home. I'm sorry, he yeah. got the middle one home earlier. Now looking for a second, and Tato moving out for his first on the right-hand side. Looks like in the end it's going to be three relics for Hera in the middle of the map, and Tato's going to be able to grab two. Oh, actually, maybe three even for Tato, because he's also guarding the one right next to Hera's base. And Tato does have the mobility advantage with the light cab, so he can always try to, like poke and check if Hera is going for that one and try to make a dive. But Hera now has committed. He's doing a seed workshop, which means that economy, uh, adding talent centers, is probably out of the question now. Even a second mining camp on the gold. So this is... I made a mistake earlier when I said it was not all in. <laughs> this is all in. Yeah, it's a ram being produced first, and that's how you know that it's definitely all in. He wants to get through the walls as quickly as possible, and a ram is the best way to do that. And I said I wanted some clownery. Oh, you're so getting clownery. Clownery is what we're going oh. to get here. Yeah, this is going to be very, like, this is such a tricky spot to play as well. I think if you're Tatterer, you also want to make sure you get Devotion. Because, again, Hera's all in on the Monk play, right? Those Monks, I'm not sure how much HP we have already. Because they certainly have some upgrades. 50 HP already. Now, a Light Cav have, has 7 attack and some bonus damage, which I'm sure we can see right now. It's 10 bonus damage. Wow. So they do 15. They need 4 hits now to kill a Monk of the Aztecs. All right, 4 hits. It's still a fair number. Of course, you can do four, you know, one hit from four different light cav, and that will mm -hmm. put a focus on the numbers that Tato has. Nine on the field, one more in the queue. There's the devotion that you asked for. And so good on Tato to have the recognition that he's likely facing an all-in as soon as that ram hits his walls, and he needs to mount a defense. It's times like these, myself, as a lower-level player, I'm wondering, do you just, like, st I mean, he clearly isn't. Do you just stop investing in villagers at this point? Have a villager lead and go full into military defense? Or why doesn't that happen more often? It's because it's hard. Like, he doesn't know for sure what Hera's doing. Obviously, he looks at the score now. Hera's just clicked to Imperial Age. So now he knows for sure. Okay, Hera is all in. By the way, I did a mismath earlier. It is three hits still. Gotcha. Just 7 plus 10 is 17 times 3 is 51, you know? So Look at you. There you go. Yeah. Quick maths. Never do math on screen. I know, I made a mistake. That's what they say. Uh, but yeah, Tato, again, just circling around with the scouts, looking to see if any monks come astray like by themselves, popping out of the monastery, for example. But yeah, two to two relics. So the right one, did Tato snag the right one? 
I feel like his move. Oh, he went and what? snagged the one from the further away. That's the stealthiest monk I've ever seen in my yeah. life. Look at him go. Look to wall delete, though. For Tato, he thinks maybe he's found his moment to dive in on he's the monks. Fully diving. That's a little peculiar. Multiple conversions come through. We do have Spearman, oh. but even four more reinforcements coming around in the flanking position. And Tato looks like he's going to prove me a liar in saying that it's an ill advised fight as he cleans this wow. up. And as quickly as the all in started, it may have been stopped. Indeed. Hera wanted to fall back. He wanted to wait for Imperial Age so he could get more Imperial Age techs. Tato seizes the opportunity. He had built up a healthy amount of light cap. He came from behind as well with four light cap and just cleaned up the whole aggression of Hera. And now Tato is looking in a very comfortable spot, even ready to drop, to drop a castle if he wants to. I'm putting you in the shoes of Hera now. Obviously, it's not a position you want to be in. But what are you thinking? What's your source of recourse? You are on the way to the Imperial Age, but you're stuck on one TC for the time being and 30 villagers down. Honestly, I'm probably resigning here, to be completely honest. <laughs> but uh, Hera is a fighter, right? He's going to stick it. Uh, Tato's coming forward with a castle. Now, this might be a slight mistake. He does have a massive equal lead, but he also knows that Hera is on the way to Imperial Age. Now, Hera is taking stone behind this, so it's likely that Hera will drop his own castle. Okay, Tato does a safe castle Ooh. in the middle. That's perfect. Exactly what he wants. This means that Tato is going to come out of this with a massive equal lead and five relics. Yeah, it's the castle just to threaten the military buildings and the relics there of Hera. Not going to go so far as to look for the ultra forward castle position and possibly throw the game away in a treb battle. Forging coming in. Pikes on the field here for Hera. He is going to look for a castle position and at least we'll have something to target. But that's going to be where all, where he rests all his hopes and dreams. Yeah, this is a exact correct decision by Hera. As Tato clicks in, but Hera needs to like force the issue somehow, right? And the only way he can make progress now is if that castle from Tato is not there. And how can he make that happen? by placing his own castle within range so he can start trebbing down the castle of Tato while the ca his own castle defends his own trebuchet. I also love how quickly Tato put the focus onto the monasteries against the Aztec player, right? Yeah, it's yeah. not just the castle, it's the light cav attacking, it's a ram produced to make sure that those relics are ejected and you stop the gold income and possibly take it all for yourself. Good conversions there by Hera might allow him to take this ram out. No, he'll retreat instead, but we do have a treb in the queue. Once again, with block printing and trebuchet, Let's not forget that Monks plus Siege can still be a deadly force. Yeah, for sure. But Tato is only two minutes away from Imperial Age, right? With the, he has 34 more Vils. Resources collected already 3,500 more. And again, remember, Tato has five relics now. They're going to bring in gold and food. So Hera, need, Hera, Hera is on a timer, like to put it easy, right? He needs to make something happen soon that makes Tato unable to recover. But the question is, how can he do that? Yeah, I mean, it's a centralized push really relying on Tato to make a mistake, right? But you want to put him in the best position to make that mistake, right? Exactly. I, that's really it. Now you're looking for ways to win, ways to get in. It's fortified wall even for Tato, playing ultra safe to make sure that he can secure this victory and close the series out in 3-1 fashion. Masonry as well. Look at the priority of the techs here for Tato. Yes, he's still in the Castle Age, but he's Burgundians. He could focus any Imperial Age tech, and it's the defensive ones. Indeed. He just needs to buy his time to get to the point where he can produce those units that make sure that Hera cannot make any progress, right? He's Dropping archery ranges, that could be either for skirmishers or hand cannoners, although I have not seen any fletching coming in, so probably it's going to now try to rush to chemistry and then do some hand cannoners. Yeah, getting those villagers on to repairing that castle early to buy himself as much time as possible. Tato just now reaching the Imperial Age, clicks chemistry then. That's fine. Again, could have had it before, but that's nitpicking at this point because look at how clean those resources look at the top of your screen there for Tato while they're nearly non-existent over there for Hera. Once again, three trebuchets and a bunch of monks is about all Hera has to make this happen. He's working on one TC Eco, and he's not really certain what Tato has oh. in the works behind. That's one of the most important things. Look what Tato has made. Two petards. He has 15 light cap. You know what Hera does not have? Defense at home. If those petards, are they sneaking on the right side? I see something blue all the way. Around. Okay, that's just like Cav. Just like Cav. Two petards sneak in on the right side, open the walls, and he just runs in. Hera's 48 villagers can only hide in one town center. And There's the petard. Oh, there we go. So you had the right idea. Yeah. You were just ahead oh. of the play. Her Tato is also doing faith. Not as expensive anymore because there's a devotion prerequisite now. But faith means that you convert, on average, I think two seconds longer. So that's also a big counterplay to the monks of Hera. Hera also has the pikemen, of course. But yeah, 
Tato's just going for the counterattack. The fortified walls are going to buy him a lot of time as yep. Hera pushes forward in the middle. And then that means Hera has no defense at home. Tato sacks the castle position. That's a small victory for Hera, but you have to imagine Hera's racking his brain right now. What does my opponent have in the works? Mm. I haven't seen any military uh, buildings. I haven't seen his military in some time. Villager coming out now actually might give him the warning that he needs to see these petards coming in. Tato with a ton of light cab and the petards hitting that gate means it will oh. fall and the light cab can <laughs> stream into the base. A small delay. They think better of it. A uh, loop-de-loop -loop before we <laughs> dive in. And those 52 villagers of Hera back at home are under threat. And so it feels like it's an all-or-nothing push up the gut here for Hera against the raiding possibility and the defense that Tato can mount. Tato also rushing his own defensive castle now behind this town center. A little bit more safe. But that one is going to be under siege as well. As we have, we have a bug right now where Lightcap start attacking farms after mm -hmm. you kill something, which is weird. But yeah, Tato also just taking the fight with the pikemen. He feels like he can clean up the pikes and then work on the villagers. Hera now, this is all or nothing for Hera. This push has to work. Yeah, villagers on the run. In fact, he's going to evacuate his base with all whatever can save their lives. He's coming forward for a secondary castle position. Tato trying to push it back while cleaning up the bills back at home here for Hera. Half the uh, eco is idle. 49 villagers on the field. Half the eco is idle for Tato as well, though, as we speak. And now we have four trebuchets in the face of Tato with plenty of pikes and not a ton of military to answer it. He got a ton of damage done over there in Hera's base. So it seems like all he has to do is stop this push just once to end the game. This is still dangerous, though. You know what units shine in super low economy situations? Monks. And Aztecs have the best monks in the game. Of course, he's losing a lot of economy now. Like, he's going to be limited to pretty much only monks at this point. Mm -hmm. But he has a healthy amount of spearmen, right? He still has fifth, ten, 10 pikes, actually. But only five monks, five, five trips who can clean all the castles. And Tato, he's going to need an answer. He's going to lose his second castle. He does not have a bomber cannon on the field. There's a situation here where Tato will struggle to find an engage engagement. Yeah, Hera has depleted the safety deposit box. There's no resources coming in and none in the bank. And so it's all about what he has on the field now and what he can get done with it. But as you said, Monks being the most crucial unit in that kind of scenario alongside those five trebuchets, which will make quick work of castles just like they have here. That's another castle position down for Tato, but we do have hand cannons starting Dash. to build up in the back. It's 14 in the queue, 12 on the field here and a Bombard Cannon on the way. The question is, does Tato have enough to keep these forces out of his base? He's getting cornered in. It's an all or nothing push for Hera. Will he be able to make it happen and push us to a game five? The converted hand cannon finds Tato's bills on the right side and Tato's a massive uh, queue for hand cannoners, but three of his archer rangers are under the castle. Yeah, that's a very difficult position to be in. Even if he ejects, they're going to be under the threat of either conversions or death to castle fire. We see that trebuchet having to retreat as well, which means the castle position will remain here for Hera overall. And so he's bought himself some time. It, again, it's such a low econ push. He really can't afford to make any mistakes, but Tato is probably now feeling the pressure as he retreats from this stone position to that one converted hand cannon here and does everything he can to keep this Bombard Cannon alive because that's what he'll need to get the Trebs off the field. Indeed, we see Harris economy, 31 wheels on gold right now. So he, again, only wood units, uh, gold units, sorry. Uh, Tato has a healthy amount of hand cannons right now, as you said, and he has one Bombard Cannon. That Bombard Cannon, is the key right now for Tata to take out the traps and stop Hera from making progress. It is his lifeline, but I do appreciate the patience with which he is approaching this situation. It'd be very easy to get unnerved, dive in, and then lose the game as a result to the Aztec player underneath one of their castles. Instead, he's waiting for the proper numbers, or at least what he has assessed to be the proper numbers, and looking for the ideal positioning as well. The Bombard Cannon does snipe one of the Trebs. The Monks are looking for conversions. They're onto the hand cannons and won't find any. That all said, we still see military buildings fall. We see a TC fall now for Tato as well. This is a crazy game. I'm surprised we're still in it because Hera refuses to die. And the Tato now starting to boom outside of his walls. Funnily enough, the outside of his own walls are safe right exactly. now. Exactly. Uh, Hera is making slow progress, but again, I don't think Hera can still take a fight unless he's under his castle, right? So he has to be really careful here with how he maneuvers his army, where he chooses to engage, and when. Yeah, this is a very tough position for Tato to be in as he loses more and more space in his home base. There's a lot of villagers there that if these TCs come down, all of a sudden they're under the threat of death. Counterattack? <laughs> Counterattack, but there's no villagers there to kill! Or at least very few. We'll see. I mean, with the bomb cannon there, eventually there's not going to be a place for the villas to hide, right? right? So Hera, but the issue right now I see, all the five relics of Tato were ejected by destroying the monastery. Hera's building a monastery. 
he suddenly might have five relics, oh. and five Aztec relics can give you so many units. I cannot believe the level of these players. I mean, they are pushing each other to the absolute limit, and so deservedly so are they both undefeated, but only one can remain. And right now, it's Tato looking to put the close on this series. It's two to one right now, only one more win, rather, to push him over the edge. It's more archery ranges coming up at home to get those hand cannoneer numbers up and mount the defense. This is all while base trade is kind of happening. We've got the Bombard Cannon rolling forward, like you said, to try and make quick work of all the villagers that remain at home. But we have another TC going forward for Hera. Both players looking to extend out across the map and find lifelines for themselves. I think this is a massive misplay by Tatter, actually. He sent all his hand cannons forward. What if you send half of them, right? 10 hand cannons will do the same damage as 20 right now. And if he had that army at home, Ta Hera, like, look how comfortable Hera is moving into anywhere on the base right now. Monks are split one by one, and Tatter has no army to defend right now. Score is getting closer and closer, despite the population still being almost double for Tato. Villagers on the run, but I think the point you just made, uh, Viper, speaks to the difficulty of these high-pressure situations. Yeah. We have the benefit of seeing everything, having all of the information. These guys are performing hundreds of actions per minute and trying to make these decisions on top of that. It's a difficult task, to say the least. Look at that. Hera escaping with a few villagers and walling behind even, now chasing Trebs away and beginning the pike raids underneath the TCs. Through all of this, he has managed perhaps to pick up a few of those relics. Tato, and, uh, Tato is not doing Flemish Revolution, but is using his villagers as warriors still. The monks from Hera are now so split that Tato feels comfortable. Just, you know, send 10 wills to take out the monk. <gasps> if this gets converted, Bombard cannon. delete. He has to delete it. Bombard cannon. Oh. He's not oh, aware no. of it. It does get converted. We still have hand cannoneers there. Tato's so again, it's hard for Hera to expand. Tato still has that one trip alive that we just saw Hera try to take, so that's his We're on the run. siege. All the wheels are running. Hera could convert 10 wheels here and have an economy. Oh my goodness. Tato feels like he has to commit the entire civilization. This to is a the new defense. Flemish revolution. Yeah, exactly. Screw the button. Everybody get out there. I'm calling up the militia. Let's go, boys and girls. Let's run them down. <laughs> Always going to be chased into the castle, though. Hera is baiting him into the castle. And if Tato starts losing villagers here, this can easily backfire. Oh, I love this series so much. And now he thinks better of it as he starts to extend underneath the castle. A bunch of conversions have come through, but that means no more faith left for these monks. A number of the trebuchets have been forced to pack up and back up. And that means that Tato has a little bit of room to breathe. Three more TCs going up around the right side. I can't even tell who's winning this game at this point, but it's epic to say the least. <laughs> Tato has brought his hand cannoneers back. They're here contributing to the fight, finally. Maybe Tato can now bring his trebuchet to start trebbing down the castle. And, I mean, Hera still has a lot of monks and they're getting faith all the time. Tat Hera has more wills working right now than Tato. You know what? This may have been a big play, though, for Tato actually to get all of these villagers out because it felt like he was getting cornered and those villagers were doomed to die in the long run. Now feeling like he has enough of a presence on the right side of the map, he can relocate his entire eco, making Hera aware of it, though, as he does. And so now Hera's going to think about where do I put my pressure next? Do I continue to push into the base or do I look for those expansions? Dash. I think Harris in a better spot. Do you really? He has five relics in that. Mo no, wait. Tato's wait. Tato snagged three relics. Oh, I'm putting them down there. Ooh, okay. Well, the trebuchets are still there, though. Yeah. And I think they have well, their sights set on exactly we that. We have a bomber cannon with bonus damage from the Burgundians, right? But Harris about cap? to snipe it with oh! the light cannon and convert the hand cannoneers. My Traitors! Goodness. This is incredible focus by each of these players. They've got a million places to look, and it feels like they're looking in the right place at the right time. And so Hera will keep putting the pressure on this base. Look for those final two relics to pick up and bring back home. It seems like Hera might start to agree with you, uh, Viper, as he puts up two more TCs. That tells me he's feeling a little bit more comfortable in this game and like he does have an avenue back into it. Indeed. Tato has gotten a healthy farming setup, though. He has 20, 23 on farms as well. He's preparing here, probably adding stable to make light cav again. But yeah, it's so hard now to engage for Tato, those monks. Despite having both faith and devotion, Hera is still getting his conversions. And we see now getting more and more conversions. Army numbers? Equal. I also want to point out that we're 43 minutes into a game and neither player has made it to 100 pop. That tells you how much action has been in this game that we're resting just underneath that. Of course, Tattoo still has the advantage in the villager numbers. If he can get them effectively working like he's trying to do right now, he will have ideally the economy to overwhelm Hera in the end. Indeed, but if Hera realizes that there's three relics down in the bottom, oh, Tato's adding a TC there. Tato does not want to give up this area. Mm -hmm. He knows if he loses those three relics as well, suddenly there's five Aztec relics generating gold. And that's something you don't want to be up against for sure. 
All right, let's take a breath ourselves as it feels like the players are maybe doing the same. Of course, they're still going Ooh. a mile a minute. Monk's overextending. Yeah, those is... are fantastic kills for a TC to find, but we're also looking for conversions onto those hand cannons, and we retreat just in time to find none of them. Yeah, and the monks again being pulled into the town center fire. Tato could getting some monk, monk kills there. By the way, can you explain the 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 meme for me? Was that nuts? I didn't even look at it, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even look at it. Are you kidding me? I got right. so many things to look at right now. I'm barely keeping up with the number of words I got to spit out my mouth. With all this said, I think we have to be very critical of Hero here. Like, f 45 minutes and no horse color. I mean, come on. <laughs> Yeah, come on, come yeah on. let's let's pick that to criticize, <laughs> my friend. I mean, he's been on, an, on a gold eco this entire game. Any food units he's managed to find have actually been conversions, and actually these are perhaps mispositioned hand oh, cannoneers now sandwiched between TCs and the monks here from the Aztec player. Oh, he's going to try to avoid the conversions, but he walks underneath and into some house walling. Hera's going to look for it, and he does get it, and the delete on top of everything. I mean, a heads-up play, because you don't want to hand any of those over. If you're tired of there, maybe a better decision just go backwards and commit, try to get as many monks as uh, you can. I could see that. I think so. But yeah, look at Her Tato is house now. How many houses does Tato have in, have in this base, right? He's going to have to rebuild every single house as he's... Yeah, I mean, look at the population. It's getting closer and closer. Only 30 apart. Again, that's mostly villagers. Mm -hmm. But again, Hera has three, two relics. I assume it could become five eventually. But Hera as well does not have the safety of his castles anymore. So if Hera wants to now go out of the map and start engaging the proper armies of Taro, he will not do that under the safety of his castles. Still such a wild game. 18 monks for Hera to control. I mean, that's something I don't envy, the micro that's yeah. required to make that work. But he is making it work. He's found the relics, of Viper, and he's put his sights on those relics. He will make quick work of the monastery. He has monks in position to pick those up and bring them back. There aren't enough light cav there to deal with all the monks, and so it looks like he'll finally get himself back on to that relic generation that the Aztecs oh so want. But to your point, we have a much safer economy now set up on the right side here for Tanto, and eventually Hera's going to have to find a way to start pressuring that. He does have a trap over there already to try and start dealing the damage. Yeah, Hera's economy is still not great, right? He's not back to the point where he can start producing pikemen again to deal with the light cap that Tato now has. But Hera, Tato might lose a town center now on the bottom right as he's being pressured here as well. Tato cannot defend this and Tato still has 20 plus villagers here, right? Light cap coming from behind, but again, there's Hank and there's like 12 monks. Oof. Committing the boys and girls once again, as well as the light cap to try and take out a number of these monks. I have to imagine that while some will go down, ultimately the Aztec monks will win out. I don't know if any conversions are actually going to make it through, though. And so these villagers oh. may eventually whittle down the monks in the end. We have a few more hand cannoneers firing away, and this could be, in fact, part of the decider here for Tato as he finally cleans up a bunch of these monks. He still is getting hit by Trebs. He's still trying to return fire. He's taking damage in the eco on the right-hand side to Light Cav. And now another castle position up for Hera from which he will launch an attack. And this castle will be so hard for Tato to deal with as Tato suddenly only 19 villas in front and that's going to be lower even more and more. And the villagers are actually getting a trebuchet here. I don't think he has sappers or anything, but those villas are definitely packing a punch. But yeah, Hera behind this will get three relics as well. And he has a way better position on the map now. And Hera has taken the score lead as well after being like 2,000 score behind earlier in the game. Can you believe it? A score lead for a player that's been under 100 pop the entire game. Oh, he's preparing the treb. <laughs> preparing the treb, looking for more conversions, has a couple converted hand cannoneers there that will slowly, slowly remove these villagers from the map and keep that trebuchet alive. We have a treb battle here on the right-hand side as that feels like the new focus of the map for both of these players with most of Tato's eco, uh, eco rather they're pressed against these wood lines. Tato is just keeping those wheels alive, battering the Treb as he's com converting them to further his own economy. But yeah, at this point, Hera is about to take the economy lead. He has the military advantage. He has the relics now. Look at resources. 70, collect 73 to 72 villagers. Viper, how did we get here? Look at resources collected. It's 20,000. What? What is going on? What am I witnessing? The craziest game of Age of Empires I have ever seen. NAC5 delivers. How many light cav is 20,000? He could have had 20,000 <laughs> light calves and never still had the do, same. Never do math on cast, Viper. It's a lot. That's all I know. It's too many, in fact. And Tato is still trying to find a way to Score deal lead. with the incessant pressure that 
uh, Hera is throwing his way. He did manage to take that castle position down, but his own castle is under threat of falling as well. 140 stone in the bank with only one villager mining stone currently and not enough repairing. He's now looking for raids. He says it's back about the eco. I've got to find damage. I've got to keep Hera with split focus around the map. It's getting messy, and it's just about who can pay attention to the right thing at the right time. Another trap goes down. Tato now trying to work on the two, three traps remaining of Hera. Tato is trying to do some raids now, but his scouts only have the first armor upgrade. So diving under TCs and castles is not that clever for him. But yeah, this is all about the trap fight. But Tato spending all his gold buying stone to repair the castle. And he's about to run out of stone and gold. And this castle is not long for life. Or is it? Woo! Oh! Is it alive for just another moment? Oh, Here but goes the another stone trap is volley, gone. And it will eventually fall. It's three traps on either side. Now they target each other. Let's see what Tato has in terms of a recipe for success. He stayed primarily on hand cannoneers and light cap, but it seems like he's now on the back foot. Plenty of Aztec monks still up there at the front with pikes to play defense. These Aztec monks pack such a powerful punch, and Tato hasn't found an effective way to deal with them. And th that's scary to say when he's already playing the monk counter unit. Yeah, I think Tato's best answer to monks, it might sound funny, but his traps. Mm. That might be the best way for him to actually dwind like dwindle down the monk numbers of Hera. But again, Tato is ab about to be in a situation again where he has to evacuate his whole economy once again. And uh, again, he has so many monks. Hera Tato, Tato does not have an army to engage the army of Hera right now. Yeah, you can feel both of these players playing at their absolute limit. It looks like now, with another moment oh. to breathe... Flemish Revolution again! Coming forward! Yeah, thinks better of it. Those pikes oh. rotate over. Doesn't want to give more conversions and more economy over to Hera in the end. Ooh. While all this is happening, Tato's going back to his tried and true method. Right? And the relics are there! The five relics are there! Five relics and a castle currently undefended here from Hera. And so this can be hard for Hera to respond to. He has a slow-moving military, right? It's going yeah. to be really difficult for him to come over and respond. And so instead, going to keep targeting the eco of Tato, while Tato now reprioritizes the castles and the relics. Indeed, this castle will go down. Harris also building a TC on the left side. I'm not sure if Tato noticed that, but that's a healthy amount of wills as well. If Tato goes there next with his trebs, Herak might suddenly lose 15, 20 wills. He's already losing a ton. Yeah, I think Tato said, fine. You know what? If you're just going to come at my economy, then I will do the same to you. And now it's about who can kill who first, it feels. Can we see Tato's economy? It looks like the red swarm is coming in. The TC goes down. And Tato's economy is now in shambles. They're both trading blows left and right as Tato's also... Ooh, Tato did sneak attack on the top. He was able to snipe one trap of Hera. But his economy is only... He's running back to his original base. It's incredible to think that through all of this, uh, the numbers for either uh, side is about the same. But for once, Hera has more population, 123 to the 100 of Tato. Tato, exactly right, retreating back to the safety of what was his base and his walls, although they know are no longer there. The fight continues, and once again, the villagers find themselves being called up to battle in a militia-like fashion. More TCs go down, and the entire extension of Tato's economy is starting to fall. It's 76 villagers over here for Hera. It's down to 56 for Tato. And so while a lot of these villagers are doomed to die, we need to take a look back to see if the relics have been dealt with. They oh. have, at the very least. The castle position is gone, but it looks like it might be difficult for Tato to recover with only 100 wood in the bank and the inability to put up a new TC. Yeah, Hera adding more economy now. He's probably feeling more comfortable as the game goes on because he knows he also dealt with most of the traps now, Tato. Tato population is starting to go down to half of Hera. It looks like Hera has finally done it in what has been one of the craziest arena games I've ever seen. But it's not over yet. It's not over yet, but it does at the first time or for the first time in the game feel like in an inevitability that Hera might come away with it. He's now up to 82 in the villager count, has the military advantage as well. He's put Tato in a very tough position. Tato with very little in the queue. In fact, nothing in the queue when it comes to military numbers. And it's only these 18 hand cannoneers that his hopes and dreams rely on. Let's remember, he's still ahead in the series. So yeah. at the very worst, we're going to a game five. And I, for one, would not be mad about that. Well, going to a game five after the way this game was looking at the start might still leave some doubts in your mind. But yeah, Tato, he has two relics now. He's still collecting. I mean, you never know. But yeah, in hand. GG is cold and wow. Oh my goodness. He knows. Harold knows he should not have won that game. He knows this was an amazing comeback, so he should be proud of his performance. Uh, that was uh, one of the most incredible Age of Empires comebacks, if not the most incredible that I have seen in my lifetime. Mm. This is like the against double-edged sword. Like 
Tato knows he should never have lost. True. He knows that somewhere he went wrong because he was in such an amazing spot. But then again, on the flip side, Hera forced the mistakes out of him, right? And that's what true champions does. And like, yeah, again, comebacks like this are borderline impossible against a player like Tato. So massive, massive credit to Hera here. Yeah, two sides to every story. So it's exactly right that while he did rely on Tato to slip up in an area or two, he needed to be in the position to take advantage of that. Exactly. And he did exactly that. So now we're evened up at two and two. And we go back to that discussion we had following the very long third game, where when you manage to come out as the victor in that long game, you're going to feel like you have the momentum. You're going to feel really good about your chances in the long run. And now it's Tato left to sit and wonder what went wrong. Where did he let it go? But as much as he wants to sit in those thoughts, you got to shove it out your brain and refocus yeah. in towards this fifth and final map. It will be Desert Void. Both players with two sieves available. But then again, as well, Tato should also take comfort or comf confidence in the fact that he put himself in such an amazing spot from the opening, right? Yes. The opening was perfect from Tato. Nothing wrong. There is maybe a case that he should have stayed in Castle Age, right? Yeah. Instead of doing going in, doing Faith, all these upgrades, that could have been translated into a lot more units, right, on the field. And then maybe staying in Castle Age to make sure he never loses map control mm -hmm. and doesn't get that castle in his face. Maybe that would have been the way. Right. Yeah, we have the uh, kind of dueling castle positions in the middle of the map. Mm -hmm. While he built one ram to target uh, the monasteries, to your point, maybe you just go four or five rams. Yeah. Go for the castle as well, right? Add just more try and end the game there. Yeah, add more stables. Maybe add skirms in Castle Age, right? Mm -hmm. You had options because he had such a good economy behind that, right? Yeah. But still, we go back to the point where Tato decided to counterattack with his hand cannoners and the bomber cannon. Yeah. I liked the move. But you had a great a great little tidbit, which mm. is uh, five hand cannoneers yeah. as effective as 15 yeah. when you have undefended villagers. And so maybe an overcommitment of resources in that moment when he could have had more at home to defend. But again, easy for us to say, as we're the ones sitting in this yeah, position yeah. and not the ones whose heart rates are going sky high and uh, on the verge, or rather playing for the only undefeated record to remain in the mm -hmm. tournament. So there's a lot on the line here as these players sit at two and two. You could see there the couches are packed behind us because it's a series that nobody wants to miss. Yeah, and I mean, like, this is what you want, right? The two undefeated players so far going head-to-head, 2-2 -head, in a best of five. We have a decided game, and that's exactly what you want from... I feel like we need a snack break. I need <laughs> fuel, man. <laughs> Woo! It's just Woo! one more game, you know? These games have not taken that long. <laughs> It's been super close, though. It's been yeah. amazing, right? Oh, oh it's we are, we are such a joy. I'm feasting just, on the feasting just, on the gameplay. Oh, they put us on the couch. Just lay down on the couch. Well, thank it's you fine. so oh, much, our friends. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, lordy. Okay. Well, we already had the conversation a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. but let's rehash it for anybody who may have been joining us just here at the end of Game 4, heading into Game 5. It's going to be Desert Void. Mm -hmm. and we had uh, hypothesized, of course, that Poles feels like the obvious choice for Tato. For me, Georgians for Hera. But by the same token, at this point, I'm not going to be surprised by anything in the series. Yeah, I, I think Persians is also a valid choice, right? Just yeah. a really solid save these days. But yeah, maybe Jordan's on the map like Desert Void still feels more natural. But again, I think the the what we're going to be looking towards is what save does Tato pick? Because he has two options that I think both are viable. Of course, we saw doubt with Poles previously, so Poles have already been played on this map. I think it was played in the qualifiers as well. But uh, oh, I there we go. That. We got some snacks Snack. flying in for us. Thank you so much, production, looking out for us. But much yeah. appreciated. They've also been polling incredible hours. Mm. So, you know, hey, this is a good opportunity for us to thank them for all of their tireless tireless work, not just production, but uh, our observers, our production assistant, Nilly, of course, for being an incredible host to the tournament and Gamer Legion for supplying this incredible venue. And not the co casters Red Bull, Surfshark. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and us. Oh. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, uh, the lovely player co-casters who step onto the desk uh, to give us all the knowledge. Indeed. So, prediction time. Prediction time. What Civ is Tato playing? A pulse. You think so? I I say Burmese. I don't. I haven't actually talked with him about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I say I say Tato throws in a curveball and he goes Burmese to go around by. It makes sense in my head. You know, Look. yeah, actually, the more you, the more I think about the map, because it is always a map, because the bases are so centralized, right, and there's so much open space, Arambai, pretty effective at getting mm -hmm. through walls, right, where if you're just playing, like, poles and going nice, you might struggle a bit more to get through and actually mm -hmm. deal some damage. I actually like it more and more now that you're talking about it. I just think, you know, the bread and butter of poles economy and the safety of getting maybe two or three full works up, yeah. letting that food economy explode, could just be the way that he wants to play it. Yeah, he might take a different approach as well to Pulse than Doubt did, for example. Doubt went forward 
and drop the towers and try to be aggressive at the start. Tato might have, I mean, Tato has been playing poles for years already, and he's one of the guys that kind of like pioneered how to place the fallbacks. Like, he would build his two starting houses right next to the TC to leave more space for fallbacks around, right? He's one of the guys that knows how to do that, but we're about to see. I see 14s in the chat, and don't you worry, we're about to get this game started as the players are in, the fingers are fast firing after a short break to recompose themselves. It's do or die time in the battle for first place here between Tato and Hera. It's been evened up at two and two. Like I said before, these players pushing Ooh. themselves to the limit, and the Viper is correct in his prediction. It will be Tato in the blue with the Burmese up against Hera in the red with the Georgians. I am excited to see what Tato is cooking. I mean, the... He could go with Pikeman Monk as well. I mean, he could even play Knights without a problem, right? But the way I see this now is like, Georgians, you're going to expect them to end up with cavalry no matter what. Maybe Monaspa, maybe like just regular Knights. Georgians, a lot of people don't do this, but Cav Archers will also generate HP. As we can see here, down on the bottom there, cavalry regenerates 5, 10, 15 HP in Feudal Castellation and Imperial Age. So that's definitely a Civ bonus that you want to play around with with Georgians. You also have uh, buildings costing less to repair, which can be very useful because there's so much cracked terrain on this map. Mm -hmm. So if your castle is under fire, it will be cheaper to repair. Fortified churches just boosting the economy exactly. even more if you can get those uh, you know, sprinkled throughout your base. And then, like we said, the Manaspa, just an incredibly powerful late game unit, especially in mass, continuing to grow in strength as you produce them. On the other side, though, let's talk about the Burmese because this is the surprise predictive pick here from the Viper. What's the value of this pick? Indeed. They also have a very underrated economy, in my opinion. As you see, Lumber Camp technologies are free. So upon reaching Feudal Age, you have double bid axe. Upon reaching Castle Age, you have instantly double uh, Bosaw. So your wood economy in particular is amazing. And on top of that, your infantry will also get bonus damage. So that's why we talked about them maybe going pikemen earlier, right? Because the pikemen will have plus one, plus two, plus three damage depending on the age you're in. And then monastery technologies as well, 50% cheaper, which means that monks are very viable options. Even monk aggression, like you can go forward, do redemption, all those things as well. And Just then, got killed by monks, kill your opponent, return yeah, the favor exactly, with the monks. Exactly. Obviously, you do get to see all the relics visible on the map from the game start. However, I will say less relevant on this map because the mm -hmm. relics almost always spawn in a star-like fashion. While their yeah. exact position will not be the same from map to map, there will always be one in each relative quadrant or corner and one at the center of the map. So, yes, you can go straight for them, but a less relevant uh, civ bonus, to say the least. I noticed you ignored the last civ bonus there. Is there a reason for that? <laughs> I gotta go back and see what it was. Uh, elephants having plus one armor? Yeah, because, huh. well, I'll be surprised if we get there. Okay. But you know what? The way that these two players are playing, we've gone late yeah. in many games, <laughs> so maybe we do. They actually have unique techs as well that help the elephants. I mean, you ne never say never, right? But right. Georgians also have Halberdier, they have Hank in there. So, yeah, it feels like Georgians have all the toolboxes, all the units in the toolbox that they need. They don't have Bomber Cannon, though, so if it goes late, Bomber Cannon from Burmese could be important here as well. But again, my hopes and wishes are for Arambai. All righty. Well, we wait on beta breath for that, but we have to get to the Castle Age before we have an opportunity to see that. And on this very map, we saw Hera just take the aggression to Jordan in the mm -hmm. previous set and end it in the Feudal Age. Jordan leaving just a couple of tiles open on his wall. Hera is the kind of player who will take full advantage of that, run under TCs, and look to make quick work of your eco. 30 seconds away from the Feudal Age is Hera. He's the one who will have the advantage in terms of Feudal Age timing, and the barracks is coming up. Indeed. We saw Tato build the barracks earlier. He's now doing a second lumber camp as well. So this is going to be a somewhat economic approach by Tato. I uh, wonder if he will do any scouts. I mean, like, we are having an amazing set there with Tato and Hera. It feels like it's the end of the day. But after this set, we have Leary against Mr. Yo as well. Oh, come on. We are spoiled. We are spoiled for brilliant Age of Empires here at NAC5. But at the moment, our full focus on these two players Ooh, battling it out for the top spot. Good house to just get a little bit of chip damage there. Tato does not have Loom. Hera looks to pounce, but Loom will kick in in five seconds, so he should not lose any villagers here. Okay, good play by both players. Good awareness by both players. Scouting information coming in. Oh. Walls continue to come up. Hera does not have Loom either. He's doing it right now, but Tato is coming in. So he could commit there. He might get two villager kills if he commits. But yeah, Loom. Oh, Tato could be trapped. Oh, Tato. Ooh. That was a very very, very risky move, uh, but luckily doesn't get punished for it. Neither does Hera for the lack of Loom. Yeah. So both players sort of getting away with something there. Now with Loom up, he could still commit for a villager kill. 1v1 mm -hmm. in the Feudal Age, even with Loom. The scout will win, and it looks like Hera is going to retreat because Tato is willing to commit. 
Yeah, but he might not get it. Oh, there was a hit not registering earlier as well. But yeah, he will delay that a little bit. Hera is not going to be housed anyway, so not a problem. Now, this is where an advantage comes in for Taro. The Spearman has plus one attack, like we said earlier. So any Spearman fight is favored Taro. But Tato not doing any stables. He's playing pure Spearman defense route. So maybe it is the transition towards that later Pikeman Monk technologies. Now, this could be concerning, though, because Hera already has four scouts onto the field with one more on the way. Two of his scouts oh. coming forward, being tracked, though. Stone. What could that be? I wonder. <laughs> now, obviously, we know where that plans to go if uh, Tato can get himself to the Castle Age. And yes, only investments into Spears for defense at the moment. Six on the field, though. That's a good number to respond to the five scouts that Hera has found himself onto. Yeah, Tato has to be careful, though, long term, because Hera, as soon as those scouts are grouped up, he will start taking fights with lone Spearman, right? Because he knows his scouts will regenerate HP over time. Oh, wait, Tato is going forward. He wants to Tower Rush. Wow and showing his hand very early by walking straight up the middle into the vision here of Hera. So Hera won't be surprised by this, but still has to find a way to respond. It's yeah. a lot of spearmen, and with only scouts, will have a hard time fighting these villagers away. The question is, what area Whoa. of the map does Tata want to target? It looks like he's heading towards the right side, is eyeing that wood line and possibly the berries as well for a tower position. Hera's going to have to track it, and is doing so with those spearmen. Again, won't be surprised, but needs a response prepared. Yeah, Hera's map is oh. really... What? That's so weird. Not what I expected. I guess it's to take control of the gold and then maybe long-term drop a castle there? Long-term, maybe? Okay, establishing... Yeah, establishing a guaranteed forward castle position, so less about dealing damage in feudal and just guaranteeing that he will get the castle up yeah. in Castle Age. I, I mean, I don't see another logical reason for that tower there, right? It's it's a weird spot. It doesn't target past the walls here, but here we go. Tato, ooh, a great micro hero once again, pulling the weak HP scout away, and that scout will regenerate to full HP, I guarantee you. Yep. We have another spear there to try and defend, but five scouts is very dangerous, and they'll happily take more fights against spears, and now about to find a villager back here looking to wall. The quick walls, or rather, the wall won't complete, but maybe the quick walls ooh, will be there for Tato. Nice. He does find it, needs to get those extra taps like you were talking yeah. about earlier, He's and Arrow will look for the weakest wall. Oh, he could trap, he could trap. Gate, gate. I see it. Okay, not anymore. The scouts got out of there. He could have done a gate on the bottom diagonal and then on the left back, now yeah. through the corner, right? I like it. It's hard to repair though with one wheel, but it, it would have looked cool. Okay, another tower Ooh. coming up on that wood <gasps> line. He over Ooh, and a hole. No, wait, is there a tree there? No, 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 <laughs> that's a hole. Oh, it is? Yeah, uh. You're right, you're right. There's no shade there. Tato could go in. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> I, that's our, uh, uh, the perfect millisecond to find that yeah. hole and get the palisade down. Again, those would have been potent spears because they do have. Um, or because they are Burmese uh, spears at mm -hmm. that. This is also a thing, like, tower rushing a guy that has a mule cart. It's like, oh, I guess I'll move my mule cart. Yeah, I go elsewhere. Yeah. So that's, like, a little bit, like, counterintuitive as well. But, I mean, like, at this point, Tato is committed. And says a uh, lone villager. Oh, I get a quick recap on the quick wall. Solid. And you see, he's not looking away, right? He makes yeah. sure he gets the taps. That's how you have to do it. Very, very, very well done. I also like that he's uh, taken the time to wall around these towers, right? Mm -hmm. It is such a minor thing, but that extra bit of time spent uh, gives you the safety to know that that position will remain at least Ooh. until the castle age. Is this villagers from here are running on the top side? Are they looking for a gold? Or is that a counter? I think that, wait, can we tower? get... Can we towers? I believe this is looking for gold. Can we get the POV of Hera? Does he see any safe gold right now? This is not where we want to see. We want to see, do, do we see, okay, that's the safe gold, but he doesn't see any other safe gold around his base. Yeah, he has gold positions in the middle of the map that he can reach out for. There is a gold position, but like you say, there's military there for mm -hmm. Tato, right outside the left-hand side of his base, and he's dropping a tower, or he's just walling it up yeah. straight up. Love that this move, Tato. This is a great move by Hera, though, right? Tato will not expect the Vils to be out here. So that should be safe gold income from uh, Hera. Tato, like, Hera's even taken out the pavilion, the army tent there, just in case the vision would show it somehow, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if Tato, yeah, Tato had no way of knowing that happened, right? Tato also lost his scouts, so there's no way for him to actually confirm where Hera is out. And Hera just sold the stone for gold in order to get to the castle. Age. Yeah, I think Tato will be even more unawares because he has that outpost there, he has military on the left hand side, so he's probably thinking if he was to move out, I would have seen it, yeah. right? I would have caught it. But Hera taking the ultra safe wide angle to get those four villagers out onto gold, it could be crucial in the long term. And in all this time, Hera managed to get himself up to the castle, Age, or at least in terms of the click. Yeah, we're again in a situation where Hera will hit Castle super fast. Question is, what does he do with it, right? He can obviously start dropping those fortified churches to further his economy, but he doesn't have stone for town centers anymore because he just sold it, right? 
Oh, and he gets in. There was an opening up above the blacksmith here. As the scouts come in again, you don't want those scouts in your base, especially when he hits Castellage and he heals faster and it could be light cav. So Tato definitely wants to make sure he's safe everywhere. How much stone is left on that? Tato might suddenly find himself with four idle villagers. 70 more stone to mine. Yeah, 70 more stone and of course uh, scouts nearby. So even if he is to, you know, mine through that, then those villagers could lose their lives. Great, I have to say, great decision by Hera to go so far for gold, right? Tato is now checking around Hera's base. Is there any gold here I missed, right? But Hera went all the way across to Tato's side to take the gold. So, yeah, Tato is extremely unlikely to ever spot that. Exactly. So, really, it would just be about whether or not Hera ever leads him to that. And you can see how he's hugging this tree line, making sure oh. that the spears wouldn't yeah. catch vision of that gold as they chase away. And so keeping those villagers safe for the time being. It's 17 seconds until we reach the castle age for Hera with forging behind that. What is the play once he reaches it? Like I said, I expect some fortified... Oh, maybe there's a siege pressure here, right? Yeah, siege. He has the light cap, siege. He can do monks. That's a fortified church, right? It will also increase the gold income he has there. I mean, he doesn't have that much gold to make siege units or monks, for that matter. But still, one mangonel to pressure this. But then again, he expects Tato to be taking stone there, right? But Tato has mined all that stone, and he has moved to a different location where maybe Harrow doesn't find him. Yeah, now all of a sudden, that gold position is very, very safe for Harrow, mm -hmm. right? With the fortified church coming up. So he feels pretty good about the forward position. And all of this right oh. before Tato arrives to spawn. Oh, oh he never turns mind. around. Okay, question now is Tato is two minutes away from Castle Edge. He's doing armor on the spears. So again, they will have plus two attack upon reaching Castle Edge. Probably will see a pikeman, but Tato will be ready to drop a castle. Question is, does he drop it defensively or does he drop it forward? He only has, what, four bills forward? So a forward castle could be very risky against all these light cav. But then again, defensive castle, uh, Tato doesn't know yet, but there's a mangonel going to be nearby, right? So. Yeah, I mean, he actually, he might get lucky. Well, there you go. He spots the Siege Workshop. And now that he's seen that, I think the answer is drop the castle at home. Yes, unless he finds out that he wants to do a monastery at home, get cheap redemption, 50% cheaper, mm -hmm. and then try to convert Manganos. However, But yeah, I mean, like this is where Tata has to make, uh, he has to commit, right? Uh, he's put in a very tough spot now where making the wrong decision might cost him the game completely. Yeah, he has to commit. He also has to find 100 more stone. He only has three villagers mining it currently. He has Dao's friend there, so it should be fine. <laughs> the market play. Yeah. There you go. 100 stone bought for 160 gold. This also means that his gold supplies have been depleted, so no other upgrades can come in, at least the ones that cost gold immediately upon reaching the Castle Age. Castle Age comes in now. He's seen the Mangonel. He's oh. seen the pressure. It will be a defensive castle. I really appreciate this positioning. Deleting a farm to place under the TC. Plenty of spears to make sure that the light cab aren't necessarily going to be a threat and yeah. just has to worry about that Mangonel. In the all nice quick wall there. Tato, I mean, those light cab, again, they regenerate over time. So Tato wants to make sure they don't get to run around, roam freely around here. So far, good job by Tato, but the Mangonel is moving forward. Mangonel might even circle around to the top to start hitting those villagers building the castle, but it looks like Tato is dealing with this very nicely. Yeah, split from the light cap to try and pull the Spearman apart, but Tato follows the split with a split of his own. But all that said, actually, the light cap went out the fight on the wood line, and now there are some villagers that might go down. Not enough space in that TC for all of the villagers, but the castle does go up in the end. It is a very tight and compact base, but at least a safe one. Tato, com Tato comes out of this with the same amount of villagers. However, Hera has added town centers and Hera has wheelbarrows. So economy is still very much better for Hera as he's adding a seed workshop at home as well to start cleaning up those towers. Tato now has started a by production. Yeah, going to be difficult for Hera to find too much more forward progress, at least into the main base of Tato with the presence of that castle yeah. and just a mangonel on the offense. So now it's about whether or not Tato feels comfortable taking those Arambai and moving forward for a counterattack. We see Hera as well taking advantage of the fact that there's so much cracked terrain here. He's just sitting there working away on the buildings. The blacksmith is going down, the market went, oh, the market is down, yeah. But multiple houses, that's the reason as well why he broke in so fast, right? Houses were on cracked terrain, which means they take a lot more damage. And, ooh, finds the gold though. There's a monk though. But yeah, Hera picking off two villagers, uh, Tato. Uh, good start. Again, look, once those Arambai numbers reaches, they're similar to Camel Arches, right? Once you reach a certain number, suddenly they're like, there's no stopping them. Right. So if Tato can get to like 10, 15 Arambai and then maybe add some Manganels or maybe even a second castle drop, right? 
Maybe then Hera will find, a, find it hard to deal with it. How long has that villager been stuck like Oof. that? That's a tough one because you're not getting an, oh, 28% efficiency. Oof. That's brutal. Oh, he tried, oh, hey. hey, you made it. Oh, we, just had to, to, we just had to talk about it. Had to actually micro that. He oh, moved okay. the village to the other side. <laughs> I like to believe it was us. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Divine intervention to make that villager work yet again. It shouldn't be forgotten that yeah. there are all of those towers forward as well, right? While we did have a lot of focus on Tato and the defense mm -hmm. of his base, he still has incredible forward positioning and threat onto Hera's eco and has Ooh. even forced another siege workshop up at home. Hera made a ram there, but a ram can be killed by the pikes or the knight of, uh, of Tato here. So the ram is maybe not an ideal choice for Hera in the end. As we see Lightcap chasing the ram, but, but again, once Tato groups up this and has six, seven, eight Aramba, he's doing bloodlines now as well, probably will get husbandry. At that point, he's going to start like one tapping these uh, Lightcap. Yeah, pikemen just uh, moving in to get a little information and maybe kill a villager. She found herself where she didn't want to be. Rambai rolling forward. A whole bunch of light cav here mm. for Tato, but I'm not sure they want to fight under the fire of two towers. Could be a difficult choice for him to make for now, continuing the chase, but now turning on to the pike. I think this will end up being a fairly solid trade for Tato in the end, even if the pikes do get cleared up. The Rambai can always run, use their mobility yeah. to match the mobility of the light cav. Indeed, they're doing it now. There's also some small hills he can run, jump up on now and then. But yeah, you see now like how they're like... Of course, Harris getting good traded simply to, due to pure numbers, but you see the line of dead bodies of the Red Scouts here. Yeah. Once Tato get those numbers going, maybe it's even enough right now. With the towers helping out, those Aramba will clean everything. Yeah, one Aramba has fallen so far. There goes another, but in the end, I think he'll still at least have one alive, if not all three. And then that Ram is a looking a lot less effective. Yeah, unfortunately for Taro, he lost the knight there, so the ram, a ram are not that good against rams, unfortunately for Taro. Oh, might get two conversions here. Oh. Tato, at this point, you just commit, right? You're already so close. Huh? Wait, did Tato already do a devotion? Wow. Yeah, I was thinking commit or delete, like you were yeah, saying. Ends yeah. up only losing one in the end, and so sort of lucky in that trade. Does lose a villager, though, to boot. Another TC coming down to put him on to three in total. Hera been on three for a little bit of time, and that's netted him about a, a 10 villager lead overall. Still trying to rid his base of these towers that surround, but the Arambi coming forward and some villagers as well to deal with it. It's also a monk there, but it's under Ooh. fire by the tower, so this monk might not get the conversion. Tato Garrison, the one convert uh, all the villas as well. So the monk goes down, great move by Tato. He should be able to clean the ram as well before the tower goes down. As we see Hera moving to the middle, now making another uh, town center. I think that's on stone, as we see a devotion just finished for Tato. Yeah, might be able to clear the ram, but even then, now with the yeah. Manganel there and the light cav, I think he's uh, bound to lose these villagers along with the tower position. Around villagers are trying to run, but they won't make it far before the light cav, light cav rather clean them up. Yeah, indeed. I want to say, is that fourth TC from Hera on stone? Because that's the one thing Hera is missing right now. Yeah, stone. Stone was the only income he did not have. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense that he wants to force that. But I think that's envision of Tato as well. Tato still has all the outposts better around, right? So he sees everything that's happening here. Uh, if they ran by where in the middle of the map, they could have easily caught that town center, right? So uh, there are 11 villagers in the queue right now here for uh, Hera, and that's with 300 food oh. in the bank and 30 on food. Yeah. So the food eco looking good. Indeed, I think Tato is in a spot where he would like to get more bills on stone, so maybe he can think about uh, a forward castle, right? Imagine a forward castle on those two town centers of, uh, of Hera, for example, right? That would be oh so pretty. Those are also built on cracked terrain and yeah. securing a very important wood line, it seems, as well as a lot of farming space for the long run. Hera is adding multiple archery ranges here. Question is, is this going to be just for skirms? As he answers my question right away. Elite skirmisher on the way. Skirmishers will be Hera's answer to the Arambai. But again, if you mix in a Mangonel with the Arambai, as Hera has a little bit of slow reaction here compared to what we're used to, they also see that how deadly Arambai can be, right? You just need one or two taps to like snipe a villager. So. Exactly. Those are uh, Arambai splitting up into two groups to try and look for more villager kills, even finding a monk as well. Now, Fletching is in. That will help in the defense, either from the TC or the Fortified Church. But at the moment, the Arambai standing just outside of range and preventing a lot of farming from going on. This is a situation where it's easy for us to say, just dive in there. There's no defense, right? right. But uh, Harold doesn't want to uh, doubt. <laughs> Jordan. One though. more try. <laughs> uh, <laughs> One more freaking try. Freaking Andy. Uh, there, okay. Ah, close. Uh, Tato doesn't want to take the risk. Uh, he's just going back again. Like, I mean, Tato feels comfortable, relatively comfortable here with the Arambi on the map, but he also knows that the chances that Hera is far ahead in the economy are pretty high. And uh, that is also the truth. It is absolutely the truth, but 
the other truth is that the Arambi numbers keep climbing, mm -hmm. right? And you mm -hmm. keep talking about that mass, that critical mass of Arambi with three more in the queue. That'll bring him up to a total of 20 if he can keep them alive and mobile. And that might be all that Tato needs, kind of akin to Hera and his monks in the last game. Sometimes just one singular yeah. powerful unit enough in big enough mass can lead you to victory. Indeed, we see Tato now answering with his own light cav, or like he's doing the light cavalry upgrade. So I imagine he's going to add stables and do light cav to try and deal with them with the skirms. But yeah, Hera already has a great economy set up, four to three on food. Like the issue with Aramba is that they need to be a unit that snowballs, right? They need to, they need to snowball the situation. Right now, Hera doubt. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, Tato is just running around and like he's looking for damage, but he's not able to find it anywhere. Yeah. Like it, it's like he comes in here and picks up three four bills, but it's like. That's not enough to like snowball the situation in his favor, right? Exactly. And now Hera has a lot of skirms with ballistics as well, so it's going to be really hard for Tata to come out there without serious losses. Yeah, he's going to try and trade and run his way out of this as effectively as he can, and he is getting good kills oh, on man. the skirms, but he's taking a lot of damage in return. Ultimately, pretty well navigated, I'd have to say, for the Aramby player, but not okay if he ends up in a stuck position attacking a, a tent. Yeah, looking at the resources, Hera is looking towards Imperial Age. Tato is looking to add stable units. So Tato again with the prolonged Castle Age. This time though, it feels like Hera is in a way more comfortable spot than he has been in the previous games. And it's looking really, really good for Hera right now. Yeah, now reaching out for that castle with being just about 300 food away from being able to cl click up rather to the Imperial Age. Tato a lot of wood in the bank. And as I say it, he thinks to sell some of it, try and balance the eco out as best he can. but. Nowhere close to the Imperial Age, so it's all about the castle and what he can get done with those <laughs> Rambi. <laughs> Tato throwing him out and he shows up behind him. Uh, yeah, 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 that's yeah, yeah. Hera villagers, right? They just never stop showing up. But yeah, Hera looking super good. Tato again coming in here trying to find some damage. But again, like maximum damage he finds there is one or two or three villager picks, right? Their fortified churches also contribute to the defense. And Again, for me, Aramba is a snowball unit. He needed to have like maybe a second follow-up castle drop somewhere to like really force the issue. Because yeah. right now it's just been a super comfortable game for Hero from start to finish, honestly. Okay, trying to come up with uh, avenues to victory here for Tato. What is the mass of Castle Age uh, Aramba that I need to dive under TCs? Oof. I mean, your Pierce armor is not great as an Aramba, yeah. so. Um, you're going to need a healthy amount. I mean, like, the issue here is that there's also Fortified Church, right? Right. If that wasn't there, sure, dive under. You, you might lose 10 Aramba, but you kill 15 villagers, right? Right. That's worth it. But with the Fortified Church, there's a second place he can hide villagers, and then suddenly, like, ah, it's probably not worth it, right? And we see Monaspa now, an incredibly strong unit that just gets stronger and stronger the more you have. Yeah, a really difficult position for Tato to be in at the moment. He now becomes aware of those Manaspa. He's aware of the castle, both castle positions, in fact. Has a cheeky TC way up into the north, so maybe taking mm. a page out of Hera's playbook and trying to boom his way out of the situation that he knows he's in. Yeah, we see Tato investing more into Castle Age, spending all the food, making a lot of light cav. I mean, Aramba are such a strong unit that they can still fight against Imperial Age units as long as you take the right engagements, right? Like this, for example, I know Hera isn't imp yet, but like, this is a, an army that Hera can never in a million years fight in the current circumstances. Yep, we got the light cav moving on top of the skirmishers. They'll make quick work of them. It's the Arambi's job to deal with the Manaspa, and right now the light cav are playing a great meat shield to them. That's a solid trade overall, if I say so myself, in the Castle Age here for Tato right before Ooh. his opponent hits Imperial. And Hera, Tato just calls it. Wow. He calls it upon Hera hitting Imp. And Tato is going to sit later tonight and knock his head against the wall thinking about that arena game. I'm certain he will. Yeah. I'm certain he will. Either way, what an incredible series. Can we just take a moment and appreciate the level of Age of Empires that we just witnessed between yeah. these two players? But Hera proving to us why he's the defending champion here at NAC with a hard-fought 3-2 victory to keep the undefeated record. Yeah, and Hera, I mean, this guarantees himself a spot in the semifinal. His Buchholz is also going to be really high now, beating Tato, for example. So, yeah, Hera looking really in a good spot to, again, maybe. I mean, his goal is for sure to defend the title, right? Tato obviously looks to challenge, but he has to go out tomorrow and try to get a win to make sure he gets to the semifinal. Yeah, we will uh, push to get an interview and a word with Hera, of course, in just a moment's time while he secures himself the undefeated record through four series so far here in the Swiss stage. And while he secures that, you can secure your internet yeah. connection oh. with our sponsor, Surfshark. Let's talk a little bit more about them. Viper, take it away. I'll take it away. I'm also, I have to say, I'm 
I'm personally sponsored by Surfshark as well, so I can definitely vouch for them. And personally, I've been using them for years as well, even without being sponsored. So, and that's not, I'm not even kidding, guys. What an endorsement. This is a proper endorsement. Surfshark, a great tool to keep yourself safe on the internet. You can use it for many purposes, such as unlocking libraries in different countries, right? If you're in Germany and you want to watch Netflix or Hulu, Hulu, whatever Who you call it. Well, me, actually. I'm exactly. in Germany all the time. Yeah, yeah. Then you want to watch your American library on Netflix, right? What can you do? You can use, no, no, just kidding. Surfshark <laughs> to put your location in the States to get access to that library, and then you can watch whatever you want. It's also a great tool to keep yourself safe on the internet. You can keep, like, it's, a, you, it's fully provided antivirus to make sure it's safe. Your internet searches, your browsing, it will keep your personal data and information safe as well. It's, you have, they have over 3,200 servers in over 100 different countries. So no matter where you are, you will find a great server for you. And yeah, I'm being told to never bring it over. Never without access, NAC5 is the code. You can find yes. it below, 83% off, 30-day money-back guarantee. Let's make sure we get you the details in the end. But with that, thank you again to Surfshark. Hera has made his way onto the couch. Dash, I think you're going to... You want me to go? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, let, I'll let Viper breathe. Yes. He uh, casted a marathon with me. I'm going to go talk to our victor. We're going to put it over there where Hera and, uh, Hera and Tyler just had an amazing set. I need a breath. How many breaths do you need after that series? That was, that was really tough, really tough. Um, I want to talk about the arena game, but yeah. of course we're going to get there eventually. I feel like <laughs> we'd be doing a disservice to this series if we didn't work our way to that eventually. Um, yeah. You're the defending champion of NAC. You've had uh, just an incredible evolution over your Age of Empires career, and in so many people's mind, are the current guy to beat. So the expectation is kind of like the weight of the world on your shoulders, I'm sure. Yeah. Tato is such a formidable <laughs> opponent. Uh, give me your thoughts entering the series today as you looked to maintain your undefeated record. Well, I think me and Tato were the best players in the group stage so far, and I knew that he was going to be in my toughest match so far, and he was, like, really, really tough match. And um, I'm actually really happy to win it. I, it was, like, so 50-50. Like, if I lost, you know, it could have happened at so many different areas, so... Yeah, I'm happy to pull the victory, and I just want to say once again, GG's well played to Tato. I said, like, GG well played like 10 times in the series, <laughs> but I'll say it one more time. That was really good. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is going to be a series, I think, that is talked about for a very long time, as it was a treat to us as fans, and I'm sure it was a pleasure to play yeah, while yeah, yeah. uh, nerve-wracking, <laughs> to say the least. Let's try and walk through it one step at a time. I myself have to remember what happened here. Oh, yes, <laughs> Tato actually forcing you off of that early gold position, yeah. which um, from us as viewers felt like it might have been enough um, to kind of deliver a killing blow to you with the relocations. Uh, how did you navigate your way out of it? Yeah, relocations were really tough. They came just when I chopped through all the gold, so like Tad was making me work double here. Uh, and I didn't even touch the gold in the end, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> so it was tough. It was tough on my economy, but I knew I had more villagers, so I just felt like if I just relocated, got some gold unit, and then spam like trash unit, like light cab and whatnot, I'd be fine. And it worked out. All right, from there, we jump to the next matchup, Berbers-Bengalis. Now, not the first time we've seen this Civ matchup, yeah. um, and uh, there's been a lot of discussion. I mean, I talked directly to Freakin' Andy. He believes Bengalis is favored in this matchup, but lost it earlier to Jordan. Same yeah. result this time around. So I'm kind of curious your perspective. Did you also believe this was, you know, a Civ edge? Maybe not a Civ victory, but a Civ edge, and there was a misplay from you somewhere? Well, I actually don't know where the misplay was, but I did think Bengalis were better. Okay. Um, and, like, the game went actually exactly how I wanted it to go as well. So I'm really not sure what went wrong. I did lose two vills as I went out to the lake, though. So ah. I think that that was really bad. And aside from that, a, a few small things. But, uh, but it, it is worth for me to review this game later and then come to a good conclusion. I think it's a good call out, though, right? It was uh, it was Loom coming in mm -hmm. as those two villagers made their way out. And a wolf yeah, but eating Tato in the kills. The wolf is always there, so Tato put a scout there. So it was actually well played from Tato to, mm -hmm. to have the scout there. I had a spear coming, and it, it, the spear was, I don't know, just like chilling somewhere. Let's be real, though. I mean, this game extended on for a very long time, and of course, there was a moment where you were basically inside the walls of his base, and yeah. it did feel like we were on the verge of a GG moment, Tato digging deep to fight it back. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, I killed his main base, but he, just, he had so much on, like, the bottom and stuff. Like, I only pushed a few castles, you know? And at that point, I ran completely out of steam. He had Elite Camel Archer, and it's just so hard to fight Berbers. Like, Hassar Camel Archer is one of the best comps in the game, and so I really had to speed it up, and I just, I just couldn't 
couldn't close it out. Yeah, exactly. It felt, again, moments away from victory yeah. uh, for most of it. Tato doing a phenomenal job of keeping those Camel Archer numbers alive. I think that was the yeah, main yeah. thing, right? Um, beyond that, we saw you uh, attempt to go for uh, <laughs> the King Snipes in the end, and I appreciated that more than ever, even yeah. as the pop was dwindling. So, like, you, you have to play to, to your last win condition, and that's what I did here. But obviously, Tato is uh, not going to really fall for that. But, you know, if there's a 1% chance, I'm going to take it. And if, if I took five trips here, maybe, but I showed two, so it, it was tough. And like he had most most of his army killing me. Like I just didn't care about my, my base at this point. So right. I thought maybe. Yeah, actually, look at the beginning happen. of this push. You're at 140 villagers. I think by the end of the game, you're down to like 30. And yeah, that's yeah, exactly. <laughs> to your point, you're like screw the economy. I send everybody forward. I looked back just one time to make sure my king was okay, and that's it. My villagers, I didn't care about them at this point. Okay, so this is a very long game. Talk to me about just the mental recovery or, or maybe the process that you go through as a player uh, when you go through such a taxing game, take the loss, and you know you still have a potential three games ahead of you. Yeah, uh, I think it's important to take like a small break or a breather if you can, uh, if there's time. So I think we both did it after this game. But I think the most important thing is a mental reset. You can't be thinking about what went wrong you can't be thinking about like uh, you know how this game could have played out differently. I just forgot about this game and then moved on to the next one. That's like the best thing I can do to mentally reset Yo, and these focus quick on walls. the rest. These quick uh, yeah. walls. <laughs> this little hole here, we got so concerned. I mean, of course, he is able to get uh, the gate down in the end, but uh, I mean, once again, when the pressure is on, going for that low percentage play, but yeah. every percentage play to try and get the victory. You love to see it. Yeah, exactly. All right, from here we go to game three. We're over on Rocky Forest. Um, I mean, Armenians, Khmer, we thought uh, interesting, or rather an intelligent approach to the draft here from Tato, recognizing that you have favored Armenians yourself, picking it away from you this time around. Yeah. Where did you see the value in Khmer, maybe specifically in this matchup, or just you know, on, on the map as well. Yeah, I think, you well, know, going on, like, any land map, so it's not like I saw any synergy here. Um, yeah, I just thought it was a good sieve, and honestly, he, this, oh, actually, it's worth mentioning, the strat he did was what I wanted to do today. I thought of this last night, and I said, if I can go pikemen, and I can go all in feudal, uh, it would be a really good strategy, but I didn't think of the towers. Ah. So when I saw the pikemen, I prepared a range. I was like, okay, I know about the strategy. I thought of it. But then he brought towers, and that was so smart, and I couldn't uh, couldn't deal with that. So yeah, he, he took the my, my strategy one step further. So his strategy is better. Yeah, the plus one to the strat. Also, yeah. this was just a really funny moment. The house hopping yeah, your yeah. way to some berries in a new TC. The fight out of you was just incredible, though, in this one, because mm -hmm. once again, we can kind of see to a degree the dire position that you're in, I'll call it. But by the same token, Tato sitting in feudal for so long. And mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting dynamic we don't see too often, right, uh, at top level play. Yeah. Usually a couple minutes might separate the, the castle age timings. I mean, I think it was, it was like 10, I think. At yeah. least, <laughs> man. Um, yeah, yeah, so again, yeah. how do you evaluate your position in games like that, is it entirely feel, or or are there, is there something specific you're looking for to know if you're ahead or behind? Yeah, you, usually what I do is like, okay, let's calculate how many bills I lost in feudal. Let's say I lost like ten. Um, then I want to add a TC, and I want to count how long it takes for me to get ten bills out of that. Once I get ten bills, and he's still in feudal, he's on one TC, so I know it's back to even. Like you do all counts. of that in the middle of a game, bro? Well, I'm not counting. <laughs> I'm not counting each guy. Like, there's Jim, there's Bob. I'm not uh, counting I, them all. Okay. But I was like, I barely <laughs> followed that explanation, let alone can I do that in a game myself. Uh, it, it's, I just eyeball it, you know, okay. and that's, that's usually right. enough. This is the game to talk about. This is a game yeah. that's going to go down in the history books in Age of Empires 2. I'm not really going to ask you a question. Just walk me through it. Okay, I mean, okay. For, first of all, I made a video like uh, a month ago. Best arena game ever, me and Taro. I have to make a new video because this, this one is the best ever now. It so really was. Th this one beat it. Uh, I mean, this was just crazy. I went for the same shot I did yesterday against Jordan, but Taro seemed prepared. And uh, he surprised me by massing Lightcap to clear up my early in-push. So my early in-push started from way further back, so my push was delayed. And then we just get into such a clown fiesta where anything is happening, and we're both literally in five different places at once with micro-intensive units. Monks, no one can look away. I can't look away, they die. He can't look away, he gets converted. So yeah. it was such a difficult game, and if you ask him, I mean, I mean, just look at where I started, I have no bills in my base. Where he started, his base is dying, and we're just all over the map. It's, it was a crazy game. Yeah, I said before this to Viper, I want some clownery, and I'd say you guys delivered, maybe even delivered double yeah, yeah. on uh, that front. Uh, again, what an incredible display of fight. And I think that this goes back to one of the things that's constantly talked about you as a player, mm -hmm. right? It's uh, a lot of times phrased as like, oh, 
defensive play, that kind of like resilience and resistance. But just, you know, we say fighting spirit for ACCM. I mean, <laughs> fighting spirit on display here. Yeah. Um, where does that confidence come from that you're like, there's still, there's still a way? Well, I just play towards my win condition. If you saw me like king sniping in the last game, then I have the same mentality here. I just play to anything that puts me ahead. I'm going to play towards this. There's no strategy at this point. It's not like I know how. In fact, at the end, I thought I was, I was about to resign at the end. I, I thought I was dead. No way. I, I didn't know what his situation was like. So I thought like, I, I thought I was losing. I looked at the score. It was looking good. So I was like, okay, let's continue going. And uh, then he resigned like five minutes later. That context makes it all the yeah. much more crazy. I mean, we saw relics trading hands multiple yeah, yeah. times. We were like watching Trevor positions to see where y'all would target. But okay, that game goes in favor of you. You extend it to the fifth and final game. We were having a debate between which we had a really good feeling. Obviously, you were going to go for Georgians. Persians yeah. still a viable sieve, mm -hmm. but we were pretty sure you're going Georgians. We were split. Burmese. Uh, ver I'm forgetting his other civ now. Uh, Poles, Poles. Poles. Yeah. Did Did you have this called, or were you uh, happy to play Georgians actually, into either? I thought I, I thought he was Poles because when he was on stone, I thought it was Poles, and for the half of the game, I thought he was on Poles. I I, I only realized he's Burmese when he had that ramba on the field. I even saw the mill, the regular mill, not the full work, but it didn't click that he wasn't Poles. So that's incredible. I, I had a really big brain fart there, but I, I mean, it's the same civ until the ramba came out. When the ramba came out, I I switched the whole like mentality and and was now playing against Burmese, and I knew that. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, that was a little awkward, but the rest was uh, was pretty fine. Incredible series, man. Uh, it was just such a joy to watch. You sit uh, as the only undefeated player uh, remaining in the uh, Swiss stage. Uh, obviously, this is a very familiar position to where you found yourself last year. Mm. Uh, my question to you is, well, to me, it appears you're playing some of the best Age of Empires you ever have, if not the best. One, do you feel the same? And then number two, how do you feel about the level of competition here this time around uh, than uh, you had to compete against back at NAC4? Actually, this Age of Empires is the best I've ever played, which is concerning because I don't know. Like, Tato is close. Like, <laughs> that's, that's concerning me a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I feel really good. I feel like I'm doing things that I didn't do last year. Like, I, I really worked hard this year to, to try different tactics and just kind of perfect things. Obviously, nothing's perfect, but it's just as good as possible. And I feel like now I'm playing the best of my life. And I hope to continue that. Obviously, though, like anything can happen. So even like if I go undefeated in groups, which is the goal, uh, I, I, if I get the semifinal, if I lose semifinal, I'm out, you know? So it's now the important stages. And I feel like um, it's time to focus up and, and, and try my best and, and close it out. Yeah, we're taking a look at uh, the format for the bracket stages because with that win, you've essentially guaranteed yourself a top two spot, which mm. is incredible in terms of the seeding when it comes to, uh, you know, I guess denying opportunities to fall to some of the other incredible talent, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, anybody, it seems, at this tournament is capable of beating anyone else on the day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, no matter where your confidence lies, I'm sure it's a reassurance to know that I'm at least this far into the bracket stage yeah. to begin with. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, I, I spoke about it yesterday, but I like to get semifinals at least. If I get semifinals, it's a decent tournament. It's a good tournament. So even if I lose in the semifinals, I would be disappointed. But it's not like I can look back and say it was a bad tourney. So I'd be happy with it at the very least. So, yeah, it, it just really stoked about that. It was a hard-fought victory. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to, to move forward from here. All right. Normally, I would ask you about your expectations going forward in the tournament. I know what they are. <laughs> it's to win. You expect the best out of I yourself. hope so. So instead, my final question to you will be about the remaining series we have today. Yeah, yeah. If you <clears throat> couldn't believe it, that was only set number four of the day. We've got one more to go. It's Aliri versus Mr. Yo. And these are two players who find themselves in a very um, – I guess, opposite position to what yeah, you and yeah, Tata yeah. were in, where while they're not at the very bottom of the table, um, both of these players desperately need to put up the wins in order to guarantee a top eight. What are your thoughts on this matchup of invited top four players? Yeah, I mean, uh, well put, invited top four and now fighting for top eight. That's what Yo was saying earlier as well. I, I think I'm going to be casting this one. I'm really interested in the matchup. <laughs> Dude, are you ready for that? Yeah, yeah, no problem, Ooh. no problem. T someone tell Dash about the 12-hour me MVL days, please, like... <laughs> Underestimated me already. That was one series. Let's go again. No, no, no. I'm just impressed, dude. I'm just <laughs> impressed. I know what that took out of me. I can only imagine what it took to play. No, this is. I'm still young. Let's use it. Um, so, like, this matchup is really interesting because both these players, uh, and I spoke to both of them, they know that they're down, but they have such good confidence and belief in themselves that they know they can push back up. And they just want to get to the top eight and take it from there. Then the, 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 the tourney win is possible for both, right? So, both of them have that mentality. They're both killers, and I... Uh, you know, I, I'm really interested to see who's going to win.
All right. Well, thank you again. Congratulations on the victory. Uh, I will say one, one last thing, it. actually. Sorry, just real quick, because I know when I play, you know, me and Tato go at it. I have a lot of fans from the you know Latin American community because I'm living in Argentina right now and I'm interacting with them. And sometimes they have you know a difficulty choosing who to cheer for, me or Tato, because he's obviously from Spain. He's a Spanish speaker. So I just want to say a big shout out to the Latin American community, the Spanish speaking community, uh, for cheering me on and and obviously supporting Tato as well. So whoever was cheering for me, I appreciate you. Whoever was cheering for Tato, thank you as well for. Uh, uh, you know, for fueling the the competition between me and him. So just wanted to give a quick shout out to them and yeah, take it. Take Hell it yeah, me. much deserved uh, um, recognition of the community there. And uh, while uh, Hera takes a small break to gear himself up to cast that fifth and final set of the day, I believe we'll be handing things back to the people behind me, T90, for a little bit of uh, break action. Break action. All right. <laughs> uh, welcome to another round of Bounce. Those that were with us, I don't know, like, 10 hours ago or something. We did a round one of bounce earlier. Uh, with me, I have Andy here, and we're going to do cross table bounce. Same rules as before. We've got Doubt and ACCM. First time player. First time player? I never watched before. Who doesn't have a ball? Chances. Who doesn't yeah. have? Okay. The way this works is we start with one. Oh, I have another. Here, ACCM. So Doubt's going to start. He is to get one bounce on the very low table here, especially First compared point. to Doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Taking no chances Easy. there. <laughs> All right, ACCM. All right. Close one. There we go. Now everyone knows how it works. All right. Two. <laughs> I will already <laughs> 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 okay, okay. <laughs> Oh, man, oh. Dal, you were really winding up there. Oh, okay. okay. Easy, easy. All right, oh. nice. All right, two. Good stuff. Well, <laughs> that's as far as I get. Same as at knock. <laughs> Two. Oh, oh, all right. He's up. Andy, up. Oh, up. God. Andy's out. Oh, oh ACCM's boy. Caster out. Caster against player. Caster against player. Wait, who's the caster? Who's the player? I used to be the player. <laughs> Not you. You haven't done three yet. Oh, shoot. Oh, true. True, true, true. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, uh, sorry. Going my bad. Yeah. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Okay. So now four, huh? Yeah. Mm. Oh. I love your, your wind up. You're like. <laughs> 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 and I'm following with the eyes. <laughs> All right, four. Oh, Ooh, oh. I hear my book loss. <laughs> <laughs> no boo holes in this. No boo holes in this. We, we go again. <laughs> we go again. Not your plebs, it's finals. <laughs> oh. oh. And run. Ah. All right, all right. Oof, I'm nervous. I can't lose to doubt. He's going to talk about it all night at Shisha. All right. Oh. There we go. All right. Close to the caster. All right. Yeah, I mean, I... I pre every night I go back to the hotel and practice. So I can tell. <laughs> I can tell. Um, I think we need one more quick round. We'll start at two. We got team game. We team game. Yeah, us against you. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. As well I have an idea. You pick a I'm team. Out. You pick a team number, and then you have to get the number as a whole. So, like, if you say seven and you do four, then ACCM needs to do three. Is Neely making those rules, or it's like, like I, can we just like bounce the ball and like? Well, how do we count score? With book, like, <laughs> it's one, 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 one. Just uh, instead of me doing twice, we reverse. Like you do one, I do two. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we take four. turns. We take turns. It's simple. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Divide and multiply, and with x factor. Okay. Like, I don't know if that's so. what that is, but we're doing one or two. You're doing you one. Do one, then two. Mm -hmm. Okay. One. Let's yeah, go. I got two now. Okay. And our fail again is at three. Okay. Oh, no. Now I see CM at four. I go four? four? Yeah. Yes. Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> I, I know why you made oh, these rules now. now. I know why you made these rules. <laughs> All right, Dow, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Six, Sam. If you fail, is, you have is still. Is the table big enough for six, actually? <laughs> <laughs> no. 
four. Uh, four. Well, it's the same. Can try six. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm oh, dead yeah, now. Yeah, you I got the life. I got six. 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 Four, five. Ooh. Oh, close. This it was close. Do the six, right? Oh, uh, okay. Well, now for the final, I guess. Now we're against each uh, other. I thought we were on the same team. Well, we lost. <laughs> we won. Remind Dow, you should really never host a tournament because the rules are going to be insane. I know. <laughs> it will be hidden cup. Like you should play with the mask skill, like something on the place. <laughs> All right, awesome. Well, uh, thank you guys for uh, another round of bounce. We oh well, nope, never mind. Nilly's telling me we got to do more. All right, perfect. Uh, well, uh, let's do doubts rules one more time. <laughs> okay. Uh, now you'll start, so we can be easier. Well, I need we a ball. Just started, but okay. Yeah, yeah. It's actually oh, you should it's start, way okay. yeah. <laughs> One. Oh, it bounced twice on this table. <laughs> <laughs> it's another table. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Now you, you now pick the right? tougher task. Oh, you have no ball. Oh my god. Okay, four. So <laughs> Dowd has to try three now. Ooh, okay. So I'm four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're a beast, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually sad that you do this. <laughs> Three, four, five. Oh, Let's go! Oh <laughs> my god! What in the world? Three, four, five, six. Oh eight. my goodness! Only seven, come These on, guys. These teams uh, are rigged. Seven, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure I'm counting. Like, I'm not even close. <laughs> Another easy win. Does ACCM get to go again, or? Yeah, let's. Yeah, go. here we go. ACCM, let's go. Try it. Try seven. How much? Have seven. Seven. Good luck. <laughs> Motivation is high, eh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man, that I was like the style actually. <laughs> that was close. That was better. That was better than your other throw. All right, let me let Jordan me. The seven. Come on. Did we do? Okay, seven, seven, seven. Three, four. Five, six, seven. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. He plays this since the last night. <laughs> <laughs> you come. The only no, no, last no, no, time no, I played no, was no, last no, year. No, last no, time no, I played no. was last year. Zero. All right. All right. Doubt is getting aggressive. Uh, <laughs> we're we are finished. Uh, thank you guys for watching <laughs> Bounce. We're going to send it over for your last series of the day with Nilly and Hera. <laughs> Unbelievable scenes that we have just seen and in the set before. I think something that could go down as one of the best sets of all times, honestly. Hera and Tato there. After game four, I sat in the watching room. I think I want to go in and give both of them a hug. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that truly was one of the one of the greatest sets I've ever played, mm -hmm. maybe of all time, as you mentioned. Um, and I just felt like it came down to the wire so many times. Well. We have Leary against Mr. Yo, we already discussed it, both players struggling a bit there, already 1-2 score, and well, if they don't win today, tomorrow a dire situation for them, so rather make sure to go into the playoffs there, and I think we will take a look at the draft as well. Yeah. So, we will open up with Northern Crossings. That's already a pretty ugly game there for Leary, especially if you want to start re reasonably well into a set. And well, he, he left it open till the end, right? So, like, he could have banned that out. So, maybe he's uh, maybe he's ready to play it. It's always possible. Because that, that, that game one, you have a lot of bands to get to it. So, there's a chance that he, he didn't mind playing it. I would hate to play against Mr. Yo there. Tries to go for a landing, tries to make it messy there. Maybe some Magno ratings. We have seen him play for Archers as well. That's going to be tricky. And then home maps, Marsh Madness, Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus quite interesting against Mr. Yo. And Mr. Yo himself goes for Schultz and Golden Lakes for the very first time. Yeah, we're actually seeing five hybrid maps all played back to back in the set. So there's not a single pure land ooh, map. Ooh. Uh, Northern Crossings can be considered a water map. Same for Shoals. But they have such an important land element that we'll call them hybrid maps for the sake of it. Five hybrid maps. Very interested to see that. Uh, they're personally my favorite uh, maps to, to watch and, and to play. So it's going to be you know quite interesting. I think my mic's a little low. I'm not sure why. I put it closer. Yep. Maybe we're eating it a bit more and that could help. Oh, it's very close. Uh, very cold outside. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we got some fresh air in here. All good. And let's think a bit about the civilizations. What do we think? Persians first pick for Leary. Why, why would you go for that? 
Uh, Persian's first pick seems like it's just a good hybrid sieve in general. I can see that being played on Golden Lakes, Marsh Madness, and Hippopotamus. Mm -hmm. That's one of the most flexible picks I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, going into this best of five because that can be played on three three maps, and that's not likely at all to to have to have have happen. Okay, but like. Persians, what are your options if you fight for water? What are your land options at the same time? Well, I mean, they're a great cavalry sieve in general. So I feel like if you're if you're able to play, you know, water. But look at look at these civilizations against it. Koreans have pikemen, Japanese have pikemen, Adsec have pikemen, and as we all know. Oh my god, he brought a shirt and everything. Pikemen counters knights. That is a bold take. Now the thing is, as I explained to you the last time, the thing is, as I explained to you the last time, you know, Persians, they win the water, they get ahead to Castleage, they go knights, and an early Castleage? <laughs> knights counter pikes. What? And that's how it is. That's how it is. That's well, it is. I think we will uh, have to look into the games and get a better idea of how this one is going to play out. And, uh, well, I read the handbook and it says pikes are supposed to be a counter of the knights. I think Leary will agree with me there. Yeah, let's take a look. I mean, Leary's got a few calf sieves. Maybe Mr. Yo more in your line of thought. He prepared the pikeman sieves. We'll see how it all goes down. Hey, let's let's make it. This set settles the beef. Okay, okay. This the best set of, it The all. best of five to decide if knights counter pikes or yeah. pikes counter knights. 100%. Let's just take a look at it, see what Leary can do, see what Yo... Yo is representing Nilly in the pike department. <laughs> Leary is representing me in the cav department. Not a good look, because he's usually in the archer department. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. He is like... He's out of town right now. And Mr. Yo is more like the sneaky siege workshop department. Yeah, yeah. So, like, do <laughs> angles counter archers? Next discussion. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's just him in that department. He's a, he's a one-man uh, one man job there. Uh, but, yeah, we'll take a look at what... They seem to be both a little bit out of the comfort zone uh, as far as our discussion goes. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what they can do. And, uh, obviously, it's, uh, on, a on a more serious note, this set is extremely important. We'll remind the viewers once again. Uh, and so both these guys, they really want to secure a win. If you secure a win, you basically make it to the top eight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and if you don't win, then you're like needing that last win, mm -hmm. or else uh, things could be, you know, pretty problematic for you. And both players in the semifinals or even further at NAC four, and that's why they got reinvited into NAC five. Both kind of the guys that are underperforming in our standards right now in the all-time money list placed three and five great map understanding there for mr yo as we said he is one of the guys that puts the opponent into the toughest decisions and we are jumping into game one the last set of day four nsc5 group stage Byzantines for Leary, Koreans for Yo, and of course the map is Northern Crossings. This is a very similar map to Northern Isles, which is something that the viewers might have seen in another tournament. This tournament though, there's now crossings connecting both islands on the sides, and that's really important because it allows for more land play. You don't have to just transport to get over, you can just simply walk on the sides, and it's pretty big. Mm -hmm. Now the big question, obviously, you already start with the transporter, right? right? We have seen options to simply go for the landing. Some people try to find other aggressions. How big of an impact is that crossing, actually? Yeah, I, I think it plays a pretty big role because you can either go for the crossing or you can go for the transport, and I feel like it gives you really good options. And top players love options. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't want to be forced into one thing that makes it predictable. Your opponent just keeps track of your transport, and you know the the whole uh, the whole landing game is over. But now with the crossings, you can either transport to you know to sneak around. You can use the crossing, and especially in the mid late game. Where instead of transporting 20 units, you just go right on the side. Yeah, people love their options. That's why we don't have one-dimensional civilizations such as the Franks that always go knights, can easily be countered by pikes. <laughs> and that's why we see, for example, Byzantines that can go for even cheaper pikes. Yeah, pikes, skirms, camels, and, you know, just things in general that uh, counter other units. Uh, but, of course, as we all know, guys, the knights in early castle age are beating the pikemen. Therefore, we'll call them a counter for the time being. But again, it's an ongoing debate, guys. Transfer shift from Yo looping around and actually spots Leary's back dock. Back docking generally a more defensive stance, defensive approach. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they're both going for it right now. You personally kind of became a Korean lover on this map here. Maybe walk us a bit through your process. I know that initially it was a bit tricky, but then there was one eye-opening set against Tato. Yeah, I got it from Tato. I lost a, an important match in Red Bull, Willow Low. 
uh, 6. And then I took it to then win Grand Melee using the Koreans against Leary. So Leary is very familiar at playing against Koreans. And Koreans are very special on this map because they don't have demos. So in general, they might not be considered the strongest and most well-rounded water sieve. However, they do have towers with a ton of range. I think it's 13 range in late game. They shoot a bunch of arrows if you get them all upgraded. And those towers with heated shot will melt ships. So controlling the shore with towers and then fighting with your own navy is a really good way to win in late game using all of the Korean bonuses tied together. Yeah, especially like the warship cost reduction there of 20 wood, right? I especially if we think about, we can easily go for 100 galleys here. Mm. We can also go for some town center eating. Oh, oh Mr. Yo. That is not going to be good. Should have stayed on his island. The crossings, <laughs> the crossings were not good for Yo. That's a disaster for him. Losing the scout. And oh, this is crucial because Leary's using this to transport over. He actually committed to it before the scout went down, in all fairness. But now that the scout's gone, how does Yo spot this? This is this is pretty much impossible, right? W what is he even seeing right now? He's like, look at that. He's like blindlessly aiming and trying to see, okay, uh, maybe you're going there. He's also going for the sneak, transitions onto gold now, and both going for the sneaky dock behind enemy lines. That water looks interesting on Yo's perspective. He's got all the mods like different. He's got the animated icons. This guy, he, he's a he's a he's a high high quality user for Age Vampires. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of interesting that Leary built a house there. Don't you think? Like, isn't that potentially giving away the landing that he already has some villagers yeah. there? Or does that not matter because the scout is dead anyway? I feel like it's strange, but maybe he thought because the scout's dead, there's not, uh, you know, not really a, a reason to be scared of it. Uh, the funny thing is, Yo is forward docking, but he doesn't have demos. So if that gets into like a close quarter fight, demos could be missed. And Leary's doing the same thing on the other side. And keep in mind, if there's no demos, Byzantine fire, it's pound for pound better than the Korean fire. Yeah, Korean obviously cheaper, and typically if we have one dock against one dock, we mainly go for fire galleys, right? Because demos, they become better the higher the numbers are, but if both players only have one dock each side, fire galley, the dominating thing. Especially if we are going, oh, that's w when he was distracted, trying to go up to fuel age, and that's why couldn't really mic yeah. the scout at the same time. Yo, playing on 25 APM, couldn't quite get his scout uh, in safe uh, to safety there. And oh, what do oh, we have here? This is a little bit of a trap. Can he get it? Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, it's through. What? It's crazy. Could have oh, walled behind away. there. Yeah, he could have walled it to, to play extra safe. Uh, but that villager. Oh, it could always have transported it away though. So that villager oh, yeah. should be safe. <laughs> Hype caster. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a big deal. Uh, but Yose is actually just gonna run it. He's making full use of the crossing this game. Just run it back to his base. Leary with the forward dock. Is he going for fire galleys? Of course he is. It's a little bit of uh, attacking and defending now. And Yo's not producing anything at home. He He's know. exclusively producing at the front. And that is the big loss there with the scout. That is a beautiful opening for Leary. Yeah, and that's a really big deal. Yo should not lose all of these. He can always run them away. But losing one or two is very reasonable. It's ex in fact expected. As you can see, one dies and the rest run. But a running worker is not a working worker. And, uh, you know, the food income from those fishing ships not coming in for you at least for a couple minutes now. Hmm, this is really tricky. How do you maneuver here as Mr. Yo? You know you're a bit behind when it comes to the economy. Now it's even tricky to keep your town center running. Is something I thought, but now I see a 17 on food? Yeah, I mean, I think he's abusing the berries right now. Like 10 on berries or something for sure. Oh no, zero on berries. He's taking the hunt. Some on sheep, some on the deer, and actually taking quite a lot of that as well. So very interesting. Maybe you can mill that. There's four more deer up top there. We'll call them Ibex just for the chat. Do you want to pet Leary a bit? What? What? If you want to pet Leary here on the other side. Oh, I didn't even see us. Holy moly, that's crazy. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to pet Leary, to okay. be honest. I'll leave that to you. Um, but that is a nice little where's Waldo situation going on here. Food market. An average Northern Crossing player buys 430 food. Well, makes a lot of sense, right? Trying to get up to the next age a bit faster. We can easily go for a lot of villagers on gold. And, well, it's rarely the case that we go that heavily on deer, like we just saw Mr. Yoko. Yeah, and Leary's going to go ahead and pick up that market. Just wants to transition to the next age here. And the thing about water maps is, like, you might expect someone to, like, fight for the water and then transition to the land. But generally speaking, you're soaking all your wood into the military on water. So, like, to go barracks and archer range is super hard to squeeze in. So players after water tend to just go castledge just to make it easier for themselves. 
500 food for Liri, 400 for Mr. Yo. So Castle Edge timings will be relatively competitive, both building the market. And we will see how much will be sold. Problem though for Liri, building that outpost can't really sell the 200 stone. And that one seems cleared up quite nicely. Liri with a solid 6 1 KD. Yeah, he's been winning the fights and also harassing Yo's fish. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets the cast stage faster. He did actually invest into an outpost, so he cannot sell his stone. Yo still can if he wants to, but neither player is like rushing to castle it here. Yo has the navy to defend this, but it's there we go. Away. Can oh, you maybe save those two. Maybe he was baiting. Ooh. Oh, who let him cook? Look at those. Those are alive. Now he's got three. Not a bad play from Yo. Yeah, then wins the 3 2 fight even against Byzantine bonus. Liri tries to get away, won't be too easy, but this one is cleared up quite nicely. Yeah. And Liri can breathe, can continue to attack. And those four, four fire galleys now can sail around and pressure from the other side. Yeah, this is really good. Now that Liri is freed with those fire galleys, he's going to dominate the fight once they get around. So it's safe to say that Liri will win the water here, at least temporarily. It is possible on Northern Crossings that he could make a comeback onto the water in late game. Gallants could come out, and oh my god. Transport prepared to block. Wow. Wasn't needed because yeah, Yo yeah, was yeah. microing, but he was ready. That was sick. Leary bringing that transport ship ready to block the retreat. Doesn't come through. Yo loses all of his navy, and now Yo is going for something crazy. Is that a redock for turtles? Ooh, it could be. It He's could not queuing fire galleys. I think that could make sense. Yeah, yeah. Coming back on the water for turtles. It's a little bit strange. The turtle ship, of course, it's a badass unit. It looks really cool. Very expensive, but it packs a punch. Let's see if that's what he wants to go for. Maybe he just wants a dock to defend with monks, just to have some presence. Maybe a tower rush for. here. Could I wouldn't be. be surprised if some villagers are now running for the stone. Could also go for some center control. Sense all oh, five oh, 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 oh. coming from the left hand side. Yes, no, if he really goes in the wrong direction. Oh, just passing. Just that's crazy. Passing. Leary okay. is just passing. Just wants to use the water. Not not concerned about what Yo's uh, doing. Incredible, right? Yeah. That just happened, and Leary already there, knowing. Okay, I killed two dogs of yours already. You have to be up to something. Yeah. Now build more outposts. Love it. Yeah, th th this is so interesting. And obviously, Byzantines get not just free town watch. They get free town patrol. So Leary has scouts. Oh, he saw it. He saw it. He didn't. He didn't go back to make Yo believe that he didn't see it, and he prepared the scouts. No way. Oh, I think. I think that's what we saw. At least, he had one or two prepared, maybe, but he was ready for it. The perfect counter. Wow. He Three knew scouts. about it. And now the fire galley is probably from the right hand side. Not sure if that transporter gets home. No. Ooh. Takes out the dock first. Okay. Very interesting play. Leary actually, kind of on top of his game right now. He's not letting Yo get away with anything sneaky. Mm -hmm. He knows he's winning the water. Leary is not some guy that's known for his water play, but he's been playing fantastic so far. Goes for the light calf. Now the fire galley here to punish. And that transporter getting really low. Three villagers oh, in there. Oh, oh. And even if they evacuate the other side, the scouts could be around. <sighs> okay, they're out. Transport's down, but the scouts are closing in. Transport's not down. Transport's down. Transport's down. Three villagers should make it back to safety. No, actually, no. One or two will die for sure. There is a town center being built. I don't know how good Yo's at quick walling, but this is the time to show it off. One dead, second one in quite some danger together with the third one, and this could already be the GG. Oh my 17 God. minute game on Northern Crossing, something we never see. Top tier performance from Leary. Mm -hmm. That was that was fantastic. I don't mm -hmm. even think Yo played bad. I think his strategy was a little bit dubious. You know, forward dock against Byzantine felt a little strange, but nonetheless, Leary played it like almost perfectly. And what I liked about what Leary did there is that not only did he win the water on his side and, you know, obviously on Yo's side to push Yo completely off water, but he also prepared a few scouts to make sure Yo can't get those towers down. And that's really good against Koreans. Maybe against another civ like Armenians or something. You're not too worried about them going for map control. They'll probably go fortify church at home and play it a little bit more clean. But against Koreans, they want to get the towers, especially a guy like Yo. He loves the map control. And I think, you know, Leary knowing that, going for the scouts, was a solid counter. Yeah. How much did it come down to Mr. Yo losing the scout there? Because from there on, he didn't really have the information, right? He underproduced the fire galleys at home. Yeah. And Leary knew exactly, okay, I built some at the defense at home, some at the front. Yeah. And then it just snowballed because Mr. Yo then overreacted with all the food, couldn't really contest the water anymore. Yeah, 100%. I, I think Leary saw the whole picture and Yo was like, just like half of it, but the other half, the crucial half at home, he just had no idea about it. So I'd say the scout loss just kind of guaranteed Leary wins water there, I would say. It is quite unfortunate for Mr. Yo, right? Especially on this map, it should be relatively easy to get 
safely in onto the island of the opponent and not lose your scout, right? There's a small elevation around the town center. You see the big wood lines. You know they're just running around the cross. There could be an option as well. People are enjoying the set. They, like, we went wild. We went absolutely <laughs> wild in your set. And I, like, yeah. even said, just imagine on Saturday or Sunday where we have 450 people not far from here cheering and seeing this crazy arena game. They're going wild. Yeah, I mean, I hope I hope we can perform for them uh, in, in the in the knockout stage. I Dave, let's let's high five, Dave. Yeah. Okay, that was good. That was good. I, I don't know what I was supposed to do during that. I was just watching. Yeah. Oh, also, I have to apologize to the to the viewers. Actually, like for me? yesterday. No, no, no. I mean, no. That you've apologized enough. I think. But uh, so yesterday, I was preparing for my set, and like Jordan was taking away like the the like the table. He was changing the table or something. Mm -hmm. And I was like in the zone. And I was chewing gum, and I was chewing like a cow. And I just apologized for them like looking at that because I didn't know the camera was on me, and I was in the zone. I was just like playing, and like I was chewing like like nobody's business. So. Apologies for that, guys. I, I did, didn't know anyone did, was watching. Did you rewatch the VOD? Yeah, like I, I, I was scrolling through the VOD to see. Uh, there's a few good moments in last in last uh, night's game, and then I saw that, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is embarrassing. <laughs> this is very embarrassing." So I thought I'd, I'd definitely apologize for that. Yeah. Well, let's see. No bubble gum on the two of them. No, no, they're clean. Larry, looking at his pulse. Did you just see? He checked. Um, Looking good. My pulse? He's, okay. see, he's seeing if he can uh, chug another Red Bull or not. <laughs> <laughs> Maintaining the pulse at a reasonable level. I think we saw Hart at 160 uh, pulse or heart rate uh, in his earlier sets. He was on like three Red Bulls and a coffee. Yeah. That Be was before he even started practicing, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I made sure today he was max one Red Bull. I thought it would change things up. Unfortunately, it did not. Maybe he needs five or six. We'll see. But anyways, hopping into game two, we got Leary and Yo Saracens versus Cumans on Shoals. Cumans, he loves the Cumans, Mr. Yo. Yeah, indeed. And that's why we often see a lot of bans against Mr. Yo and his Cumans. I think like you and Leary typically prioritizing that against him quite a bit. Why would you think Leary wants to play against the Cumans here? That are so deadly because they can build a second town center already in Feudal Age and therefore can contest the water a bit and also have a great economy. Yeah, I think, so the reason why Leary probably wasn't concerned about Cumans is that, generally speaking, you don't see them on a water map or a hybrid map. Because on a hybrid map, you can just go dock and, 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 and add some fishing ships. Both players can do that. And it just feels like that negates the second TC advantage, where on a land map, your opponent does not have a single extra worker besides his main town center. However, shoals, the water isn't great. Like, there's not much fish. There's shore fish. It's very far away. Uh, you know, you don't want to heavily commit to going for, like, water play as you normally would see, not a lot of fishing ships. And so Cumans make sense in this particular case. Yo will still dock and then add a second TC as well. Mm -hmm. And I feel like opening Cumans with, like, one galley is actually quite sweet because you're blocking, like, up to four fishing ships of your opponent yeah. and then Leary needs to maybe make something happen in Carthage. You will always lose the water. That is kind of a given thing, but then you feel like, okay, in Castle Age I can come up with crazy stuff. But then we have to think, typical unit choice there for humans might be step lancers, not too great against the camels. Yeah, I feel like Saracens, nothing too special on this map in particular. I just feel like they do everything you need from them to do. They have the really nice camels that lets them control the map because there's a lot of space. They have a solid, reasonable boom, nothing too crazy, but to use the market to kind of navigate around that. And then they have the faster firing galleys, which is super solid at controlling the water. And I just feel like Saracens is a flexible and a safe pick here, whereas Cumans are like, go big or go home. Mm -hmm. And is that maybe something that Yo feels like, okay, this is a map that where I typically don't shine and therefore try to make something happen that puts my opponent out of their comfort zone? But, uh, he doesn't shine it. It's his home map. He home mapped this. If he's not shining, I mean... Yeah, that doesn't make a lot of yeah, sense. Then. I, well, I, then he has to be confident with Cumans. I think he thinks Cumans are amazing here. And honestly, they might be. I've, I've seen them once. Oh, they, they lost that game. But you know, maybe he's going to make some adaptations here. It wasn't him playing. So you know, maybe he just likes how Cumans feel. And we'll see what he can uh, what he can do with them. Let's think with Cumans. Like, what are the typical civilizations that we run into? Maybe Italians? Not that great if we get to Genoese. Saracens, not that great maybe against the Camels. If we think about Bohemians as an option with all their halberdiers, and we know Pike counter the Knights. <laughs> I didn't even want to start with that, but it kind of, it kind of lined up. It's natural, it's natural. And some other Pikes that I wanted to mention. I forgot. 
You don't even know the Pike Civs, and you're claiming you claim to know about Pikes. You don't know the Pike Civs. I know all the Knights. Good, good job. You know all the Knights Civs? All of them. Name all of them. <laughs> I just don't want to bore the viewers, but, <laughs> but I can. But I can. Um, so I, we're going to see both players fast feudaling here, which is interesting. Like, Yo for sure will fast feudal because he wants the second TC potentially. Leary didn't have to. He could have fast castled. In this case, he did choose the fast feudal. Okay, scouting here. So Leary kind of wants to know. Am I expecting a, fight, a galley against me or not? I think that scouting is really clever. Now he sees the dock, therefore no additional fishing ships. If he didn't see the dock, I wouldn't be surprised if we if could have seen like six, maybe even up to seven. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Cubans, they don't have to play water because they have that second TC access there. But of course, Leary spots out the dock, knows that Leary and, and Yo will share the lake. And, and the lake is pretty substantial. It actually plays more of a map control role here rather than an economy role. So both players, although they're not fishing a lot, they still want to contest the water and they still want to try to snipe each other's early game fish. It's not very efficient, but it's definitely worth, you know, it's just some small poke against your enemy. Yeah, the minimap is actually debating viewers quite a bit, right? If you look at it and feel like, okay, 40% of the map is water, but it actually only plays a very insignificant role for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Later on a bit map control, now kind of equal when it comes to the food income, but those are the major areas we have to fight for because we have very limited gold at home. Yeah, I, I was actually talking to T90 the other day, I think it was yesterday, and uh, I, was, I was telling him uh, on a hybrid map or a water map, the better the water map, it, it's determined by how good land play is. The more land play is possible on a water map, the better the water map. And I think Shoals does it really well. Because if it's pure water and that's the only thing that can like work, then it's a terrible map because water gameplay is just simply not as exciting. So playing land and water in the same time is what creates a good map. And if like Shoals, with all the gold on the sides, that's usually more of an incentive than just the water gameplay. And that's why, for example, T90 loves maps where you can also do three archer ranges on islands mm -hmm. and therefore have more flexibility and it's not only dominated by water. Yeah, and T90 is really smart. Most players go across with the archer ranges, but he does it on the neutral island to, so his opponent can't scout it. And mm -hmm. he just leads up into the transport on enemy island. We see Leary going for the galley here, looking to snipe some of Yo's fish. I'm not sure if Yo is defending himself. Feels like he's just running away, not going to commit to a galley himself. I think next step for T90 might be like playing Khmer and putting three farms on there. Ooh. They can't get raided. True, and it's very efficient because like you don't even need a mill. Mm -hmm. It's all good. And you invest into the transport, but the transport, like, it's it's a flexible unit. Yeah. And T90 likes his flexibility here. But T90 not happy with us. Not oh. happy about that. Yo, oh, he loses a scout again. And that was the disaster for game one. This could be a repeat of the first game. Oh, and Libra immediately goes for a stable. Did he, did he potentially want a blacksmith? Sees the scout goes down and goes well, he had stable. the barracks, otherwise he couldn't build the stable, right? Okay, so okay. It, it might have been the plan there, but obviously Mr. Yo does not know that that is actually an option here for Lyric. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know if Yo scouted the barracks even. If he doesn't know about the barracks, he has no reason to suspect it's going to be a stable play. But it is going to be a stable market, which lets Leary go for some light calf, maybe a couple camels. Maybe he plays for some raids, maybe he plays for the relics. Mm -hmm. This is a super flexible opening, and I'm quite, I'm quite happy for it. And it's guaranteed map control now, not only because of the scout that he will have, and Mr. like with the stable that he's going to build, that could easily be some relics. Let's think about like two at the bottom, four kind of at the top there, one in the base of Mr. Yo. Quite some options. Is there an option? On other maps, we sometimes see villagers going forward and trying to make something happen in Castle Age. Yeah, on this map, it's a little bit difficult because going to your opponent's base, you can't go through the center, although you can walk there, your opponent has a tower. Um, but I could see Leary sneaking around, although in this case, I feel like he's just going to go make a town center potentially. I'm not too sure. Uh, okay. They put us at the bottom there. At the galley. At the galley. Okay. okay. A couple of sailors. Well, a couple of sailors. We have Liri with the two villagers there at the bottom. What do you do now? You already have the stable. Is it still knights and mangonels? That would be the typical approach of most people. I think camel mangonel makes more sense because you're using the Saracen bonus, but it, it should be that. Like Liri, I thought he might be going for the gold, but it, it looks like he's going past the gold of those two villagers, mm -hmm. and it will be a forward siege monk play. Potentially a good counter to the Cumans, and forget about the gold, he sold his stone. Yeah, yeah. He can't even make a town center without going through the hassle of rebuying it. So it's definitely going to be a push, and I'm, I'm interested to see if this works out. And Mr. Yo completely blind here. Yeah, we have some more HP on those Palisades. Yeah, we have some houses here, but that is an easy attack point. And Yo, well, he wants to go for the stables now, but only now jumped onto gold, so that will be really tricky for him. 
Yeah, and Yo is significantly further away from the castle age. Like, Leary's about to hit in 20 seconds, and Yo, he's not even in the position to even think about clicking up. He needs at least a couple minutes before clicking castle age. Mm -hmm. He's preparing the buildings right now, as we can see, but Leary sees everything as well. He yeah. will take out the dock. I wouldn't even be surprised if Leary thinks, okay, maybe I can squeeze in one or two extra fishing ships here, because he, <gasps> he needs the blacksmith. He wanted oh. to go for the siege workshop. Oh, that's bad. Uh, there's nothing he can do though. He needed the market to sell stone, and now and now you oh. gonna spot the spearman. This is huge. So now Leary not only is pushes stalling out because he forgot the blacksmith, but he actually will get spotted out. So this is the worst of both worlds there for Leary. It's not to say the push can't work. It's just that Yo has got a couple of extra seconds yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And now the massive advantage for Mr. Yo, you can build a siege workshop already in feudal age. And therefore, your mangonel basically can be produced the moment you reach Castle Age. And a great player like Mr. Yo, so experienced with Cumans, he will think about that. If it wasn't for him heavily being on stone, I think he might even play Kipchaks. Yeah, yeah. It looks like he wants to play towards Kipchaks. On, on Shoals, you don't have that much stone, not that much gold either at your main island. So it's, or ma main area, I should say. So now we're going to see a tower. He really wants to defend himself until he's able to get a castle. Once he gets a castle with the Kipchaks, he should be completely safe. Kipchaks do reasonable against camels, reasonable against mangonels. And the castle, such an amazing defensive structure in early castle age. So you're now ahead by 500 resources that might increase a bit because literally, obviously, the 1TC play, a bit of fishing ships here, but his economy is not really increasing right now. Well, Mr. Yo, he just and wants to buy himself some time. Is the Siege Workshop. Yo goes for it. Again, such an experienced Cuban player. Uh, and you know what? I feel like Leary might be playing into what Yo wants him to do right now. It, it might have been more reasonable to just take the fishing ship advantage and go for some town centers for Leary. You know, concede that he's going to be down 10, 15 vills and then slowly try to catch up because now he's down to 10, 15 vills. And he's not going to even be close to Yo's vill count unless he finds some damage. And Yo, with a perfectly defended base, let's see if, if Leary can break it here. But that house is already down. Lots of damage on that second house. I think he will be in. Most of the villagers already moved around. He's Ooh. even walling behind there. That is really clever. Yeah, Yo gives up that territory. The Siege Workshop could be compromised now, though, now that Leary has moved past that. Sees the second town center, but the scout is coming out. Could snipe a monk. This is huge. Absolutely crazy, gets one, Mangonel tried to kill, but no Scout way. gets the kill and gets out of there. And now the oh. crowd takes against the, Mangle, against the Camels, they're low now. Oh my god, that was such an insane play from Yo. A small mistake from Leary, a microscopic mistake. And Yo punishes two monks down. Those are absolutely crucial monks as well because they complement the push so well. Now we see a Mangonel from Mr. Yo coming out of that forward siege workshop. Could be a little awkward, but he's still going to try to go for it. Yeah, and this is basically impossible now for Leary to play perfectly. The Mangnal will pop. You don't really know where it's coming out unless we kill the Siege Workshop in time. 600 HP, 70% oh, here. Oh, it's oh. close. It's close. It's close. He's yeah, going to get it. it. The Mangnal is not going to come out. It will die. It will die. It will die. It will die. 95% could be a Mangnal kill. 99 oh. gets the kill, but auto shoots onto the Knights might die here. Oh and Yo is not getting the value and had to pay the full price. Yeah, damn. That's crazy. That's like buying something from the grocery store and dropping it as you're leaving. No value from it. But you still paid for it. Now we see the castle coming down from Mr. Yo. Adds another siege workshop as well. And Leary's taking his time. He's hitting the tower, hitting the siege workshop. Yo will get the castle freely. I think Yo's still in a better position. Still no fletching though, no botkin, right? So minimal or uh, minimized range there on the castle potential. But can obviously get those upgrades. Kip checks will be there. And look at that. Mr. Yo now building some scouts himself to get some vision over there. Confirms that it's not one TC all in anymore. Yeah, now we see. Leary, 2TC, second one on the gold. So he's playing a clear map control game. He knows he's behind 15 villagers, or, or, or so. He, he's eyeballing it, of course. Mm -hmm. He knows he's significantly behind in economy, but he's got the map control to show for it. And with that map control, you can go heavy on gold. You can start, ooh, good micro there on the Maginels. On points. Oh. Tries to get away, 22 HP, Take can't really take a fight. But that's the second Siege Workshop that's going down. In theory. We'll get one here, nice move. Good play from Yo there, good play from Yo. Siege Workshop will go down, that's a reasonable trade. Siege Workshop for a Mangonel. About equal resources, of course, the Mangonel worth a little bit more though. I, I still feel like Leary's push is alive and well, but Yo, wh what are we witnessing? And look Yo at is about the stable. Look at the stone count. Oh, he might go for a sneaky castle? No way. Oh, He's gonna go for a town center, Leary has to scout. Leary's missing it. Both. No, no way, no it. way. He's How so good. good is Leary wow, playing today? That's crazy. He was not happy with his performance the other days, but today he is showing up. He sees everything. He knows the aggression is coming from the left-hand side. So the only way Yo can get to gold would be 
through the top. Yeah, th that, that was absolutely insane. Really, really well played from Yo. Uh, sorry, from Leary there. Of course. Oh, wow. massive oh, and six. dodges and dodges Yo shot and might get the kill. Yeah, gets the kill. Incredible play oh by Leary. My God, forget about archers. He's the Manganel guy from now on. It's still a range unit and it's still slow. It's about the same thing. He's saying. Now we see Yo. Going for the quick walls because he knows the camels are surely coming. Now sc spouts it with the scout, but the camels, yo, quick walling, it's like him solving a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> I, it's, it's way too hard. Like, it should be a lot simpler than this. But he's going to get the quick walls down in time. Give me a little bit of a heart attack. Kip Chaps will go up. Kip Chaps have really low HP. 40 HP without bloodlines. We have bloodlines now, so it is 60, but two Magnus shots. Still, the end for those Kip Chaps here if he doesn't close the distance. And dodges those shots. I think Question this is, TC like, goes up, but what are we yeah, dealing yeah. with it? You get the TC up, now what? Because the Kip Trucks can't just go to defend there. The cameras are going to be on the way. You don't have that many Kip Trucks to spare. Yo's just going to use them to raid instead. Yo still have villagers, but the map control is all leery. And in this whole time, he's been fishing with a few fishing ships, which is a nice little boost. Next ground attack against another Crazy. scout. Now the Kip Trucks. Now the big question, what is Yo trying to do here goes for the counter attack only four kip checks though not sure how much they can achieve oh this is wild really really well played here from leary so far on the push i still feel like yo's in it the score is obviously saying that leary has a clear advantage but oh some good counter attacks here from those kip checks and we do see botkinero is in no ballistics yet but botkinero you know it's a reasonable damage output here he does have to watch out though because the camels will destroy them if they get up close third siege workshop behind the town center now the magnol what can we see gets a nice kill good play by mr yo can he get a second one seems like he will get at least some damage but that was very minimal and now the next attack gets another wow. kill leary out of his mind with the magnol control in this game it is not easy to do that uh, really well played from Leary to trade that one back. One for one. Kip Trex running around. They're finding reasonable damage here. Now we see a, a castle from Yo on the right side where he made the town center. So he's making use of the town center by going for a castle. That's a great play, getting back to map control. But Mr. Yo, only six on food now. That was main part of his economy there on food. Therefore, town center idle time will go quite high and pushing this area back. But you can see Leary, he accepts that and builds a town center on the other side. Wow, yeah, he, he just has to give that up. Yo, actually, it was a great play. That castle was fantastic. And now the Kipchak at the same time. Mangano ground is like, Leary, this is the best Mangano play I've ever seen from him. Ever? Oh my god. This has been quite the night for you then. This is fantastic Mangano play. I uh, don't want to understate it myself. Now we see Leary having to struggle on this side because of the Kipchaks. So although he's focused on the Mangano push, half of his focus is on the other side. Kipchaks, they obviously are quite a glass can in the sense that Mangonauts can kill them quite easily. More pressure there. Obviously quite some repair on that town center as well. Yo still very active. Gets a nice monk kill. Gets another villager for himself. Wait, that's those, really bad. Most those, of those, those are villagers exposed. are now exposed, yeah. But focus on the Mangonaut. Gets Ooh. another kill. More kills there. Gets two. Gets three. Perfect oh, defense yeah. there for Mr. Yo. And the Kip checks are getting cleared up. Wins for both players on either side. Yeah, that's good. I mean, that was at the end there. Some of the worst Magnum Micro I've seen from Leary. <laughs> 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 now, nah, I'm totally playing. Of course, the Kip checks uh, closed the gap. And there's not much you can do. But I think Leary was more than happy to give that up because he achieved what he wanted to do. He closed the Vill Cap a little bit. And he's got some decent map control. But I feel like better than the Magnum clear up, the castle on top from Yo was really, really smart. Yeah, and he might be one of the best ones, making the like super messy siege workshop here, siege workshop there, try to make something with unique units work, right? He's so incredibly strong there and is getting rewarded by the 25 villager lead. Yeah, it, it's quite substantial. Now he's got some space to breathe. He also has access to some gold. So there's really no downside to those extra 25 villagers. Even has reasonable eco upgrades there. Bosaw, Horse Caller, and Wheelbarrow are in. And Kip Trucks are really decent against Camels. They're really, really decent. Mm -hmm. Especially if we don't have the full armor no bloodlines yet so those camels yeah we have 25 hp more but could be 45 more let's take a look kip check goes for the Ooh, split micro. that could be a kill nice move very nice I, I, it feels like yo is now in the zone it took a cumin game to get him in the zone here and he's going crazy this is some good performance from him ram coming forward as well the kip checks are finding insane kills ballistics are in those villagers are all dead yeah and we were to have 25 villager lead. That is now increasing. More villagers idle there, as we can see. Leary's work efficiency should be dropping in quite some seconds. How do you ever take a good fight against double castle kip check production yeah, in castle age? Absolutely crazy, because now, yo, he's not behind in terms of economy, but he's got also got the better unit at the same time. 
Look at the old stone again. He's gonna go for the third castle. Third castle. Control and both sides, wow. Then Lyri's completely wow. out of gold. And then you have to go for like elite skirms. Yeah. Oh, and he's watching. There's so much going on and he's actually watching. Oh god. Dodges. Oh, and Lyri's playing well with the mangonels, but I mean, there's not much you can do. Yo is on point. Dodges everything. I haven't seen Yo Micro like this in a long time. Look at that. Dodges most of the shots. Now Leary recognizes the threat. Makes a defensive castle. Will it go up in time? Yo is clearly controlling the top. It's all about the bottom now for Leary. Yeah, the bottom he tries to get the castle up, but there's not a single unit, right? If the Kipchaks were there and trying to go for it, Mr. Yo thinks, okay, I can't stop this one. Goes away to the other side. Maybe thinks about imping. His resources are looking quite hot. Yeah, and you know what? Leary is somewhat close to Imp as well. With the use, some use of the market, he could get there, but I feel like Yo is going to get the Imp in a much better position. The cameras are just simply not enough here versus the Kipchaks. Decent attack round attempt, but it doesn't really find its targets, and Yo can do this all day. He's also got Ballistic, so Mike Ring is so easy to hit and run. Hard to avoid those shots. And now, even though... Oh! No way! Yo saw Leary's castle on the bottom, decides to then make the castle on top. And he knows how many villagers were there, yeah, and Leary yeah. knows I can't protect those 1-1. One, one. We Crazy. have a set on our hands. Crazy. Chugs that Red Bull like an absolute G. He's earned that Red Bull, and he's feeling good about himself. Really well played. He did show how strong the Cumans can be. I feel like now Cumans are on all the players' radars uh, as far as the top tier pick on that map. Mm -hmm. We have to maybe go back and try to think about the options of Leary, right? We felt that Saracens can have a very lethal timing there, using the market, went for quite some aggression. How crucial was it that he lost those one, one and a half minutes where he didn't have the Siege Workshop to pressure early I mean, on? Yeah, that could be huge, because I could I could see the Mangonels hitting some Town Centers if, uh, if he had them in the right time. I also feel like it, it's a really strange thing. I wouldn't even say it's a mistake from, from Leary. When he spotted that town center on the right side from Yo, mm -hmm. he should have sent all his mangonels up top. Don't let Yo get that castle. Yeah, it, it sounds weird, I know, and I'm not confident it, it can work. Mm -hmm. But like seeing how this was a losing strat, I think that could have saved the game. Send the mangonels up top. You obviously can see the bottom, so Yo will get that. But you at least save the top and then you know secure yourself some gold. I think the game goes on if he does that. But it's such a it's such a strange move. It's so far away, right? I know. Mangonels are really slow. I know, but I think if he went right away, he can manage it. Uh, and keep the camels around as well. What do we think Maybe. about an earlier outpost on the other side? Yeah. So he instantly sees the moment Yo leaves the base because he knew he was completely pushing at the bottom. Yeah, th that probably would be a, a, a decent move as well. Leary, Ooh. Expo, Manganels. He's got someone, uh, someone new to work with now, I I'm sure. Tweet at hashtag NAC5 if you want to be shown on stream as well. Saladesk doing a formidable job of providing v memes for days now. Who also is formidable, all the people that are constantly donating. 100% of the donations are now going into the prize pool. We increased that one quite a bit already. Thank you so much for all of that. Now Leary with the next choice for his home map. Are we going to see Marsh Madness or Hippopotamus? I think we're going Marsh Madness now. I think... Uh you know, I, I can imagine Persians being a really good bounce back sieve now. You just go Persians, you pick up Marsh Madness. It, it, it's a pretty good synergy. He also has Celts as a last pick. I swear Leary was making fun about Yo's Celts like yesterday. <laughs> and now he's last picking them. Am I seeing this right? He last picked Celts. That's crazy. Um, Is he running out of time? I Maybe. Maybe it's a mind game. Yo, Yo holds Celts to such high value. She's like, oh, my opponent has Celts. Does so. Leary have the last pick there? Already knows. Okay, I have those five civilizations for all my five maps and just tries to pick Kelts away so that Yo yeah. doesn't squeeze it in as number six? Yeah, yeah, I could see that for sure. Yo does have the, the the last pick there, so taking it away from Yo makes sense. Yo, of course, just grabs the Asics instead there. Um, but yeah, I, I could see Marsh Madness. I could see Hippopotamus. I don't think he'll play Golden Lakes right away. I think he wants that win. I think, Le I think Leary is a mental player, kind of, you know, just w wants to stay ahead, wants to, you know, control the pace of the series, mm -hmm. and you don't want to fall behind. I feel like y you definitely want to, you know, get those wins in early. If it was someone like Viper, I could see, you know, Viper doesn't mind falling behind. He, he leaves his best Civ and his best map to the end more often than not. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, it's all like mind games, but it's going to be Hippopotamus, so one of his home maps there. Lithuanians for Leary and Japanese for Mr. Yo. Oh, interesting here. Obviously, both civilizations with quite early strong advantages. Lithuanians with the extra 100 food, while we see Mr. Yo here with the Japanese. Goes for the lumber camp, 50% cheaper, so saving quite a bit there. If he goes to the fishing ships, that will be lovely for him as well. They are stronger and they are collecting a bit faster. Obviously, Lithuanians on the other side for Leary. 
Yeah, I feel like Japanese just have everything you want for this map. The tankier fishing ships can be so annoying to take out. Uh, you always have the you know the cheap lumber camps, the cheap mills. Uh, so you know taking advantage of the early wood bonuses that you get more fishing ships out, and they also have the faster attacking infantry, which could lead to some men at arm rushes. I think Doubt did it to me. Men at arm tower rush, very hard to stop, very powerful. Is Yo thinking the same thing, or does he want to play you know a slightly more standard game? I just hope. That he scouts properly. Oh, and does oh. that. That's oh. unloomed. That's unloomed. Okay, the man is coming here. I think Yo might still commit to this one. He should still be able to get it. Quick walls are obviously on the cards. He switched targets there. He's still going for it a little bit. Does he go back? Why can't he commit? He already lost half of his scout HP. I think at this point you just go for it here. Yeah, I think so. And Leary. Strange play from Leary to Ooh. not even pay attention there. Mm -hmm. like, that was a bit strange. Loses a Ville. Yo has to be happy with that one. I mean, listen, the last uh, last couple of games he lost a scout for free. Now he's still, <laughs> he might still lose it, but at least he got one villager before it goes down. So smart adaptation there from Yo. Not running into TCs, running into enemy Vills instead. And therefore confirms, okay, there won't be any like dock blocks. We're both docking at the same side. And therefore, fire galleys will be quite valuable. Valuable, therefore, basically impossible that we don't go on to gold here or commit into mass scouts early on. Yeah, and now we're going to see Leary still pushing in some deer. I want to see how he uses the Lithuanian's plus 100 food. Because obviously, Japanese have some savings in Dark Age, but food is better than wood in Dark Age. So you have you know click up faster. So despite the fill loss, I still expect Leary to be up slightly faster. And using that to, of course, maybe win the water, maybe uh, put some pressure on land. Looks like they're both looming same time, though. It could be an identical click up here. The problem with the villager loss at top is also the villager was walking quite some time, right? Yeah, it was yeah, on yeah, the way true. to the fastest food income. So if you ever want to lose a villager, this one might be the worst to choose. Yeah, yeah. You, generally speaking, losing a vill on wood this early on, it's not that big a deal. You can just like adapt and you know spend a little bit less on you know your buildings. But food, on especially shorefish, that's a great point. As a big donor comes flying in there, Ooh. thank you. Ooh, nice hippo map. You're very welcome. I think you uh, said that wrong. It was too Cortez. I know him. He will actually stop by on Friday. Oh, okay. Just wanted to, wanted to needle a bit. Very, very nice. We got some memers around here. Uh, okay, one pop faster for Leary. I was right. Let's go. But uh, Yo still has a competitive uptime now. And I want to see what Leary goes for on land. If you see a barracks, that indicates land play. If you see maybe just double dock, that's complete water play. A lot of options here. And which one will they choose? So far, Liri not on gold. Maybe he's just trying to play Lithuanians and use it for the Spearman Skirm bonus, but then you kind of want to play forward, no? Yeah, I mean, you don't have to play forward because the distance isn't that crazy. Uh, I could still see like a Spear Skirm play, you know, pop off here, potentially, if there's no infantry on the field. Uh, speaking of infantry, though, Yo has got a couple militia in the queue here. Mm -hmm. so it is playing some kind of infantry. I don't know if it's going to be men at arms, though. <sighs> He's a bit late to goals. I'm, I'm not convinced it's men at arms. Could just be two militia, a little bit of a, like a post uh, feudal drush. I think three militia and then upgrade them could be an option. Goes for the three militia. The and this is not. Now he has the information. Now he knows exactly what's yeah. coming. We can go into Leary, who should now know. Okay, stuff is up. Goes for the archers, walls this one off, does not want to take damage against three incoming men at arms. Yeah, and has full HP on a scout. Might try to like harass here a little bit. Doesn't want to lose too much. He's I'm not going to gold. His gold is very exposed. The gold on this map is usually forward. Oh, thinks twice and goes for a range instead. Yeah, and now he's probably going for the straggler there. Those men at arms could still run under the town center. Goes for the fire galley at the top. This has to be a defense with the skirmishers first. And this is an ugly mining camp that he's going to build. Yeah, yeah. That archer range was a bit, bit awkward. That was a perfect time to see the point of view, though. See that decision making from Leary. A lot of players, you know, they, they just commit to their strategy. Despite what they see, but Leary completely changed things up here. Goes for the range, and we'll get the walls there. Ugly mining camp, but I think he's making it work. Now those three militia are kind of in no man's land. Mm -hmm. He did not upgrade to men at arms, so realized, okay, you're probably going to have some units, but I will force you into some reaction, right? Those can be used to maybe kill some deer in the back, force the skirmishers to be defensive, and therefore Yo can maybe focus a bit more on the water play. Ooh, Yo with the scout. Levy didn't expect that after the last two games, but he still has a scout here, mm -hmm. 9 HP. It's enough to snipe a skirm. And the TC, how did the TC miss? It literally shot directly at it. Like, am I missing something here? Yo just dodged. No, no, but the first volley, anyway, it doesn't matter. TC never hits anything, that's how it works. Now we see a little bit of a fight on top. 
Okay. The scout helping out a bit. Ta takes off some HP of the scout. Village is there to repair. Is the damage output enough? The spearman obviously adding quite oh, some damage. Oh, and the damage. scout tanking. A sc scout tanking as well. Kind of baiting. Look at the fire going for the scout. One HP. Use that scout to the fullest extent. But now the double repair. I think that's enough. And I think Yo holds that. How are those villagers repairing? The fire galley is not even next to them. They're hitting the water. Which is splashing onto the fire galley. Throwing hammers into the water is repairing a yes, ship? Yes, because it's fire that's attacking the fire ship. Oh. They're hitting the water to splash onto the ship to heal it from the fire. It, it's how it works. If you want to heal a ship, you splash water onto it? If it's on fire, you put water on it and they're splashing the water with their hammers. Okay. That it's how, it, it's oh, how it works. Okay. It's the only explanation. Um, a little bit more action here. The militia kind of helping out. Ooh, ooh, they're helping out even more than the scout spear was. And they're going to go ahead and take out that one fire galley. And I think they should be able to get the, fi uh, the villager here as well. And the militia helps out against the fire galley fight. Lyric queues up a bit more. Now adds another dog at the bottom there. Now moves out with his AI army through the center. Mr. Yo already walling quite nicely in front of his gold. Yeah, what is that? You know, two two spearmen, three skirms, and an archer. That's that's a that's a decent force. You can harass, you know, quite well with that. But I feel like water is all for Mr. Yo now. He's got more ships. Mm -hmm. Has four out on the field even. Only now the second one popping for Leary. Blacksmith there might be denied for a small moment, but soon three skirmishers, Mr. Yo can defend this. Yeah, solid outpost from Leary on the bottom as well. Just kind of uh, getting extra vision on the field there. Ooh, ooh, hit the blacksmith, hit the blacksmith. How much it's on one HP, it's on one HP. It's hit the blacksmith, that's 150. Hit it, hit it. 150, Leary, is Leary. he thinking about it? No way. Focuses on the villagers, maybe by accident. No way, just misclick it. No oh, way! Oh, Blacksmith goes up. How goes are up. we not punishing that? Well, we lost the villager, right? That's also quite some value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's decent. That's decent. Uh, obviously, there was a lot more things going on. I'm just a caster. I see everything, so it's easy for me to say. But uh, Leary, relatively decent aggression there. And, mm -hmm. you know, does a decent job defending against the men at arm. Feels, or I guess the militia, feels what? okay for him. Oh, no, yo, no, clicks no, men what? at arm. What? That has to be a mistake, no? Two no. militia? Is he adding more men at arms behind this? No, no, that's a yo play. That's a yo play right there. He shows the militia, then he gets men at arm as he goes back and goes back in. And Leary's not going to expect that. That's a yo play right there. But yo loves map control. Remember that. Keep that in mind. Okay. He, he's not okay with just giving back map control. He loves to fight for map control. And that might get him a real kill because he got the men at arm upgrade. It would be worse away. then. Do we maybe see some villagers being pulled? Tries to pull it against it. Maybe some oh. quick walls. Tries to go for the body blocks. That's crazy. And like I was saying, I just didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand the meta arm click there. Very strange play from Yo. And uh, now Yo will be running right by with a fire galley there. Okay. We might actually have the full set without a single pike. One night being built. Our shirts are looking <laughs> rather ridiculous. <right> now. <laughs> Underwhelming here for the night pike department. <laughs> Uh, still takes the 1v1 fight. The other one wants to be re getting some repair in. Skirmishers, a bit on the open there, but no stable from Leary. Therefore, not really getting punished. Tries to sail home with this fire galley. So far, in somewhat even game, but still fish alive for Mr. Yo and three villager advantage. Yeah, and I feel like now that I'm seeing the market from Yo, I feel like he's got a substantial lead, actually. It was even for a while, but now if he can just get a faster castle by selling the stone, if that's indeed what he wants to go for, that gold is so exposed from Leary. I can see the snowballing so fast. That felt so weird, right? The archery range placement. Eco Kitty 6 to 1, by the way. Demo takes out that fire galley quite a bit. And that's some ugly harassment, Leary. He's not really even queuing up anything out of the archer range. Yeah, and he desperately needs some stuff on the field as well. Uses his vills. Oh, needed to kill that archer. Goes back in with the woman to finish him off. Man is out. Wow, that was perfect. That was solid. Yeah, very well. Very well played there. Really nice. Has fletching. Now queues up some more fires as well. Tries to take the fight. Another demo joins the party. Can he maybe debate into anything? <laughs> oh, oh, I oh thought my about god. It. I thought so as well. I thought he'd go for it, but just Ooh. keep that alive. But this could be what we needed. A nice counterattack with the archers hitting the wood line. And Yo just sends everything back. Does not have the army to defend. Has to queue more skirmishers. 
That might have kept Leary in the game, actually. Yeah, because he needs to buy himself some time. Just yeah. look at the resources. The difference in castle edge timings will be enormous. We can see some of food being dropped off here at the right-hand side. Lots of idols now for Mr. Yo. Tries to send them back to the stragglers around his town center. Some skirmishes for the defense. Clicks up to castle edge, but those are quite unprotected villages. Maybe he can get a demo out here. I think he's queuing it. What's the percentage on the demo here? 36%. I think Levy's the type to walk past this anyway. <laughs> he has to go back into the skirms. I feel like he should probably take the risk in that case. But, I mean, it's hard to say because there's so much going on. As you can see, Levy was focused on clearing up the skirms. Now a new attack and just runs those archers back instead here. Is this not the spot where Mr. Yo could have gone for the right-hand side and tried to expand there? New fresh wood line, knows there's some gold and some really beautiful spots to add town centers once he hits, hits Castle Age. Yeah, I think it could be a good option. He, he still has a stone, didn't go for the sell stone aggressive option. Mm -hmm. uh, decides to just get the Castle Age first, might add a couple extra town centers, or might just take it a bit more slow-paced in Castle Age. No need to rush it sometimes when you're in the lead. Liri using that late feudal to get map control though, it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. And what is Mr. Yo really going for? Does not have the stable, and then he reaches Castle Age. The only real advantage that I can see is the War Galley upgrade, but he's not really going Knights, I don't really see him rushing a Monastery either. I will see some more villagers going down. Liri, I thought he was in the worst spot, but those were some nice minutes for him. The demo's on a mission. <laughs> 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 the demo was on a mission, had the scouts in its eyes there. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you there. Yo is like up the castle, and now rushes down the stable, so gets a few knights on the field. That's going to be his main uh, goal there. Those scouts are dangerously close to a demo, but I think the demo's passing. Oh no, it's coming back in! Oh! oh! Coming back in. He got one with the scout earlier. Now he gets two. That's two for one. That's very nice. That's really sweet. And that allows the stable to go up now, right? Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. those scouts would have scared those villagers away, and then no knights, and now knights in the queue. That was actually bigger than those two scouts. Yeah, yeah that, that's... Oh! Oh, uh, okay, we got some style. Okay. Demo. The demo's waiting. The demo's, demo's waiting, waiting to return the favor. Yeah, yeah. And point. Leary sends his regards. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to let that let that pass for free. And now we see a couple of knights on the field clearing up those uh, rogue feudal archers. Leary's now clicked up the castle. I feel like Lithuanians offer a better late game, at least option-wise in the Japanese. So maybe Leary just wants to try to get there at this point. Now we can see those two scouts moving in again. They want to deny the stable there, but not going to happen. And we see the double demo kill here. This is the return favor afterwards. And oh. we see two kills there for two demos. Now uh, another town center here for Mr. Yo tries to expand a bit more. I'm a bit surprised that he's not going to the right-hand side enough. Uh, yeah, that, that tower's gonna keep his gold safe. Leary's, sorry, Yo is expanding towards the top instead of the right. I think that makes sense because there's more wood on top and I think wood is a priority right now. We saw how those archers kicked him off the wood line, more demos sneaking around the side. But now that the knights are out, knights are a lot tankier. They're not going to die to demos. They're also going to be able to maybe pick up some villagers that are rather exposed. Levy's playing with no care in the world, does have the vision there and knights, it's like an old man with a walking stick. You don't have that much vision. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually shocking, right? Yeah, yeah. It's actually, it, it doesn't feel right and that's one of the advantages for Franks maybe, how they are always finding more demos damage there with their knights, unless they run into pikes, obviously. Of course. Ooh. Okay, we'll find one kill, though. That woman, okay. you know, didn't get the memo to run. Leary runs to the other four, might uh -oh. make it uh -oh. to the top. Oh, this could be huge. Oh, this happens to... Not with Mr. Yo. No, he's too good. He's too good for this. No, 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 it happened last NEC. We all know the clip. I got him with five bills on <laughs> We all know the clip. Yo, Yo is not too good for demo. No one's too good for a good demo here. Uh, but Yo, this time, S escapes death, very nice uh, from him. And the demo can't hit those fish, uh, those fish, the Japanese fish. Yeah. yeah, like even like it feels like even an intentional split, right? Wouldn't really matter too much unless you sent the second demo there. Knights are coming over, but easily countered by the spearmen even. Ooh, two knights down. You didn't have to fight those spearmen. But Yo clearly wasn't paying attention there. Uh, they're not pikes though, so don't even mention it. So spearmen even counter knights? What would pikemen do? You're not ready for that conversation. Oh, I am, I am right. <laughs> monastery is coming down for Leary now. Going for the double Monastery. That's not just for monks on oh. defense. Oh, Dembos are going crazy, but Leary actually backs up from that one. Mm -hmm. Leary's going to go double Monastery. Monks for defense, but monks also to pick up relics. He's Lithuanians, of course. Nice quick walls. It's easy to have a hole there, though. Yeah. I think he couldn't really quick wall over one of the ostrich. Yo killed the ostrich with the knight. 
So now oh, you really? have to abandon, yeah. All <laughs> that's crazy, that's crazy. Little dab is there from Yo, whatever he can find. Is he sending villagers over to the right hand side? Yeah, drops the third town center there. So it will be the one TC play for quite some time. What happened to the other stone of Leary? Did he sell a hundred to go up? I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, he builds the defensive tower oh at no, the goal. Yeah, he made the tower. That makes sense. Ooh. And oh, another demo. Demos are going crazy. Those three spearmen down. Mm -hmm. Another night. I think that might have been five spears actually, but they're not like, yeah, yeah. crazy. Quite some, quite some Ooh, light value. cap though. Okay. Light cap, limited HP there, 25, but it's easy to miss that and yeah, you yeah. might feel like, okay, I already lost one, two villagers, but Mr. Yo too active. One villager kill and Leary gets out of there. Nice move. Ooh, oh, the night rating is crazy. Leary's being very active now with the knights. And you know what? Yo's playing a pretty good defensive game though. He's actually quite aware of where he's getting hit, and he's not letting extra bills die for free. So one or two losses is reasonable, but not losing five or six just because he's not watching. If we scroll down a bit, I think we could have even seen a landlock. Like, you could wall this thing completely, right? If the block would be like two, three tiles further to the left, and you build the dock from the other side, from the bottom. Potentially. It's potentially. something we have never seen before. Yeah, landlocking the bottom. Um, Together with the big wall, because then you can wall and then you can keep out ships and uh, you know land military units. It's pretty, it's pretty smart demo, Point. easy connects. Not gonna hype that up. Come on, like that was that was reasonable. That's not not the end of the world there. Yo grabs a relic, and I uh, feel like. That's a pretty good game plan, just to boom and take relics away from Lithuania. Yeah, and that was the one from the center, so the most neutral one, kind of. We have one in each corner, one in the center there, so that's going to be a guaranteed two for him. Maybe gets that monk. Oh, big. Oh, my God. Okay, without looking, without looking, Nilly, how much range does a fire ship have? I know, I know. Two and a half. Okay. Nilly knows his numbers. Sorry. Yeah, two and a half, but a lot of players don't know that, and they misjudge how much range it has, mm -hmm. and I think we saw something like that from Nilly there. Yeah, yeah, it felt like he was a tiny bit too close. Also, you sometimes misjudge the sandy area, right? Yeah. That they can go on to that area, f like, fully. Yeah, exactly here. Uh, still some more raiding coming through. Yo has some knights on the field. You know, this is funny because Leary home mapped this, but I feel like as far as skill set goes, this map favors Yo perfectly. He's got monks, he's got cavalry units. Yo is very happy right now. Yeah. Now. The next step would be we somehow see a villager in the back trying to build a siege workshop. Yeah, something like that. Like some, some night pike action and then a sneaky siege workshop. And I w just wanted to say, and the next step would be a castle and look at his stone count. Yeah, he's, he's building up towards that. The question is, does he want a forward castle to end the game early, potentially? Or does he want to play it safe and just make a castle at home? Leads into some samurai, potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, leads into you know an imperial age with trebs. He's got a lot of options. He's in yeah. the driver's seat. If, if you think about that as a viewer, most of the time you can think, okay, if they want to go for the unique unit, something like Mongols, they built the castle way more defensively. But if they have something where we feel like, okay, there's no short-term impact from the unique unit, then the castle is most of the time being more aggressively. That's what I'm expecting here from Mr. Yo. Yep, agreed. Uh, oh, a couple monk, monk pickups here from Leary. One, two. Doesn't get converted. Uh, he's going to be happy about that. Yo is obviously going for the bottom relic there. Another town center there goes for number four at the right side. Can now build the castle if he wanted to. Maybe just feels, okay, I will defend and just go against all that cavalry. Mass Pikeman and tries to make something happen early. Imp. Yo adds a fourth town center, so I don't know if he's in any rush here. He knows he's ahead. He's just pulling further ahead right now. He's not even concerned about ending the game so much as he's concerned at you know, stabilizing and setting up his position. God, we're fighting at four different spots right yep, now, yep. right? And they're microing behind this in the sense that they are also improving their economy, trying to set all those farms up. And now we see Leary getting some record draw. And what a weird castle! Uh, that feels like it accomplishes not much. Because I think if you make it defensive, maybe on top makes sense. We can show some gold and stone. Yeah, that Whereas is no man's land. There's yeah. no resources. The the most value it has is that it protects the monastery. Yeah, I mean it's a reasonable map control castle. He's breaking out of his base, breaking out of his shell a little bit, which is fair. But it, that that castle clearly states Yo's playing it safe. He knows he's ahead economically, and yeah. he just wants to play towards that. Oh, oh, Liri with nice block attempt there, and gets rewarded. Gets to save his monk. Nice move while he's active over here. I feel like Mr. Yo is thinking, okay, this might be a leapfrog castle in the sense that he gets it up there, then gets some pikemen out, gets some map control, and if he sees most of the army of Liri at another spot, then he builds another castle more forward. Ooh, that was a bit of a mistake there from Yo. Didn't react in time. Might be the first of the game. 
Now we see Pikeman on the field. Oh, Nilly, we're getting dangerously close to Pikeman night action. But unfortunately, there's monks on the field, though. Those counter everything. Yeah, uh, then you will make an argument. Whoa, those were Japanese knights, no uh, pikes. Obviously, they attack a bit faster. You know what? I won't make that argument. Okay. But then, I w then I won't say that the knights of Lithuanians were better. Yeah, but only one relic better, though. Uh, now you're trying to downplay it. Yeah, only <laughs> one relic. That's not enough. It's not enough. I think the Japanese specs all day over that. But anyways, we're out of early casting. Really. I don't think you were paying too much attention to what I was saying, to be honest. Now we see the light cap coming out. And ooh. Oh, some reasonable blockage going on there. Well played. It just feels like Leary's doing better in the micro fights. But like the macro, yo, is just on another planet right now. Yeah, it hits a bit like decision making, right? He expanded so much earlier. The castle age timing obviously helped him quite a bit. A solid 30 villager lead here for I him like as that well. Castle. That, that is that, a beautiful that's a, one. That's a great castle. Much better than the first one. I feel like, like you said, the first one might be some sort of leapfrog, set up the stone for another castle later forward. But that castle on top secures, you know, the gold, the stone, and the entire top area, which is really nice. What are the next steps here for Lyria? It's really tough for me to judge what could be good options because mass monks not really something you want to go for against that amount of light cap out of Yeah, I, I honestly feel like Lyria just might be dead. I mean, take a look. No economy upgrades. He's 30 bills down. He's technically redemption, which is basically money lost. I mean, mm -hmm. he didn't get any value from redemption there. 475 gold down the drain. Yeah, gets a stable there from what I saw. The demo is being used. <laughs> the light cap ran straight to the demo there. <laughs> that was amazing. I got had enough. Liri, it feels a bit like he's playing all in here. Mass monks, more knights, more light calf being added, but it's just against full pike and light calf there for the defense. Mr. Yo, he can just build another castle in the next to the gold. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just don't think this aggression is accomplishing a whole lot. Like, Yo is up to Imperial Age now. Uh, you know, the conversions, like I said, Liri is winning the micro fights, oh. but. Uh oh, that's. Bo He's pulling the boys. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna go for it. Oh, he knows all of Leary's armies on the bottom. But tonight. Leary has a couple of knights, though. Could Mark to this? block. Outpost. He thinks better of it. Yeah, yeah, this has to go back. I mean, Yo just needs to play safe. A forward castle would be fantastic, but let's just play safe, uh -oh. potentially. Broken here is taken away from his gold. Obviously, has a lot of access to other gold spots on the map. On the right hand side, a bit higher there as well. This one is being stopped for now. 19 pikemen on the map. Yo floating quite some wooden gold. He can get out a lot of traps there. Uh, the damage that Leary's getting is reasonable, by the way. He's getting a decent amount of damage with his military. Mm. Uh, forcing villagers going to go back. Uh, he's killing some, some of Yo's units, killing some of Yo's bills. Um, but he's just down so bad in terms of economy right now. I don't think Yo is even too concerned about it. Yo's got oh, demo, demo, demo oh, there against three monks. Bam! Gets That's there. a big one. That's that a big was one. sweet. Shuts down the aggression. Just knights alone. We know pikes counter them. And now we got 1,700 gold, 1,700 wood, and 1,000 stone for you to work with on the aggression. Gets this, and that means the pikemen are becoming a bit better there. Another demo arriving. Damn, oh. Lyrians, to oh. be honest. Oh, oh. oh. oh my oh. god, they're, 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 they're Oh no, oh no, oh no! no. no. No! Oh my god! Goes for the biggest of oh NAC history! Holy god. moly! That was absolutely crazy, and Leary, he needed those alive to keep up the aggression against the early im timing Epic. for Mr. Yo. But after that loss, he knows, I can't raid you anymore, I can't do the damage. Mr. Yo, you're up to one. Epic demo there to close out that game. Super nice play from Yo. Really well played overall. We now oh. see the replay production of the GOAT getting us the good stuff. And he... he actually intentionally moves around that yeah, knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was so The beautiful. knight was going to take one for the team, but Yo said, I'm coming for the whole team. <laughs> oh my god, sick play there from Yo. And now he's up 2-1. Must be feeling pretty good. Sips that Red Bull, of course. Mm -hmm. More energy. Oh, it looks like it's about oh, done. Oh, so we got him a refill. Oh. Did you want to eat the can or it? He, <laughs> went, he went deep on that one. I think he might need a refill on the Red Bull. But anyway, he's feeling good. Taking the energy in for the next one. And it looks like it's going to be Leary's home map again. And I think he might go for the Marsh Madness. Is it really the map that he wants to play? Probably his style, right? We know he likes to play the aggression. Scout Archer, something where he really, really shines. On the other side, Golden Lakes, something where we would see Yo shining quite a bit. Tries to go up for those walls, try to make some messy games oh, out of there. Oh, is that a smoke? It's, it's three games. Uh, I think it's just more ACCM. Uh, ACCM is the addict. Yo is a social, so, social smoker, they yeah, call yeah, 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 yeah. ACCM is just a smoker. <laughs> makes, makes sense. He was happy with the water and Red Bull here for this one. Golden Lakes, Marsh Madness, okay. Uh, what, are we, what are we playing? Is it Persians, Marsh Madness, Berbers, Golden Lakes? It feels like Persians is the better choice for either map. Yeah, it feels like 
you play Persians first. No matter what you want to play, you just take Persians there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then use Berbers on the on the last one and okay. make it work. Uh, I mean, Berbers on Golden Lake sounds pretty solid. Um, I feel like Hindustani, though, potentially as a slight counter to Berbers, maybe, because I know the Imp Camel does really well against Berbers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can't really get onto the Halb, so therefore Camel Archers aren't really exciting me too much either. Thing is, Hindustani's not really great on Golden Lakes in the sense that we are building so many fishing ships that the value of the cheaper villagers isn't that crazy. So I would even think maybe Hindustani's for Marsh Madness, Georgians for Golden Lakes is what I would assume. And Aztecs and Celts, probably the unplayed civilizations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I c- actually, I could see Aztecs on Golden Lakes, to be honest, because mm-hmm. on Four Lakes, you wouldn't really see Aztecs too much because, you know, uh, fighting for the, r- the lakes, not exactly Aztec strength on like a hybrid map, mm-hmm. but if you add the gold rush element or the golden pit element, rather, mm-hmm. we see that Aztecs getting control of gold, going for monk eagle play, that could be very strong. So I think Aztecs is a bit better of a flex pick. I, I think Celts is completely on the side. Like, on those maps, yeah. If it was on Mr. Yo's side, I could see them for Golden Lakes, right? Yeah, maybe. You, you can fish better, and then an early castle age, just accept that you will take one lake, wall up, and then the siege push from the side. That's true, something true, I could true, see, true. but that's something I don't see from Leary, especially how game one le- went. Marsh Madness, and we were completely wrong. We see Aztecs Ooh. not on Golden Lakes, but it's going to be on Marsh Madness here. Persians, though, for Leary. He's going with his ace pick, the first pick. Let's see if we can make this work here. Of course, Leary... Uh, and yo, desperately need the win, so this is a hot competition now. Yeah, let's remind ourselves in the situation. Both players, although they are one of the best players going into this tournament, seed three and seed four, actually down one two in series. And if you go down one three, that basically means losing tomorrow would be the end of your tournament run there. So securing yourself a spot in the playoffs today would be the dream for both of them. Kind of crazy that we are thinking about the scenario with those two world-class players. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. That's what happens when you take the top 10 in the world, the yeah. apartment and apartment, though. That's yeah. what happens. Crazy things can go off. And, of course, right now, the level is closer than ever. This map is super interesting. You've got a water element. You can even go through the middle with the ships later on. We've seen Dromans from ACCM mm-hmm. against the Viper set earlier. All kinds of crazy things can happen. But it tends to be a little bit of economy and some fighting on water. But then most of the action on land. Yeah, and we can't really wall on the stony area. And that's why we go for a lot of strong units such as the eagles right we know we discussed it a lot how crazy are those you can have the better economy here the extra gold relics obviously not really a big factor here we only have two on the map but producing faster at mr yo an absolute legend when it comes to the mezzo play yeah it's definitely comfort pick for him uh, I, I think, you know, it, Aztecs here, they might not be the pick everyone's going towards, mm-hmm. uh, but we did see ACCM against me use the Incas and, and go for some sort of forward into Eagle Pike spam. And uh, with Knights, they just couldn't deal with the Pikes. Uh, but anyways, you know, in this case, for what, Aztecs... What, what, what are you saying? The mic was cutting out? Oh, no way. Uh, wait, no, it wasn't cutting out. Damn it. I oh! No way. Nilly, how, how can you do me like that, man? I'm new to the setup. But yeah, anyways... Uh, you know, Aztecs for Yo, it's similar. I don't know if he's going to go for the forward, but he might play some Eagle Archer leading into full infantry in Castleage. And that will be the big question, right? We feel like Persians, they can play crossbow. They can maybe even play CA. We now have the option to actually go for Parthian Tactics. That would be more damage output there against Pikes if we get into that situation later on. Options like Savar, Hand Cannoneers to deal with this. But that's obviously thinking very long term. I'm interested to see how few Lage will play out on this map. Yeah, it is worth mentioning as well. There's a lot of gold on this map. Like It's more than you're used to. Uh, it's sped up pretty nicely. Most of it in the center of the map not too much stone there is a decent oh. amount of stone look at yeah. this area four main gold yeah. spots kind of there that will be crazy mm-hmm. imagine I a castle in the center yeah 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 see that on a hill controlling all those minerals doesn't get better than that for the mid late game uh both players going up to feudal age leary going to be slightly faster here and i can see a stable opening from leary uh, Aztecs, of course, no luxury of the stable, so maybe a range infantry play makes more sense. Mm-hmm. We have seen people go for some militia, something we won't see with the late barracks timing here. Fields a bit with the low amount of villagers on gold, that in typical opening with some spearmen, some archers, if he sees the stable, and then later t- transition into more eagles. Liri has quite a bit of fish. Five fishing ships out for him. 
Yo's at three. He's adding one more. So players tend to really commit to the water on this map, it seems. Really late barracks. Look at the wood count for Liri. What is he waiting for? Okay, builds the barracks now. Might need to build it with multiple villagers. Barracks, I think, takes 50 seconds. So typically you want to build it a bit earlier. Now the transition, three on gold. And yeah, look at that. Barracks will be a bit late. Yeah. Stable, a bit delayed. That, that feels like it just... Wait, Mr. Yo as well struggling. Both yeah. players, maybe they're just tired? Because there's no... You don't want to even keep did, the flexibility. Did he even uncued one of the fishing ships, right? He ah. was at 80% there with the fourth fishing ship, but felt like, okay, let's go for the mining camp. And then the barracks. Now we can see Mr. Yo. That is the archer range play. It is the spearman opening. While on the other side, this has to be the stable for yeah, Leary. Yeah, it's going to be stable for Leary most likely here. And uh, that makes a lot of sense. Ooh. Okay, for those who don't know, the scout wins at Feudal Age, so Eagle will go down. But it's going to take a reasonable chunk off the Eerie Scout. Ooh, Leary, a Marsh Madness lover here. Obviously, we have the home map picks before the opponent can decide which maps they don't want to play. So you always guaranteed at least one home map that you can really prepare for. That's and not true. Loves the you get one ban first. You get one ban first? So despite Ooh. him picking Marsh Madness, people Three are times. banning it. Yeah. But wha what was the ban then by Mr. Yo? Who knows? I didn't see it. That is that is quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, keep in mind, Yo might just be completely happy playing Marsh Madness. He's okay. not he's not scared of it. So even though he might have seen Leary tend to go for Marsh Madness, maybe Yo just prepared to play it instead of banning it, which makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Loves his mezzo here. And the big question mark, what will be the approach? Leary rather late on to gold. And this feels like a bit of an overreaction, right? He has like six villagers onto gold pretty soon. But it makes sense if you're gonna switch to archers, and I feel like I kinda like that. A lot of players they get a little oh. ton of visual on top. Oh, oh no way! That's crazy. Mm. Wow. Yo was sneaking them around, but Leary, a little too sharp for him. And uh Yo seems to be completely safe from scout at aggression here. And two archers going across the map. Ambitious to attack with two archers. And only one spearman has protection, right? Yeah. Typically, you want to send out the two, makes it way tougher for the opponent to take the engage engagement with the scouts there. Spearmen, not really protecting an important area right now. I think the scouts are looping around, and then the spearmen will take quite some time to get Ooh. back to the protection of the spear gold. Spear getting chunked to half is super relevant, by the way, when the scouts are on the field. Two archer, one spear. Yo, oh, Leary moves back. I was going to say, Yo could get a free scout there, but Leary now has three scouts. Could look for that villager that went to build the dock, looks for the berries instead. Let's see if he gets a vill. Seems to be so, quite some nice moves here. You can't quick wall on that stone area, and wow. that's why we see the small walls. Nice move. Leary gets the kill and gets out of there. Good mobility now. Goes for the skirms back home. And oh, oh, the sheep went down. <laughs> oh, no. Quite the story with those guys. Yo, go back in for the next one. Nah, let's go. Mercy, mercy. Fishing ships trying to reposition themselves a bit better there. Double dog play from both players, but the main aggression is happening on land. Yo now switching on to some eagles here. And Lyria's band can barra all four times so far. <laughs> okay, hates oh my that God. map. I wonder if he likes it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe as a perfect strategy and tries to hide it for oh the finals. Oh my God, he's the best can barra player? He just doesn't want to show it yet. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't care about group stage. Yeah. <laughs> that is crazy, the confidence on this guy. Um, I mean, meanwhile, he probably has zero games of Canberra. <laughs> <laughs> the, the real story, you know. Town Watch coming in from Yo. It's going to help him deal with the scout aggression. Very solid choice against the mobility. But it looks like Leary's going to skip Feudal and just go straight to Castle here with the market coming up. I just imagine Leary during the draft. And like doesn't even read the map name. It's just like, what is this image? And then clicks the band. <laughs> just has no idea what it's doing. Right <laughs> Get it out of there. And now we see Leary winning the water. And I don't want to see he's winning the land, but he's finding more success on the line. He killed the villager. I feel like he's not taking too much damage from Yo's aggression. This is looking really good for Yo. Uh, sorry for Leary. A comfortable game for him. So Yo takes the small fight there, is winning this one for the defense. More fire galleys in the queue for both players. But Leary, seven out on the field against two only right now. If Leary continues like this, he might win water and is not taking too much damage on land right now. And another sneak attack from Yo, but Leary is there with a skirmisher. So he's going to be more or less ready for that. And uh, yeah, I think Yo's going to be kind of just getting cleaned up here. Incredibly clever positioning yeah right yep. he had the five skirms where he could be hit uh, hurt the most and at the one at the top where there might have been a sneaky attack yeah and now that you see the army it doesn't matter how much you know uh, how much of a lead he's got because the scouts can catch up and the, and the skirms can close the distance and that army should and will get cleaned up here 
Uh, really nice kills. 8, 3 KD now, and that might even increase. Maybe some block there. And this will be a big fight. No demo inside. And therefore, oh. should be a nice get with Valyrie if he wasn't losing all those HP earlier. I think Yo is holding it for now. Yeah, yeah, Yo's holding that. Liri does have a ship on the other side as well, though. So he's going to come and reinforce from the other side. Potentially, he still ends up on top on the water here. Seven against four fishing ships. Moves this one around. Fire Galley helping out oh. here. KD advantage increases. And Mr. Yo still not on the way to Castle Edge. Did not use the market. And he will get the bad news because Liri already sold his stone and is only 80 seconds away from reaching Castle Would you go Knights here as Persians or would you go CA? Uh, since I expect my opponent to go Pikemen and I know that Knights are really underperforming against them, I would personally go for CA. And that is why you're casting. <laughs> and Liri oh! is. Playing. No, oh, you stable. set me up. Of course I did. You're not the only one that's got jokes up your sleeve. You got two stable from Leary here. Thank you so much for organizing this. I really appreciate it. Great tournament you've put on for the rest of us to play. And now we see the two night aggression from Persians. Remember, they get plus two attack against archers. So it's kind of forcing Yo into infantry here. I will need some time to recover from that one. <laughs> I went maybe a little too hard, but I don't, <laughs> I don't regret it. It was worth it. I think you could still p uh, continue producing some light cap because it feels likely that Yo is going to go for some monks here, scouts, and then later upgrade them. For now, it is the night approach. And let's see if Leary is going to win this game or not. Yeah, this is a big one for the, for the morale <laughs> here on the desk. This is a huge game for us. Uh, Leary, interestingly enough, going for the war get up before any land aggression. He's going to go for a couple knights, but he prioritizes to 100% win the water first. Okay, eagles come in over for the defense, but only feudal age e eagles. Once they reach castle age, you get an additional plus three attack. Would love to only take the fight then, but looks at that. The scouts are solo HP, wants to take the engagement. Meanwhile, winning the water. This one is, I think, oh, reasonable no. for Liri, right? This is uh, terrible for Yo. He's fighting before Castle Age comes in. Eagles get plus three oh, attack. Knights at the top. And Could Castle. be coming in there. We need the quick walls at the gold. Gets them in time, but I think this is a tight area. Oh, that was a beautiful play by Mr. Yo. Ooh, losing the scouts here from Liri is not the way. You need to keep those alive. Monks are surely going to hit the fields very soon. Oh my god, the knights are just diving straight into the town center here. Liri is out for blood. Do we see the monastery? Could be very close to the town center indeed. It's coming down now. Wants to somehow make the defense happen, but Knight is blocking here. Gets the villager kill. Loses it. its life though. Okay, now. Is it, isn't that open? Uh, isn't that open? No, no, it's a tree. Yeah. Okay. It is not open. Water completely is? in favor of Liri right now, which is going to help him. He's got four fishing ships, so yep. it's a small advantage for him. Could he, could add more if he wants to and dock around the side. We have seen other players go for that kind of approach. Uh, but I think both players will switch to a full land focus now, because water it's not going to hit villagers really from that distance. Mm -hmm. And we identified earlier how important that situation uh, that area on the map is there and that's why Liri already putting down the town center where we have all the four goals and now it is the full pike approach double monastery yeah and yo doesn't really have a lot of vision right he doesn't know that he needs to follow this one up with the siege workshop i think the double monastery is a really smart play by the way because i think you need to get back the map control and the monks are the best tool at getting back map control from those uh from those cavalry units and the knights and i think if you have got the pikemen plus the eagle set up with monks, I feel like that's really good at defending against knights and against uh, light cav. Oh. And now we see Leary going for a bit more of a dark approach. Oh, look at that. Yep, and now the yep. forward town center. This will be incredibly intense now. That small area in the center. We could see some demos being moved in there, right? If Leary is thinking about that. He has some demos there. Oh, he could be shocking. Him. Oh, no way. That that would be insane. And that this is, this is not the map where Yo could count on that. He, I don't think he's predicting that those units are in danger. Oh, the demo is making its way as well. So Leary, he, he kind of knows about that. That's sick. Oh my god, that would be so... Ha the Justice, if if Leary gets him back for the last game demo, that would be <laughs> such a storyline. Oh, Yo's using the, yeah, the monks, they get the water. Not bad. Not too impactful, but not bad. Eagle upgrade here, and Mr. Yo, he's completely blind, right? No outpost. I'm not even sure, does he want to play 3TC here? Leary sits at 2, oh. score, way better for our Austrian. Oh, the Eagles are coming. You know, I would like to see more demos from Leary. One the one? One? Oh. It's clever. Okay. He spots it. He spots it. Well played. But That's you know, it, it, it's still it's still a factor, right? He can't cross at will. He has to go and then, you know, ha may have trouble coming back because the demo threat is there. 
Okay, but Monks on short distance. Really nice. Oh, gets the conversion here. That one hurts. Gets so oh, delete. delete he, he made it out. Uh, he didn't have to delete there. Uh, That's okay. He wants infantry. He doesn't want cavalry this game. <laughs> <laughs> Double monastery here. Now tr trying to check if he can maybe catch the Monk off guard. I will see some more donations flying in. All the donations are going into the prize pool and into the pockets of the players. Lightcap trying to move around, trying to find some potential monks, but as we know, only two relics here out on the map. One in the east, one in the west, so unlikely to find too many monks in the back. Maybe he wanted to intercept them from converting some more of the fires. Gets in Ooh. there, gets a kill. Nice! Nowhere is safe if that's not safe. Also, what we saw up top is the fire ship was tanking the ego damage for quite some time there, so the water is playing some Somewhat of a, se a secondary role here for Leary with those demos as well. Uh, it just feels like Leary's got full control of this game. Yo still has a chance if he can get a snowball going with monks and pikes and eagles, but Leary just hasn't given him a second to breathe. It is the 2TC play here for quite some time. Had the option to go for the 3TC, is now heavily on stone. Maybe thinks, okay, all those golds here could be quite nice to get the aggressive cast up. Yo right is now tanking his heart rate. He's at 49. Is he okay? You get a pulse check on that? He's chilling. He knows he's going for pikes. He can't lose this game. Just needs to make sure to take good engagements here, get the forward castle up, and then it will be tricky for Leary to take the fight, right? Because if the castle's coming up, you can't use your mobility. Yeah, yeah, the castle is a really big uh, factor here. In fact, for both players, as they're mining quite a, quite a good amount of stone here, I think Leary might try forward castle on that hill. That could be so impactful if he lands it. Oh, let's take a look. Some conversions, maybe. Like have not really getting away there in time. Okay, now they all do some hits. They won't really matter. Mr. Yo still 300 stone away. Maybe even trying to buy some stone and get that castle up ASAP might be an option for him. Yeah, we see Wheelbarrow coming in for both players as well as they continue to develop their economy. Great extra docks from Leary continues to fish and make it, you know, make uh, use of the water to the fullest extent that he did win early on. Yo is still looking for something here. Well, increases to 65, right? He knows that a big fight is coming up, and that is a really nice pick up here by Leary. Gets the monks in the back while taking a reasonable fight against oh. the Eagles. Pikemen are now joining the party, but it feels like how oh, did the conversion show? That's a reasonable fight for Yo, to be honest. He got three conversions there, lost a few monks, but still has a lot of infantry on the field. I think Leary could be in trouble if he takes more fights like that. Where where are the demos, by the way? We need the demos in here. We have one on the field, not really going for it. And Mr. Yo and Leary, both with similar amount of stone. This could be a crazy castle race. Yeah, yeah. And if a mangonel joins, that will be horrible for Leary. The score, it, it's saying Leary's winning, but this is one fight away from Yo just steamrolling, by yeah, the way. Yeah. The, the, Yo, Leary has to be so careful. Two golds here, a stone. Really crucial area, and both players are gearing towards the castle, neck and neck on the stone count, the castle race. And Yo is doing such a good job of not allowing any raids, right? He keeps everything so clumped up, both wood yeah. lines, walled and rewalled. Most of his exposed economy is where his army is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe a couple of bills will leak here and there, but for the most part, Outpost. it's going to be uh -oh. the focus uh -oh. on the front. Oh, this is it. This is the whole game right now before our eyes. Castle from Leary on the hill, Castle from Yo, the pikemen are blocking it, I told you they're not good versus knights, look at them go here, but the castle will be dropped, the knights are on the field here, the Maginel getting a good shot on those villagers, but it will go down, the pikes engaging, knights versus pikes, Nilly, this is it! Now we're deciding everything, it feels like the knights are dying and this castle will most likely go up, both players are pulling it up, monks behind this are dying and it feels like both castles are going up, what will the follow up be will be the big question, Mr. Yo, he has some reasonable knight numbers for himself now as well, 86%, is this oh. castle maybe getting knight, the oh. castle is shooting enough, I think five villagers are trying to get their best thing done and the castle goes up! Ooh, goes up! That was crazy, but a lot of hills went down. 30 vil lead, actually 40 vil lead almost for Leary now. And uh, maybe we'll see some petards. Yo goes for it. Not sure if Leary's going to commit. Yeah, actually he is making some petards himself. Petard war now on the castles. Oh man, adding now some ramps behind this, but there's not a lot of melee support. It just feels like Leary with all the aggression can now... Oh, oh what? The petter to the right hand side. Oh, he evacuated yeah. the villagers to the right hand side. And that's where the petter tried to follow them and therefore died. Yeah, crazy stuff there. Both players going for the petard race. And uh, I don't think it matters too much for Leary if he loses the castle because he's already looking to expand. 
But I feel like if Yo loses that castle, then a second castle from Lyra will come in the same in a similar spot here. Mm -hmm. The Rams are just not it, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that that feels really off there. Doesn't really have enough units to protect. Some villagers trying to repair again. Another petard there out on the side now jumps through the castle to get some more damage done and tries to go for some more conversions. Going to be really tricky though. Yeah, like have diving deep there, picking up the monk. Feels like Leary's in complete control of the situation as far as the raiding goes now. He's just sniping monks, hitting some villagers, and the infantry are just stuck chasing those cav units. Taking a f another fight here, both players trying to add some more patterns here, or mainly Leary actually even goes for masonry. Wow, what a tech. Well, masonry is crazy. I don't know when's the last time I've seen masonry in Castle Age like that. Yeah, and not like heading towards a trap war, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just like uh, pure Castle Age masonry there to win the Petard War. I mean, it is going to pay off, I, I, I'd imagine. He's going to win the, the Petard War for sure if he gets that. But how important is this castle set up here now? I don't think really it's too important, right? Yeah, it's protecting some of the gold spots, but the main raids are happening somewhere else. I think the reason why both players are fighting for the castle is because. It's a huge swing. If you get your castle up, you kill enemy castle, mm -hmm. and vice versa, right? So it's not like you, you know, both players will just keep the castle up. Uh, One will for sure go down. Liri zero gold income right now. Yeah, 30 villager lead here, including the fishing ships, is trying to get some more kills. But his economy is under a lot of threat as well. Yeah, and you know what? Yo's units are a lot cheaper here. And we did see in the arena game, me versus Tato, how Aztecs can make use of a low economy mm -hmm. to put pressure and use those monks and eagles to force engagements and get favorable trades. You really wanted to talk about that game again, right? No, honestly, it just came to me. It, the yeah. win in that game? It was close. <laughs> <laughs> it was close, it was close. Oh, the monk goes down there as well, but another raid at the gold or stone, so really tricky for Leary to keep his economy running right now. It feels like a bit of wood, a bit of food income, but it is tricky. Yeah, but finally, That's he big. gets into a wood line. You know what? It's not exactly that worth. Oh, okay, he ran out. So I was going to say, if you lose those light cap, not exactly that worth. But uh, yeah, definitely. Oh, what? Oh, oh! Standard yeah, victory! Standard. <laughs> oh my God! So you see a confusing timer at the right hand side. This is not a winning condition in this tournament. Yeah, there are some tournaments that are playing. If you collect all the relics and hold them for 200 years, you win. This is not the thing that's happening here. It is a pretty thing shown at the side, especially because we only have nah. two relics. You know what I say? Oh, it's only two relics? Yep. Oh, I was going to say, Yo should just go for it. Just take take the victory. <laughs> if it goes to zero, Yo wins. I will allow it. I will Let, allow let's oh. change the rules on the tournament <laughs> on the fly oh to make God. the game a bit more exciting. Leary, why'd you lose? But actually, two the relics. game is getting exciting. It's getting Look very at the population exciting. difference. It's within six pop. The vil count that Leary had, that 30 vil lead, where did it go? I mean, I blinked twice and now it's only a 15 vil lead. That the castle's bad. down, yes. But as you mentioned, Lily, that castle wasn't exactly the most important. And now another town center at the left hand side for Mr. Yo. The map kind of forces both players to I expand towards each other. And if we look at only villagers and ignore the fishing ship count, we are close to even. Yeah, th this is absolutely insane. And oh my god, Leary is getting his uh, town center raided by a trader knight there. That was a converted knight. And the monk is getting dangerously close there. Wants to heal up. Okay. And more eagle raids. What is Leary doing? I, I actually feel like Leary is slipping. I, not, I think I think Leary is slipping. He's not stabilizing at home. Yeah, what is at happening all. here? Th this is crazy. Work efficiency in the bin. More conversions are coming in. Those two monks are scaring the knights away. Yeah, yeah, they just crazy. wanted to defend the farmers. This is crazy. I, 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 where did it go? I feel like I want to rewatch the last five minutes because Leary had such a good lead. I, I was saying he's controlling the tempo of the game, and then suddenly it's all yo. The vil count is closing in, although the score is still in favor of of of, of Leary. But now Yo is controlling the tempo and he's the guy attacking and raiding. Five on wood and more villagers dying. Leary lost about 50 villagers in this game already, and we see Mr. Yo continuing to expand here. Oh, and those eagle raids are hurting. As you said, it's possible Leary over-invested into the castle there. All those petards, yeah. Yeah. masonry, university, those are all resources that could have went into knights or into some siege or something to deal with eagle raids. Yeah, and he like rushed the university with like four villagers, right? Yeah, yeah. Didn't really have it before the castle fight. So big, big investment there. Mr. Yo, yeah, he built some ramps that were wasted. But overall, it felt like Mr. Yo played quite nicely behind the scenes of the castle war. And he's back raiding. 
This is insane. The Vil count, the worker count in favor of Yo. 20 more army on the field. What are we seeing? And this is such a nice comeback from Yo. He was clearly behind at some point, but he let the Aztecs cook for what they're they're known for here. Monks and Eagles. And it feels like he's actually winning right now despite what the score says. How many conversions on the knights that we see this game. It feels like 15, maybe even yeah, up to yeah. 20. 10, okay. 10 knight conversions so far here, but it feels like a 20 knight swing. Yeah, this is... Yeah, this is absolutely amazing. I mean, Leary's working count keeps dropping, and, and Yo isn't really getting rated, so his working count is going higher and higher. This might be the last fight of the game, and Leary's losing that fight. His economy continues to get rated, and I think he's completely out of this game. I mean, this is so, so strange. We need a new t-shirt. Eagles counter knights. I mean, what is happening here? How did Yo pull this one off? It felt like I was mentally preparing for game five here. I, I honestly, it was 30 vil. Can we watch that again? 40 vil lead at some point. 40 vil lead. We won the castle fight if you're Leary's perspective. Now we'll call oh, the GG. he can't be happy yeah. with that. That was a wizard move by Mr. Yo. That was so strange. I honestly don't know where it went wrong. Obviously, we see the GGs, the handshake there as well. Good sportsmanship, but Leary has to be disappointed with that one. Of course, we know what's at stake. Yo is feeling good for himself. Mm -hmm. Leary not too happy, especially that, that last throw. Was it a throw? Did we misread the situation? It, it, 40 vil lead. Yeah, it felt like army value was even, the castle was up. A bit maybe too one-dimensional there. And it felt like although Mr. Yo had the slower units, he was playing the mobility card. Yeah, he was the guy taking the initiative and raiding. We talked about how compact Yo's base was, so raiding wasn't really an option there. Mm -hmm. Leary's base was the opposite. Everything spread out, farms out in the open. Maybe he needed the knights instead of raiding and looking for damage, just defend. Defend and wait and buy time. That is so strange. I, I like you, was mentally preparing for game five. I, I don't know how Yo did it. I don't think he knows how good of a comeback that was. Yeah. Typically in those situations, we see maybe like two, three scorpions mixed in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the typical approach against the meso there to reduce the efficiency of the eagles and pikemen quite a bit. And then those big fights are going way better for the person, something we didn't see here. Yeah, super strange there. No, no, you're not talking. Yeah, okay, come on. Actually, you are. Oh, no. You're on tippy toes. Uh, you did win that game, by the way. GG well played. Uh, Pikes counter knights. Oh, up here. Okay. <laughs> Very nice there. Um, well played. So, his guy won. I, I played well. Yeah, you, you <laughs> played really well. Like, picking picking the Pikes side there was super smart. And um, someone typed cringe exclamation mark in the chat. I <laughs> I couldn't. He had to put the exclamation mark. It's very cringe. <laughs> very nice there. Um, it is what it is, though. Listen, Mr. Yo, that's a that's a big win for him right there. Yep. That's a big win. Secures himself a spot in the top eight at least. Mm -hmm. Leary has to fight tomorrow for his tournament life, pretty yeah. much. And that's what a lot of people already said, right? Mr. Yo coming into this tournament relatively underprepared, had to practice a lot, played like eight hours every day with ACCM, yeah. and improved heavily. And this is by far the best Mr. Yo we have seen in this tournament so far. Mm -hmm. Now he is kind of guaranteed to be in the playoffs. And now the dream is still alive, right? He can yeah. still win the whole tournament. But we were really scared for his whole tournament life early on. Yeah, people have to realize like, oh, Mr. Yo, does he know that in interview? Typically, this is my job where I go like, by the way, uh, Mr. Yo, after when we go for the interview, and he's like, oh, oh yeah, Neely. Nah, he's gonna go smoke. ACCM is a bad influence. Okay, he's in a fast one. Okay, good. No, I, I was getting worried for a second. I think he will take a detour. I think he's just going into the other room. Is he gonna go back to smoke or what? I don't know. Oh, no, he's here. No, he's not. Oh, oh he's here. No, that's okay. the room. <laughs> I think Yo should be coming soon. Okay. Well, maybe well, we'll just wait for him here. Yeah, we can. We have the t-shirts on. We have the t-shirts on. Very nice. Maybe I should have done some push-ups. When did you plan it, by the way? NAC4, actually. You planned it since NAC4? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. But the t-shirts were sent to the wrong address. And it took you a whole year? And like and the perfect situation. I went to up. print them today. Wow. So I was gone for 45 minutes earlier. That's crazy. Yeah. I respect the dedication. I mean, you created a pretty good moment there. I think that I really <laughs> like that. Like oh, no, it was moment. actually super bad because I, I um, when I would try to get loose of the hoodie, mm -hmm. uh, it, I, it kind of stuck here. So I was like trying to make the joke. <laughs> I was like, by the way, no, Pike's counter, and then I nearly fell off the screen. It was like, uh, that is like the th sixth most embarrassing moment of NAC for me so far. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you counting? <laughs> yeah. It's like, and, and yeah. <laughs> Why are you counting? Well, it was really embarrassing, but there were there were more embarrassing moments. Okay, yeah, number six. <laughs> You're keeping track. 
<laughs> for me, I was like, oh, that was an awkward moment. And then like I just move on. You're like, oh, that's I don't know. Slot, sl slot seven there. <laughs> yeah. Dear diary. <laughs> <laughs> Today was really bad. A top three <laughs> <laughs> embarrassing moment happened. <laughs> oh, my God. That was well, I think I will send you over to Mr. Yo and uh, to pick his brain. All right. Thank you so much Thank for you. the cast there. And obviously, Liri tomorrow in a really, really rough situation when it comes to his match. Must win scenario then. If you're a big Liri fan, you want to tune in for that one. Obviously, five matchups. We kind of know the matchups already, but we will discuss them after we have it there. Mr. Yo and Hera ready. All right, moving in here. We got Mr. Yo, the champion of just the sets, but feeling pretty good. 2-2 two -two right I now. Like the champion. Yeah, you haven't heard it in a while, but it's good, it's good <laughs> uh, just to hear it back now. And now, okay, listen, 2-2 two -two now, you, you've secured a spot in the top eight. You must be feeling great about that. Were you nervous going to the set today? Yeah, 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 quite nervous. Like, I lost my first scout, then I lost the game like that. You know, after the game, <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, <laughs> I'm going to perform, like, really bad today again. Ooh, okay. I was really nervous. Uh, but then it got better. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, the first game, of course, we're seeing it on the screen now. I mean, it all kind of fell apart when you lost the scouts, and then yeah. you obviously got docked. And it, did you feel like there was even a chance for you to win, or just it was just gone? Well, if I got a scout, maybe, but... I mean, we are doing the same, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh... And he spotted my dog before, uh, which is quite unfortunate for me. So, um, plus the losing of the scout, then yeah, there's just, just no chance. Yeah, I felt like Leary was in complete control of that one. But that's going to be the only loss of the set. So going over to the game two here. This was your home map with Cumans, which is a, a high priority sit for you. Do you like the Cumans here? Were you, were you happy with how they performed? Yeah, I, I, I like Cumans. I always like... Those defensive map, I just made TC, two TC boom behind it and then went to Castle Age, maybe some forward castle or something. But I didn't expect this kind of push, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it was pretty good. You did lose a couple of Siege Workshops, a couple of Mangonels, but I think the key moment was when you got the castle on top. We see it now. Did you feel good after that castle came up? Yeah, yeah. The best moment is when I clear all these Manganel from my base. Oh, that was sick, yeah. That was so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I had to check out. You're dealing with the Manganels for so long. I think it's going to come up soon. You're going to be massing the Kipchaks and then going for the fight. Uh, maybe production will show it here in the replays. Uh, but the Kipchaks in general, are you happy with how they perform against Camels? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's better than it looks, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think this is the moment here where you have a really nice micro moment. Yeah, good dodge there. Three Meganos down, and uh, Kipchucks are taking over the game now. At this point, you have the Ville lead, you got the Kipchucks, and life is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Game three here. Okay, so 1-1 one, one going into game three. Your scouts did find a Ville. So this is the first game now that you didn't lose your scout, and you did kill a Ville. Must be feeling good. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Uh, and now going into like the mid game here, there's a lot of demo action, and you wanted to go for some knights to stabilize the game against yeah. against the Lithuanians. Look you at that tree! Look at that tree! My villager will have survived. Oh, that tree was so annoying! Yeah, that tree minus one bill. So oh, and this is a big moment as well with the archers coming in here. Uh, did you not expect the archers to come to this side? Uh, I kind of expected it, but I was too lazy to do any. Preparation, I guess. Okay, <laughs> just kind of hoping. Yeah. Oh, this was sick as well. You had the demo. It was. Did you plan this? The demo hit. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was sick. That was sick. Yeah, that that was huge because you killed the the two scouts. You got the stable down as well, so you were feeling for sure solid about your position here. And do you feel like you know with the Japanese, you have a solid late game into the Lithuanians? Mm, no. Okay. No. Uh, I mean. Lithuania has the gunpowder, right? Yeah. So it's definitely better, I think. Yeah, so they have the better late game. So you have to go for the win early, and you're booming so hard, and these demo hits were just too good. And Liri just taps out there. So you're the demo master so far. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice play. And then going into game four here, we see Persians against Aztecs. This was one of the craziest games of the set. And it seemed like you were dead at some point, and you just managed to pull it back. I mean, what happened? Fighting Spirit the from ACCM. <laughs> <laughs> the Fighting Spirit from ACCM. Yo's got it too. So you thought you were dead at some point? Yeah. You were You were 40 bills behind. 
Really? 40 bills, yes. Much? 40 workers at least. Okay, okay. Um, I look at the score, I was like, okay. <laughs> but I'm gonna hang out a bit. And since he never get a chance to like really kill my whole army, so uh, I just keep moving on. Yeah, you might as well. In, in this castle war as well, it looked like, you know, you lost the fight. You got the castle up. You lost a lot of villagers. A lot of players called the GG here. But you you fought on. Not fighting spirit. Not, not you. Not you. Not ACCM for sure. And you managed to pull back the victory, which is absolutely insane. You'll see the worker count now, 50 to 88 workers. So it's a 40 villager difference, basically. Okay. And you did lose the castle for after this position. Did you feel like you had a chance to win even after the castle goes down? Like, was the castle important to you or not really? I mean, um, the moment when I send some eagle to his base and I realized he doesn't have that much amount of knights. Yeah. And he wasn't going to Imperial Age that fast. So uh, that's when I think I have a chance. Yeah, yeah. Even after that castle, the castle wasn't successful at all. Yeah. Yeah, we'll call it a doubt castle there. Not a successful one. But you did manage to get the rating in, so congratulations for the victory. And um, yeah, that's going to put you, we're taking a look at the leaderboards now, at number five. So you came here as an invited top four. You're now pretty close to it. Um... So you should be guaranteed to a top eight. What do you think about the bottom of the bracket here? We can talk about that for a little bit until we see the matchups. I mean, tomorrow two players go out. I think yep. I think Hart is guaranteed. I'm not 100% sure. Obviously, Buchholz are, are crazy and anything can happen here. But out of ACCM, Leary, Doubt, and Andy, who, who could be out of the tournament, what are your predictions for that second spot? Who do you think is going to go out? I Just mean, say it. The performance so far, I would say... Doubt. Based, savage, okay. Just he's out. I mean other three player I think they perform really well. Okay. But maybe Leary not not his top level, but still he played pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense, makes sense. Doubt obviously uh at the at the bottom of the bracket there, ninth place. But I mean we've got Nilly here. Uh, what is the situation looking like matchup wise? We have all the five matchups. It is a very complex thing, though. So we can quickly go through them, and we have them. This is not the order that we are playing them in. Or maybe it is, but very, very oh unlikely. Hard Leary, no. <laughs> it will be Hard Leary. We have Doubt ACCM, Andy Yo, Hera, Viper, Tato, Jordan. The thing is now, obviously, we get into a weird scenario where there might be a situation where you have a different pl a play style or like uh, your match is influenced by others, right? And yeah. to keep the integrity of the tournament intact, we have the tournaments, th uh, the matchups that influence the others the most to start with. That's very smart, yeah. So there might be a scenario where we even start with Hera Viper just because it influences all the other sets. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's how it works. It's just like that it's not they have the advantage of having the information for others. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a really, really tricky situation. I, I feel like not a single player here would throw for, like, other placements, but it's good to avoid that just in case and keep things uh, as professional as possible. And Nilly's thinking so hard right now. Yeah, I mean, take yeah, a look. yeah. This is a this is hard Nilly think moment. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Joe, by the way, congratulations. If you want to, like, if you want to stick around, you're cool, but, like, I know you just want to set. So if you want to go drink something, you can. The interview oh, yeah, is over. Yeah, 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 the interview is yeah. over. Okay. See okay. You guys. Bye. Oh, my God. I feel like we're host holding him hostage. <laughs> Thank you for being here, though. I did that at my weird N4C speech at the end, right? Yeah. Where I was saying, like, how the whole event was disappointing for me. And there were two guys sitting next <laughs> to me the whole time. And they, they the winners, right? The finalists? The, 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 the winner of the $100,000 tournament. And he was like... What the fuck is happening here? Oh this guy's man. crying that the tournament is, uh, is. This is the worst we ever hosted. The winners. Yeah, yeah. This is like oh, what? Like this is heartbreaking. <laughs> like years in preparation. And oh like, man. And he's like had the biggest success of his life. Yeah, yeah. Quickly after his father died, even and like oh. it was like his redemption tournament. So like, we we had mm. some awkward moments on this couch. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that was that has to be top one awkward moment. No, it's top eight though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> what? What is your life looking like if that stuff ate? Oh, oh my God. I, I did some cringy stuff in my life, yeah. That's crazy, man. We mm. need a recap. That's, that, that's a YouTube video. Before you retire, get us one last YouTube video. Top 10 cringiest moments with footage. That would be insane. Well, there are some without footage. For oh, sure. damn it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, as I said, we don't really know how the maps matches are influencing each other and to keep the tournament integrity intact we don't know the order those are the matchups and we obviously know that hard and leary is basically hard is out yeah leary if he loses he's out as well but so Most like likely okay like l let's be let's be real here hart if he wins he doesn't have a single chance with like Buko's manipulation? But we can look at the standings again, right? Because Leary obviously is really low as well, so he can't really get a lot of Buchholz from him. And the best he can do is 1-4. Yeah. So he has to have Leary below him, which might even overtake him in Buchholz. So I think Leary might even... He might not even be able to overtake Leary. Okay. if he wins. Direct comparison is our fourth decider. So he he just brings Leary down and he, he yeah, takes yeah, yeah. him out he with takes, him. He takes him with him. Right, that could be oh an option. Oh god! Yeah, that would be <laughs> like how funny. Like harsh performance. Like going in, like the ones that you win is against your teammates. <laughs> <laughs> you don't win, but you make sure he loses. <laughs> that would be so funny. He takes the the performance of his <laughs> life. <laughs> Just to make sure that he loses. Oh my god, that's such a crazy scenario. I mean, I'm oh. laughing now, but I actually feel really bad. I came in with uh, those guys as close practice partners and friends, obviously, but um, sometimes the, the comical is just too mm -hmm. too high. And we might throw in some sets that have less of a re relevance to be one of the earlier ones, right? For yeah. example, we might actually have the Hera Viper game relatively early because Hera already confirmed to be in the top two. Therefore, it doesn't make a difference if you're first or second, really. And Viper kind of confirmed to be top four, I believe. He's just trying to get into a one-two spot. So relatively speaking, there's less on the line. Is it really confirmed, though? Because Tato Jordan, Tato's got a lot of Bujos. If I lose to Viper... Oh, I still have more Bujos than Viper, though, right? Most likely, right? Yeah. I, I'm not sure if it's five, really. Did Viper only clap noobs? Uh, played, did he play Doubt? He played four rounds already. Yeah. Only collect. Okay, Doubt, doubt is one Buchholz. Did, he didn't play Doubt, did he? He didn't play Doubt. No, he didn't. Okay. You just said noobs, so I thought of Doubt okay, right okay. away. Uh, yeah, I played Hart, though. Hart, yeah. zero Buchholz. He played Leary, one Buchholz. He played ACCM, two Buchholz. And then he played th someone with three wins, Tato. Tato, yeah. And he lost. There's only respectable that's, that's opponents. Th those five Buchholz, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, yeah. checking Buchholz Wikipedia helps out. Obviously, Ooh. brilliant website, Lea, Wikipedia. You can see it. Those are the four opponents Viper faced. And the PTS there, the points, will be our decider there. So therefore, it is matches. And then this PTS column will actually be more important. That's why we have the correct order kind of here compared to Wikipedia. Yeah, cra crazy situation with the whole Buchos. Um, it's going to be a, a really crazy day tomorrow because, like, two guys will be, you know, out of the tournament. Uh, so Viper needs to win. Viper needs to win. Or else? Otherwise, he, he will overtake. Like, like someone will get 3-2, right? Mm -hmm. And then he is he's down the list. For but sure. he will still be top eight, though. Yeah, yeah he is yeah. guaranteed top eight, obviously. Yeah. We only have one more day to go. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, so he's top eight, guaranteed. We're gonna have two guys out. The the four, five, or the three to six, they, they go into where exactly? One, two. We can go for the bracket again. Yeah. The one, two are directly into Friday. Three, four are skipping one day. Mm -hmm. And then we have fifth till eighth playing the first round of qualification okay. there. Okay, there you go, yeah. So the better you place in the group stage, the further you go, you get some more days off. Obviously, ninth and 10th, that's the deadly cutoff line, people that are out of the tournament. Yeah, yeah. So crazy day tomorrow. Uh, everyone has something to play for, pretty much. I think Hart might be the hard. exception, yeah, yeah there. Yeah. And, um, and you, probably, might be. I think okay. it will be tricky for you to be overtaken. I think Viper can't overtake you. And the other two that can overtake you are playing against each other. Yeah, and I just want to remind everyone as well, like, after the group stage, it's basically all single elimination. So, right. like, no matter how good you did in the group stage, you obviously get placed higher up. Mm -hmm. But then if you lose once, you're out, right? So it's it's going to get really cutthroat. The best rounds of the tournaments are still coming up. So really exciting stuff. Exactly. And how we will start the show tomorrow is basically we will give you a full overview, who advances, 
and what they are playing for. So we will do the math all night long. I won't rest till we uh, figured everything out. We will do a lot of nilly math there and then we will open the show there. That could be a good spot for doubt. Maybe I will put him as one of the first two sets so that he has to show up early to walk us through that process. And that's how we will open the show tomorrow. Five crazy sets, the last day of the group stage and the last chance to see Hart play unless he participates in our crazy show match on Sunday. And that was it from NAC 5, day 4. It might actually be the most viewed Tuesday in Age of Empires history. Ooh. I think we, we had like 34,000 viewers or something. On a Tuesday. Uh, on your set. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Huh? Production clapping there. Yeah, and just to celebrate, guys, we're going to ask for some Twitch primes, which are free and can support the nice. stream. Obviously, we had a, a viewer record. Maybe we can aim for some primes to celebrate and to enjoy it together. Maybe a Red Bull. Maybe Red Bull started on Tuesday as well. Thinking maybe, about it. Maybe. Tuesday to Sunday. It's close. It's close. It's still enough to ask for primes. A couple of them coming in. Guys, those are absolutely free. So it's just a good financial decision because you can't go wrong on that, right? Uh, Someone like at tier one, questionable decision <laughs> because like he he's he's running some loss there. <laughs> I'm not sure if the value is there, but it, it's a decent choice. Well, it's with the sets choice. that we had today with Hera versus Tato, there one of the best sets I've ever seen. The value is there. One percent of the donations are going into the prize pool, and we will see each other tomorrow. Twelve UTC with the start, and before that, a lot of Buchholz potentially with doubt. Thank you all, guys. Bye bye. Naval control this game has 15 food before they get eliminated. He made the run. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> he got Hero, it. Hero Fisherman. And then he, he goes back it. out for more, sir. Yeah, well. Uh, Just forward, though, to guarantee that the castle will go up, but at the cost of many villager lives, 96%, soon to be 100. Jordan is going to sit at the base of this castle, at least for a moment. I think your Bombard Cannon is a huge advantage for Jordan and should be able to deal with the traps. Nice game. Light Cavs swooping in. Same with the Camel Archers looking for the picks on the Monks first, then to target the Trebuchets. Looks like one will go down at the very least. Both players are uh, repairing away on Stout. I, I was in a position to win this maybe. There were things I could have done, and yet going it all King? slipped away. Camel Archers coming in. They will kill that tower fairly quickly. And he is like, oh. no, 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 no. He quick walls it out. Yeah. He's got another gate there. He's thinking. He's putting the pieces together. He's like, how many buildings do I need? What? No, 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 no. Oh. Is that town center? You cannot. Andy, I think, might have misread Jordan's strategy. I don't think you can ever build a TC and there. Jordan. Jordan's, like, Jordan's like, oh, oh, you want to make it there. Wow. Oh, I see. And Andy now has to delete that town center. And both of those relics will be firmly under Jordan's control. Excellent, Excellent timing from Andy with these monks. He didn't reveal them until he had two. And Andy is going to attempt to wall in these villagers once again. He did it against Hart on Canberra. I don't think he's going to get it done here against Jordan on Arena. But still, pushing the Janissaries back and pushing that foundation back also needs loom. Like Cav swooping in, oh, looking for the snipe on the monks. The we also have a spear there trying. I'm a fan, personally. Also, just because ew, of the change. Ew, oh, no. no okay. Not I'm, I'm no longer a fan. I was about to say, I uh, love this play because I, I just like this switch up in pace, yeah. right? I like the attempt to say, hey, I'm going to go fully on the yeah. offensive. I'm going to try and get my opponent off kilter, but just like that, on the yeah. offensive, I'm going to try and get my opponent off kilter, but just like that. GG's right there! <laughs> oh! Oh my goodness! We literally I suck at this. Listen, this, I'm this table is short, dude. Yeah! Okay. Yeah. I told you, All I'm right. terrible. Alright, well, at least you're honest with yourself on like yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. Alright, here we go. Vodka and Hera. It's full, right? Ooh, Very nice. Oh no! Oh, oh my God! coming out, and now Viper is in. He might not want to stay in there for long, but this is just another example of how easy Viper's made it look with the mobility here, man. Then he's gonna actually just break that gate down so he can run in and out freely. As he still, it. he's gonna be able to take those ones. You need to kill it. You need to kill it. He's gonna take it. He got it both. Yeah, and no conversion. Yeah, and Eagle Warriors now in. So this yeah. is going to be a better trade. And maybe that's like 
His castle is being repaired. He's sinking stone into repairs instead of building more castles. Things could fall apart here for Viper. He's got those Ghoulums on the right. And he that is helping. Let's see. The Eagles are going to dive. They have to avoid those Ghoulums. He needs conversions, Tristan. He needs some conversion. He's not getting many conversions. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. The okay. Ghoulums are insane. They are very, very good. Sivs that are one sided on cavalry men, like, uh, let's see, like potentially Franks. Yeah. And then you could pick them against Eagle civilizations because of the Ghoulum. Viper's not using the Ghoulum anymore, but still, the hand cannons and light cap is going to do more than fine. It also is less expensive for him. Uh, he doesn't have to spend as much gold. And yeah, this so just takes pipes. us back to that fighting spirit from ACC. The farmers, and then he's trying to counterattack. He it's... converted two lances, though, which is good. But this position is really complicated for the snake, Tristan. It's funny It's funny how he converted two lancers. And as he more HP, almost 20 HP more. Don't remember, it was 18 or something. Oh, oh my god, he went. Man, they're on point with the micro. Look how much things yeah, are really happening, good. and they're really on point. Really good. And nah. Viper's still no bloodlines. Hey, oh, Viper's, no blood. cab archers, Viper's cab archers shouldn't be fighting skirms. Oh, but man. Look at this oh, split man. micro from Down. AC to these rams. Look at this ram train, dude. That's crazy. Choo-choo. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, he might be with Sitchin Yunir. I don't think he has Sitchin uh -oh. You know, I know the castle, but that's going to be a doubt one. It's going to be a doubt, a doubt cast. Oh, huh? There's some army up there. And the rams have not been countered yet. Still no big commitment to that killer siege unit. Rams! And Siege, siege Ram! Wow. Then make the... <gasps> That is typical Viper, dude. Typical Viper to be able to sneak around and find an area. Thank God for ACCM, he has Berbers, though. Because if that's not Berber Village, I'm really piling on the pressure here. I think he's got to leave, though, man. Yeah. There's too many Eagles. Yeah, man. But uh -oh. he does snipe some monks in there. Okay, he has to be careful. He got also Devotion, remember. I want to cast it forward. I mean, I don't know if he can. Ooh. He converted the knight. There's so many knights still. How important Why? will be now plus two attack or plus two armor for one v one with these upgrades and with the mass we're looking at. And you know you, you have the villagers, man. But how many of the villagers are actually working right now? If you're Viper, how many of them are on the resources you want? Not, not, really 20 not 20 villas. Not 20 villas ahead anymore. Yep. Not 20 villas. But that castle is about Viper, to be Viper down. trapped. Viper yeah. trapped. Viper trapped. All those. Tristan. Yeah, and look at him sell. He just sold a thousand food Ooh. and a thousand wood, and that's gonna bring him back gold because he needs. Sometimes it. you think I have the numbers, and you just you, you do exactly it, this. It's gonna but happen again. It's gonna happen again. He can't kill this. This is okay. this is completely hard counters his army. Ooh, look how he put the hand cannon in. The cavaliers in front, and the eagles are going to disappear one more time. I don't know. He's plus six eagles elite. Cavaliers are coming. The viper is still now taking this battle. Commentary I'm on a break here, oh, and there he goes. Go, there he goes. Let's go. All right, all right. There he goes. He lost time. He had to stop at the bathroom, and we got uh, three minutes <laughs> and forty seconds for ACCM to get his smoke break in, and he to, to use his skirms in defense. ACCM lost his scout, Mem, so he can't scout any future moves, but he was probably expecting this one. Yeah, he's going to win now with those skirmishes. He's going to have the armor as well. He's trying to explore and like 12 fishing ships, Mem, and if you can hold, your eco is going to be ridiculous. Oh, let's see if he's going to hold, but for now, he's losing one Valir. One Valir because those men at times are still alive, surprisingly, and he's still maybe going to take another, maybe going to take another. No, he still save it. <laughs> this is skirmishes well, as well. This map, we've got the quick walls coming down. He's got to protect the gold. First and foremost, he, he he got the small palisades down, and there we go. There's the fires coming in. The defense could Focus be there for ACCM, the but yes. Viper broke through the palisade, and Viper's taking ACCM completely off there of There could goal. be more production from ACCM. He can convert the Gabettos with his monks. He can then use the camels against the light cap, and Viper's at the limit here. He's pop capped, and he's going to lose a castle, and it's going to get worse. Viper can't produce for the next minute here. In game, ACCM really made Viper work for it today. What a nice doubt. Oh, don't run into your hometown. Doubt? Doubt? Dead. Jordan, I think you lost the bet, brother. Uh, <laughs> I know mean, that's I not so bad. It's only one villager, right? It's only one. base. I think he's covered the gap between the barracks and the market. I could see a little flag from the palace. Mm -hmm. Well, but there's still some gaps here in the housing at the front, and Doubt is just running around. He's trying to escape, he's trying to escape. He loses a couple units and then decides to fight. No control of the map, uh, of, of the game. Yeah, and he's getting ballistics too, so Doubt's gonna have a ton of upgrades on those cab archers. Look at the resources here, Jordan. Doubt is about to play. Uh, we see a very nice moment. <laughs> You know, any other player most likely would have tried to save that villager, and it would have been a mistake. Mm -hmm. Because Why? one villager with 64, 64 others. 
Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. That, that's exactly how doubt thinks there. Like I, yep. it's just. I love and doubt, that. doubt is, <laughs> doubt is sweating now. And doubt, you know, you have this army that you've invested to, and you, and it just feels useless. It feels, and it is useless. It, the only thing it's doing is buying yourself some time yep. before these step lancers make their way back towards your economy, because the pikemen aren't even getting a chance to hit the horses. And we talked about it. Low numbers. The step lenses absolutely melt those infantry units. You yeah. need Loop in with the scouts. Doubt is doing a good job keeping the pikemen and the eagles near his monks. He doesn't want to let Hart snipe those. One of those monks is out of faith, though, and he successfully clears up the step lancer. There's another monk joining the party, but the step lancers are coming in towards the pikemen, and that monk goes down, and Hart is going to find himself an okay engagement if he's microing properly. Yeah, and there's a Mangonel also joining the field here, and uh, this looks okay for both players. However, the Mangonel hits a very nice shot here, and the Pikemen are going down. Yeah, Pikemen going down. Step Lancers, he lost a lot of Step Lancers in that engagement. Yeah. Maybe more than he yeah, should have. Four. Does he get one? Nice! Oh. That was beautiful. Really, really solid job from Hart. More conversions coming in. Mangadai on the hill. Step Lancers on the hill. Mangonels, can they survive? Hart might be able to pull villagers to repair, but he doesn't. And all of the pikemen will go Switch down. Between multiple POVs, he's got double armies. Worried about a castle on that side. There's a raid oh, coming in. He, he regroups into the eagles, which is tough. Oh, boy. Hart not okay. having... Uh, very important for... Uh, Doubt that he has added a stable, right? That's mm -hmm. the building you need uh, the most right now, as the scouts are going to be able to save you a little bit. However, with the archer scout combination, that is very strong. However, Hart's micro is very good. Yeah, Hart's really on top of it here. He's got the scouts in front of the skirmishers, sniping the archers behind. Doubt constantly keeping the spearmen in front of his archers, though. So good positioning from Doubt. And Hart will need to back away. It doesn't feel like an area that he can really pressure. Applying the pressure, he's got so many scouts now. He's got eight scouts with the armor on the way. And the skirmishers clearing up the spearmen as they come in and clearing up those archers too. Doubt is under pressure. Doubt is struggling here to get the units out that he needs. And Hart is pushing, but Doubt has lots of HP remaining on his scouts. And this battle happens before the armor comes in for Hart, but it's still a decent one. The archers are going exposed to... Exposed villager, though. That is an exposed villager. However, the reinforcement scout is coming in. The is fire galley is coming out, too. I don't know if that scout's going to be in time. You definitely want to clear this up, right? You don't want the potential of a second dog. He will kill the villager. He kills it, and he gets away for the scout with the scout for now, but... Not long term. But I mean, you oh. thought it would be a bigger oh, he's damage. In, Dave, he's five in. archers. Imagine if he still had those five archers. The villagers are weak. The scouts are working away. Hart is trying to run. Doubt is right behind. He can't get the house up behind this. And villagers are dying here as Doubt pushes his way into the base. Another villager goes down. Eco KD is sitting at nine to two in favor of Doubt. There from Doubt. Lots of pressure. Hart held so well. The in quotes, under production of units. Right now, he doesn't have too many units to defend. I think all those knights don't have full HP as well. He has heal been healing a little bit, but these three knights, without any upgrades, they cannot take the fight against the crossbow. Yeah, they might have forging, so they'll do damage when they get in, but they're definitely going to take no picks just yet. Now the longswords turning their attention onto the scorpions. The crossbows as well. Beautiful split out of Tato to dodge that harpoon. And now we have a full engagement between very diverse armies between the two players. Hera thinks he doesn't get the better of it and is trying to retreat, retreat, but it's only one crossbow there to try and get in the way. Guard tower, too, on top of all of that, will be making it very hard to clean up. Yeah, but at the same time, Hero has 130 villagers. His economy is pretty much set for Imperial Age right now. Only thing missing is gold income. He has 70 villas on wood right now. He can sell a lot, like we already see, now right? going forward, Tato's going to now start to rotate the pressure over to the other side. In the Tato still with the numbers advantage, as we see Hero adding some hand cannons as well. Hand cannons would be great here to just pick off Siege from distance, because they have such high damage. So it looks like he's going to hold this quite nicely. And Hasn't lost too much. Hera really testing the waters here, both figuratively and literally, against Tato, the first of these galleys is going to fall, and it's 2-0 KD now overall here 
for Hera on the map. Not too many advantages gained for either player. Taking a look back at the resources as well to see which of these players might... A little bit of a peek, and he's going to retreat, Ooh. but this means that the villagers are under fire with the wolf helping out on Tato's side. That's two villagers down and no opportunity to get to that bottom pond. And at the same time, Tato jumping on the ships, forcing Hera to pay attention here, and therefore not being able to micro quick wall the villagers. Possible conversions here. Yeah, Tato only has fetching at the moment, so those Camelotches do not pack as much of a punch as they can. However, always going back to the conversions oh, never no. stop. This can be two really fast conversions. There's one. Retargeting onto the oh, other in military numbers. 73 to 71 in eco numbers with Tato having just the slightest of edges. And so that, I think, if Ooh, anything, is an that example. that was a good demo. Ooh, it was a phenomenal hit by the demo. Lots of damage. He's adding fish. He's trying to get to the dog. The transport. The transport, <gasps> the transport three with monster. three monks. Well, to be fair, I think... They could convert. Yeah, and the fire ships wouldn't kill them fast enough because they are Bengali monks, right, yeah. with extra armor. That's where you're wishing you did have a demo, if anything. So it looks like Hera might complete the relic heist and get all three of them out. He already has plenty of stone in the bank for the time Ooh. being. We have Halberdiers running forward straight into the castle fire, but there may be enough numbers to target the Trebs. No, Hera will retreat instead. We got five light cabs swooping in, looking for maybe some monk kills, but not enough numbers, it seems like, at the time. More reinforcements coming in as well. They're going to target the skirt. The Bombard Cannon falls back, but the castle falls at the same time. Both castles Ooh. being traded out, in fact. And now the Trebs... He only needs, like, they don't die even to the Bombard Cannon shot. That's the beauty of Bengali monks, right? Still They're diving so in tanky. for the conversion. Yeah. Tato oh. on the full retreat. The castle's about to go down, and he gets the conversion on top of that. Castle falls, and now this could Ooh. be coming forward looking for snipes. They're not going to threaten Trebs too much, and the Halberdiers can't quite get through the meat shield. The question is, is Tato able to eliminate those Trebs that are firing? Well, he just loses the Bombard Cannon as he comes in to the block, printing monks once again. That's a tragedy. Indeed, but this is the third time Hera is diving under the castle of Tato with all his trash units. Super Lower stays alive, Hera loses all his traps, and population looking very healthy for Tato. I have to point out though, Hera did do Mahayana, I think it's called. Yeah, Unique wonderfully tech. done. Arrive to target the castle position that largely controls two golds in the center of the map. Focus back on to the central push. And those gold, gold piles have barely been uh, deplenished, right? There's so much gold left to mine here for whoever has control of it. Five, over 5,000 gold still. Imagine Tato getting... So he's going to start raiding through there. Oh, three bomber cans no, going down to the, to the castle! This is the most expensive unit in the game! Oh, that's a tragedy. I mean, yeah, that's what, five, uh, roughly 500 yeah. resources per. So 1,500 resources essentially. 10% of his economy. Oh, oh the houses! Oh, the quick walls! This could be massive. Oh, he there's... cannot build there. The trap is blocking. He oh, cannot build that house. Oh, oh, he can, he builder. can. He gets it, but there's still a hole, I think, on the right-hand side. Oh, he gets the wall. The final quick wall, but the palisade wall isn't going to be enough, or gate, rather, and I think this might be enough. The repairs are... Castle, though, as we have gotten used to see very fast, armor upgrade for Tato as well now. He's really investing into food layer, and there's no house to defend the gold miners right now. Yeah, none whatsoever. They're trying to rush it up, and they do. I think there's six villagers, and only five spaces in Tato that. can probably win. I mean, like, Hera went light cav against full pikemen. Yeah, light cav, obviously uh, uh, an upgrade that a lot of pros favor nowadays, Ooh. and for good reasons, but this might be the one situation where it's ill-advised because one he's archer, into no, the counter yes, unit. Yeah. One now, archer went down. Mismanagement of resources when it comes to those castle age upgrades. Here comes the tower now. Does Hera have a response? He has enough stone for a counter tower, and that's what he's going to go for. But I almost wonder if you dive at this. he continues to produce villagers. So this is just a first tower, bait out a counter tower, and then you go for the second tower. I love this too. He doesn't wait for the stone to come in from the stone miners. Your early your point in this game. Those are idle villagers regardless, so it's damage done to the eco even if they don't die. A little bit of a maybe misclick there on the oh, un-garrison, <laughs> and it Whole looks like... Army. And from this point forward, actually, Hera with a good counter rate on the wooden at the same time. Village account is about to be equalized. However, Tatwa still collected almost 3,000 or 2,500 more resources, and okay, did notice this in due time. Yeah. But the counter-aggression from Tato after he's cleaning up the aggression from Hera is going to travel the map. Oh, Hera's pulling Vils to fight no this! No way! I don't know if this is enough, but he's oh, going to make the it's attempt. It's not enough, I oh, tell you that much. no, and these knights are going to swoop in and feast on the lives of these villagers. The castle's going up regardless, and this might be the desperation play here from Hera, realizing that if he loses the access to this side of his economy, that's a lot of fun. Saying that he loses the trip. Yeah. However, if this castle goes down, it feels like Hera's hopes also disappear. Yeah, both players losing a treb, so it's it's three here for Tato, two for Hera. We got Cavalier making quick work of one of them. Only picking off the Monk, really nicely done. As Hera's trying to quick wall. Ooh. Huh? 
Spearman, though. Uh, you got to be careful with these Spearman. Yep, yeah. exactly. So, a Tato. Oh, for Tato, he thinks maybe he's found his moment to dive in on he's the Monks. fully diving. That's a little peculiar. Multiple conversions come through. We do have Spearman, oh. but even four more reinforcements coming around in the flanking position. And Tato looks like he's going to prove me a liar in saying that it's an ill-advised fight as he cleans He's the running back to his original base. It's incredible to think that through all of this, uh, the numbers for either uh, side is about the same. But for once, Hera has more population. 123 to the 100 of Tato. Tato, exactly right, retreating back to the safety of what was his base and his walls. Although and those villagers building the castle, but it looks like Tato is dealing with this very nicely. Yeah, split from the light cap to try and pull the Spearman apart, but Tato follows the split with a split of his own. But all that said, actually, the light cap went out the fight on the wood line, and now there are some villagers that might go down. Not enough space in that TC for all of us. do get cleared up. The Rambai can always run, use their mobility yeah. to match the mobility of the light cap. Indeed, they're doing it now. There's also some small hills he can run, jump up on now and then. But yeah, you see now like how they're like... Of course, Harris getting good traded simply to, due to pure numbers, but you see the line of dead bodies of the Red Scouts here. Yeah. Once Tato get those numbers going, Maybe it's even enough right now with the towers helping out. Hera has a lot of skirms with ballistics as well, so it's going to be really hard for Tata to come out there without serious losses. Yeah, he's going to try and trade and run his way out of this as effectively as he can, and he is getting good kills oh, on man. the skirms, but he's taking a lot of damage in return. Ultimately, pretty well navigated, I'd have to say. And Hera, Tato just calls it. Wow. He calls it upon Hera hitting Imp. And Tato is going to sit later tonight. Really? You have to be up to something. Yeah. Now build small outpost. Love it. Yeah, th th this is so interesting, and obviously Byzantines get not just oh, free fire is probably from the right hand side. Not sure if that transporter gets home. No, Ooh. takes out the dock first. Okay, very interesting play. Leary actually kind of on top of his game right now. He's not letting Gil get away with anything sneaky. Mm -hmm. He knows he's winning the water. Leary is not some guy that's known. Also the light calf. Now the fire galley here to punish, and that transporter getting really low. Three villagers oh, in there. Oh, oh. And even if they evacuate the other side, the scouts could be around. <sighs> okay, they're out. Transport's down, but the scouts are closing in. Transport's not down. Transport's down. Transport's down. Three villagers. Scout is coming out. Could snipe a monk. This is huge. Absolutely crazy. Gets one. Mangonel tried to kill, but no Scouts way. gets the kill and gets out of there. And now the oh. project against the, against the camels. They're low now. Oh my god.